You already know this is Pawn Drunk Boxing, a.k.a. Mr. Moonshine himself. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know, man. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this side of heaven. God bless you all, 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 all. Um, IBF. For the IBF interim title, Walter Wade. It was supposed to be Sergey Lipinyev versus Abdul Kokorov. It's going to be Sergey Lipinyev versus Kazio Clayton. And I don't know what the IBF is actually doing because, or I don't know if it's fair or not because Abdul Kokorov, Ben, he couldn't get to this fight because of visa problems. Yet, the IBF, that, that's what I mean about the IBF. The IBF don't give a damn about who you are, whether you, you, you're a low-ranked fighter, high-ranked fighter, Anthony Joshua, uh, 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 um, um. What's his name? Canelo Alvarez. They don't care, man. They are strict. Abdul Kokorov was the mandatory to Earl Spence. Since March 2019. March 2019. When people were talking about the Dillian Whites of the world. When people were talking about these mandatories that have been there for quite some time. Abdul Kokorov been the mandatory in the IBF since March 2019. And then that shit just goes away because he can't get a visa to come to America. That's, and I thought this was a world sport. I don't know. I don't think that was fair, but it is what it is, I guess. It is what it is, I guess. Black and brown boxing, what's good? My brother Penguin, what's good? Love and hate, what's good? <clears throat> that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, Um, um, Black. I was going to take like the weekend off, you feel me? Like the weekend off, just decompress, you feel me? And I, I love boxing, but I just wanted to enjoy boxing, just watch it without doing it, without judging everything. But yesterday was good night of boxing as well. Good night of boxing as well. But I still don't, uh, the IBF is strict. I just don't know how to go and do, do a do Kokorov, man. But who who's a do Kokorov, right? Nobody give a damn. I bet if Abdul Kokorov was one of these guys that they want to put the narratives on, you know what I'm talking about. If he was one of these fighters, they'll be like, how dare the IBF just take this guy off by being the mandatory for this long? I think that was way unfair. Way unfair. How you going to sit as a mandatory for a year and change, and then they just take you out like that, replace you like that? That's crazy. But it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is what it is. Sergey Lipinyev is walking inside the ring. You already know. Great 140 pounder. Sergey Lipinyev got himself in this position for the IBF interim. This is going to be the IBF mandatory to the winner of Sergey, to, of the winner of Earl Spence and Daniel Swift Garcia. That's why this is an important fight. This one thing about this this one thing about um gruesome um um Sergey Lipinyev's trainer, and this is what I see. I want my training camp to be about me. Gruesome, he wants to, he's a trainer. Look how he's dressing. He's not with, with with the other team and their colors or whatever. Well, they're not dressing all in colors right now. But I know for sure. I know for sure. That will look that it, 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 he it's more about him than his fighters, in my opinion, because he wants to he 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 wants he wants the spotlight. Why you just don't dress in trainer suits? How about that? And let it and not not and let it not be about you, but the fighter. So people could be like, oh yo, you see how he dresses and stuff like that. <laughs> Miguel, what's good? Moonshine, salute. I was just watched yesterday's video. I got a notification you was live. Yes, yes, yes. I wasn't going to go live right now, to be honest. But, because for real, I was so hyped about the Sergey Lipinyev versus Abdul Kokorov. I was way more hyped about that. But it is what it is. Costio, Costio, um, Clayton just, um, he just got notified like four to three weeks to fight this fight. Sergey Lipinyev didn't even know his opponent to like two two weeks before. 
My condolences go out to, to the, Dinkin, the Dinkins family. Joyce Dinkins, the wife of David Dinkins, first African-American mayor in New York City. Got my Jack Daniels ready. <laughs> oh, man. You know how we do it, man. Live commentary. Any for the wedding. Is this fight for the winner of Spence versus Danny? Yeah, it's supposed to be IBF interim. Um, again, Abdul Kokorov been sitting as a mandatory. Was sitting as a mandatory since March 2019. This was supposed to be the fight. Matter of fact, matter of fact, since the WBC and the IBF gave Earl Spence a voluntary bout because of his injury, that's what that's the reason why we we, we seen Danny Swift Garcia. Because the Danny Swift Garcia fight was not for the immediate uh, uh, mandatory. The Dennis from Garcia, Earl Spence, that's a voluntary from Earl Spence because he would need to, he'd need to fight his mandatory, but they gave him a, it worked out good for PBC. It worked out good for, for, for Dennis from Garcia, but he would need to fight in the media mandatory after this fight. And the winner was supposed to be Sergey Lipinet, uh, uh, and Abdul Kokorov, but Abdul Kokorov been sitting as a mandatory since March, 2019. I think his man is messed up what the IBF did, but the IBF is very, very strict. If the IBF wasn't, didn't have a consistent way, a uh, way of being so strict and not giving a damn if you were a superstar or not, he couldn't get the visa in. They look at it like that's your, 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 um, um, your responsibility. He couldn't get the visa in, so now they they pick um, Castillo um, Clayton to fight Sergey Lipinet. Sergey Lipinet wins. That's going to be the next fight for Earl Spence or the win of Earl Spence and Danny Swift Garcia. And that's why I said for a long time, I said it last summer. I did a video last summer when I'm debating about people. Oh, no, you don't want Earl Spence to fight Bud Crawford. I said that fight is not going to happen. No time soon. It's not going to happen. No time soon. I said it was. I said last year it was not going to happen. in Twenty twenty and might not happen in twenty twenty one. It probably, probably happened in twenty twenty two. I said that twenty twenty two, it might happen because he will have to fight the media mandatory of the IBF. And for the people out there that be like, oh no, this one trumps the the mandatory. It doesn't because once you get a unification bout, which was um Sean Porter, then you will have to face your mandatory. Remember, you got to face your mandatory within the twelve months. And the IBF don't play. But he got injured. And this is why the IBF got this as an interim. Interim. I, I, I like saying interim. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Clayton versus Sergey Lipinier. I, man, I think it's going to be a short night. Short night. No, no man could have prepared for this one. Um, Clayton could have prepared for Sergey Lipinier, who is a, is a great professional. Uh, power punch. Here we go. Round one. This is Sergey Lipinier. Yeah, this is this is Clayton. Here we go. You already know. You already know how I score it. Um, effective aggression, clean, effective punches, ring generalship, pace, defense, defense. Here we go. They're in the middle of the ring right now. They're in the middle of the ring, ladies and gentlemen. Smash the like button. Smash the like button. Y'all already know this is punch on boxing. AKA Mr. Moo shot himself. Let's go in the middle of the ring. Nothing. Nobody's throwing no punches. Nobody's throwing nothing. Here we go. May, could it be a short night for Sergey Lipinier? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you like this: both men couldn't prepare for these for 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 for, for each other. Sergey Lipinier yeah, knew his opponent two weeks before, so he only had like one one week of training for this guy. You could sort of say on the wind down of his training. You already know the last the last week of the training camp. They don't train. You know, they just stay. You know, um, keep their heart rate up, sweat, sweat, jump rope, shadow box, 
and things of that nature. So he couldn't even prepare for this guy. He's, oh, both of them connected on two jobs right there, over right there in the middle of the ring. They're trying to test each other. They don't know each other. They never talk to each other and things of that nature. They don't know nothing about each other. So here we go. This is the first experience they know about one another. Let's go. They're in the middle of the ring. They both testing each other with a couple of things. Here we go. A circle living your hit tap that body. Let's go. Come on. It's kind of boring out here. I don't know. I don't know. Jab to the body, block by the elbow. Here we go. Jab, nothing. Mm, jab by Clayton, nothing. Jab, nothing. Hit the glove. We go pawn, pawn, jab, nothing. Here we go, fing by circle lipping. Yeah, here we go with the right, nah, nothing. Didn't connect. Uh, jab, hit the glove, nothing. Jab, hit the glove, nothing. Here we go. Nothing is happening. There's a minute and 15 seconds left into the fight. Into the fight. Uh, here we go. Uh, jab, nothing by Clinton, nothing. Let's go. You're boring the people out here. Here we go. Go to the body by separate lipping. Yeah, but block by the elbow, nothing. Here we go. Uh, jab, nothing. By circle lipping yet, yeah. jab by Clayton, nothing. Here we go, jab connected by Clayton. Here we go, two, 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 two. Let's go. Clean and effective blows. I want to see something. Ring general shit pace. This is a feel out round because they don't know each other. Just this is a feel out round. Here we go, jab to the body by circle lipping yet, yeah, right there. Caught him a little bit, but no. Oh, jab to the body by um by um Clayton. Here we go. Forty seconds left into the first round. Uh, hit him with the nice with the nice left hook. Check left hook. Got him good. Fade him with a jab, and then boom, King follow up with a left hook. Here we go, jab by Clayton, nothing. Uh, uh, right to the body, bye, 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 by circuit lipping, yeah. Okay. No, uh, try to go on the inside, bobbing and weaving on the inside, nothing. Let's go. Here we go, jab. That one, that one went through the glove. That one went through the glove. Here we go, here we go. It's 15 seconds left. Who's gonna steal this round? Who's gonna steal this round? Woo wait, you already know smash the light button. Here we go. Jab to the body, jab to the body, bye bye. Um, um by circle living yeah, jab to the body by Clinton. Here we go. You do what I do, I do what you do. Anything you could do, I could do better. I could do anything better than you. Yes, I can. No, I can. Let's go. I'll give that circle lipping yet. Yeah. It's a fill out round. Uh-huh. Captain Africa. What's good? All right. <clears throat> That's what I'm going to start doing right there. Oh. Round. 10, 9, 1. Round. Oh. Well, well, well. Shout out to everybody out there, man. Shout out. God bless each and every one of y'all. Hope you're having a good weekend going into Sunday. Here we go. Round two. Round two. This is Circuit Lipping. Yeah, this is Clayton. Let's go. Are oh, they going to pick up the pace? Let's see. Here we go. Jab by uh, um, Clayton. Nothing. Uh, let's go. Here we go. Here we go with the pressure by, by Circuit Lipping. Yeah, here we go. He connected on that wire right. Uh, uh, excuse me. Both of them connected on both jabs right there. Here we go. Let's see what Clayton gonna do. Oh, oh, all right. It looked like he's about, about to put his punches together. Here we go. Clayton connected on. I mean, I mean, um, Sergey Levin. Yeah, now he's putting up the pressure a little bit. Now he's putting up the pressure. Let's go. Jab by Clayton. Nothing. Here we go. Punch on boxing. They can't aim with the moonshine himself. Smash the light button. Jab by nothing. Nothing. Jab by Sergey Levin. Yeah, nothing. Here we go. Good, good, good jab by Clayton. Caught him on that one. Let's go. All right. Uh. Show right head on top of the head. Here we go. Nothing. Uh. Left by circle lipping, yeah, here we go. Now he's putting up the pressure right now to the body by circle lipping, yeah, let's go. Now to the body, let's go. Good one. That's what that, that one, you know, thing is shook him. Here we go to the body. Let's go. Okay, the samurai, circle lipping, yeah, wants to be the mandatory to the winner of Danny Soto Garcia versus Earl Spitz. Now, what you going to do? What you going to do? You got to send a big statement. You got to send a big statement for that fight so people could call that fight and say this fight is going to be kind of interesting when you're a little small for, 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 for Earl Spitz. I don't like the, I don't like the, 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 the size, the range, and nothing like that. You're not going to do it. I think you're just too small of a walk away. But let's see what you're going to do. Let's see what you're going to do. Uh. Uh, jab by Clayton. Here we go. 5 3, 5 3, 5 3. This is Sir Gilipin. Yeah, this is Clayton. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. They're in the middle of the ring. They're in the middle of the ring. They're just looking at each other. you looking at me. I'm looking at you. you looking at me. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at uh, nothing. Here we go. I can't even see the referee. Here we go. Good. 
Good, no clenching, no nothing, no nothing. We don't even need a ref in the ring. He would go circle up in here with the pressure. He would go with the body shot right go. He would go clean and try to check with the left hook, nothing. Kind of wild. He would go jab to the body with the follow with the right. He would go follow with the right by, 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 by clanking. He would go A4, A4, A4. Uh. Uh, jab to the body by, 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 by circle living. Yeah, we got 55 seconds left into the round. Second round. Uh. Uh, they fitting each other. Nah. Faint it. Uh, fight again, faint again, nothing. Block by by Sir Gilipin yeah, with the right by by Clinton. He will go jab to the body. He will go jab to the body by 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 um by Sir Gilipin yeah, That's five ten, five ten. Jab to the body by Clinton. Five ten, five ten, five ten. Matter of fact, it's supposed to be four ten, but here we go. Ten ten punches co uh, um connected by Sir Gilipin yeah, and five by um Clinton. Here we go. Sir Gilipin yeah, is controlling the pace. He's on the pressure, controlling the pace, itself of aggression, and that's the way we 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 um. Block by 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 Clayton. That's the way we, we score bouts. Uh jab again to the body, jabs again to the body by Clayton. Here we go. 11 to 6, 11 to 6, 11 to 6. Oh, to the body by Sir Gilipin. Yeah, go work that body, work that body, work that body. Oh, good, good jab, good jab, good jab by Clayton. Good power jab right there. Uh jab to the body by by, by Sir Gilipin. Yeah, he we go. 7 to 13, 7 to 13. Jab by Clayton. Here we go. At the end of the second round, we're gonna give that to woo. Uh, Sergey Lipin, yeah, the samurai, the samurai. Mm -hmm. Don't do it like that. So y'all already know when the scorecard comes. <laughs> Yo, what's happening to the, the Dominican fighters, man? Y'all got y'all got the televised fight. Y'all gotta show up. ¿Qué pasa aquí, coño? ¿Qué qué está pasando aquí? Vamos a ganar, algo. Hey, what happened here? That last fight. No good. No good. No good. Está pasando. No está comiendo plato no maduro esta gente. Going to the third round. Let's go. Circuit Living Yet versus Clayton. Castillo Clayton. Here we go. Here we go. He's putting under pressure again. On his side. Now he got him next to the rope. Circuit Living Yet got his opponent next to the rope. Here we go. Jab by Clayton. Nothing. nothing. Didn't hit the, he just hit the glove. Here we go. Jab by Circuit Living Yet. Hit the glove. Here we go. So, um, Clayton hit the jab. Hit the glove. Uh-huh. Y'all just want to punch the glove with the face. Let me know what y'all got. Uh, uh, went to the body, but. Hit the elbow. Here we go. Hit the elbow again. Here we go. That's a, that's a, that's a good left by Circle Living. Yeah, to the body. Straight to the left by the body. To the body. Here we go. Let's go. They're in the middle of the ring, ladies and gentlemen. Smash the like button. You already know, man. This is Punch Run Boxing, aka Mr. Moonshot himself. Let's go. Let's go. Smash the like button. Went right. Hit the elbow. Hell, that's going to hurt too. Uh, jab by Clayton. Here we go. Jab. Hit the glove by Circle Living. Yeah. Uh, they're in the middle of the ring now. They're in the middle of the ring. Got to put some combination. I want to see some combination by, by Circle Living. Yeah. Here we go, wide right by circle, living yeah, nothing. Caught the shoulder. I want to see, oh, got him in the rose, got him in the rose. I see that little check cut, but it was a little, little pity, titty, pity pass, that titty pat, but no, it's not pity pat. Let's go. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Where? A minute and 50 seconds left into the fight, into the third round. Here we go, go to the body, blocked by, by, by Clinton's elbow. Uh. Okay, good right by Clinton. Here we go, got him in the corner. Here we go, good body shot by, 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 by the samurai. Let's circle, living yeah. Here we go. He's putting up the pressure. He's putting, ooh, go right by. Go right by, 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 by the samurai. All right, he's putting up the pressure right now. Putting up the pressure. Jab, nothing. Here we go. Now he in the ropes again. Got him in the ropes again. Come on, Sergey. Let me, I want to see some footwork. I want to see that you could do something versus a guy like uh, Earl Spence. You got to give me a good performance. You got to give me a Make me a believer. Make me a believer. Here we go with the uppercut. Nothing connected. Here we go. Good jab by, 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 by Clayton. Uh, here we go. Here we go, a minute and four and, and 12 seconds left into the third round. Here we go, jab to the body by Samurai, Sergey Lipin. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. The thing is, Sergey Lipin, yeah, don't know who the hell he's fighting. None of them. So, so I think he's just, it's more than just one, two, three fill out rounds. I think after this round, then he got to pick up the pace. He got to pick up the pace and um, put together these type of punches. Here we go. Mix them punches up. Let's go. And Clinton, he got to go for it. Oh, good, good. I seen that good by, by Clinton right there. Five, four, five, four, five, four. Here we go. Faint, faint, nothing. Uh, here we go. Boom. No, boom. Here we go. Six, five, six, five, six, five. Both connected on the jabs right there. Here we go. 
He's putting on the pressure, putting on the pressure. Here we go. Got to throw it to the body. Oh, good left hook by the Samurai. So good living. Yeah, he got the that one. Did he get hurt on that one? Here we go. You got to put up the pressure, Samurai. Got to put up the pressure. I want to see the footwork. Here we go. Good, good, good counter by, by, by Clayton. Good counter right by Clayton. Here we go. A6, A6, A6. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Smash the like button. You already know this is punch from boxing, aka Mr. Mo. Woo! Shot himself. Here we go. Good check. Nothing. Uh. Good Bible we good defense. Good, good positioning by both men. Here we go. Eight, uh, eight seconds left. Let's go. Oh, good right by Clay. Oh, another good right by Clay. Go to the body. Here we go. Man, oh, I like that one. Uh -huh -huh. Man, I think I'm going to give that a clean. I don't give a damn. But at the end of the day, man, he was working on, working on the outside. It could easily go, easily go, easily go to, to, I'm going to give that one to Clayton, though. I'm going to give that one a clean. I'm going to get a one a lady. One the third round. Nah, nah, he did good that last round, especially. It was so close. And then when he put those two punches together in the end, and he was connecting those sneaky punches. Those are the punches. I seen two counter shots that he connected in between those shots that probably the judges in another, in another section might, might not see. Might not see. But I saw. Here we go. Here we go. Circuit never with a good right, with a good wide right. Now you got to put the pressure now. Now you feel it. Now, now all the fill out rounds. Now you already know who you in the ring with. The sweat is running. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Put the pressure up. Here we go. Jab to the body right there. Well, I mean, straight right to the body. Here we go. Slip. Try to go to the body right now. Got to go. Got to go to the body. The hell will fall. Here we go. Oh, good. Oh, boom. Oh, boom. Uppercut by my circle. Yeah, go to the body. To the body. Here we go. Clayton caught him a little short uppercut right there. Let's go. But it's smothered. It's smothered, though. It's 5151. Circle every is putting up the pressure. Right now, here we go. They in the ropes again. Let's go. So we put them punches together, throw some combination because they look good. Here we go. Go right, good counter right by Clayton. Here we go. I'm not going to go out that easy. I ain't going to go that easy. Nobody believe in me. Nobody know my name. But you know what? I'm going to make something of myself today. I am going to make my something of myself today. People going to know my name. And it's not Adam, Cl uh, Adam Clayton, Powell Clayton, whatever that is. I am Clayton. Here we go. That short, you see that short uppercut right there? Boom, right there. Caught him. Caught him. Here we go. Straight right by Clayton. Clayton has got this little sneaky uppercut when he comes. Comes in, I like that. I like that. I don't think that a lot of people seen that. It's so short and it's so nice that probably the judges ain't seen it. We're gonna go right by Sergey Lipping yet. Ooh, baby, let's go. Jab to the jab, jab to the body by um um, um Clayton. I'm going 646464. But the power punches is coming from um um Sergey Lipping yet. Here we go. He's back in the ropes, back in the rope. Let me see if you're gonna pivot out of there. Here we go, go right. Nothing, not connected. Good range, good reflexes by Clayton. Here we go. Oh, baby. Let's go. Oh, got him with the left hook. Got left hook to the body. Let's go. Clean a strong dude, a strong dude. Huh, but it take more than muscles. And boxing muscles is nothing. You remember Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz, the first fight? Nothing. It's all about skills. It's all about skills. You see that sneaky stuff? Here we go. Good. Good love by circuit lipping yet. Here we go. Nine four, nine four, nine four, nine four. Um, right to the body. Um, um landed on the arm. Um, Clinton's elbow. Oh, you see that counter? You see that counter? Good counter. Good counter check hook by Clayton. Like that. Like that. I like that. Here we go. Connect with the jab. Oh, another counter. Uh, another counter right. I like the countering. I like the counter, but he's smothering you. Oh, man. I like. Oh, boom, boom by Clayton. Oh, I seen that. I seen that. I seen that good short hooks and uppercuts on the inside. I like that. Stop letting you on these tracks. Here we go. I'm seeing it. Oh, good jab by Clayton. I'm seeing it. I am seeing it. I'm seeing it. Look at Sergey Lipin. Yeah, he got him all. He got him resetting now. But I think that it was so short, and it's so oh, go right by Sergey Lipin. Yeah, it was so short that I don't think that all the judges see that type of work. T Power. That's why it's good as stay rangy. He would go good right by Sergey by, by Clayton. Good right by Clayton. He would go man. The last minute of the round, but you already know, man. Who controls the three minute end of the rounds? Clayton was controlling the three minute end of, uh, of the rounds, but that Sergey Lipin. Yeah, was controlling the three minute end of the. Intervals of a round. Here we go. He came back, hit on top of the head. He would go, oh, man, 11, 11, 11, 11. Damn it. Man, it's, that one was a hard one, y'all. That one was a hard one because, of uh, again, when it's close in the punching count, then you have to see who controlled the three-minute intervals around. Sergey Lipinia controlled the three-minute in in of a round. 
he's on the defense, but it was great. It was great the way that Clinton was connecting on those type of, oh, man, it was a good one. Uh, damn. On that one, I'm going to give it to um, Sergey Because he was controlling the pace, ring generalship, effective aggression, but Clayton landed great punches on that one. So that's a swing round to me. That's a swing round to me. Round number five, round number five. Here we go. Round number five. Here we go. Good, good counter um, jab by Clayton. Here we go. <clears throat> right block by Clayton. Jab by Clayton. I just think that that, that circle at is just going to be too small for, for Earl Spence. He's just going to be too small. He's not going to get, he's not going to get into, into uh, so that's why I really wanted to do Kokorov because Abdul Kokorov is tall and, rain, and, and ranging still undefeated. And he can use his toes and things. Oh, good right. Oh, good left. Bye bye by Clayton. Good left. Good left by Clayton. He will go go right, right, nothing. He will go another left by Clayton. Remember, the third round was a swing round. Calo Rosado. Good looking out. He will go body shot. Good body shot. Good right. Here we go by circle lipping. Yeah, putting the pressure up. Let's go. Good looking out, Carlos Carlos Rosado. Good looking out. Just. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. I appreciate it, my brother. I appreciate it. Smash the like button, ladies and gentlemen. Smash the like button. Let's go. Let's go. This is Clayton. This is Circle Living. Yeah, we got a minute. Here we go. Go to the body by Circle Living. Yeah, three, 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 three. Let's go. A minute and 45 seconds left. Let's go. They in the middle of the ring right now. Nothing. He's behind him. We got him in the, and he got him in the corner right now. This is Punch Run Boxing, aka Mr. Moonshine himself. Live commentary. The best of the business, baby. Here we go. Good jab by, by Circle Living. Yeah, got him in the rolls. What are you going to do? You got to put them punches together, Circle Living. Yeah, that one at a time. To, oh, good right by. Um, um, Clayton Powell, I say Clayton Powell, but because he'll come, <laughs> Clayton, let's go. Working on the outside, working on the outside, I wish he'd come on the inside, good block, bye bye, hit him in the, in the elbows, nothing connected on the body shots, here we go, jab by Clayton, here we go, oh, one, two by Clayton, one, two by Clayton, I'm going to tell you like this, circle living here is just too small for, 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 for the elites, I'm going to tell you like this, it's not going to work, you got to throw more punches together, if you haven't, if you're taking this guy, Clayton, I don't know. I don't know, Sergey. I don't know. I think he's too small for, 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 here we go. Go right by, by, by Sergey Lippin. Yeah. I think he's too small for, and he doesn't throw enough punches uh, uh, versus uh, Earl Spence. Oh, go right by, 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 by Clayton. Here we go. Five, eight, 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 five, eight, five. Let's go. Uh, come on. 40 seconds left. Clayton is doing real good, though. Clayton is doing real good. Got to throw more punches, Sergey. Come on, Samurai. Samurai. Jin. Good block, good block. Oh, go right by Clinton. And to the body. Oh, to the body. Let's get it by my circle. Yeah, he was going now. Eight, nine, eight, nine, eight. And jab by Clinton. Let's go. 20 seconds. Go back to the body by Clinton. Here we go. Jab. Nothing connected. Uh, jab. Nothing connected. Let's go. Let's go. Right by, by, by Clinton. Nothing. Let's go. They in the middle of the ring. They in the middle of the ring. Here we go. Jab by nothing. Nothing. Nothing by Sergey Lippin. Yeah, here we go. Arm too short to box with God. Here we go. Oh, good by Clayton. <laughs> oh, he hits him with the counter. You got to follow it up, Clayton. You got to follow it up. You're turn, you turning him. You're turning him. That one got Sergey. That one got Sergey. Let's go. We're going to give it to Clayton. Let's go. We're going to give it to Clayton. Let's go. He's here to work. He's here to work. He's here to work. Damn, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Mark Nash, what's good, my brother? What's good? I behave super strict. They mandate saying you must be between 10 pounds of the weight on fight day. Yeah, they real strict. Punch always got that leg. Kind of good looking now, my brother. Good looking now. Here we go. Round six. Round six. My fault. I ain't checked the, the, the comment. Everybody's comment, but I'm going to check it. Here we go. Both of them connected on the jab. Let's go. Sergey Levin yeah, versus, Clay, versus Custody Clayton. Here we go. They both don't know each other. Boy, they had short, short, you know. Um. Oh, go one, two by Clayton. Here we go. 
Here we go. Now he's putting his punches together. He's putting his punches together. I seen that they follow up the left right there. Jab by Clayton. Jab, nothing. Here we go. Right by Clayton. Here we go. Go to the body by circle. Let me get. Here we go. Go right by Clayton. Oh my God. It's going to be an upset, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be an upset. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you like this Clayton is doing what he needs to do. He's doing what he needs to do. And he's looking strong. He's working from the outside in. Uh, under pressure, under pressure. I'm telling you like this. I don't know about Sir Galipian yet today. I don't know. It's the bubble jinx. Jab by Clayton. It's the bubble jinx. Uh, it's the bubble jinx. Let's go. Boom. It's the bubble jinx. Let's go. Then the bubble's going to pop that bubble. Who's in the, the guys, this is the bubble. Who's going to pop? Who's going to pop? Who's bubble? Let's go. Uh, here we go. Oh, good, good. Right by Sir Yes, to the body. Oh, good. Upper cut by Clayton. Here we go. Four, 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 four. Four, four. You're going to put the punches together. Here we go. Oh, jab to the body. Bye, 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 Sir Galipian. Yeah. Here we go. Jab by Clayton. Five, 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 five. A minute and 45 seconds left into the sixth round. Let's go. Let's go. Good luck by, by the Samurai. Sir Galipian. Yeah, they in the middle of the ring now. They in the middle of the ring. You looking at me. I'm looking at you. You looking at me. I'm looking at you. Here we go. Let me throw. Who you going to throw? Fate me. I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm, I got something for you. I'm going to counter. Anything you throw me, I'm going to counter. Anything you throw me, I'm going to counter. Let's go. Let's go. Who's locked and loaded? Ready to counter. Who's locked and loaded? Ready to counter. Let me go. Oh, uh, let me see. Uh, here we go, jab. Good, good for work. Here we go. Go right by Sergey Lippin. Yeah. Uh, something's happening. He's keep going, going like this. Something's happening to his arm. I don't want to hear no damn excuses. I don't want to hear no type of Lomachenko excuse. I don't want to hear none of that. Let's go. We're in the middle of the ring right now. Let's go. This is five seven five seven. Oh, good count, good right, and then good counter by 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 Clayton. I'm saying like this. Clayton is having a good counter by going backwards. Good. I love I love guys that know how to punch when they when they're going backwards. Good countering. Good. Good sense of uh, uh, uh focus. Here we go. Um, jab by Clayton and block, block by the glove. Block by the glove again. Let's go. Woo! Smash the like button, ladies and gentlemen. Smash the like button. Here we go to the. Here we go to the body. Here we go by circle. Let me get to the body with the last one. Touch the uh, touch the elbow. Nothing connected. Oh, go right by circle. Let me Oh, good luck by circle. Let me Oh, baby. Let's go. Thirty-five seconds left into the sixth round. Come on, you gotta pick up the pace. Uh, um, um, Clayton, you gotta pick up the pace. Oh, good uppercut by Clayton. Good uppercut, uppercut by Clayton. Uh, 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 boom, jab each other right there. Boom, jab by Clayton. There we go to the body by circle. Let me here we go, 14 and 9, 14 and 9, let's go. This is Sergey. this is Clayton. Jab, nothing. Here we go. To the body, black by, by Clayton's elbow. Let me go, what you gonna do, Clayton? What you gonna do? You got 15 seconds left to the round. Let's go. Are you gonna are you gonna win this round by Sergey Lippin? Sergey Lippin? Oh, go one, two by Clayton. Go one, two, go one, two by Clayton. Here we go, 14, 11, 14, 11. Three seconds left to the round. Oh, good short uppercut by Clayton. Here we go to the body by Sergey Lippin. Yeah, Sergey Lippin, yeah, won that round, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm gonna tell you like this, Clayton, yo, I know probably he's tired. Probably hasn't seen the. He, he hasn't been with a fighter like this, but I'm going to say it like this. Clayton has a chance. Let me see what the trainer, let me see what the type of instruction you're going to give him. You got a chance to beat this guy. You got a chance to beat this guy. Get your composure. Get your, get, get um, um, the conditioning got to be right. Breathe. Slow. Let's go. You got to put these punches together. I see something good about Clayton that he could, that he could do well. I see something. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Won't give that to <laughs> won't give that to Lippin yet though. <laughs> Woo -wee! I just don't think that the re the judges from every corner is gonna see the the work the counters when when uh, um you know on the inside so short it could look smothered. Here we go one two by circuit lipping yet. Here we go we on round seven round seven halfway already halfway already. Let's go circuit lipping yet won the first the first half of the fight. But remember, these fighters don't know each other. They, they uh, um, Sergey Lipinian yeah, already knew two weeks before who's his opponent, so he only had to train one week because the last week we already know they don't train the last week. He'll go good jab by by Sergey Lipinian, yeah. so he don't know Clayton. Clayton don't know Lipinian, yeah, but 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 Clayton had four weeks knowing his opponent. I think that's what he says. The Showtime got a tie, not me. But it's seen the work that I'm watching. That's what it is. Both connected on them jabs. Let's go. 
Four one four one for Clayton. I mean, I mean, Sergey Lipin yet. This is Clayton Lipin yet. Clayton four one. We count every punch. God damn it, y'all already know how I score it. You already know clean, effective blows. Rain generalship pace. Who controls the three minute intervals of a round? And then we got defense when it's very, very close. We gotta implement the defense because that's where you judge a damn fight. Who controls it? Pace. Let's go. Who's controlling the pace right now? They're doing a good job. I believe that. That Clayton is dedicated to working from the outside and countering when he's coming inside. A hey, yo, pause. Oh, uh, body by circle. Let me yeah, follow with the left hook. Oh, uh, here we go. Faint. Nothing. Here we go. Got him with the faint. Here we go. Boom. I'm oh, trying to hit that short uppercut. Nothing landed. Here we go. Come on, Clayton. You haven't thrown no punches. Let's go. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. They ain't going to give you this one. Here we go. Go right by by Clayton. They ain't going to give you. You got to take this. You got to take this. You ain't nobody. You're just a feeling. For them, you're nobody just a filler for him. He will go got good body by circle living yet. He will go seven to two, seven to two, seven to two. Uh, uh, jab. Oh, right. Ah, eight, three. Uh, jab to the body by by um by circle living yet. Go right by by Clayton. Go right by Clayton. Go right by Clayton. Let's go. Eight, four, eight, four, eight, four, eight, four, eight, four. Here we go. Go right. Good jab. Uh, by circle living yet. 11 to four, 11 to four. Jab by Clayton. Uh, let's go. Uh, jab again by Clayton. But remember, you already know that power punches is primary. Jab is secondary. Good check. Look, uh, um, uppercut. Here we go. Boom to the body by, and then and then, and then it's a jab by Clayton. Here we go. 12 8, 12 8, 12, 12 8, ladies and gentlemen. Jab, nothing. Here we go. Go right, go right, go right again. Go right again by Clayton. Go right, go right again. 10 12, 10 12. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, good jab by Clinton. Oh, go right, go right by by circle lipping. Yeah, go right by circle lipping. Yeah, here we go. 15 seconds left. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Boom, boom, he's under attack. Body, body in attack. Boom, he's in attack. Here we go. Double of um, one, two. Did it miss by Clinton? Hit the glove. Let's go. Uh, jab. Uh, five seconds left. A jab. Here we go. Bye bye bye. Circle living yet. Uh, go with the right by circle living yet. Here we go. Circle living yet. Won that round. Clayton, man, you slowing down, but I can see that if he puts his punches together, he pressures circle living yet. He could do something good. But come on, you could do something good. I can see you could do something good. Mm, mm, mm. Sir is pulling away. He's pulling away. <sighs> Let's go. Uh, love and hate was good. Rap star, rap star was good. Boxing history made was good. Captain Africa was good. Smash the like button. Y'all already know. Let's go. Round eight, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Round eight. Y'all already see my scorecard is right there. You already know, man. I count every score. I count every punches. I try to do the best I can for you all. Let's go. Jab by Clayton. Let's go. Two minutes and 45 seconds left to the round. Here we go. Go to the body. Here we go. Boom, boom. I circle living yet. Yeah. By circle living yet yeah, to the body. Here we go. Boom. Counter. Good. Jab. Right. By circle living yet. Yeah. Uh, got nothing. Jab by Clayton. I got to put those punches together, Clayton. Can't wait for the... He's not throwing enough punches. So you just can't wait to counter. You got to throw more punches. You got to create something. It's about creating right now. Let's create something. Both bo both men. Hey, yo, pause. Let's create something. Uh, now they jab the jabber. Jabber the jabber, jabber the jabber. Uh, jab, nothing Um, blocked by the glove. Faint. Jab by Clayton. Give me a couple of feints. You can't, I, I want to see Clayton work, try to try to come into the inside. Try to put the pressure up. Try to put the pressure up. Oh, go right by Clayton. Go right by Clayton. Go right by Clayton. And maybe those punches, those punches that's landing, are taking into effect because oh, go right by Clayton. Good, 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 good. Clayton got the reach. You got the reach. Oh, body by uh, uh um straight 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 jab to the body by Clinton. Here we go. Five, 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 five. A minute and 35 seconds left. Let's go. They in the middle of the ring right now. Again, now he's gonna put pressure on the ball. Now he's on the rope. He's on the rope. Here we go. Good short uppercut. Good, good counter by Clinton right there. Oh, oh, good counter by Clinton right there. Here we go. Go left. Nothing. Black by the glove. Nothing. Here we go. Nothing. Here we go. Straight to the body right there by Clinton. Here we go. Go right by Clinton. Good, good, good punch by, by Clinton. Good jab by Sergey Lipin. Yeah, what you gonna do, Sergey? Uh, go to the body. Nothing, nothing. Two, arms too short. 
good range by 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 um Clayton. Fame. Uh, nothing. Let's go. A minute left into the eighth round, ladies and gentlemen. Body, nothing. He's too flat footed right now, Sergey Lipin. Yeah, too flat footed. He will go, but connect on that right. Connect on the right. He no, 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 my fault. That was that was Clinton. He will go connect on the right by Clinton. Uh, uh, again, body by by by, by Clinton. Here we go. Oh, oh, check left. I mean, left hook, nothing. Too wild. Oh, to the body. Good short uppercut by Clinton. I'm telling you, dude, that short uppercut is, is, is connecting throughout the fight. I'm seeing it. I don't know if the judges are seeing it. Here we go. Both connected on them jabs like this. Let's go. 10 12, 10 12, 10 12. Let's go. Let's put the pressure up. Let's go. The fans want to see something special. Or we're going to see another upset in the bubble. Or we're going to see another upset in the bubble. Let's go. Uh huh. 24 seconds left. Let it go, Lippin. Yeah. Let your hands go. Let your arms go. Let's say that's too stiff because you got to go on cuffed up. Here we go. Good body. Bye bye, Sergey Lippin. Yet on that one. Good body. 15 seconds left to the round. 15 seconds left to the round. Who's going to win this round to go? Right by Sergey Lippin. Yeah. Here we go. Try to counter by Clayton. Then it connected. 12, 12, 12, 12. Let's go. Let's go. Win the five seconds. Here we go. Good luck by, 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 by Clayton. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to give it to Clayton. God damn it. Smash the like button. Let's go. Oh, please don't go. Don't go. Don't go away. Hey, hey, hey. I love you so. The minute you walk out that door. <laughs> Get that last round of um, Clinton. 77, 75, 77, 75, I'm lipping you. Shmine, I'm still loud and in. That's what I want. Round number nine, round number nine. Ooh, baby, let's go. Uh, this is Pawn Drum Boxing, aka Mr. Mo. Who shot himself? Live commentary with Sergey Living at versus Costio Clayton. We're on round nine. This is oh good jab by Clayton. Here we go. This is Clayton. This is Sergey Lipin yet for the IBF inch. Who win this is a mandatory position, an immediate mandatory position to fight the win of Danny Swift Garcia. Earl Spence, December 5th. A pay-per-view. Pay-per-view. I'm sounding like Vargas from the PBC. They got or pay per view, ladies and gentlemen. I <laughs> said, Man, come on, stop. talk regular. Here we go. Oh, good, good, right by Bob. Oh, good, jab by, by Clay. You gotta put it. Let's go. Move forward, man. Don't move back. You think you want to outbox this guy, huh? Or you want to win? Good, two body shots, straight body by 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 by, by Sergey, straight punches by Sergey. Um, I mean. He's under attack now. Sergey's under attack. Let's go. Jab. Under attack. Under attack. The samurai. The samurai with the body punch right there. I saw it with the right. Here we go. Nothing. Nothing. It went to the body again. Nothing. The samurai. Samurai. Sergey Lippin. Yeah. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Uh. To the body again. Left. To the body. To, to, uh. Jab. By Sergey Lippin. Yeah. Here we go. Six four. Six four. Six four. A minute and 30 seconds left. Let's go. The ninth round. You backing up too much. Oh, good, good, good counter by. Oh, good counter to the body by 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 Clinton. He would go, but nobody go. A lot of people ain't gonna watch that. You you gotta. Oh, good. Go, go right by Sergey Lippin. Yeah. He can put the pressure. Good, good, and good counter by 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 um Clinton. Here we go. Six eight six eight. He put in the pressure of his effective aggression. Effective aggression. Get him on the ropes again. He would go good right by Sergey by 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 Clinton. Here we go. Boom to the body by by circular. Yeah, here we go. Probably touch the, the, the um the the glove on that the elbow on that one too. Uh here we go. One, two, not connected. Uh to the right. Ooh, go up a cut. Ooh, go up a cut by, by circular. I mean 10, 10, 7. Here we go. Go right by by by, by Clinton. Here we go. 10, 3. Ten, I mean 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8. Clinton, circular. Yeah, we got 45 seconds left to the round. Let's go. I mean 40 seconds to the round. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. This is punch roll boxing. Hey, Mr. Moonshot. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Entertain me. Entertain us. Let's go. Jab by Clinton. 10, 9, 10, 9, 10, 9. You already know, man. Circular. 
yeah, it's control of the pace. It's control of the pace. Effective aggression. Go right, uh, go right uh, uh, to the body. He will go, go right in the uh, head shot. He will go, good jab. I said, yeah, okay. Put the punches together. Put the punches together. Let's go. Come on, Clayton. You got to do something. You can't throw these single punches. You, you want to win this fight. You want to be in a position. Nobody knows you right now. You got to let everybody know you. Let pop the bubble in the bubble. Pop the bubble in the bubble. Let's go. Go, go, uh, go right. He will go bye bye, Clayton. Let's go. Let's. I'm telling you, let, let the hands go. Let the hands go. Both connected right there. One on the top, one on the bottom. No homo. Oh, get, yeah, damn. Bro, right. 15 or 13, but we're going to give it a circuit lip. And yeah, because he controlled the three minute intervals of a round, he put the pressure up, power punches put together. Good, good. We're going to do the circuit lip. And yeah, but Clinton is doing real good too, but he's just not doing enough to win the rounds. And he got a good chance. He got a good chance. Now that's gonna be the song when somebody get knocked out. <laughs> no, somebody get knocked out. We're gonna see boom, 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 boom. So tell me what you gonna do with her hand nowhere to run. Death is come for you, death is come for you. What you gonna do with her hand nowhere to run? <laughs> That's what we're going to do. When somebody putting the pressure up, when somebody putting the pressure, we're going to see boom, 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 boom. Also, what you want, I'm going to do with her in the way to ride. Death will come for you. Death comes for you. What you going to do with her in the way to ride. Death will <laughs> That's what going to do. Let's go. Double the jab, he go. Connected. Jab by Clayton. All righty then. Let's go. In the middle of the ring. In the middle of the ring, good jab, good jab by Clayton. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Put the punch count is going up. That's what I'm talking about. The, the rate. Let's go. You gotta throw more punches. You gotta throw more punches. Here we go. Both connected right there. Boom. Uh, right by circle. Let me yeah, nothing. Here we go. Uh jab by bye bye by Clayton. Nothing. Now hit him with the body. That would that, that, that one did connect it. Here we go slip, slip those punches. Uh uh. Not to hit the elbow. Here we go. Good by circle. Let me yeah. Try to go to the body by Clayton. Nothing. Here we go, sir. Let me get the samurai. What you gonna do? What you gonna do, samurai? Samurai, what you gonna do? Are you gonna put you put yourself in position to get the the the, the Earl Spence fight? IBF mandatory, huh? Here we go. Jab to the body by Clinton. Here we go. Three, three, six, three, six, three, six. One, two, one, two. That's what you're gonna talk about. Now keep going, Clinton. Just don't 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 don't, don't like love and, and take a picture of your work. Good body work by by by, by good jab by Sergey Sergey Living. Yeah, here we go. Jab to the body by 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 um Clinton, nothing. Um right, I mean left, nothing. Here we go left by circle yet, yeah, nothing. Block, let's go. Put the pressure up, Lizzie. Uh right, nothing. Uh jab by circle yet. Yeah, here we go. A6, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Jab by 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 circle yet yeah, to the body, nothing. Good race, getting out the way by by getting out the way. Good race by 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 Clinton. Uh Right by Clinton. Yeah, boy. Here we go. Good, good jab. Good. Both of them collect on the jab. Go right by circle. Yeah, here we go. TNA, 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 TNA. Uh, right by Clinton. Nothing. Uh, good jab by Clinton. Here we go. Good jab by Clinton. Here we go. 8, 11, 8, 11. We got 50 seconds left into the round. Into the 10th round. We're going to take this round. Who's going to take this round? Come on, Clinton. Put them puts together. You can win this if you ready. If you put, come on, step on the gas. Step on the gas. Step on the gas. Come on. Oh, both connected right there. Both connected right there. 12, 9, 12, 9, 12, 9. Come on. Oh, good body work by Sergey. I mean, by, by Clinton. Good ranging. Good getting out the way on that one. He's making him miss some punches, too. He's making him miss some punches. So good defense by, by, by Clayton. Uh. It's going to be a good outing, man. Go with the decision. It's going to be a good outing for Clayton, man. Getting a lot of people respect. Ooh, good right by Clayton. Getting a lot of people respect. Double the jab. They both connected. 15-10, 15-10, 15-10. All right. All right. All right. Boxing real well. He's boxing real well. Clayton is boxing good. Good to the body. Ooh, boom, boom by Circle Living. Yeah, here we go. Let me see who's going to win this round. Ah, we're going to give that to Clayton. We're going to give that to Clayton. <laughs> We're going to give that to Clayton right there. Where we at? Where we at? Boom. Hey. 
hey, Clinton could win these two rounds and it could land in a, in, in a draw in my scorecard. Clean is doing a good job. And again, there's a swing round. I think it was the third round. I think it was the third round, which was close. I forgot what was the other one that said it was a swing round that could have gone to Clinton. So I could see right now, some, if some people have it a draw, I could see it. I could see it right now. But my score right now, 96 94. Here we go. We're going to 11th round, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to the 11th round. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, good job by Clinton. Good job by Clinton. Stop on the track. Oh, another good jab by Clayton. Good jab to the body by Clayton. Let's go, Clayton. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Jab by Clayton again. To the body by Clayton. That's what I'm talking about. Put the punches together in the circle. Let me get a jab, a jab to the body by, 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 by circle. Let me get on that one. Let's go. Another jab by Clayton. Good, good. Put the, 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 the work rate. High value punches. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Oh, uh, go right by circle. Let me get. Go right by circle. Let me get. Good, good jab to the body. Clayton, man. I like the way that Clayton is boxing. I like the way that Clayton is boxing, y'all. I like the way that Clayton is boxing. And this was no preparation, really, but by, by both men. Good work. Good work. Oh, good strong jab. Snap his head back. Yikes. Good, good. This is eight to two. Eight to two. Oh, go right by circle living yet on that one. Uh. Oh, good left by circle living yet on that one. Good left by circle living yet. Living yet. Should have used that pivot, Clinton, and get out the way and then shoot him with the right. Here we go. Go right by circle living yet. Shoot the pivot. Don't abandon your uppercut. Do not abandon your uppercut. Don't abandon your uppercut on the inside, Clinton. When he comes, you go. Oh, here we go. Good, 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 good. Circle living. Yeah. Here we go. Circle living. Yeah. The samurai. I don't know if something's wrong with his arms. He, he's not throwing enough punches. This is just him. Uh, here we go. Both connected on that one. Let's go. Nine. Uh, seven. Uh, let's go. Uh, jabs to the body. Bye 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 bye. Circle living. Yeah. What you gonna do, circle living? Yeah. Uh, right by circle. Living. Nothing. Hit the glove. Here we go. Jab to the body. Nothing. Getting out the way, you go. Sir, you got the pressure. Pulling the pressure. Here we go. Bye bye. Here we go. Nah, 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 nah. You come on, Clayton. Don't you gotta put some punches. Get to work, Clayton. Get to work. I think when he throws punches, he looks great when he's throwing punches. So gonna be connected on that one. Yeah, bye, 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 Clayton. He's waiting right now. He's waiting. He's doing a bad job right now. Doing a bad job. The second half of a round. Sergey Levin is putting the pressure. Here we go. Boom, boom. Bye, bye, Sergey Levin. Jab, by jab again. Bye, bye, bye. Um, Clayton. He will take his left. It's gonna be a crucial thirty second left. It's being crucial. It'll be a crucial one. Jab, hit the glove. Jab, hit the glove. Uh, jab, hit the glove. Right, hit the glove. Nothing. Nothing for for Clayton. Nothing for Clayton. Go slip, bye, 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 bye. Sir, gonna be, gonna slip on that one. Jab to the body by Clayton. We go 13, 13, 13, 12, 13, 12. Let's see who's gonna put these punches together. Here we go. 15 seconds left. It's close. 15. Oh, go right by Sir Lippinia. Go right by Sir Lippinia on that one. Go right by Sir Lippinia. Here we go. Go right by Clayton. Go right by Clayton. Here we go. Jab to the by Sir Lippinia. Let's go. Oh, man. This was a hard one to score, y'all. This one a hard one to score. 14-14. I'm probably gonna give this one to Clinton. I'm gonna give this one to Clinton, y'all. But this also could be a swing round. This also could be a swing round, ladies and gentlemen. Also could be a swing round, ladies and gentlemen. So the last round, Clayton could win the next round and is a draw on my, on my scorecard. Both of them got to go for it because I respect right now if somebody has Clayton up one round, I could respect if somebody has it a draw right now and my score got lipping yet one round. Here we go, the 12th round. The 12th round. Let's go. Jazz to the body by Sergey Lippin. Yeah, this is the 12th round. This is a very, very close fight. You can have a one round winning by Clinton. You can have it a draw right now, or you can have a one round for Sergey Lippin. Yeah, I got a one round Sergey Lippin. Yeah, right now. 
Again, there's a swing round, last round, the second round, and I believe it was the eighth round. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, one, two, three. Bye, 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 bye. By Clayton and also Circular um, um was, was standing on his foot and he connected those punches. Good, good inside work by Clayton. He will go jab by Clayton. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Here we go. Man, I like this cat. I like this cat. Good, good. Right there, you gotta connect another one, two by Clayton. That's the way you gotta do. Pivot and shoot that right. Pivot and shoot that right. Again, again, straight right to the to, to, to the temple. He goes eight one, eight one, eight one to the body by Clayton. Here, let's go. A jab by Circle Olympian. Let's go. Uh, right by Clayton. Good, good. When he lets his he, when he lets his punches go, when he throws combination, Clayton looks very, very good. He looks very, very good when he throws those when he throws punches. Oh, uh, throw more punches. I'm gonna say it like this, man. He can look back on this uh, on this fight and say, "Yo, I could throw more punches and stuff like that." Remember the circuit lipping yet? They rather have circuit lipping yet to fight to fight uh, one of the PBC guys because the PBC dude himself. But I'm gonna say it like this: Circuit for Clayton is doing very, very well. Very, very good body shot by Circle Lippin' yet. Yeah. Good right by Circle Lippin' yet. Yeah. Another right by, 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 by Clinton. Another right by Clinton. Here we go. 11, 11 to 4, 11 to 4, 11 to 4. Jab by 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 Lippin yet. Jab by Clinton. Jab by Lippin yet. Here we go. Seven, 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 six, seven, six. Seven. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 12, six, 12, six, 12, six. Ooh, good jab again by Pay. Oh, what two by Clinton? Yes, when he throw punches. Oh, good jab by Sergey Lippin yet. One minute left into the round, the 12th round, into the fight. Let's go. 15 to seven. 15 to seven, Clinton. 15 to seven. Let's go. My goodness, this is a good chess match, ladies and gentlemen. Good chess match. We didn't even see the referee. There was no clinches. There was nothing. The referee was not even in play. Good right by Sergey Lippin yet. Good right by good body by Sergey Lippin yet on this one. Let's go. 15 and 9, 15 and 9. Jab by Sergey Lippin yet. Here we go. 15 to 10. 15 to 10. Right by Clayton. Hit the glove. Here we go. Jab to the body. Bye by Clayton. 16, 16 to 10. 16 to 10. Right. Hit the glove. 20 seconds left inside the round. Let's go. Jab by Sergey Lippin yet. Yeah, uh-uh. I'm too short to box with God. Uh-huh. <laughs> here we go. 16, 16, 11, 16, 11. Let's go. 10 seconds left into the round. Let's go. Throw flurry. Throw flurry. Clayton. Throw flurry. Go, throw flurry. Go body shot by Sugar Lippin. Yeah, what you do? Here we go. Body shot by Clayton. Here we go. Boom. Let's go. Clayton. Here we go. The Giants are right by old baby. Baby, baby. 18. In the 13, we're gonna give that to Clayton. Baby, we have ourselves a draw here in the scorecard of Punch Run Boxing, aka Mr. Moore shot himself. Yes. Man, good, good, good. Again. Again, ladies and gentlemen. Again. Hold on. 114, 114. Boom, boom. I got it a draw. Now, now, now. Listen to me clearly. The... Third round was a swing round to me. I believe the eighth round was a swing round to me. The tenth round was a swing round to me. So, so, you could have gave it to who I gave who I gave the third round to. I know that was a swing round. It's three swing rounds to me. So, I could see. I could see 116, 112. I could see that. I could see that. Thanks, love and hate. Thanks, love and hate. I could see a draw. I could see. I could see a draw. Got it a draw. I could see Clinton winning by two rounds. I don't see Sergey Lippin yet winning. See? I don't see Sergey Le Ser um, um, Sergey winning. The only way I could see this if it's a draw or Clayton winning. Because the swing rounds that I had. If you switch it to, to Clayton, then he wins the fight. I just don't see Sergey Lippin yet winning this fight. I don't see him winning this fight. I see it a draw, but I could see people gave him Clayton 115-113. Fair. Let me see. Give me one second. I want to hear the score.
A draw, y'all. Punch from boxing does it again. Does it again, ladies and gentlemen. The best live commentary, the best judge right here, baby. A draw. But that 115-113, man, I thought they was going to give it to him. Um, So, wow, what happens now? This is crazy because now this gives Earl Spence a break, y'all. This gives Earl Spence a break. He would not have to face his immediate mandatory. For this decision, ladies and gentlemen, for this decision, for this decision, Bud Crawford, Earl Spence should be next. No more excuses. Because of this decision, ladies and gentlemen, no immediate mandatory for Earl Spence. This was a draw. After December 5th, that's it. Next fight, this spring, this upcoming spring, we should have Bud Crawford versus the winner of Danny Swift Garcia and Earl Spence. No more excuses. That's it. I left it alone because I knew the IBF would get in the way of this. Un That's it. We got Sergey. We got Bud Crawford going to be fighting Brooke the 14th. He wins that fight. Earl Spence wins the December 5th fight. Undisputed. I mean, not undisputed, but unification bout between Bud Crawford, Earl Spence, probably in May, probably in June. Let's go. This draw helps, helps the fight that we want to see. This draw helps the fight that we want to see. prime fight Clayton got this I said it was I said it was a draw on my scorecard this was my scorecard 114 114 so your boy punch drunk and this is what I mean when I you know gotta count every punch punch by punch um this was a blessing to the people that want to see the bud and the spence this is a blessing, y'all, because if Sergey Lipinet would have won, if anybody would have won, 68% of the people on Twitter feels like Clayton won the fight. I had it a draw, but I also said there were swing rounds in which you could have given, you could have given to Clayton, or you could have given to Sergey Lipinet that 10th round, but there was a swing round, I think, in the, in the third, and another one, I think, it was the eighth or the seventh. I can't recall. Next next time when I'm doing a scorecard, I'm going to say this and then swing. <clears throat> Spence still got to get past. Yeah, he still got to get past. Draw was a good call. Dang, yep. It was, it was. Also, I want to know what's going to happen to the Abdul Kokorov stuff. I just think that, I mean, Sergey Lipping, yeah. He only had one week to prepare for him in training camp. So he didn't know what Clayton Powell was going to bring to the table. But this is what happens when you always got to stay prepared. Remember when I was talking to Jason Maloney, we was talking about being a professional. You always got to stay prepared. You always got to stay prepared. I, I don't think that Sergey Lipinier is going to do good versus the elite welterweights. He's just, for me, too small, does not throw enough, very flat-footed. He's not gonna. He he's not gonna do good versus a Keith Thurman. He's not gonna do good versus a, a, a Sean Porter. He's not gonna do good versus Manny Pacquiao. He's not gonna do good versus Earl Spence. Um. He's not gonna do good versus Danny Sul Garcia. Mikey Garcia knocked this dude out. I mean, um, knocked him down. So I think Sergey Lipinet, yeah, um, at one forty seven, maybe a Sergey Lipinet yeah, with, with with Ugas, maybe uh, even Ugas. I don't think he just. I, I don't think that Sergey Lipinet. Yeah, this is this is his uh. I mean, if he could control that weight and go back to 140, I just don't think that he's going to do very well versus the elites. Give me one
why are you putting Lipinya against those guys? This fight would have a rematch since there is no IBF mandatory. You no, know I'm saying if he would have won, if he would have won, he would have to face one of these guys. I'm saying he's not prepared to fight. The, I think he's too small. His, his height is too small. His style does not. His being small is nothing because of look. It's not about just being small. It's his style and that he's small. Is that he's flat footed and he's small. You know, he, he's not gonna get into he's, he's not gonna get into the Manny Pacquiao's of the world, the Keith Thurman of the world. They got leg work. The Buck Crawford of the world. He's not um, um 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 Earl Spence. He's not he's not gonna get. So I think that he whatever he needs to do nutrition wise, he needs to just campaign in 140 in 140. I think 147 is just going to be too much in the elite level. It's just going to be too much. It's going to be too much. I lost interest in the... What's up, Hugo? What's good, my brother? I had it 7-5 Clinton. Okay, that's a good scorecard. 115-113, that's a good scorecard. That's a good scorecard. I could see that. 115-113 Clinton, I could see that. I could definitely see that. The 116-112 Clinton... I could, but those are swing rounds. Let me listen to, to what um Clinton is saying. Let me listen to what Clinton is saying. Um, I feel like he won the fight. That's just due. I do believe that a 115, 113 is, is, is good. It's just a foul. It's good. Um, I had a 114, yeah, 114, 114. I already know, man. I keep it, you know, I go round for round, punch by punch. I, I, what, I would have, what I wanted to see from Clinton is throw more punches. Because I, I, I was saying throughout the fight, when he throws combinations of punches, throwing high volume punches, he's looking. Good, he's looking great. I'm connecting those one twos when he connected the short uppercut and Sergey Lipinier was moving back. He should put the pressure on. He should have put the pressure on. I had a nine three Clinton. I don't know how this was a draw. Oh, I don't. I know. That's too much. That's too much. Nah, I didn't have it on nine three Clinton though. A uh, Gabriel. I had it a draw. One fourteen. One fourteen. Um. The thing is also, this is what happens. When it's a close round, when it's a close round, it's just not about the punches landing. If a, like, if a guy lands one four, uh, lands 14 shots and the other guy lands 113 shots, depending, maybe a judge may, 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 may not have seen all those shots. So then, okay, both of them are landing the same, almost the same amount of shots. Now it goes with effective aggression. Who's the one that's pushing the fight? Then that was lipping it throughout the fight. You understand what I'm saying? So when it's a close fight, punch wise, then you got to go. Who's controlling the three minute interv uh, intervals around? What pace? Who has the pace of this fight? Who's controlling the pace of the three minute intervals? Um, Tanks boy lost too. Um, who's controlling that pace? Defense. Clinton, Clinton had good defense as well. Good defense as well. But who's controlling the rounds? And that's why Sergey Lipinet and these close rounds on the swing rounds goes to Sergey Lipinet because 
because because of that because it's just not clean effective punches that score is about it's just not clean effective punches so if it's close y'all got to count the other thing and the other uh, the other criteria in scoring about that's what it is you know now if y'all look if if people in this in this, in this okay I'm gonna tell you my the style of scoring in my book, especially in the professional level, right? So we know that's clean, effective punches, jabs, jabs, secondary power punches is primary. Power punches is primary. Remember, he was landing a lot of body punches lipping yet. He was landing a lot of punches lipping yet. Clinton was landing a lot of not nice jabs, nice jabs to the body as well. But remember. Jabs is, is secondary, power punches is primary. Ring generalship, pace, who's controlling the three-minute intervals around? Again, like I said just, just a bit ago, if it's a close fight, who's controlling, who's pushing effective aggression? Who has the effective aggression? Who's on the ropes most of the time? Who's pushing it? If it's a close fight, the cleaner work, yes. Both of them had some clean work. The shots, the counter shots, that, that Clayton was connecting was when he's coming in and he's countering off these uppercuts, but on the inside. Now you got to remember, there's three judges in different position. We're seeing it, but let's say another judge, those short punches to the those short punches when when they're very close, and not all the judges see that. Not all the judges see that. So I was seeing them work, but is it clean, clean, clean to the point where we all see it? The jab was great for, for, for Clinton. The jab was great. And then we go for defense, defense, defense. The guy that showed that had more defense, in my opinion, was Clinton. So that's why it makes it hard on swing rounds. But Lippignette controlled most of the pace. He's the one that pushed the action more. And he was doing – Clinton was dedicated to working out – working the outside. But when he stood – when he stood, you know what I'm saying, um – when it was in the middle of the ring and he was connecting, when he throws, when he was throwing punches, when the accumulation was 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 on the up and up, he was looking good. He should have followed it up. I feel he won the spirit of the fight. Like if I was there, I feel Sergey was winning the fight. I'll probably say yes. Amen. It's 20 body shots for Lippin. Yeah. Yeah, man. A lot of people thought it was a draw too. Douglas Fisher felt like it was a draw. I beat Clinton in the um Earl Spence said I beat Clinton in the amateurs at the world championship. Good to see him doing his thing. You know, that's gonna be a good Clinton, Clinton, and and um Ugas. Clinton outscored him in each category. No, no, no. He, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. No, he didn't. He didn't control the three minute intervals. He didn't. He didn't control the three minute intervals of around. He wasn't. He wasn't the effect, effective aggression. No, he didn't win every every category, my brother. No, he didn't. But I could see 115, 113, Clinton winning. He did great in defense. He did great in, in, in range. He did great. He did great into uh, stopping any type of good momentum that Sergey may have had. Um, he controlled them to throwing single punches. Um, Clayton did very, very well, very, very well. And maybe we're looking at Clayton that he did so, so good. It's because we probably didn't expect, didn't expect it. Everything except body shots. Lipping yet control the pace of the fight, though, and he wasn't aggressive. This was definitely a draw. Yep. I had it a draw, too, man. I had it a draw. Any words on Boo's next opponent December 12th? Nah, not yet. Matter of fact, I did. I did hit him up. He didn't He didn't hit me back, but um, let me see. 
Because I woke up, man, late. I woke up at 10. Um, and she. Oh, she. Okay. Again, hit more, y'all drunk. <laughs> no, <laughs> you drunk. <laughs> but I mean, punch wrong boxer, but you drunk, my brother. <laughs> you drunk. I count punch by punch. I keep it consistent. That's why my score code is 114-114. And guess what? The fight was 114-114. The fight was a draw. So I know I can't be drunk. I know I can't be drunk. And it's here like um, an idea of fighting. So I bought a viv on Twitter. Let me see. Um, interview on Monday. Interview on Monday. We got Sean Garcia. Sean Garcia. Interview on Monday, y'all. Hopefully, interview on Monday, um, Sean Garcia, Mr. Moonshine. Sean Garcia is Ryan Garcia's little brother. He's five and no. Put these stats, get eyes. I don't know what that means. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, man, boxing each and every weekend. We're looking forward to fights. We're looking forward to fight. Let me get this this one out of the way, y'all. We're looking forward to great, great fights. Great fights, ladies and gentlemen. Great fights. Boxing is back. Who do you think is the best pound for pound fighter right now? We got I got Canelo. I got Canelo right now. Um Canelo. We got um, um Inoue. Usyk, Teofimo, um, Bud, who else, who else, we got Estrada, we got Estrada in there, we got Tyson in there, um, who else, we got um, Jamel Charlo in there, who else, Manny Pacquiao in there, um, who else, who else, Spence, but who else I say? Yeah. The most you know what will reign supreme, ladies and gentlemen. He heard it there here first. I can't wait for Halloween fight. You can't wait for Halloween, Gabriel. You think he's going to get Jason Maloney right quick? You think he's going to put him out? But for right now, y'all know, but for right now, King Teofimo is still getting, it's still, it, 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 we still celebrating King Teofimo. We still celebrating King Teofimo. Great win. Great win. Pound for pound. pound be, be the pound for pound fighter. Renowned. One, two, three. You can flip it around and it's all over Chinko. So you got to give props to T Teofimo. You got to give props to the king. You got to give props to King Teofimo. You got to give props to King Teofimo. Got to give props. Great win. Great win. Great win last week. Great win last week. The Haney fans are mad at T.O. Devin Haney will have to come with a spectacular performance versus Gamboa. When I'm talking about spectacular performance, Devin Haney will have to give Gamboa the pink slip. He needs to make him quit. He needs to retire. He is a curtain call matchup because, because put it this way, y'all. Let me turn this thing off because I don't want to be distracted. Because 
We got Javante Tang Davis, Halloween versus Leo Santa Cruz. Now, as Javante Tang Davis does his thing versus Leo Santa Cruz and look very, very good, very look very explosive, that momentum is going to carry. That momentum will carry to Teofimo versus Tang, versus Tang Davis. And if Floyd Mayweather opens his mouth that Teofimo Lopez is next for Tang Davis, that machine is going to overwhelm the Devin Haney versus Teo. So I suggest that if Tank gives a great performance, and we're just talking about the 135, we're going to be, going to be moving over to, to the 140. But let's say if Teofimo Lopez stays in 135, let's say. Javante Tank Davis would need to look good versus Leo Santa Cruz. Let's say he looks good in, in, in Halloween. Devin Haney will have to do something spectacular. Will have to look good. Will have to look great. Will have to look like the Devin Haney of 2019 when he when he had the probably the knockout of the year. 2019. Devin Haney probably had the knockout of the year with hit on um, um, Deontay Wilder. And Devin Haney probably had the knockout of the year. He needs to come with that type, that particular performance. So people could be like, oh my God, Devin Haney, Teofimo Lopez, <gasps> Devin Haney, the boogeyman. Yet, yet. Follow it up with Ryan Garcia. I was gonna, I'm gonna get to that black, my brother. Follow up with Ryan Garcia, December 5th. If he gets Luke Campbell in a great, in a great um, um performance, then that energy and that momentum will carry to Tio Fimo and Ryan Garcia. So right now, for these three, 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 three upcoming fights for three of these young cats, I'm gonna say Javante Davis is the young, young, young cat here, but I'm gonna say like this. Performance is what's going to call for the for the next fight of Teofimo Lopez. These guys will have to perform real good. They have to outdo one another. Tank Davis is up first. Second is Devin Haney. Then Ryan Garcia got the last. Got, got, got the last. They have to have a great performance. Whoever has the best performance will will have will be granted to call on Teofimo Lopez in 135. Now, Teofimo Lopez trying to go to 140 and fighting the winner of Taylor and Ramirez. Yeah, we already know that Jack Catterall is was supposed to be the mandatory for for Jose for for um for Jose Ramirez. Jack Catterall, step aside to make the fight that we all want to see: the undisputed 140, Josh Taylor versus Jose Ramirez. Now, Josh, um, Jack Catterall will have to have first dip after that fight. So, is it? it is is Tiofimo Lopez really gonna have a next fight 140 versus one of these guys? I highly doubt. What up, Punch? I just did this card. Pretty good damn card. Yeah, it was. I had a 114, 114 on my card, but I had two swing rounds that could have gone to Clayton. So a 115, one, a 115, 113 is just due for Clayton. A 116 and a 112 is all right for Clayton as well. I won't argue that, but I do not see any any any. I don't see um 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 Sergey winning this fight. I, I didn't have I didn't have a scorecard or any swing rounds that will give it to to Sergey. The swing rounds, a couple of swing rounds. I think I gave it to Sergey, so that's why um it it, it came to one fourteen one fourteen because it was close. But the effect of aggression, he was pushing for the fight. He was controlling the three minute intervals. So I scored those close fights in which both of them landed. I scored those four, th those those close fights, and I gave it a circuit lip. And yet, based on effective aggression, ring uh, and, and 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 controlling the three minute intervals of those of those rounds. Chavez Jr. is pound for pound. <laughs> oh man! If Ryan stops Campbell in a dramatic fashion, that would be greater than beating Gambo in Santa Cruz. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I got gotcha. y'all. I got gotcha. y'all. Oh. I'll send it right here. Because I want everybody to get on it. Hold on, hold on. Give me a sec. Give me a sec.
Yeah. So yeah, oh, let me put this up. Uh, up. Um, yo, what's good, Punch? What's good, y'all? What's good? What's good? What's good? Black Brown, Black and Brown Boxing. Subscribe to Black and Brown Boxing. Subscribe to Speak Your Mind Sports Talk. Subscribe to Prime Fighting Champions. Think Ryan and Tank, all three will win by stoppage. But who's going to be the most impressive one? Who's going to be the most impressive one? That's the question. The guy that's the most impressive one. And remember, we got to remember there's a machine behind um, um, Tank Davis. If, if Floyd Mayweather start calling out Tank da uh, um, Teofimo after the fight, if, if he does a great performance, oh, could that will overwhelm the, the, the any type of machine that, that – um, Unless Eddie Hearn will really, really promote this fight. If Eddie Hearn really promotes the Teofimo versus Devin Haney as well. And, of course, the um, Devin Haney promotion, doing what they got to do. And they're doing a good job. At, uh, um, Bill Haney, shout out to Bill Haney, doing a good job in promoting and promoting his son. And really going to, um, really, you know, promoting this th this fight. Um, Who else? You got to... D Jefferson, speak your mind, sports talk. Subscribe to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Was good. You're on mute, I think. Yeah, I was on mute. Hey, look, did you do the card or are you doing the after? Um, I don't think I'm, and I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna stay live. I ain't gonna do like the after, like you mean, like the no, after. I mean, did you do the fight? Yeah, 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 live. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I was doing the fight too. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I had a 114, 114, but I had a couple of swing rounds. The 10th round was a swing round. Could have given it Clayton to, to, to Clayton. So that could bring it to 115, 113. There was another swing round, and I think that was round number three. Could have gone to Clayton. So I could see a 115, 113, and a 116, 112 to Clayton, but I do not see Sergey winning this fight. But I gave it a 114, 114 the way I scored it. Yeah, no, I think the judges did a good job. I yeah. think they did a good job because, and uh, I was telling everybody over in my life, it was it was Clayton that saved himself from losing that fight because that 12th round was a championship round. And I think that, okay, here's the thing. I think I had the scores pretty much like you did. But had Clayton letting Sergey Lipping just take that last round, it would have been 115, 113, Sergey Lipping. Yes, we probably would have seen a split decision or something. Because here's the thing the, he was the aggressor, he was controlling the pace of the fight. And those body shots were thudding. Like Clayton was landing good shots, but Lipping, yes, in my opinion, was landing the more telling shots. Clayton had the higher volume, but Lipping, yes, had the more telling shots. And those two judges that gave it 114-114, they looked at it as if Clayton saved himself that last round. Had Lipping, yes, won that last round convincingly, I think those two 114 judges give him it 115-113, and then you got uh, a split Majority. decision. Okay. I mean, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, no, uh, I'm not a split split decision in favor of Lipping yet because I think that 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 last judge. No, you're right. Majority because he probably yeah, would have a draw. That one fifteen, one thirteen. He would have gave him a draw, and then the other two judges would have gave Lipping yet one fifteen, one thirteen. And I said that to uh, the people listening before they called the scorecards. I said, "Listen, Clayton just saved himself from either getting a draw." Or losing that fight. And then the scores basically said that because one judge had it 115, 113. So you got to imagine if Lipping gets win that round, right? Then that judge has it 114, 114. And the other two judges will give it 115, 113, Lipping yet. Majority decision, Lipping yet. But, yeah, but guess what, Dean? Now, since the winner of this fight was supposed to be the immediate mandatory, for for the winner of Dennis Wolf Garcia and um and Earl Spence, this draw now gives it the green light for Bud Crawford and Earl Spence. Now it's back to that talk. I want to leave that talk alone. I was done with it because I knew that IBF right. was going to get in the way. But now it's back to Crawford and Spence after this fight. No more excuses. No mandatory. Nothing in the way after this fight. That's it. 
So, so the draw is actually a blessing to us. I think Sergey. Look, oh yeah, yeah, it is, it is. But it's a blessing and a curse because they're not gonna make that fight, and people just <laughs> gonna be mad again. People just gonna be mad again. But I think that Sergey Lipping has got the short end of the stick, man. Now I was telling people this over on my live because look, the last fight, right? He was supposed to have Molina. Remember, he was supposed to have Molina, and then Molina, I think, caught the COVID or some shit. I don't know. No, it wasn't COVID. He pulled out for oh, some oh, reason. Hold on. I don't, want, I don't want to lose your train of thought. Um, Terrence Bailey, good looking out for that, my brother. Good looking out. I'm going to send the link right now. I'm going to send the link. My fault. Good looking out. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Jason the so, Molina. Yeah, Molina. And then they pulled out, right? So he switches from a fighter from one stance to the next because they gave him some guy Ensign. But he knocked Ensign out, so it didn't really matter. This time around, it was even worse, fam. He was supposed to, if you remember, he was supposed to be fighting Kudratilo Abdu Kakarov. But yeah. Abdu Kakarov could not, he couldn't secure a visa. He mm -hmm. couldn't secure his visa, so he couldn't get out of Malaysia to make this fight. They didn't have enough time for him to put the application in because it was two weeks, and it wouldn't give them enough time, you know, to make sure the fight was secure. So they pulled Abdu, Abdu Kakarov out. And they put in Chris Van Heerden. He was supposed to be fighting Chris Van Heerden tonight. Mm -hmm. Then they switched on him again. So they went from Orthodox to South Paul to Orthodox. Imagine doing that in between somebody's camp. That's yeah. what Lippinets had to go through. Now, I think if Lippinets and his camp, especially after already fighting Clayton, if they could get in there with a full camp and study on this guy Clayton, I think they got him. Because that fight was too close. And, and Clayton yeah. is stepping up. And Lippin Getz has been on this stage before. You yeah. feel me? But he got a good amateur background as well. He got a good amateur Ooh, background. Clayton? He fought the likes yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. a domestic fighter, right? And I don't like to sleep on domestic fighters, but when you pay attention like to all of the domestic fighters that actually do good, they fight at different... Uh, they Tony. fight different... Tony, Japan, American different fighters, right? When you fight with most of your things, like all oh, Japan or all oh, Mexico or all oh, Kazakhstan... You know, very few of them come out where they have that that overall pedigree. They get out and they fight guys from different countries or fight guys at different levels. Then you can really call them world level already, right? Because they fight different guys, different styles uh, around the world. But when you just get them when they're straight domestic fighters, you know, it takes a special guy like Clayton. I think he proved that he can compete because he got in there and got a draw with Nick and Yetz. And Nick and Yetz is a solid fighter, so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Le Sergey Lipin yes said that he only knew about his opponent for two weeks, two weeks ago. So that means he only have one week to prepare because, of course, you all know the last week you, you, you're not training. That's just to, you know, you keep up, you know, you do a little rope, shadow boxing. But they're already and in the bubble switched, by the last week. Switched, and he switched from yeah. fucking South Paul to an orthodox fighter because Chris Van here is a South Paul. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, they really fucked Lippin Yetz on training camp in this fight. They fucked but him back. That's when you know the IBF is strict. We already know they don't give a damn if you're a star because Abdul Kokorov has been mandatory since 2019 March. You couldn't get a visa. Next one up. But that's, that's it. just bad, uh, bad shit for the, uh, the COVID shit. Why he, you know, couldn't secure the visa and shit. Yeah. But they probably did the paper, the paper, the paper um, work late, though. Yeah, man. I don't know. I know one got denied, and then by the time the next one uh, came around, it was like, no, sir. And you see, they really didn't have the time because if they, it, it was a two week process over there for uh, Abdu Kakara, right? So mm -hmm. if they wait and he gets denied again, now they only have two weeks to find an opponent. They probably couldn't even have gotten Clayton in there. You know what I mean? So. Would have just caused all kind of havoc. So they just pulled him out of the fight. But I think the fucked up part was if they pull Abdu Kakarov, don't go from Clayton. I mean, don't go from Chris Van Heerden and then switch him out again. Like they, he could have just been prepared for Clayton, which wouldn't have been too hard because you're going from orthodox to orthodox. But when they throw Chris Van Heerden in there, now they're prepared for a southpaw, right? And then they replaced yeah. that with Clayton, so he's back to orthodox in two fucking weeks. And I'm like, bro, that's fucked up on Lippin' Yet side because he didn't really get good preparation, you know? Terrence Bailey Sr., what's good, man? 
It's been a long time, What's my friend. <laughs> yeah, man. How's everything? Yeah, man. I think, uh, yeah, you're on a delay right now. Yeah, he on a delay, but look, before you say something, Terrence, shout out to you, brother. Shout out to Punch Drunk. Y'all enjoy the fucking live. I'm going to bed it. Appreciate oh. you, dog. <laughs> All right, my brother. Good looking out, man. All right, dog. What's good? What's good, Terrence Bay? What's good? Talk to me. Talk to me. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. You're good. You're good. Can you hear me now? Like, like Verizon. Can you hear me now? Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Talk right, to me. Man. You saw the fight. You saw the fight. Or we, or or we, or we, we will switch the. We're gonna switch the subject with the with the Haney Haney and and Tia. What 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 you got? To, what you got on the table, my brother? What you got on the table? Hey, look. What you want to talk about? We'll, we'll talk about what you want to talk about. How about that? I, I mean, it just we'll, had, uh, this we'll break just all had. it. This is your show. We'll break all that down in a way that you want to break it down. Well, um, just we just going by the the recap of the of uh, Sergey Lipinev versus um um Clayton. That was a good fight. Um, you could have given the Clayton the one six, well, the one fifteen, one thirteen. That's that's respectable. One sixteen, one twelve. Again, I would have gave it a swing round on that third round. I had two swing rounds, one third on um, the third round and the tenth round. So I could have seen a one sixteen, one twelve for Clayton. I can't see a win for Sergey Lipin yet, in my opinion. Um, but I scored it a draw because when 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 you when you um. When there's close rounds and, and, and land punches, then you got to go with who was the effective aggression, who was pushing the fight, who was pacing, um, who controlled the pace. And that's what win those close rounds if you're both connecting at the same type of level. So I bring that that um 114, 114. But um, yeah, man. What you think about the fight? You saw the fight or no? Yeah, I watched the whole fight. Yeah. Um I'm not gonna not watch a fight that's coming on. <laughs> on a Friday or Saturday night, it's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm going to grab my uh, my pork rinds and I'm going to and I'm going to get my beer and I'm going to say I'm going to sit back. I'm going to watch the fight. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, in my what you think? Opinion, of, what, what you what you think about the last weekend? What you think about last weekend? Tio uh, Fimo beating Vasil uh, Lomachenko. What you feel man, about that fight? Man, look, all I wanted to. Only, only damn disappointment I got with that fight is that Tia Fimo didn't knock him out. I wanted uh, uh, Lomo exposed. That's all I wanted. I, I don't give a damn who fights him. Uh, uh, mainstream media has pumped this dude up to be something that he's not. And I wanted somebody to come in there and to expose this dude. Tia Fimo Lopez went in there and uh, he beat him flat out. He beat him. I got that. I got that fight. Uh, uh, eight rounds to four. In my, but it, good. I had a one. I had a one seventeen. One seventeen. One eleven. So I only gave. I only gave a solo machinko three rounds. Yeah. What? Well, well, we we <laughs> we, the, we pretty damn close. The the you know thing is the thing is in my the, in my opinion about the the him knocking him out. I think it was sweeter that he actually outboxed the guy that's supposed to be the number one technician, quote unquote, best boxer in the world. He, so for me, he him outboxing him. him huh? That he punished him. That he punished him for, for, for 12 rounds. He let him he let him get a little bit of confidence. And then he, and in the 12th round, he said, Well, look, if I wanted to, this is what I could do to you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So um, my I feel like this. He... Off, my head is off to Tiafimo Lopez because he did what I wanted everybody else to do. I was what I was looking for because this dude is not what they claim uh, 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 to be. This he's the quintessential great white hype, and the only other one that's left is uh, Tyson Fury. Get these two people out of freaking boxing. I don't know. At least expose them. Expose them for who they are. At least expose them for who they are. Because they're not what they're being promoted as. 
Yeah, man. Well, well, you know what? To my opinion, I th- I believe he did got. It. I think he got exposed the the best way, and that's outboxing him. Cause people did predict it. If Tio, if Tio from Lopez went, the prediction was if Tio from Lopez went, he would knock him out. The prediction was could Tio from Lopez outbox him? Nobody predicted that, but your boy, Mister Moonshine. Nobody would oh. thought in their mind that this guy could outbox him. So for me, that actually sweeter, because now. You're not not now. See, let's say for Tiffany Lopez, the people's just not looking at him like a guy that could, that's just gonna knock somebody out. Now they're looking at a guy that okay, if he wants to box, he could outbox. If he want to knock you out, then he'll knock you out. If he want to brawl like he did in the twelfth round, then we could brawl if you want, you know. So now you come any fighter that's coming into a fight versus Teofimo, it's like which Teofimo is gonna show up, the boxer or the manager is trying to knock you out. Well, Teofimo was a boxer in in in, in the amateurs. Yes, he was. This, uh, yep. th- this whole uh, puncher uh, thing, I'm saying this came on later. But uh, Teofimo was always a pure uh, 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 boxer. Correct. And then he came on, and, and then he came on with the uh, the puncher aspect later. Uh, mm. Lomachenko, you know, what I'm saying didn't do his homework. He thought he thought he had a cherry pick. He even took a pay cut because he thought he had a cherry pick. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, this is a cherry pick going wrong. Yep. Now what? What else you got, bro? Well, man, I'm just happy boxing. Boxing every weekend is good, man. We got a lot of boxing to look forward to. Um, of course. Um, we got Javante Davis. If he wins and we, if he beats Leo Santa Cruz in a good, spectacular fashion, people's gonna call in Tank versus Tio. Then here comes oh. Devin Haney. If Devin Haney has a spectacular fashion, I'm talking about like the timing and momentum, you know, because next week is Javante Tank Davis. If he that 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 particular week weekend is gonna be Tank versus Tio. Then when Devin Haney, which I I I I want Devin Haney to not only beat. A uh, 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 Gamboa. He needs to retire this guy and a great outing, a spectacular outing. Then that that momentum will carry to Tio and, and Haney. But then here comes Ryan Garcia versus Luke Campbell, December 5th. If that, if he ends Luke Campbell in a spectacular fashion, that machine will go to a Ryan versus Tio. So this is a very crucial, um, a very crucial good looking out, Lisa. Um, this is a very crucial. Um, several weeks because everything is going to change. A lot of narrative is going to be changing. If Mayweather says after the fight, and let's say um Javante San Davis beats um on Leo Santa Cruz in a perspe- spectacular fashion, and Floyd Mayweather be like, "That's it, we want Tio next." That machine will push that Javante San Davis and Tio talk. So, in my opinion, Devin Haney, we have to go the, to follow up that whatever performance that Javante San Davis going to do. He got to outdo Javante San Davis. And Ryan Garcia for the public to be to be crying out for that fight. What do you think about that? I think that now that uh, Tiafimo has beaten uh, Lomachenko, that uh, once if Devin Haney gets through Gamboa, which you know I'm saying we're pretty sure that he will. But it uh, gotta be spectacular fashion. You just can't do what he did with Santiago. Well, he just and what what. what you're right. It's got to be in spectacular fashion, and uh, I think that that after that fight, it has to be uh, Devin versus uh, Tiafimo, and then and then after that, let's say for the sake of argument that Tiafimo wins, which Tiafimo uh, has never even bested uh, Devin even in sparring. So well, that's he say. She- that's he shay well, 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 okay well we'll we'll chalk it up as that all right so let's say that uh uh you know say that that, that tia Fimo wins before tia Fimo can go up to 140 he still gotta fight tank you know what I'm saying before he goes up to 140 why why the, 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 the main not, not meaning that he can't fight him but why does it why does he has to fight him because the tank, in order, tank just in, left the 135 division right now. Okay, because in order for him to be the true uh undisputed, 
He's got to take that fight. And then on top of that, there's no fan friendly fights at 140 for Tiafimo at this time until he uh, clears out the uh, 135 division. He beat the number one guy, not only in the division, but they consider no. him pound for pound around the world. One, two, three, you could flip it around. You said so, they. So what you're saying is, to, you said they. You said they. They is the masses. And, and, and forget about the media. Boxers themselves. Boxers themselves. No, no, no. Give, That's not give true. Punch. Credit. No, That's not you, true. Punch. Only because Flo only because Flo Mayweather feels one way. That doesn't mean that Lennox Lewis feels not, another way. That doesn't mean that Mike Floyd. Tyson feels another way. I'm not talking that about Floyd. I, I'm not talking about Floyd. I'm talking about uh, the majority of professional champions and majority yeah. of the boxing fans do not feel like Lomachenko was ever what they said he was, unless you're, you know, what I'm saying, unless you're a race fan. Nobody ever felt like this dude was pound for pound. You, uh, uh, you got, you got less than twenty fights and a loss, and then you turn around and you lose again. Yeah, you but he saying? was fighting nobody rank fighters like after. Was, nobody felt like this dude was pound for pound. I never felt like this dude was pound for pound. He was fighting rank after rank after rank fighters. He didn't come into the professional level fighting a guy that's four, four wins and thirty losses. He ain't coming to a professional level like that. That's the reason why. Look, Teofima Lopez, how many fights he got? Better Beef, how many fights he got? Usyk, well, how many uh, fights uh, he got? Oh, 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 good point. Good point. You brought up you brought up Teofimo. And Shakur Teofimo Stevenson. Beat, uh, no, and you and you beat up uh, you brought up uh, 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 Teofimo. And Teofimo had what? 15 fights? Yeah. And he 16, and he beat yeah. and he beat this hype job. You know what I'm saying? This dude was never what they said he was. He was never what they said he was. Why? He, but was, he, never, he was never that. He pro he proved it by fighting rank after rank fighters. Man, look, the dog. Uh, uh, the, How many division world titles he won? The sun, the sun shines on the dog's ass every now and then. He won his. You know he, won, he won this title straight, straight coming to the professional level. Man, he lost to a journeyman. Okay, and then he, he and, and you know what? You know what I said around that time. You know who's gonna hush up everybody? Gary Russell Jr. should have hushed everybody up. He should have gave yeah. that following loss. You know who gave breath to the to to, to the Lomachenko train? Was guy is Gary Russell Jr. losing to Lomachenko? Because if okay. you would have followed it up, you would have followed it up with a loss. Then we didn't. We we would have never. We would have never had a Lomachenko train. Okay, well, I answer that with this. Why did he run it back with Gary Russell? Gary Russell been chasing him for for the rematch for uh, a couple years now. Why he yeah, run it back? That was like a, because people didn't feel like he, he he they wanted a rematch. No, the no, performance no, 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 didn't the, the no, performance no, 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 didn't no, no. grant the rematch. No, the no, performance no, no. didn't grant the no, rematch. No. Gary Russell put him on his ass. Let me uh, uh check this out. Check this out. Loma, uh, Lomachenko has a history of being a very, very proud dude. Very, uh, his camp is very, very proud. It's a very, very proud people. Now, Gary Russell said, okay, you know what? I was dehydrated. I had this issue. I had this, it, uh, that issue. I put you on your ass. Let, let's run it back. If you were so sure that you could come back and you could win that fight again, then why wouldn't you take it? Well, if okay, Gary if you're trying to Gary, if you're trying to say he, Gary, he put his ass Russell, what round? Say what? Third round or the second round? When the when the referee no. didn't call the, the when the when the referee didn't call that he went down was it the second round or third round? Right? I'm not in my I'm not in my house right now, so it I can't was early you. in the fight. I think I think if I'm if I'm not wrong, it was it was the second or the third round, right? Maybe the third round. Right there, he should have made the adjustment. You know who made the adjustment? Lomachenko. Yeah, but at the same time, at the same, let's call it. So that you're only talking about one round. You're not talking about was, the fight. He can put him down and lose. All right, put it this way. Let's score it. It was. If, it was a split. If, it, it, it was a split decision. Let's let's keep it a buck. The dude, um, uh, 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 uh what's called got got put on his ass. Mm. He didn't get a unanimous decision. You know, what I'm saying, uh, uh, Gary Russell had hydration issues. And all that stuff. Well, look, 
There's excuses, but it called for the rematch. And no, um, no, you got to be prepared. I don't call for no rematch because you, you, no, 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 Their camp called for the rematch. Their camp called for the rematch. And Gary Russell is chasing him right now, saying, I want a rematch. I want to, re- I want to avenge that one loss. And, um, they are not trying to hear it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And now, and now what he's saying is that, uh, if they can't get the rematch with uh, Tia Fimo, they're talking about uh, 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 retiring. I think the best thing for boxing is for him to retire because these uh, mainstream or old media, or what, what do you want to call them? You know what I'm saying? They 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 promoting fighters that you know what I'm saying uh, are, are are best for the pocket and not the ones that are best for the sport. And I'm pretty sure, uh, Punch, you can agree with that. They're not promoting the ones that are best for, uh, uh, um, they're, they're promoting the, the ones that are best for the sanctioning bodies, and 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 the uh, 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 media outlets. They're not promoting the ones that are best for the sport. Yeah, but I, I, there, there is a lot of, th- there is a lot of narrative that is pushed, M- mass media or or YTBC or the YouTube circuit or the independent media. There's a lot of narratives that's pushed. But you can't look. Lomachenko was coming into the to the professional level already, being a Hall of Fame just for his amateur career, just based off that. Different, so he's coming in. He, he, no, 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 no. Hold, 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 he's coming into the professional level when he's fighting ranked fighters. He's not coming up like like most of these guys. Shakur Stevenson. He's not coming up giving him gi- giving giving easy fights. He became a champion. He earned and won this his belt. So when people, so you know what? I'm he glad guesses, you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. The, I'm ESPN, glad you brought that up. Matter of fact, gl- e, look, look in ESPN, they pump Shakur Stevenson more than Teofimo Lopez. Okay, well, look, I'm glad you brought that up. Did they pump Shakur as highly as they pumped Lomachenko? Shakur wasn't fighting rank after rank after rank fighters. Is the fights? Remember, you got to you got to include. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about the dance partners he got. Look, look, look. Put it this way. Look, he fought. I'm saying I'm saying coming into the mainstream ranks, coming into to to professional ranks. Did they pump Shakur Stevenson as highly as they pump Lomachenko? He didn't have the type of career coming out the amateur, so no, he's not gonna get pumped more than Lomachenko. Okay. You you want you tell me, do you want Loma, you, you want Lomachenko, Shakur Stevenson to get pumped more than the Lomachenko based off their amateur career? Okay. Based on that, based on what you just said, okay, so they pump up Lomachenko, who had yeah. what 400, 400 some odd amateur amateur fights. And, and and two gold medals, and uh, 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 he was a uh, uh, amateur fighter up until the age of what twenty something. Like, what, so 25, that means twenty four, twenty five. Okay, so that means that in in the amateur ranks, he was beating on kids. He was beating on 16, 17, 18 year olds. He was a professional amateur. Yo, there's a lot. It's not you're only thinking about, but you're only thinking about the American fighters. Remember, he's fighting other guys around the country, around the world. He's beating up men exactly too. There, there's there's that's people. There's exactly there's amateurs. There is amateurs that's, exactly that's older than Lumachinko. Look, look at Joy look, Joyce. He's 35 years old. Well, that's the same thing for all of them. You spend all that time in the amateur ranks. And you build up and you build up an amateur career beating on children. And then you come into the come professional on. ranks. Come on, and, come on. You gotta take everything away from Lomachenko. So you're taking away his amateur career and his professional. You're no, not no, gonna- no, 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 no. I'm not taking I'm not taking it away. What I'm saying is it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? If it, you know what I'm saying, if 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 you stay in the amateur ranks. Up until the age of 26, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, or 30 or whatever, whatever, and you and your competition is uh uh 14, 15, 16 year olds, you know what I'm saying, and, and you know what I'm saying, and, and a little bit above that, and then you come into the amateur, uh, I mean into the professional ranks, and then they rank you as a pound for pound or whatever. Come on, bro. 
They rank you your pound for pound because you're actually fighting rank. Look, look, look. Shakur Stevenson. No, look. They Shakur were Stevenson Tico ranked in the pound for pound before he took his first fight. They they had this dude up there nah, they, you know said, on a skyscraper before he took his first fight. And then yeah. and then they got look and, and then it was looking stupid when he lost to uh, uh, uh Salito. Yeah. And then ESPN tried to erase the freaking zero. Uh, so I, this I mean, is, uh, so, uh, erase the loss. So this is about e so this is more about ESPN. Lomachenko ain't never been that dude. He ain't never only, been that dude. It's only about ESPN. And we could say, look, because because you could say that about ESPN. Well, but well, PBC didn't acknowledge Bud Crawford. Well, you know what? When it comes okay, well, when it comes to Bud Crawford, I'll say this. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't this way before. But it's become this way now that Bud Crawford has been bit, act like a prima donna. Now, I got people in my family. I can't say nothing bad about uh, Bud Crawford around certain family members. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, but Bud Crawford has a fight. Well, I don't know if he has a fight with uh, Kel Brook because um, the dude from the, uh, from, from the zone, Seem like he's trying to block the fight, mm. but uh, because um, he wasn't allowed in the, in the uh, 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 setup of the fight, the fight was set up between uh, uh, Bud uh, 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 Kell Brook's father and and and, and the uh, Crawford camp. And uh, what's his name? What's that slick, uh, sneaky dude name uh, from 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 the zone? What what the hell is his name? From the zone, um, um, the promoter. Eddie Hearn? Yeah, Eddie Hearn. That sneaky bastard. Now, uh, because he wasn't involved in the uh in putting the fight together, he's blocking it from BT Sports and all that stuff or whatever, whatever. And you know what I'm saying? So he's trying to not make the trying to make sure the fight doesn't happen. And uh and, and Carol Brooke came out and said, Well, uh, you wouldn't have a company if it wasn't for me because I jumped two weight classes to fight Triple G and because you asked me to do that in order to save your company. Yeah. And I went up there and I destroyed my career for you. And now you can't get behind me with what with, with probably one of the biggest fights in my entire career fighting Terrence Bud Crawford, who's supposed to be the greatest fighter, you know what I'm saying, uh, living today. So, um, there's a lot to be said about that whole situation. You know what I'm saying? I mean, all promoters do the same. The difference between, put it this way, the difference between, let's say, Lumachenko and other guys, other guys, is hey, that, look, especially, hey, especially, hey, let's say, like, hey, PBC hey, fighters, the difference hey, is they got, they got a marketing machine behind them. A lot of guys don't got the, the, this marketing machine. They choose to be with PBC, meaning they're trying to cut the middleman. So you're not yeah. going to, you're not going to see that, that promotional machine. It's, yeah. for example, I'm going to give you an example, Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder don't got the promotional machine because when he left Golden Boy promotion, he went to he stood with PBC, meaning he cut the promotional company. So there's not a, a there's not a machine that's working that's that, that that's expanding and and promoting the Wilder name at, at 24 seven. That's why sometimes you do need that promotional company until you get to a level and to to, to a level like a Canelo, to a level to like Floyd Mayweather, to a level and then. And then, ex 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 um, you know, get, leave that contract, buy yourself out, whatever. And then you got your name. But sometimes it is promotion. It is promotion. Yeah, but at the same time, when you talk about, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Deontay Wilder. And Tyson Fury. You want to talk? We're going to talk about that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but hold on. Let's, let me leave it like. Let me leave the, the this the, the discussion with 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 with, with um Devin and stuff. No, you I brought it up. Like, though. You brought it up though, Punch. You brought no, it up. I, 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 I'm because I'm, I'm giving you the example. I'm giving you the example because I know you understand um what I'm saying. So what the the with the Devin Haney and and, and um. And the uh, and the Javon oh, Tan Davis and Ra and Ryan Garcia. I'm gonna let you know that performance is gonna get the nod to want to for the for the public to want a 
a Teofimo Lopez or a Davis or a Tan, I mean, or a, or, or, or a Haney or a Ryan, whoever outperforms who, that's the that's the one that the public is gonna is gonna be calling for in 135. Oh, oh, oh. you brought up Ryan. Yes, sir. Uh, we talking about okay. Uh, uh, uh. If, if, uh, okay, uh, hold on, Major Key Boxing, what's good? What's good, brother? How you doing? I'm doing what's great. I'm doing great. What's up, brother? How you doing, Mr. Uh, Mr. Billy Senior? Long, long time, no, and you, I haven't seen you in a minute. Yeah, this used to be Glenn Avery. Okay, man, what's going on, bro? Chilling, chilling, brother. All right, well, look, uh. Tiafimo and Lomo uh, uh, fought their fight. Okay, so the the the, the most uh, uh, lucrative fight at 135 is going to be what what are two most lucrative fights are going to be Devin Haney and then uh, Tank Davis and not uh, Ryan, Haney, huh? Not Ryan if he outdoes Luke yeah. Campbell because if he see, outdoes see, Luke see, Campbell, see, see, see. I'm getting to that. I'm okay. getting to that. Uh, all right. <clears throat> the, the the two most lucrative fights are Devin Haney and then uh, uh, Tank Davis. Tank Davis, you can say what you want about him, but he's a draw, especially if the fight is in Baltimore. It's a, 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 that is an immediate sellout. You know what I'm saying? It's an immediate sellout in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Who the hell pulled uh, 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 this? The other dude you that you that you that you talked about right, out there. Ryan Garcia out their ass. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that, that is a distraction. Ryan Garcia this is, is going to be... Look, look, look. look. Uh, Ryan Garcia is going to be facing Luke Campbell, an opponent that is better than any opponent that Devin Haney or Tank has faced in 135. Mm -hmm. Luke Campbell yeah. is a ranked top five 135 pounder. If Ryan but Garcia... Not, but he's not who nobody wants to see. But man, nobody want to see Gambo and nobody want to see Gambo yeah. and Devin Haney, to be honest. That fight, that fight is already set. So once Devin gets through that, and then he goes and, 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 and uh, the fight between him and Tia Fimo need to be made. And if Tia Fimo, whoever wins that fight, needs to go after the belt that uh Tank Davis has, and then Tank Davis has get... nobody wants to know Tank <laughs> Davis belt. That's a regular WBA. So got the super. It's true. It's it's true. It's it's it, it's it's it doesn't matter. It's true, undisputed. No, he's already true, undisputed in the public eye. And us, more no, already, he's no, undisputed no, he's already. Not. Look at this. Look at this baby. No, look at this baby. Hold on. Let me, look at this You're baby. Right. Okay. <laughs> look at that baby. Look at that. Hey, look. The, King uh, 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 hold up. Hold, hold, hold up. Hold up. Zoom, zoom in, zoom in on the right goddamn uh, uh WBC belt. It's got top rank on it. That oh, look, look, a, I'm gonna give it to you. 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 Like I'm, I'm, I'm explaining it to you like I did with Bill Haney. You see that one right here? Boom! That's franchise right there. You see the other belt right here? That's that's mean that's shit. that's Lomachenko's. That's Lomachenko's belt. The one that he won. No, it's not. That's no, the it's one. Not. Yes, Devin yes, Haney has the belt. Devin 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 Haney was given the belt. Devin Haney was given the belt. The, the, Devin Haney was given the belt. That the, people don't respect that belt that much. This is the belt that. Oh that Come on. Come on. This is Come this on, is the punch. belt. This is the belt that Lumachenko won and beat and earned and won versus Luke Campbell. That's and the he belt that people respect. And he dropped it. He and got he dropped it to avoid the mandatory with Devin Haney. There was Come no on, mandatory. Punch. There was Come never on, mandatory. Punch. There was Come never on, mandatory. Punch. There Come was on, a, he yo, that belt. He I asked that, that, that to I asked, that, I asked that to Haney. Bill Haney. I asked that to Bill Haney. I said, Was that a mandatory? Were you mandated to fight Lomachenko? No. That narrative, whoever pushed that narrative on made a lot of people believe that Devin Haney was a mandatory to Lomachenko. It's a flat out lie. There was never okay. a mandatory. Why WBC he never, the belt? never mandated. Why never he mandated. the belt? Why he dropped the belt? Answer this: Why he dropped the belt? Well, he got the they, he dropped the belt because he was elevated. But because the WBC themselves no, 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 says no, no, that no, this no, is the true, true champion, that's not, 
Well, all right, what the WBC different. said. Let me ask you a question. What the WBC says about what the WBC Man. says? Because no, you know why? I gotta I gotta ask you this because the, you're you're defending the belt. You're defending the belt that you know, Devin I'll never, I'll, 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 I will never defend the WBC. The okay, I all right. Never, so we're on the same I, subject. I the, 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 uh, oh. uh, Mauricio Suleiman is a piece of shit as far as I'm concerned. Okay, okay. And, so you're on the same I'll, subject. I will never thing. defend. I will never defend the WBC. Okay, so we on the same team. So don't defend if you don't want to defend the WB the WBC and Mauricio Sudamon, don't don't defend the belt that Devin Haney got as well. Man, no, 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 no. <laughs> Hold up, punch. Hold up. Hold up, punch. Hold you can't up. defend Hold that up. if you don't want to defend the WBC. Hey, 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 hey. Hold up, my brother. Hold up. <laughs> if if I got a belt, you know what I'm saying? The WBC and belt. Yes. I, and I don't care. I don't care what belt it is. Okay. If I got a belt and I drop my belt, the next dude I fight does not get the belt that I dropped. That's some bullshit. You don't get the if I drop the belt, you don't get it. If if the sanction body gives it to another dude, you got to go fight him to get it. If I drop that belt. You don't get that damn belt. But he didn't that's drop it though. It ain't dropped. They elevated that, him. That's the, that's the no, problem. No, 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 no. Hold, hold, hold. That belt to a that's secondary. No, no, that's a secondary. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's no elevation to a belt that is a that is basically a trophy that does not exist. Tell that to the WBC. That's what okay. I mean. You're defending. Be, 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 That's what I mean, Bailey. You're defending. Yo, you're saying you don't want to defend the no, WBC. In, in you're defending sports, them right now. In all sports, hold, hold on. In all sports, in all sports. Let me just make this quick point. Let me just make this quick point. In all sports, it is. Sports. In sports, rules change at some point, and at some point, people get upset at it. Did they handle it the right way? No, I I completely agree that the WBC completely mishandled that. You know what I'm saying? Just like some other things, which obviously we're not on that topic yet, but uh, they mishandled the whole franchise thing and explaining it, and they had to go back, but at least they announced it before the fight happened, and now they're sticking to it. You know what I mean? And that that's all it is. We, we may not like it, but it is what it is. If it was undisputed, you, oh. can't, you can't argue that. That's it? No, it, no he's not undisputed. Hey, look, yes. check this out. Yeah. Now, now the WC... Now the now the WBC is saying that they're going to put uh, franchise belts in every uh, weight class, and they're talking about starting a new weight class between cruiserweight and uh, and heavyweight. And, <laughs> and that's what I was talking about when I just said that. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. And, and 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 trying to make Deontay Wilder the flagship fighter for the new division or whatever, because the new division will be in the weight class. That Deontay Water normally fights in, uh, uh, in around his uh, uh, where, where he fights at, which is between two fifteen to uh, 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 two twenty four, and they, and they're trying to create a new weight class based on that. Now, and and, and uh, Risa Suleiman is trying to get the uh, the other sanctioning bodies to agree on this bullshit, and 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 in. Uh, probably and possibly make Deontay Wilder franchise champion. Now, see, that's a bunch of bullshit. I agree that's with that. I, that's what I, I was trying to say. I didn't. I, I know that we didn't get to that subject yet, but that's why I was saying like the WBC be on some bullshit. And uh, you know what I mean? Like I completely one thousand percent agree with that. They they're doing that exactly for Wilder. You're right about that. And, and so, but, but this what I, this what I, this what I'm saying. There is some contradicting here, because if, like I said, if we all agree, or let's Bailey, because we were talking about it, if we agree that the WBC is bullshit. You don't care what the WBC is saying. Then you got to keep it consistent when it comes to to, to 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 Devin Haney. Then the belt that he had. See, this is what it is. I said. You know what? The WBC is making decisions while drinking Don Julio drunk. I'm um, drinking um, um Patron. I could oversee the BS of the WBC. So in my in my estimation, I know the guy that beat and won the WBC. Not given, not not hand down, nothing like that. I know that Lumachenko beat Luke Campbell for that title. 
So when I'm looking at this fight, the Teofimo Lopez versus Lumachenko, I'm looking at the, the, the guy that earned and won the WBC title, the guy that that won and earned the WBA and the, and the WBO, and then facing the guy that won and earned the IBF. Okay. So, so why would why would if we see that fight, we see the outcome of that fight? Why we well, there's people out there that feel like Teofimo Lopez needs to solidify his position to fight Devin Haney. That's moving backwards. We want a boxing to move forward. We want to face the best opposition for himself. Challenges. Teofimo Lopez is saying he want to go to 140 to 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 fight the winner of Ramirez and Josh Taylor. Why are we saying he should go back and fight Haney while he while his accomplishment at 140 is far more greater than any fight he has in 135? And one I more thing, punch. Uh, one more I'll thing, punch. Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia is about to face Luke Campbell. Luke Campbell is a much better fighter than Haney and Tank has faced at 135. Devin Haney oh, and yeah. Tank Davis have absolutely faced nobody at the 135 division. And if you could name me one fighter better than Luke Campbell that Tank or Haney has, has fought, I'll, I'll digress. Name me one. Okay, look, check this out. The fight we made at 135 is Devin Haney and Chiefimo Lopez. Why? Who had David Nobody, Haney, Haney no, fought no, better no, than no, Ryan? No, I'm about to tell you why. Nobody wants to see that other bullshit. You know I want to see it. Uh, 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 Seven uh, million subscribers would tell well, you different. Well, well, you got seven million world. followers on 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 um, on Instagram. Seven million people that are casual that actually buy fights would disagree with you on that. Disagree me on what? On, on on that nobody wants to see it because because guess what? At the end of the day, you know they're the ones that are going to be paying for the, for that uh for that fight. Okay, all right, true. But, and he deserves it more because of Luke but, Campbell. But but, but 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 everybody's also tired of seeing multiple champions. If you got somebody who's undisputed and they defend that title within that weight class, and and and, and uh, uh, you'll say go back to the days of uh, uh, Holyfield and 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 Mike Tyson, and you'll say somebody not even Terence Crawford defended his undisputed chop, uh, 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 title. He got it and then he rolled out, and he was and and uh, 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 Tia Fimo is not truly undisputed. He does not he does not hold the WBC title. Devin Haney does. So in no, he order does for him to, to, so, 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 in or, so in order for him to actually really, really move forward in the weight class and call himself the dominant force in the weight class, he needs to fight Devin Haney. You know what I'm saying? He if, could, he, he, no, 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 no. Hold up. Check this out. If he was to uh, uh, move up to 140 as is, he's going to lose fans. Why? How's he gonna lose fans? He's gonna gain fans. No, you don't no. think you don't think Josh Taylor got fans? You no, so, no. so 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 Bailey, you're trying to say no, no, no. You, Josh Taylor you, has you want you want, you no, no, want to Josh, see Josh and, and, Taylor. Josh look, Taylor then, Josh Taylor has fans, but Tia Fimo, if he does not if if he does not fight Devin Haney and, and, and he scatters those belts like the Dragon Balls and he moves up to uh 140. And does not uh, uh, fight the WBC champ. You know, what I'm saying for the Ali belt, for 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 the for the Roy Jones belt, for Sophia. That's not the Roy mm -hmm. Jones belt. I, I I like the narrative that that y'all been pushing. The Roy Jones belt no, is the same belt that Flo Mayweather had. The same belt that Muhammad Ali had. Talking. But you know what's the difference this between? Talking. Ain't no y'all. Uh, all talking. right, right. But you know what's the difference between the WBC that 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 Floyd Mayweather had, that Ali had, that that um Roy Jones had? You know what's the difference between that is they actually won and earned and fought to earn the belt. The reason why people don't call for that Haney and Teo so drastically is because we all know the boxing fans, fan or not a Devin Haney, that you did not fight to earn that belt. No. Why you? Let me ask you a question. Do you hear it? Do you do you hear it a lot? A the youngest, belt. the youngest, one of the youngest WBC he's champions ever. Hey, they, don't, they don't. They hey, don't. Hey, they punch. Don't he's got he's got a duck belt. The dude ducked him, and he ended up getting the belt. He got the same. He got this. He got he got the belt the same way that Lennox Lewis got the belt. 
He got you the he got the look look look. Lomachenko said, I don't want I don't need to fight Haney. I'm going after the champion, the IBF, whoever wins from Comey and Teal. I'm going after that. I want everything. Lomachenko is a cherry picker. Straight up. Nah, disagree. Yeah, look, put it this way: they all pickers when they when they all pickers at the time when they they're the top when they're the top dog, they all pick them. You know why? Because oh, they got everybody. Shit. I they, listen. They I'm got, missing this goddamn movie. Fucking with y'all. I'm missing this damn movie. Fucking with y'all. <laughs> damn it. They got every. Hey, they got. They got everybody gunning for them. So whoever. So whoever somebody picks, if 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 this guy picks, if this guy picks, oh, I'm gonna put it like this. If T.O. picks Haney, right? And let's say Josh Taylor be like, I thought you was coming to 140. I thought you wanted all the strap. You scared? You scared? People going to be like, oh, yo, T.O. from Lopez is scared of Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez. They called them out. Every, when you, once you're the top dog, everybody's calling you out. So whoever whoever you pick, there's going to be a fan base that's going to be mad at that pick. If if, if, if T.O. from Lopez picks to fight Ryan Garcia after after. You know, if Ryan Garcia whoop Luke Campbell's ass, if he picks Ryan Garcia's ass, Tank Davis fans and Devin Haney fans is going to be mad. Somebody's going to be mad. Once you're the top dog, somebody's going to be man, mad. Man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. Hey, look, bro. I know you, uh, you, you a Latino dude. You a, it was a, you a Latino brother. I'm the Just world, say, man. I'm God's son, man. We're hey, one race, hey, Bailey. We're one race, man. Hey, hey, look. Punch is actually from <laughs> Afghanistan. Yes, my friend. No, no, Darren Bailey, I come from the same place as Armir Khan, my friend. Hey, look, no, you don't. <laughs> I spent a whole I spent a whole year in Afghanistan. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're but, from Afghanistan, man. You're from the world, man. We got the we got the complexion of everything. Eh? Yeah, well, Hello, everybody. How are we family, doing? Camo was good. My fa my family, uh uh, my ancestors were uh Berbers and Moors and uh for, and 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 Amazai. So, you know, what I'm saying I, I, you know, what I mean the beard gives me away. But anyway, <laughs> uh, Ryan Garcia is not even in this picture. I don't know why people keep bringing him up. That's a he is in that picture. You no, you need, you need no, to put him in that in picture. That. He's he's not in the current picture, man. I, I'm telling you, he, he's he's not in the current picture. Once this, he has a belt like Devin Haney. Once this once this stuff comes out in the wash, then um, then we can start talking about uh, 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 Ryan Garcia. But if he beats Luke Campbell, do you feel like uh, Devin Haney's win over Javante? Uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Gamboa is a bigger win. Look, look, if Ryan so, Garcia beats Luke Campbell, do you who you feel uh, ma made the bigger win there, Devin Haney or, or, or Ryan Garcia? Well, uh, be that, that's, you shouldn't yeah, even be thinking yeah, about yeah, that. Come on, that's Bailey, not even a think about it, Bailey. Come on, think so, about to, that, bro. To be truthful, to be truthful, uh, the fight with uh, uh, Gambo was becoming the whipping post, and. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He he's becoming like the uh the the uh the gatekeeper. Um it depends on uh Gamboa's performance during the fight. It's hard but, to call it, it, it's 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 hard to call it before the fight actually happens. If Gamboa comes in there and he looks like Gamboa of old against Devin Haney. That's my first initial thing. I said it. I said at the these three next performances by these guys, whoever outdoes who will get the public, the majority of the public screaming Teofimo Lopez or this one. So the first one that got the, the, the that got first dip, Tank Davis. If he if he beats Leo Santa Cruz, he's gonna be he's gonna be calling out Teo. Flo Mayweather's gonna be calling out Teo. Then we're moving on to Devin Hain. The, the, Several um, next couple of weeks, we're gonna move on to Devin Haney and Gamboa. Devin Haney will have to outdo Tank Davis versus Gamboa. I'm talking about. Do not give me that performance you had with Santiago. You have to retire this man. That's it. it has to be spectacular fashion. That moment right there, everybody gonna be calling Devin Haney and Teofimo Lopez. But then here comes several weeks later, we have Ryan and Luke Campbell, the opponent that is more respected than any of opponent of Haney and um um Tank. 
if Ryan Garcia outdoes and do his thing versus Luke Campbell, the whole, and then Oscar De La Hoya is saying, we want T.O. next, the whole public will be, the mass majority going to be Ryan and T.O. So it's going to be a lot, it's going to be a lot of people pushing, but I'm going to tell you like this, the machine of Floyd Mayweather saying he wants T.O. next is going to be very overwhelming for, 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 for Haney. And if you and, and if and, and if um Oscar De La Hoya is saying after if Ryan Garcia beats Luke Campbell in a great fashion, they're gonna be like that that machine is gonna be too much. All right. That's all I'm hey, saying. Bro. I'm not saying I don't want to see right. Devin Haney and, and T.O. next. I would like to see it, but he has to outperform. He has to outperform these guys with that hey. with the with his opponent. Hey, but hunch, man. I, I'm gonna go ahead and get off. Uh, you ready to get off of here? But there was one thing I want to say to you, and I hope that you listen to me and take it in. Yes, sir. The uh, the uh, 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 competition between different uh, uh, channels and you know, what I'm saying and going after each other or whatever, man. Come on, man. We got to stop that. You know, what I'm saying everybody is here for the love of boxing, for the love of the sport. Maybe. So. Maybe. Are okay, we here for like the love of sports, or are we just here for the love of one fighter? Oh well, man, call it call it how you want, but at the same time, uh, we have to show love to each other. You know, what I'm saying to love. our brothers. You know, what I'm saying so. Let's not get into all that stuff like that, man. Let's let's keep it grown, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, uh, let's keep it. You know what I'm saying uh, 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 brotherly respect. And let's just, you know what I'm saying, let's not get into that. And I uh, hope you listen to me. No, no. Uh, you, I'll take it in, my brother. Man. Of course. Man. You're a grown-ass man. You can do what you want. But, you know what I'm saying, let's, uh, if, you know what I'm saying, if I had it my way, I would just say, you know what I mean, let's just not uh, uh, do that. Let's not get into that, man. We, let's, do, we, let's, let's do right by the sport. Yeah. So, I mean, let's, let's not talk bad about other channels and you know, all that stuff, man. Everybody doing their thing. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Doing what you know what I'm saying, doing what they think they're doing is best. And if, you know what I'm saying, you doing what you think is best, let them do it, what they think is best. And then everybody just, you know what I'm saying, just, just meet in on like a, a common ground and and just say, you know what? I don't agree with you, you don't agree with me, but we both love the sport. So we'll keep it at that. You know what I'm saying? Sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. The same way how we expect them doing it in the ring when we say, oh, man, they didn't shake hands. Oh, man, that was poor sportsmanship. You know what I'm saying? Well, the same thing goes on this platform, on the platforms, too. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, let's just keep it a buck, you know what I'm saying, uh, amongst everybody and keep, the, and keep it, you know what I'm saying, sportsmanship-like, you know what I mean? And uh, let's just move on. All right, all right. I got you. I got you, my brother. I, of course, man. Yo, yo. You. Salute What's to you. Rap star, salute. Rap star. Yo, oh, oh, damn. Rap star. Uh, appreciate your yeah. services, yo. like always, Mr. Bailey. You know what I mean? Major Key. Kel what What's going on, Rap star? What's up, Rap star? I, hey, I like I what Terrence just I said before he checks out, man. Wait, Terrence just said put respect on the game. And that's why I always keep saying, Terrence, in every channel, put respect on the game. Yeah, I didn't hear. What's up, Rap star? I didn't hear what Major Keith said. What, uh, what you say, bro? Now I was saying, yo, long time no speak, but uh, uh, I forgot to, uh, you know, address you and, and say uh, again, thank you for your services. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for your family's dedication to the country. Um, you, you're looking slim, by the way. You look like you lost some weight since the last time we spoke. Man, uh, look, uh, Bill Haney sent me some stuff. <laughs> and, 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 and oh, man, on, the I've bias. <laughs> hey, look, man, look. I've been on these weights, man. Hey, look, man, you you can't defeat Father Tom, man. All, all you can do is expect to win a few rounds, you know what I mean? But you won't win the 12th round, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, uh, this pandemic, man, I've I, I been going in, you know what I'm saying, over there in my den, man, and and, and, and just and just uh, hitting that weight bench, man, saying, you know what I'm saying, doing them dips and 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 and, and uh, uh, shadow boxing and everything like that, whatever, man. So, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like I said, man, you can't you can't beat Father Time, man. You all, all you do is expect to win some rounds, but you won't win the twelfth round. You know what I mean? You won't you won't win, you won't win the decision. You put it like that. Yeah. Well, we are. You're looking good, bro. Just don't eat nothing that says uh, Mexican beef. All right. 
Now, <laughs> hey, look, I eat a whole lot of pork. I got to cut that out, though. <laughs> yeah, you got to hey, cut the pork out. You got to cut the pork out. Terrence want to do a charity bout, yeah? You want to do a charity fight, Terrence? Man, no. No. <laughs> I, 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 I ain't wore a pair of gloves, man. What's what? I'm 45 now. I ain't wore a pair of gloves since I was 18. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't even I wouldn't even try it, man. I, I uh nah. Nah. But but if you want to do a bench a, a bench rest contest, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, but look, I'm out, bro. All right, my brother. Good looking out. God bless. All right, peace. All right. Rap star was good. Camo was good. Jose, yep. Yeah, if you can get back on, get back on. You you, you bounced. What's up, bro? What's up? Yeah. So yeah, bro. I, I think Devin Haney, bro. He, he should prove himself first, cause if he fights Teofimo and Teofimo beats him, they're gonna look like they're gonna be like, you beat a um, unproven guy. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lose lose for him. So I guess he needs to prove himself first before he gets a fight with Teofimo. Yeah, yeah. I think I, that that's what it is, man. I think is th this this several weeks. This is gonna be is gonna be very crucial into picking. Remember, Teofimo Lopez in the position to pick. So whoever don't like that position, sorry. And you know why? Look, people people complain about fighters that pick or cherry pick. Tiffany Lopez is already picking the good fights. Richard Comey, Lomachenko, he didn't have to fight Lomachenko. So I'm going. I'm, so I, I have I have trust in Teofimo and in, in, in in how he picks his fights. But actually, Punch, you said a very good point when you were speaking to Terence. The next performances from all these fighters means a lot. And yep. I think it's all to do with the performances too. So it can it can line you up. So if Devin Haney does knock Gambo out and has an amazing performance, you're right. People will start calling for that fight more. And maybe, you know, there'll be much more interest. But mm -hmm. it all depends on the performances. Like yeah. you said, everybody's performance will, will take factor into the next fight. Yeah, that's the way I see it. You know, it's yeah. all good fights. T.O. Tank, good fight. T.O. Ryan, good fight. T.O. Devin, good fight. Ryan Devin, good fight. Devin Tank, good fight. But if they all gonna for T.O., the guy that has the best performance is gonna get this fight because that's the that's the that, that the performance is the one that's gonna have the buzz. And if Tank has a great performance, pay per view versus Leo Santa Cruz and Flo Mayweather start pushing the T.O. fight. Hey, it's like it's, it's like it's like the Jay Z. We don't believe we need more people. And let me let me throw something more to the equation. So if uh, all of them last twelve rounds, who are you gonna say uh, uh, was the better uh, the better win? Ryan. Because Ryan Garcia's exactly exactly. So either way you chop it up, Ryan Garcia's putting himself to the test right now. Because if all of them last twelve rounds, you're gonna be like, damn, yo, uh, what's called it? Haney stood twelve rounds. With, with Gamboa. Oh, damn. You know, Leo Santa Cruz. You know, uh, with, with Javante Davis. So it's, it's all like, you know. Damn, yo. Uh, what's called it? Haney stood. Somebody got an echo. That's oh, World Combat. World Combat. Yeah. World Combat in the house. Hey, what's good, fellas? Rap star. Punch drunk. Man, salute to the interview the other day. You had yeah. him on life support. Make you keep talking. <laughs> Kill my, I'm, good, either, I'm being for real, but I wanted to keep Terrence on here because I hear him talking about, you know, telling you about not doing this and that and everything else. But yet me and him both veterans and he ain't defended me once. He ain't never told that that guy to stop doing that and stop disrespecting me and me and him both vets. But he come over here. And, and try to explain and, and assist you and tell you, hey, let's just talk about the sport. It has to be about the sport from the individuals who's insinuating or inciting freaking drama between channels, period. We all know who that is. So I don't know why he was over here saying what he was saying. And he didn't even help. He don't even help his own damn comrade out. Shit. Mm. I stood quiet, bro. I stood quiet because I dealt with that person myself hey, on yo, a totally yo. different level, and I stood quiet because I was like, all right, that's an olive branch. He's trying to accept the punch, but I know punch knows, you know, his own thing. You know what I'm saying? He's his own man. So I stood hey. quiet, but, you know, I feel where you're coming from, World Combat. 
Hey, yo, See, the whoa, whoa, punch, he seems like he don't know what's going on, but then the thumbnail, he knows what's going on. Yeah, but I, know, I, I, I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> I know exactly what's going exactly. on. Yo, let me say my piece on that because you said it in front of everyone. World Combat, you seem like a great gentleman. But even when I've known Terrence, he seems like a gentleman as well. So if you've got beef with him or issue with him, then y'all both need to speak. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, hey, Terrence Bailey, you're still Terrence listening is, on. If you Terrence got five more minutes. A great, Terrence has always been a great gentleman since I've known him too. But so have you, World Combat. You know what I mean? It's not It's not so much to do with Terrence as being a gentleman. It just has to do with a lot of commonalities that we have as channels. Being attacked by the same person, you know, they go talk shit and disrespect you and do all that shit. But when it comes down to, you know, actually going to a fight or meeting you in person, that'll never happen because they'll never have that same energy, man. So, you know, for him to go over here and they all latching on because they want to be a part of what I was told, the Bill Haney bandwagon. I was just supporting the dude with interviews, but I was told all of a sudden I want to be a part of the Bill Haney bandwagon, which, I, you know, that 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 turned the light on with me. I said, OK, cool. But I ain't never once hear Terrence Bailey step up for me after the three time I was kicked off the panel for, for saying shit that didn't even, wasn't even disrespectful was boxing knowledge. I didn't hear him. He, me and him both was in the service. I ain't never heard that brother stand up one time and say, you know, we both served in the military. Let me let me help this brother out. Let me try to talk to him. No, not once. Mm. Yo, Terrence, if you're listening, brother, come on and speak to World Combat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I served I served Combat just like he did. So what's your what's your what's your point? You wanna go over here and defend the idiot? Mm. I got to ask World Combat. I've been when when uh when I first heard of you was over on that channel, and um you know what I'm saying uh, you were chopping it up, and then I went over there. Guys, 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 it's all right. Say the channel, Eight Money's channel. It's all right, guys. I, I don't right. want to promote though. Don't promote, man. It don't matter. It, it don't matter. <laughs> I do about World Combat. That's what I like about Punch. He he we, acts. He acts like everything is okay, but really the 20 and the 12 gauge is right by his side. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're going to get so some goddamn exit wounds out this bitch, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's good. We talk about H Money's channel. So, all right, now let's proceed. It's, it's, all, it's, it's all good, man. This is it's us. Funny, you know, Look, ain't man, no I see on that channel. Correctness. Nah. Anybody yeah, can thought, say whatever channel around here. I thought <laughs> World Combat what, 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 was doing a good job. You know what I'm saying? And uh, his his resume was being questioned. People were telling him how to do his job, and he kind of like went off on him. You know what I'm saying? Then the next day, uh, World Combat went live, and they were on his channel, like basically trying to like like you know smooth everything out. You know what I'm saying? And since then, I've seen them back and forth or whatever. But you know, I've always known that uh, that H Money is not trustworthy. You know what I'm saying? He's not a trustworthy dude. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, and I have my own personal history where, where, you know what I'm saying, we fell out. You know, he tried to uh, apologize on the same shit again. You know what I'm saying? So I got, I got my own personal history with him. You know what I mean? Uh, and so I already knew. But, but you know, like, like who am I if I met you through his channel to even vocalize that? You know what I mean? Like, you know, that shit won't make any sense to you. You know? So, I mean, over, over a matter of time, bro, like, like uh, bridges are always going to get burned when you're dealing with a dude like that. Correct. Because both of us. Both of us had good intentions while on his channel. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't too much trolling. There were a couple of debates here and there. But mm -hmm. more and more, people was telling me behind the scenes, this was going to happen. This was going to happen. And it did. Over and over again, he was apologizing behind the scene. So I'm saying, if you apologize behind the scene, you go back and replay the same exact action again, Something's going on. You obviously don't give a fuck, and you got grown ass people co signing for your ass. That's what I don't understand. How's all these people co signing for this cat when he's absolutely disrespecting people? Because I think I think when people have the common uh common belief in whatever perception or narrative that we're that that a subject in boxing is talking about, if you if let's say if if all of us right now and let's say I say T.O. is is undisputed. We all agreeing to it, right? We all cool. 
But let's say, for example, Rapstar says, hell no, he don't undisputed. I kick him off the channel. That's what they do. Because I need everybody to agree with me or they're out. It doesn't push my, 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 the live or what I'm trying to do in this particular show, right? So that's how the other channels work. They don't like people challenging them, um, challenging them or making them look, you know, uneducated in the boxing sense within their own channel. You know, they don't like to be challenged. They don't want they want they don't want their narratives to be challenged. That's the, that's the thing. See me. I want to be challenged. This is the boxing where I like to be. I like to enlighten and be enlightened. People got too many egos. They're supposed to be about boxing. Not supposed to be about me personally. Not supposed to be about anybody. Y'all do if we doing this for boxing. You know, and also if you if you created a platform, you know what I'm saying, and, and you like to hear content from a certain content creator, you know, somebody shouldn't get mad at you because you listen into that content and you agree with that person on certain subjects, you know what I'm saying? And, and you like to chop it up with that person. You know, this is about boxing. You know what I mean? Don't don't get all butthurt because because I'm on this channel, I'm on that channel, I'm talking to this person, and you disagree with some of their point of views. You know what I mean? I don't agree with, 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 with you guys on on, a, on some things, you know what I'm saying? But I'm here like on a regular basis. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to chop it up. And that's the that that's the problem with, with 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 certain channels, like a channel like H or a channel like whoever. You know what I'm saying? You don't believe in the, whatever they narrative, the one that they pushing. Rap star, you got kicked out, right? Yo, and yeah. you will get kicked I mean... out again. Rap star, uh, we all we all telling you Rap, this right now. You will get kicked out again. Let, let me speak, Rap star, don't let tell me. Though. Let me speak though. If you all call my name, you need to let me speak. Right? <laughs> yeah, fuck? yeah, yeah. I'm gonna let you speak, Rap I mean, star. Listen, yeah, but yo, understand one thing. I gave you pre warning about that, Rap star, that no, you was you gonna goddamn bro. face turbulence. But with me, it's been a little bit different because he reached out, and I'll say this right now: if H Money's looking. And he was a gentleman and he apologized. No, 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 Rapstar. <laughs> the same thing he did to me three, Yo, four times, Rapstar. I've got to tell you the truth, though, innit? Because I'm a real one. I'm going to say to you that he did reach out and he said, look, I was wrong. And, you know, you got your exact back. same But listen shit, to what bro. he said to me, bro. He said to me, you got your own values. And he goes, I respect them. But he goes, you know, I'm riding for Devin Haney. And he went, I'm going to go all the way with Devin Haney. And I goes, I respect that too. So right, I understand what you're saying. If the, if the conversation gets really heated and it goes to boxing IQ, he can get angry again. Is that what you're saying? It's not if, it's when. It's when. I mean, everybody, hey, really get, everybody got the same thing. Everybody got listen, the same apology. H has been good with me, man. Hey, no, 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 no. Right, 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 right. Star, hey, you just, 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 came, you just listen. came on the scene, Rap Star. You just listen, came on the listen, scene. Rap, listen, Rap Star. We all telling you the same thing. Yeah. Identify what diff, different people are telling you. He will apologize. He will apologize. And he will kick you out again. I mean, apologize. That's not disrespecting you out me again. anymore, then, is it, bro? You're not disrespecting me if you do that to a grown man like me again. You're but doing that... it to yourself, not to me, innit? Rep, rep, so I know you have good intentions to get the get the fire burning yeah. and go from channel to channel. I understand, man. I get it. No, but listen, we, let me tell you. Though, we, we're combat, telling you, you that's what, that's what he does. Combat. He apologized to people. Listen. He apologized to the whole LDBC. On his knees for oh, for them okay. to step Maybe him I'm back. Maybe I'm new to the game. Then maybe I'm new to the game. You're right. Maybe I'm new to the game. But he really told me in front of everybody. He goes, "Rap star, I was wrong, man. I'm sorry." He goes, "I need you to come back." You know what I mean? So <laughs> we start we start cooking it up again, and he knows I don't agree with him all the time. And me and rap star, like, email me, email me, and I'm gonna email you text messages from him apologizing to me, bro. <laughs> yeah, but let you me know tell what? you what though. Let me tell you what though. I told him if you, you know what, if there's any problem with anybody, he should come here and debate, or you lot should go there and debate, and it should be an intellectual. No, they shouldn't be taking anybody here, off man, because he don't because have control Terrence of the mute button. Terrence, Terrence is his friend. He already came in. He said we need to put respect on the game. So if he's saying we need to put respect on the game, I'm sure it's coming from them and and anywhere else now. So if they're changing their opinion, you need to be giving them as opportunity isn't it you know putting respect on the game is supporting the channels correctly and you know not just being voices who basically say yes to everything the hosts say you know what i'm saying you don't yes. have to do that you got grown-ass men in here with families we're not going to just bow down and, and say okay all of us going to go in favor no it's, it's people with different opinions over here it's people that's picking different fighters to win 
but you go on their site, all of them was going for Lomachenko. We we Lomachenko over here. Why are you Lomachenko? You ain't never really supported Lomachenko like that. So all of them lost in one night, and it don't matter. I'm just saying, rap star, be be very cautious about the apology because it's not gonna last long until you it gets to because Devin Haney, uh, whoever, and you don't agree with it. And now you're back at square one, man. He's going to kick you off the panel. Yeah, but I, 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 rap star, everybody knows my personality by now. I'm very outspoken, and I'm sure you know too. So, oh, Hey, everybody on this you, panel right you now. You already so know. Outspoken. You already know, man. I don't hold back to the way I think, and he respects that at the moment. So, and if he, if, I mean, if it comes to a point that it's affecting his show that I speak my mind, then I'm sure then you're right with what you're saying. See, it's like, for example... L dog, L dog is here. L dog, couple L dog, couple of days ago was talking shit about me in another channel. But I welcome L dog. How you doing, L dog? Yeah, what's good, man? I just want to say this. Listen, H money is Team Devin Haney. You know, you might not like Devin Haney, you might not like H money, but I feel like you gotta oh. respect him. You know, H money's come a long way from last year when. His channel wasn't really doing numbers, but now he team Devin Haney. He's got, you know, he's getting shout outs from Devin Haney on Instagram and on Twitter. So, I mean, I think a lot of people are just jealous of, of this. I'm not saying you punch because you've got your own thing going on, you know, with the, the Lopez family and whatever. But I feel like a lot of guys. That, what, do you mean, but what, do you, what, do, what do you mean about the Lopez family? Who was on this channel yesterday? <clears throat> Bill Haney. You said, you said you said about the Lopez family. How many times have Bill been on this channel? Oh, the few. same exact, the same, the same exact numbers as how, how, has been how on many channel. LDBC channels he's been on. He's been on IQ TV channel. So what are you talking about? The same Bill Haney. Exact, the same exact. He's been here. He's been. He's been yesterday. He was here the first fir first time. He was here when I was doing an interview with Coach Anthony. He's been here the same exact time, so I don't understand this this Lopez thing. Just because I predict and just because I like what the the way that Teofimo Lopez and career is move is moving, because I'm look at the pushes that he has right now. We should congratulate him. All of us should congratulate fighters like that. Cause that's us. That's he's working for the fans. He's working for us. He's doing respect what the fans the of boxing wants. One fighter to do. To the game. You understand what I'm trying to say? So this ain't okay. no. This ain't no. I this see ain't no thing. I give everybody just do. Just like you're. Just like you're here. You could talk ma a man shit in another channel about me. I'm giving you up. You're not blocked. You're here. You go. You on the panel. So everybody welcome. Yeah, man. Everybody welcome. But just because. But just saying. because. Just because if L Dog, for example, is a Loma fan or or any other fan, I'm, and, and I disagree with you, then you're the asshole. You this? Nah, I'm not. I don't, I'm not on that type of time. You know, we talking boxing, right? And that's what I it agree. Is. But it sounds like a lot of people here are talking H money. I know, and you're here to promote him. The thing is, you don't even got to promote him. You know why, L Dog? Because he's not blocked. He could show up any time, and I will put him in the panel. That's what I'm saying. Nah, you don't got to come busy. here. You, that what? He's busy, man. He's making money. Movies. All right then. So let him be. So let him be. So let him be busy. But you hear? Yo, yo, I like how you. I like how you swinging those pom poms, L dog. They I look know. real good. You know, keep I swinging know. the H money pom poms. Hey man, why are you trying to be fucking racist, bro? Pom pom. Because because you know. Where the, I mean, where the, hell, where the hell racist came into man. cheerleading? What the what the hell racist? Leading. What are you talking about, L Dog? Man, You're trying like to turn something. Thing, it looked like it looked it looked like it looked like L Dog that your boy lost and you still. I seen how you was hollering and, and crying and bitching about Loma losing. So oh, it yeah. feels like so it feels like you're still not over that. Right? You're not, you're not nah, over man. it, and now you're creating false, um, intensive narratives to, to persuade people to think otherwise. I never knew Chili the pom poms was racist. Unless you actually, you know, a part of that in your real life. I don't know how is that racist, bro. Man, because there's, there's like a New Zealand dance, bro, that uses those things. Man, I don't know where you at. All I know is the first time I actually had a debate with you and I and I, and I I lit you and Camacho out the water, you went over there talking about you wanted to catch a fade with me. And you, you in know, New Zealand. So how much, look, how much, how much does that really say about you? 
saying that you want to catch a fade with somebody and you all the way in New Zealand. Man, get out of here. The sad part about it, the sad part about it is that these guys know boxing. They know. They're not dumb for boxing. But they rather they they rather they rather be um they rather put out an image that sound that that is uneducated, have an image out there that's that's you know immature, but then they know boxing. Like they could do something and they and they could educate somebody out there, whoever's listening, but they rather resort to being uneducated, being dumb, um sometimes what's up, punch? being a troll, being a troll. What's up, punch? What was good, Pete? You ra yeah, I'd rather resort to that. Like How you doing, time, man? we could all have fun at a particular time. But after a boxing, nah, but but, saying, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. But, I mean, but look, after look a boxing, because L dog, you know how to but talk boxing. Kids, right now, what you're doing is you want to sound, players. you want to sound, uh, uh, um, you know, like like an ass. But you know boxing, so why 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 you rather sound like a like, like a dickhead, but can't sound like a dude that knows boxing in the boxing channel? Nah, I'm just saying, man. I hear a lot of people talking. Why? Bad I'm asking you a question. Money. Why you rather resort being be be um talking like a dumbass, like if you don't know about boxing in a boxing channel? But you, ah, you, come you, on, you, you I know about boxing, dog over there. I'm not saying, but what, what, you listen to what I just said. I said I said that you know boxing. Why you reserve to be a dumbass and not talk about boxing in a boxing channel? Bro, that ain't what I do, man. I talk I boxing. You, you guys weren't even talking boxing. So no, if we want to talk boxing, boxing and you talk boxing, then stick to what you know. Because you was over there talking about how you want Deontay Wilder to die in the ring and laughing and stuff like that. I just thought it was one of those times that, you know, you've reached your, your lowest point of disrespecting the sport. Because obviously you don't show up at gyms. You never competed in the sport, amateur or professional. I and actually you did. to be very critical about saying that I had dementia about something. And I've, I've taken the light on you, man. I don't go in on little kids. I know you got mo a mother and father out there somewhere, l dog. But when you sit up here and have your little group of individuals co-signing you on another platform and you think that shit is cool to keep on rambling on and rambling on, when you up here saying you wish Deontay Wilder would have continued to get beat on and lose his life in the ring, Bro, what I'm saying is, I, and you know what, and you know what, I also world combat, you know, you know what, you, you know what, also world combat, that the the promotion that they do, I never hear nobody coming to channel saying, "Well, L Dog this and pumping L Dog." You do all the work, always. Do you got paid. I hope you're getting compensated for this. P hey, two, y'all pump everybody else, but ain't nobody coming over here pumping y'all. The MXBC is undefeated. Oh, listen, I came here to talk about Haiti, yeah? Man, that sounds so childish. That sounds so fucking childish, bro. Listen, I came I listen, I came here... Listen, I came here to talk about Haiti. We don't care what you came here to talk about, bro. You got to talk about what we're talking about. Nah, but this one it is. That's why I have him. Look, he got rap star on his thing. They rap star don't even got a channel yet. I'm all in You're going to be doing your thing, my brother. I know. Rap star, I never heard of him. you got your channel, you're going to be rising. They already got you he, I'm all in his head, don't you know? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I don't even know him. Yo, Rapstar, I don't even know him. I, Rapstar, I don't even get that. I mean, think about the logic of the IQ of this boy. Think about that. At the end, he's going to get found out. And he's going to look stupid. I mean, no one else. Rapstar, bro, you still owe P-Boxing money, man. I mean, that's how fake you both sound, right? With this MXBC, you know, toilet shit. You're both childish, man. We Let's undefeated, talk. bro. Listen, you need so I, you're I, undefeated. I bought with... the shit. Yo, rap star, I bought the shares of MXBC. I bought the shares. I mean, is that why it's still going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> man. I'm just saying, rap star. Okay, look, oh, rap star. Rap star doesn't want to pay his debt. He doesn't want to pay his debt. That's why I came on here. Hey, bro. I want to ask P. I want to ask a P. L. Dog, were you over here for the interview? That you know, punch hey, drunk. P, don't get scared. You don't need to send no more. One of the best there. interviews be scared, P. that that but, pretty much debunked a lot of information that's being recredited out here on the social media about you know the ducking Lomachenko ducking Devin Haney, and then not being the mandatory. Um, the words that Mauricio Suleiman was talking about, who's the ruler of the lightweight division. Um, were you able to check that out? And what did you think about? You know the arrows as they continued to punch his heart while he was trying to stay afloat. Bro, I didn't check that out, but listen, I'm gonna say this: Tiafima Lopez is not undisputed. 
I, I just want you to answer the question. Did you see the interview? It was one of the best interviews that happened. Bro, didn't you with, listen to me? I started my sentence with, 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 I didn't watch the interview. I don't listen to that guy no more. I, I don't listen to Marisha Shalman no more because he fucked no, over Devin Haney. The interview when I had Devin, with Bill Haney. I'm talking about the interview I had with Bill Haney. The Bill I mean, Haney one. I, 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 I listened to, you know, listen yeah. to that one. I listened to that one. Listen, uh, I know he wasn't the monetary, but listen, Devin Haney was supposed to fight Luke Campbell, and Marisha Solomon fucked him over, and everyone knows okay. that. So, at the end of the day, we have to look at it. The real picture is people want to call Devin Haney an email champion, yeah? But guess what? He was supposed to fight Luke Campbell. Now, Luke Campbell okay. is going to be fighting Ryan Garcia. For, so, for uh -huh. some reason, yeah, Luke Campbell, yeah, he gets beaten up by everyone, yeah? But he's he's kind of the gatekeeper to the to be like um to fight for a championship belt. Look, if Ryan Garcia okay. beats him, yeah, he's gonna be facing like Teofimo Lopez just because he beat Luke Campbell. Like Lomachenko yeah. beat Luke Campbell. You know what I mean? Like Luke yeah. Campbell, who the hell is Luke Campbell? Lenares beat him. Like anyone can beat so, him. But, all right, so so the other guys gotta make those type of decision as well. Fight, fight, fight a key holder. A, yeah, a but that's gatekeeper. what he's gonna do though. Haney was supposed to fight fucking Luke Campbell, but guess what? Marisha Salomon fucked him over. That's why I don't care about Marisha Salomon. You know what I mean? Okay, so you don't care about WBC. Marisha Salomon. Uh, you, don't, you don't care about Marisha Salomon on the WBC, right? Yeah, fuck the WBC. I don't give a fuck okay, about that Okay, so, then. So, so, fuck, so fuck the Devin Haney belt, right? <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is oh, no, basically... No, no, no. Yeah. Answer the question. Ask the question. <laughs> fuck, the, um, fuck Marisha Salomon on the WBC, so fuck the, the belt that Devin Haney got too, right? Exactly, but hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. All right, right, right. So, 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 right. So, all right, yeah. you fucked up. So, um, this just me, you, Pete. So, so you fucked. So, fuck, fuck the WBC, Mauricio Sudamon, Devin Haney's belt. So who's undisputed right now? Hear me out, though. Hear me out. Wait, wait, answer, me the out answer the question. Answer the question, right quick. Okay. Answer how did. Okay. Who's, wait, wait. No, no, fuck, did, no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Don't, don't leave. Don't, no, no, no. Fuck the Mauricio Sudamon, the WBC, and the belt that Devin Haney. You already said fuck that. Fuck the green belt, I'm saying. Okay, fuck okay, the green belt. Okay, so, green belt so, who's un, so, who's undisputed right now? The undisputed guy is uh, Teofimo Lopez. And I'll tell okay. you what, how he became. But at the same time, you have to understand me as well. All he right. beat Luke Campbell. And he, you know what I mean? Like, but at the same time, you know, at the end of the day, Haney was supposed to fight Lomachenko. So let them fight now. And he's, he's undisputed. So let, give the chance to Haney. You know, you're a fighter. You're a man. You know what I mean? The, the kids chatting shit about you. Fight him. Fight him. He's got clout. People going to buy the fights. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. Why, why, hey, why, don't we, see, why, why don't we promote that fight? Why don't I, we promote the fight? No, I, I want to see Hane, Haney. I, how many times? I don't know if you listen, but I listen. No, I, I do said, listen. I said, Tio Fimo Lopez, if, I'm going to say it again. Yeah, I could record it again. If Tio Fimo Lopez does not fight the winner of John Taylor Ramirez next, next, if that's not his next fight, if he stays in 135, I would like to see Tio versus Haney. Listen. What I'm that, look, look, listen, I said it right, but what I said is that the mass, but me understanding the pulse of the boxing world, not narratives, but the boxing world worldwide. If these are going to be three crucial fights, if Tank Davis does his thing versus Leo Santa Cruz, in that moment, people are going to be talking about Tank Davis and Teofimo Lopez. If maybe to open up his, his mouth and, and say Teofimo Lopez. That machine is gonna be is gonna overwhelm any machine that Haney that 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 Haney got. Then I, so then follow up the Javante Tan Davis beating Leo Santa Cruz and moves over to Haney versus Gamboa. Haney will have to win in a spectacular fashion versus Gamboa. I'm talking about retirement. I'm not talking about the Santiago type of performance. I'm talking about a spectacular performance. Knock him out. 2019. A win is a win. A, a win is a win. No, a win no, 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 no. No, that's case. what I mean. Not, it's so, a, a win. A win is a win. No, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because I'm a boxing oh, fan first. I want to see the best fight the best. Haney exactly. versus Tiafimo is best fighting the best. Why it's, not gonna, it's not. It's not going to be. It's not going to. It's not going to be that. It's, that's what I'm saying. Look, Dude, in my opinion, look, 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 look. See, in my it. opinion, in your opinion, but let's not act like we don't know boxing either. In your opinion, and in my opinion, I want to see Haney and To next at 135. But that doesn't mean I can't understand what's also going to be going on. If Javante Tank Davis wins his next fight. And Floyd Mayweather is screaming Tank and Devin H and, 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 and Tio and Tank got yeah. more fans yeah. than Haney. Well, that's makes Haney gonna, better than um. That's gonna be the fight. If Ryan, Ryan Garcia yeah. follow up, follow up, um, Devin Haney's performing and beating Luke Campbell, 
in, in a spectacular fashion. Remember, he's the underdog, and that's the most credible opponent. No, he's not the um, underdog. He's the most credible opponent, bro. bro he is underdog. On, They're gonna have Let, me tell, Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The best, probably. the best, the best boxer at uh, one thirty-five right now is Devin Haney. Okay. See that's everyone see, nah, knows nah, that. Nah, 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 you want to lie to yourself? How? 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 How you gonna say that, Pete? Don't give nobody extra credit. Fighters the don't way need he extra fights, credit. The technique, you know, the no, 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 no. Right. no, no we acting people. like we don't know about He's boxing. Right. Now you pushing a narrative. He hasn't He's done that. Pound for pound guy, the top pound for pound guy. He shut him down. So how is how's his ring IQ? How is it not up there with the best in the game and lightweight division? And, and you all up here advocating that Devin Because Haney his opportunity got stolen from him. His opportunity but look, by who? Was he to fight to, to, the opportunity his opportunity has, got stolen from him. Pete, the opportunity is separate from the performance. You get the opportunity, that doesn't mean you seize the moment. To be honest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, 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 I'm gonna be brutal honest. I'm gonna be brutal honest. Are you gonna be honest, Pete? Yeah, Tio Fimo Lopez won that fight, but it wasn't as easy as what people are making out to be. No, 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 no. Not injury. supposed to be easy. He's fighting the pound for pound. Best, That's best right, fighting man. the best. Best fighting the best is never supposed to be easy. Never. Canelo versus uh, um Triple G is not supposed to be easy. The best fighting the best is a guy that had a soldier injury. Oh, here we go, Listen, man. A guy that had an injury. He, don't have you know, too. he couldn't he even knock him out. Bro, okay, but listen. I'm not supposed to knock out. I'm not. I'm not saying Tio. Would lose to Haney. I actually think Tia would beat Haney. What do you I'm think? Just what, saying, what do you I'm think about Lomachenko, boxing... L dog? Wait, what? What do you think about Lomachenko and how how Tia from Lopez whoop his ass? How do you think about that? I scored the fight to draw. That was an injured. You did. Of you did. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pull, pull, pull your audio right now. What you think about the fight? So say it right now to us. Ah oh, man, that was when I was drunk after. <laughs> the I'm gonna pull your audio right now. Guys. That was late night. That was late night. Just, so, so so just say it live right now. What do All you right. think? Beef, when I beef scored the for... fight, when I scored the fight live, I had a eight rounds to four. Maybe I had it. I gave him the first seven, and I gave him the twelfth. Integrity is everything. But when I rewatched Tell it us right now live, how do you see Lomachenko? Bruh, I'm gonna pull, I'm, I'm pull, I'm, I'm oh, pull the man, audio. He's right a now. Great white hype. There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's what I'm talking about. Man, so you an that's... asshole for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but but listen, I'm, I'm hey, gonna say this. I, look, rewatching it, I I think Yo. the second round, the seventh round, a swing rounds. If anyone deserved to win, it was Tio. Yo, that the, second round, I'm gonna say like this. That second round was Andre Ward drunk right there because the second round Lomachenko landed two punches, bro. Two punches. Hey, has anyone heard that Lomachenko is asking for a rematch? Has anyone heard of anything like this yet? Yeah, he, I heard something like that, but I didn't so know if it's coming out of his point? mouth. Does that not hey, still, and does that say not he's not getting him? shit? Yeah, but does that not still put him in the uh, in, in in the situation uh, with Lopez's next fight if he wants a rematch? Would the numbers be big, Punch? The but rematch? Up, yeah. To be uh, this, this yeah, it would, it would be it would be just as big as the first, in my opinion. Th this is my opinion. I feel like the that fight was the the my score was wide, one seventeen, one eleven. Mm. So I only like seeing rematches where it was a close fight, and Bro, also that the was last. A close fight. To be and, honest, it was a close fight. All right, and I'm just saying in my opinion. I'm asking what y'all feel about what I think, right? So mm. I feel I scored a one seventeen, one eleven. Um, it wasn't a close fight. It was um, and I feel like we walked into a new a new era. I'm happy about that. I'm happy about this young era. I'm happy about the Devin Haney's and the and the Ryan Garcia. And I I like I like so I'm just we move into a new era. That's it. And just because and, and remember, so why don't you want every, to see them fight each other? And remember, I do. I just said it. I do. He just had shoulder shoulder surgery, so so that's gonna be the next excuse. And the, yeah, and, and 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 then put it this way, also put it this way. I already said about that. I want to see Tio fight these guys, but you can't tell me that fighting Ramirez or Taylor is not greater. But that's gonna take time because they're gonna Was fight. Was greater. Ramirez and Lopez, bro. It's, it's Mexico and Honduras. You know, that's, Man, that's a good Taylor's fight to gonna promote. Move both of their asses. Don't worry about that. What I'm saying is that and fight's then, gonna happen. And then what's greater? Extent. And then what's greater? Taylor, Taylor, Tio, or Tio, Haney, Tio, Tang, Tio. What's greater? Uh, but here's the no. thing, Punch. You gotta understand. No. They're fighting early next year. By the time they fight, 
Let's say Tio fights the winner. Great fight. I like that fight. Yeah, but, but I when don't they fight, why it'll be hold up, rap style. That's cool, but I'm gonna finish. When when uh when they fight, it'll be late next year. Why should Tio wait out all that time when he could fight Devin Haney in the meantime? Look, like Punch said, right? Even I would like him to fight Haney next. But if he stays at 135, Punch is right. If Mayweather and Tank make noise, depending on this. Nah, Tank's man, no buts. Listen, before you butt, he just fucking listen for once. And, you know, be respectful as well. So before he butt, uh, before uh, uh, Haney really wants to get that fight and the public demand for it, if Mayweather and Tank, if Tank's performance is just outstanding and Mayweather goes in the ring and Tank says, I want Lopez next, it's an easy win. That fight could be generated as a bigger check as well. I mean, logically, you just got to look at it as a check cutting business. Everybody knows this is a check cutting business before anything else. So, does do you think Tank's fight is bigger than Haney's fight if Tank has a mind blowing performance? That's what I'm asking. Bro, listen, I'm a boxing fan. All right, I want to see undisputed at 135. Just, I'm just asking you that question. Is, I don't would, care what's the more popular fight. I care the what's question, the more me. So therefore, you meaningful know that meaningful fight the for scenes, the sport. So you know, behind the scenes, L Dog, the popular fight, what we want, sometimes gets taken over by the where the money is. You do know that, right? Okay, wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Because of Instagram, fan. I'm not a fan of the fucking Listen, business. Wait, 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 wait. Do you know? Yeah, most of those Instagram followers are women. Do you think they're actually gonna buy the the fight? Are you having a laugh? That doesn't hey, translate you know, money. Bro. Just because you got seven million fucking subscribers on Instagram doesn't mean they're all going to buy it. Let's not lie to ourselves. You know what I mean? Bob Arum is a fool. He's calling for that fight next. You know what? That's the biggest mistake he can make. Let's get the Haney fight. You know, that's going to make more money than, than the Garcia fight. You know what I mean? At the you end of the day... Bob Arum a lot of things, but you can't call him a fool. The dude is a, a master at this shit, and he's very fucking greedy. He's got dementia. Uh, he's, got, he's got is dementia. That, is that a star different... avatar that you have on, bro? Is that you? He's or got... Like that's a... I don't know. I found that picture on the internet somewhere. Like apparently, oh. the guy, this guy is a fraud. The picture that I got, I don't know if that's a rap star, but I've been told it's a fraud. But anyway, beside the point. Listen, okay. I can't believe I'm in your head day and night. <laughs> bes besi 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 beside that point, okay. And I don't know who was laughing just now, but if you can be quiet. He's a great white hype. He's a piece of shit. Yeah, man, that's <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking hype It's job, good to have man. a laugh. The guy can't Listen. box this shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look. Okay, okay. That's how you feel about Loma. All right, all right. Oh, duh. Man, I can't lie, man. When I was watching that fight, I was like, man, this shit is fixed. Oh, man. <laughs> but then, you know, the injury came out. The, the inactivity and things started making sense to me. I was like, that's why he didn't throw punches. Yo, Listen. rap star, rap star. You, you trying to get in and lap top or something? There's another rap star on the, in, in the backstage. Who's that? Right. Um, Just bring him in. No, rap star is right here. What do you mean? Bring yeah, bring, him let's see. Let's see oh, who is. See him. No, he no, out. I'm running like that. It is him because he, he dropped boxing, out. Why would I want? Why would I want to bring the other another P boxing if I no, got no, P boxing? Here. No, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone now. Okay. Okay. He's not on the screen. But uh, but uh, listen, let's fight for this undisputed. Everyone wants it. We already okay. have an Ryan undisputed, Garcia. man. The WBC yeah, said no, we don't. Want it. Because let me say this. We already have say, an undisputed. What's up? Think about what undisputed means. What does it mean? Just as a word. There is no oh, dispute. There's no, there's no dispute? All right. There is really Since no dispute. Since Haney holds there's that no WBC dispute. belt, there will always be a dispute. Well, you could say from New Zealand and I could say you're lying. And that's a dispute right there. No, 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 no. I'm here in the UK and I'm disputing against as well. No, right. the the world, we don't believe you. We don't believe disputing. you. We don't believe you need more people. I, I'll put it this way. Do a poll. The world is Do disputing right now. Do a poll. Do a poll like Listen, I did. I'm going to give a great analogy here. Glenn goes by the name Major Key Boxing, but he is not the undisputed Major Key Boxing because I dispute <laughs> oh, his claim since Al Hefe is the real Major Key Boxing. Because his channel was the first one, and Glenn's channel came out about four days ago. There we go. Here so we you were not the undisputed anyway, Major Key Boxing. I I'm undisputed that. in the eyes of pugilists. Only fools and casuals don't know that. That's the way I put it.
I mean, why, why, why don't they sell it in person, you know, and, um, you know, the way it's supposed to, and, and, and the loser gives up the channel. Put it this way. I would know. How, how about you show the face to see if that's the real major key boxing? Um, no, but that channel oh, came out before him. What so channel? channel came out? Three, I don't three, know. Three, now you stand there. Stop leaving yeah. comments there on my videos, bro. Wait, wait, <laughs> no, 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 cool? was, no, no. I was supporting it, but it's not. Yeah, that's get out of here, bro. Point. No, 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 Go to MajorKeyBoxing.com and you will find out who the real Major Key Who's is. Major Key Boxing on Boxing Facebook, is. on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube? It's me, my motherfucker. You could, see, you could date back videos four months ago with me talking about it. You could hear uh, El Jefe on this channel saying, uh, deflecting a question that punch at them saying, I don't know, ask Major Key. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah, we dug. Oh, we, he has all the collateral social media. Bro, we own the website. Know, we own name, the website. Man. Therefore, there's a website. Have you got a oh, website? You said bro? we own oh, dog. So, so you in it? You so you in it too? In the, yeah, you in, you, in, in, you, in, the, you in it too in the fuck? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, oh, he oh, is. Oh, oh. That's, he, that's the he's the lawyer. He, he is. He's the lawyer. You said he's the lawyer. He's part of it. He's part of it. But listen, listen, major key. No, you already said that. Say guilty. Guilty? Well, you know what I'm saying. In the court of law, you you're already wrong like that. You know okay, what I'm listen. Saying? But listen, how how are we gonna settle it? Because your channel came out three days ago, <laughs> four days There's ago. No so, what you talking about? What you talking about? I'm I'm a hammer, you guys, bro. I'm a sledgehammer, you guys. Little by little, <laughs> I'm a sledgehammer, you, you guys. You're gonna you're gonna have to give up. You're gonna retreat. Uh, yeah, but you made. And we actually you made have an offer for you, Major Key, like a, a terms. There's no so, offers, you know, bro. Like, you no, nah, nah, here's our offer. You pay us 10 grand and we'll stop trolling you for a month. Yo, bro, if anything, I'll pay 500 and get that shit under my name. I'll get MXBC under my fucking name if you want it like that. Hey, I'll pay you. 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 <laughs> and that's the point that we try to make with the Haney one. That's the point. That's the point that we try to make with the Haney. That's what I'm saying about Haney. Haney. There is no point, man. It's worry now. So, so what's gonna happen, Pete? What's gonna happen? So what's Haney, gonna happen? okay. So Haney, so Haney versus Tio. What Marisa Sudamon is gonna come? On. Okay, oh, and, but and sorry, I, I, and sorry, they. Uh, for a year, I've been saying that the winner would be the undisputed of Gomi, the Ofimo, the Ofimo. He's a little scared, bitch. I said it, and you know what? Uh, this is the real undisputed, ladies and gentlemen. A little scared, Yes, bit. yes. I'm sorry, I lied. Wait, I go, this Bristol. is the one I want What's everybody that, old to man? What are you going to do? You're 50 years old. Yeah, that's what you think. Okay, you listen, we're, we're talking boxing think. right now. We're listen, being respectful to You're a little scared bitch. We're talking to boxing. That. We all know how scared you are. Everyone knows where I left. That's fine. Listen, just carry right. Yeah, punch, carry on. Mr. Yeah, Mushan, carry on. And, and, and this is what I mean. So what they're going to do? What were we so on the WBC going to do that? Oh, I'm sorry. This is the real undisputed? Is that's the way they're going to... <laughs> I That's think ruler, ruler was the key word. Ruler. This is why since day one, since day one, instead of people out there trying to justify whatever, y'all should have asked the same question I was asking Bill. Why you're not going to the WBC and Mauricio Sudamon when he's saying that? Is it false advertisement? Yeah. Is it false advertisement? Couldn't answer the question? There you go. Because Sudamon is undisputed. a trustworthy representative of the WBC. Or how about yeah, yeah, he represents the WBC, at it. but as all a right, secondary right. champion in the Mauricio Sudamon's eyes, he right, doesn't represent though. the WBC. Listen, listen to this though. Listen to this though. Yeah, obviously I don't give a shit about the WBC, but guess what? I'm not the one that's holding the WBC. Devin Haney's holding that WBC, and he believes he's the rightful owner of the WBC. Do you understand? No, my WBC opinion doesn't the matter. The rightful owner because they could take it away and give it anytime they want. Like no, 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 no. Because I was, I was listening to it. Hold on, did they did this past year? They did that. Did okay. They take the away there's from an interview. You? There's an interview um, from uh, Marisha Sermon done an interview the but other day. Let me ask you a question: Did they take away the belt of Devin Haney this year? Yes, they did because did they he had the surgery. Did they but give listen, it back? they gave it back to him because he's the so rightful they owner. It, they could take it and give it back. Oh, oh, time out, time out, time out! Look at this. Look at this. They took it away from Devin Haney, but they didn't take it away from Earl Spence that had a car accident that was injured too. Why they didn't take it away from Earl Spence? Right now, the, the thing is, they're not gonna take because he didn't make the right pressure. comment, bro. He, he, you know why they didn't the, take it? Do you, you know what? You know why they didn't take it away from Earl Spence? Because Earl Spence is a real WBC he's champion. He's, 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 he feel, he's feeling the with Earl Spence. He's feeling the pressure right now. You understand? So that's why he's not gonna take it away no more. But listen to this, though. Yeah, 
that fight needs to happen. Listen, that, that fight needs to happen regardless. We ain't stopping it. Um, we're going to be talking about it. You know what I mean? A lot of people are talking about it already. Listen, Teofimo Lopez is a good champion. He's a great champion, okay? He beat someone that was considered as number one, even though to me, he was a number one. To me, you know, Lomachenko, uh, you know, everyone knows what I think of him. He was overrated. I don't give a shit what you guys think. You know what I mean? He was a great white hope, like El Dog said. But listen, at the end of the day, it is what it is. come on this fucking show and show respect, yeah? Don't fucking listen. come on shows and don't show respect. You're like a little sport, bro. Oh, listen, shut up, man. Respect. But doesn't Ray get to serve a shot right if he wins? He's, like that, he's losing his don't cool. He's losing his cool. Bitch. Stop losing who your you cool. Think, who, you think, who you think Ryan Garcia would like to face if he beat Luke Campbell? Haney? Ryan Garcia. We know what's going to happen because you know why? They're trying to set that fight with Which? fucking uh, with, with, with Teofimo Lopez because he's got the 7 million followers on Instagram. Do you understand? That's what Bob Aaron was saying. We're looking at Ryan Garcia. But that's 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 how's that fucking fair? What do you Just mean? What do you, you mean? Campbell. What do you mean? What's fair? That's why I said, my brother. This is why. I, hey, I'm not gonna say jumping what I jumping what on on the on on what I, my perspective on what I believe in. But that's why I said since day one, since the day they elevated Lumachenko, since day one, I said drop the belt. It will make you look small. Instead of saying, yo, punch, you're hating on Haney, y'all should have been, y'all should have been on that train and the in the valuing and going after the WBC. Now people want to go after the WBC. Now there's channels that's yo, the WBC. Now I was on that shit way, way before. No, 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 no. We were people were on that shit as well. Listen, let's be real. You, the WBC, you can't, they you can't over. have you, no, you no, no, can't have fucked, one foot in and one foot out. You can't say over. you can't say you're saying it now, but every, but 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 most people that feel the same way. If you feel like the WBC and Mauricio Sudamon is trash and fuck the WBC, then you also have to say fuck the WBC that the, the belt that Devin Haney has. But you can't say, oh well, no, fuck Mauricio Sudamon, fuck the w no. I'm not saying that you I saying. I'm just saying people in general. I'm not uh, the people that's gonna say fuck the WBC, fuck Mauricio Sudamon, but then they can't say, well, Devin Haney is the real champion. No, no, no. You gotta say fuck the WBC and his belt too. Well, the WBC and I'll say who, fuck, who, fuck who, the who, franchise belt. So now fuck the WBC and who's undisputed. If we all no. in the same boat, punch yo punch. Sorry to interject, bro, but yo, is that the real smoke in the comments, bro? Because I haven't seen smoke in like a month. Get the smoke. That's the real get the smoke. Why? Awesome, Why does it matter? What, what, Why do what, you have what, to put straight on the comment? I haven't. So, yo, get the smoke always has a great perspective, man, and we having a debate here. You know what I'm saying? The link is there, man. If he wants it, he can come. But listen, stop worrying about uh, uh, other men. Listen, um, why, why are you over here talking about other men yourself? What you talking about, man? You know what I'm saying? You come here all the time. We're talking about boxing, man. Let the BBC in it. We're talking about boxing, Glenn. Glenn, stop losing your cool. We're talking about boxing. Yo, yo, who, who's the avatar? Who's the avatar that you have? It's another man, isn't it? On this panel? So what you talking about? He got to pee. We're talking about boxing. Got to pee on that one. He got you, Pete. The problem is, Glenn Avery, Glenn Avery, listen, just chill. That's it. Yeah. Fatality. He got you on that. One. That, he got that, you. that picture is someone called Frost Star. Like, apparently, you know, yeah. they, uh, they, sure, they've been so doing... Are you worried about another man? Frost Star? He's that's always it. worried about another man. That's why... You know, hey, yo. Hey, yo. It's really? All I got to say is, basically, my body is dying. I got 2%. Look, it's 2020, you know. You know, people are more acceptance to, you know... Same sex, picture, but listen, bro, yeah? that picture will listen, a whole fruit. Listen, keep looking at that listen, picture. Li that picture listen, 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 listen. Fruit, I don't even know who's this guy. What is he talking about? Was what is what's what's this person talking about? I came here to talk about Haney and Haney alone. Do you know what I mean? Man, but you're and not listen, respectful. Listen, you're not listen, respectful not, not about boxing. I can, I can hear like I can, I, I can hear like a weird feedback, but listen, uh, punch yeah. Mr. Moonshine. All I gotta say is because I got two percent. Listen, You're at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I care about, what I care, what I think about the WBC, because it's not gonna matter, okay? I can't do nothing about it. But all I'm saying is listen, let's let's do what's right. Let's get this fight done. Punch. This fight is all the fights fight are the right. Best. That's my point. Punch. All the fights are you worried? Okay, punch, punch, punch. I sense it, punch. that you're worried for Tio. They don't get it. No, all the fights are right. All the fights are right. You, the fights are right. you can't deny that. No, 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 no. Yes, no, no, yo, no, no, yo a Tio, a Tio in the tank is a good fight. A Tio and a no, Haney is a good fight. Like, a Tio and a Ryan Garcia, if he beats, if they all good fights, you can't. He beats both of them. He beats. I'm telling you now, Tio. What I'm saying is a good fight. 
it's a good fight until you're going to Haney, and trying to become undisputed see, you know. in 140 is good for him. Tio is in a okay. good position. But there's a problem. Tio's in, Tio, Tio in a perfect position, in a position that a lot of fighters are not in. That any any fight, any next fight, and all these names are all good money fights. There's a, there's a him, problem though. For him. There's a, listen, I got I got one percent on my body. Teofimo Lopez, Teofimo yeah. Lopez versus listen. Tank pay per view. Would you buy? Yes or no? Yes, I would. I would watch any fights. I watch Palms fight as well. But listen, it, it doesn't matter what I think. Listen, at the end of the day, listen, he You're beats Ryan, he beats Tank, and that's it. You're at the, the end of the day, listen. At the, at the end, I don't. I can hear feedback. I don't know yeah, what's going on, but my body's dying. I think, and that's why. But listen, Mr. Moonshine, I can only hear Mr. Moonshine. Listen. Mr. Musha is speaking, so I'm speaking. Get the fuck um, off. All I'm saying is basically, let's get fuck this off. fight. Because he beats, he beats Ryan, he beats Tank. We don't want to see that shit. We, we want to see, <laughs> we want to see him fight him. That's shit. it. And I'm um, out. Uh, anyway, anyway, peace to you, Mr. Moonshine, and the other people in the panel. And, and, wait, and wait, by, by the way, Glenn, by, by the way, Glenn, keep looking at that. You need to picture. change your channel name, man. That picture's gonna pop. Nah, you, you need to be back in. Peace out, bro. You know what? The fans don't get. What we're the, preaching, the fans are damn, not bro. listening, bro. They're not listening yeah. to you, Punch. The W. Your rap star, they leave in groups. They leave in groups, especially yeah, all of a sudden they got two percent. Now they get the smokers trying to come in. Get the smokers trying to come in. Now they got two percent. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rap star, finish up. Yo, so let me say saying? something, bro. Yo, so <laughs> the fans don't get it. The people don't fucking get it. They're not listening. The W. Nah, they are. They are listening, rap. They listening. Bro, Trust me, but listen. Listening. Why are you not listening, everyone? The WBC has a big hole to do with the next fight. Why the fuck don't everybody understand that the WBC has everything to do with the next fight? If they let Theofimo go what way they want as an elite champion, then they're pushing different narratives themselves. They're not yeah. encouraging the Devin Haney fight in front of everybody in the fucking world. They're exactly. not encouraging it. They're saying that's our other champion. This is our elite champion. Where the elite champion can move in different directions. And Devin Haney's in mandatory position for Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia. So they themselves are not pushing for the fight. Exactly. Why the fuck don't anybody get this? Oh, get the smoke. We're about to get the, we're about to get the smoke, bro. Exactly. He's no, not on backstage. He's not backstage yet. The WBC has a lot to do with this fucking fights. They have got a big they're like the mafia of this fucking uh, boxing when it comes to their titles. Uh, in the case of uh, Canelo Alvarez, and now uh, Teofimo Lopez, who defeated Lomachenko, and is the undisputed lightweight champion uh, without any questions. Uh, he's the, the ruler on that division. Right. Exactly. That's it. Yeah, but the thing is, they're not even saying that our other champion. That's is like me saying. Position. That's like me saying that my that my mom is my mom, and my mom tells everybody, no, 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 no. That's not my son, really. My son is this one. But mom. But you know what? Mom. I was hoping. I was hoping he was gonna say. <laughs> I was hoping he was gonna say, punch that our other champion is in line, mandatory position to fight Theofimo. But he didn't say nothing. Yeah, I, you want, know, and I want people to disagree with me, the ones that disagree with me, to actually take that energy and go and go find Mauricio Sudamon, tweet, message him, or whatever. Don't, that because I'm only I'm only going by with the WBC with the with with, with, with the WBC sugar daddy Mauricio Sudamon is saying. <laughs> and perhaps uh, that's what I gotta say too. Like like me and look, I get what you're trying to say, bro. Like like you know what I mean? It's confusing as hell, and, and people some people want to see Devin Andy because of that. But at the end of the day, that's not gonna make this 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 kid that just put his uh, his his whole life and dedicated his his craft to fighting who uh, a lot of people considered pound for pound. You know whether it was one, two, or three, put his career on the line. You know what I mean, and, and risked his own just for that and achieved greatness. You know what I'm saying? So so you know you you got that dude right that did that. Then you got uh, Devin Haney in the background. And now the dude deserves to make his money. And that's basically what it is. So I get what you're saying. You Maybe you want to see it just to shut him up. And see a female has kind of like hinted at that as what well, is so. Like, hey, you know, if I fight him, you know what I'm saying, it's just to shut him up. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he's trying to make money. And the bigger money fights is not Haney. It's, it's, it's Javante and Ryan Garcia. Grand, you know, uh, if they win. Yeah, uh, uh, hey, what's up, guys? What's up, Glenn? What up, Smoke? What up? What's up, Moonshine? 
What's up, Simone? What's um, yeah, it's been a minute. So they, you know, Tia was it was only had one belt the last time we talked. What's uh, up, no, Smoke? Not, Have mercy on not, us, bro. Yeah, what's up, man? man? What's up? What's up? Look at that, Smoke, man. It was man. All, all right, we're talking about the Xerox belt. You holding up? We got an email <laughs> belt and a Xerox belt, but it's all on Haiti nah. to get. Uh, yeah, okay. Nah, he got that franchise, and he got that. And he got that. Here we go. Here we go. So you were saying put the uh, the pressure on um, on Mauricio Suleiman. I don't know if you saw the uh, the interview from the other day, but my man did exactly what you said. Like talk to Mauricio Suleiman and asked him straight up, "Who's the champion? Is it Tiafimo or is it uh, Haney?" And uh, Mauricio said, "I don't understand the question." Like what he what, well there you go he don't understand what, the question what, 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 yeah I, I know he don't I, I mean he had to ask three four times and what Mauricio Suleiman said was we have a lot of great fighters and it's a great tournament that that's pretty much the same response say, he say, he he say, like he couldn't just say like what you're saying it's Tio right that's not what his answer was his answer was I don't understand the question right and neither do we because you know why because this because Mauricio Suleiman is trying to play us all. He, he thinks that he can unilaterally declare who's undisputed. He, he, and, or he and ESPN can bilaterally declare who's undisputed. You know what? They just don't have the power. It's, it's cool if you want to talk about it and fight. And it's, one of his things was, hey, why don't you guys keep fighting about it? That's Mauricio Suleiman's solution to this whole mess that's Mauricio Suleiman created. You guys, yeah, you know, I'm not interested in fighting about some nonsense that Mauricio Suleiman created. I, in my opinion, I'm not, I'm not even fighting. I'm just I'm def, I'm I'm actually clarifying if in my opinion. Yeah, but I'm no, but I'm saying he's not clarifying it. How because because it because you, because you know why? Because the only thing is 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 I think the on, only thing that's pushing it is is Devin Haney, but he's not pushing it with everybody else. It, no, it's not anybody pushing anything. It's whoever is the the fight. ESPN pushed something that isn't true. Mauricio Suleiman is pushing it on, on one day. He's pushing one thing and then pushing something else on a different day. And now he's saying for us that for, you know, to get actual to promote his nonsense, we should argue amongst ourselves about who's really the champ. How about no? How about hey, I, like, Fimo, I like what Tia Fimo said. He said, like, I want to go see this dude, whether he wh whether it's to shut him up, to end his career, whatever the hell it is. He's calling out that dude. Right, I love I love the energy from Tio. As a matter of fact, Tio I'm gonna just go back since I said I, you know, the last time we spoke, he only had one uh, one belt. Tio Fimo called the shot. He did some Muhammad Ali stuff. Chased the man down, they harangued him until he till he got in the ring. They try to make him take short money. He was like, Nah, I want my I want my market worth, and I'm gonna go in there and beat up this boy. They, he not and he carried the promotion and he carried the fight. He fought his fight the entire time, dictated the pace. Love Tia Fimo. Then even afterwards, he he called out the guy to clear up all of this controversy. So we don't even have to talk about Xerox belts or email belts or Fugazi belts or franchise belts. Like, all of that stuff, man, that is for Mauricio Suleiman to gas us up. That's it. Hold on. Give, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, hold on. Carlo. What's up? What's, What's good? Up? I'm good. How are you guys? I just got off work, and as soon as I saw moonshine on, I'm like, I should hop on and support my friend here. How are That's you guys talking. today? That's what I'm talking about, Kylo. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Uh, what's happening? What are you guys talking about? I just got on. Well, we talking about the the fight with Lippin. Yeah, after that, <clears throat> I mean, doing a recap on that fight. Now we are talking about the To, um, and his next opponent, which should be Haney or Tank or Ryan, and right. also clarifying Mauricio Sudamon's um, um, sabotaging this whole shit. But nice, nice. That's right, why. So that's why in the beginning. That's why I always said and there was debating. Remember, remember, remember. I'm um, smoke. I was saying morally. Morally, guys, so so fuck the what what what, what people what, what the what the WBC or whatever, but morally, that's why I said morally. We we all know what we saw October 17th, ladies and gentlemen. We all know what we saw. Right. I just yeah, no, what well, we said well, we definitely uh, saw a passing of the torch, right? We saw a new king of the division. Uh, only thing they didn't they just needed to stop taking it too far, right? Stop taking it past the truth. We saw a lot of there's enough of what we saw, there's enough of the truth there to be completely ecstatic and proud and all that stuff. We don't need the controversy. It's just my fault. Let Carlo finish. Let Carlo finish. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, I just want to shout out to the to the uh, panel, Major Key. 
Uh, subscribe yeah, to his channel. Uh, get smoke. What's up, brother? It's been quite a while since I talked to you. Um, Wap Stars, my dude. It's nice. World Combat Sports. I, I I like your channel too, man. It's great, great stuff there. What's up? What's up? Appreciate uh, it. What's up? You know, um, to be honest, the the when I saw the fight, like was it yesterday? Was it yesterday? I believe I can't remember now. With the uh, <clears throat> which um. Well, the Latin Estrada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chocolatito. Yeah, Chocolatito. I'm kind of I'm happy for my dude that he came back. Um. Uh, you know the the interesting about that fight, I'm like thinking to myself, man, if he if he keeps going like this, he 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 just revived his career. You know, I mean, like, himself. yeah, he's like he's kind of like a mini Pacquiao. You know how Pacquiao just lost a couple times, but he's coming back with big wins, and that was yeah. a huge win for him. And I was really happy for that dude because he's been through a lot, and you know, I think he I think he uh, I think he's uh, ready to take on more fights. Uh, he is old, like he's he's not he he is an old fighter, right? So. But he, he, he can come back. And also about the uh, Tio, uh, Tio's uh, next fight, Mr. Lopez was the undisputed. I don't understand why people don't think they're not undisputed. Um, he, you know, the, the thing that I really want him to face is Josh Taylor. That would be a great fight. In my opinion, I think him versus Josh Taylor will be much more harder fight than him versus Roma with, the, with Loma with the rematch. Yeah. Right, because that's an, a lot higher weight class, and Josh Taylor is no joke. Right, mm -hmm. he he has power and he has speed. Um, other than that, man, uh, I I have been I've been around the block, and I just keep hearing excuses for Loma, uh, and I keep I keep hearing people say uh, Tio is not undisputed because of this or this or this. Well, I'm gonna tell everybody Tio is undisputed. He is number number one. I believe he can be a number one pound for pound pretty soon if he moves moves up again mm. and get that all the belts. There's one thing about I love fights is when you take on challenges and you keep going. I don't care if you're Mexican. I don't care if you're mm. black or I don't care if you're white. If you have the heart as a champion like Tio Murphy did, come on, man. You got to give him props. As much as people don't want to give him props because of this or this or this. He did what he's supposed to do, which is win the fight. Uh, as much as I respect Loma, I get that he has soldier soldier and those stuff. But come on, man, Theo is for the win, and I can't win. I can't wait for him to be in the ring again. Yeah, good take, Carlo. Yeah. Good take. Perfect. Perfect. Anyway, on that, everybody in the chat, like and subscribe. Don't forget <laughs> super chat if you can. Look at the merch. Punch has got some amazing merch on his thing. You know what I mean? So, you know, all our boxerholics, we love you. You know, if they, if you want to give us some smoke, please come on. And if you just want to hang out, come on too. We carry on, guys. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Man, so so now we're deciding who's uh, who's undisputed by poll, by like fan sentiment. That's how we're doing it? It's all about us. We're the, we're the okay, yeah, okay. So, so us. what? So the fans are. So it, it just whenever, we, whenever we have our favorite guy close to the thing, we just like, we just shout our way over to shout a guy over to the top. You don't have to get in the ring anymore. Correct. No, no. He already got in the we're, ring with the belt. Okay, no, no, no. But he doesn't have the ring. So if you look up, so so if you look up, I don't there, care. I don't care. You see, you see David <laughs> Haney. That's what I'm saying. So it's your guy, right? You just gonna talk you talk him over the ladder line. You don't need him to actually achieve it. If Devin Haney would have done what Tio Lopez did, go to the IBF and let's say Tio stayed in, in, in WBC in the same route that, that that Devin Haney, I will be saying the same thing about Devin Haney. I would, I'll, I'll be saying the same thing I say about Tio Lopez. I'll be saying it about Devin Haney. It was the other way around. All right, I'll be so saying the same let me, let me, thing. Let me, okay, so so just just a just a just to make me to see if I can get this straight. Um, the WBA regular chat title, right? That is the title that is that has a lineage, right? That's the one that has Muhammad Ali and all that stuff on it, right? But Manuel Char is the actual WBA, you know, regular titles, right? Nobody's talking about that guy, right? He's, you know why? Because the other sanctioning bodies don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. Matter if that's your guy, not your guy, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone knows AJ is the WBA champion. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's not about the ceremonial belt; it's about the belt that everybody recognizes. Yeah, Nobody but Mauricio Suleiman, Steve Fart, like, what the dude that was uh, talking crap on uh, Tessator, and fans are talking about the franchise belt. 
ain't nobody recognizing this stuff, man. Like, like it's cool to you, to bid for guys' accomplishments, but why do you have to gas it? Why do you have to go farther than it, what it actually is? Because the guy, the the, the the own president of the WBC, ain't ain't giving respect to whatever Haney got. If, if think about it, I mean, that's what makes it. That's what makes it look worse. Is that the no, but he's also not giving it to Tio. He, you know what he said? No, nah, nah, he, nah, he, he said, no, 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 I know you don't want to hear it, but let, but this is what he said. Oh, no, I want you to, I want you he to said, keep he, hearing what Mauricio he, Sudamon is saying. No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, Mauricio Sudamon did that. I, I, no, I got it, but you keep playing the same clip as if that's the only thing he ever said on the subject. Yo, I got, look, 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 I'm gonna say, look, 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 I got, I got a clip of five different videos, Smoke. I do not want to play five minutes on the live. I got it right here in my hand. I got I'm, I edited five different videos of Mauricio okay. Sudamon saying that until from Lopez and the win of this fight is undisputed. Okay, Can so, I, so, so, so I, I got it, but that's cool. I'm not saying that you don't have that, but what I'm telling you is I have I, I you can also bring up a clip from two days ago when Mauricio Sudamon is talking about Robert Gar uh, he's talking about Ryan Garcia, he's talking about Fortuna. He's talking about Devin Haney. We talk about Tio, and he won't say who who anybody's the champ. He's just like we have a great tournament going on. You know why? Because he's trying to sell the WBC. So yeah, when, but, but okay, that's okay. When okay, so to sell the fight, when when WBC when it was convenient for him and he was selling a fight, then it was all about how Tia Fimo is the man. As soon as that fight happened, guess what? He moved on from that statement, and now it's talking about how it's this. No, this was after. This was Tuesday on the pug. This was Tuesday. Hey, but it's Saturday. I'm talking about Thursday. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you want to go by Mauricio Suleiman, then that's what you're going to be out there. You're going to be ass hanging out on the limb. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm going to go by what's not loyal to if, nothing. If I don't want, if, if I push the bullshit to the side, then we all as fans should have been saying the same thing. Is that this is undisputed. Forget about the WBC and the shenanigans. Let's take the WBC out on the shenanigans. Okay. So but who got all the belts the right now? Let's take, not let's, take out, let's take out WBC and the shenanigans. Who got all the belts now? No, it is understood. Okay, so three people have the announcer at the end of the at the end of the now, fight. Now we're not arguing. Now you're arguing. No, okay. So no, but the, what I'm saying is, if if Tio's fake belt is real, then Tank's fake belt Tank's fake belt is real. And all okay, and and if, and, 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 and if and all we have to do is fans and say, hey, you know what? We, I'm going to recognize this. Because I feel because I like the WBC if they acknowledge if they acknowledge if they acknowledge Devin Haney, the WBC would not allow two WBC belts to be there. The WBC was in that event. They, they would not acknowledge two belts there. That means they they be little Devin Haney, they be little Devin Haney and, and stuff like that. And T.O. too. No, no, because we all know the truth. Morally, yes, this the was truth, the undisputed the truth, battle. Is the this was the truth. truth. Yes, You're never going to take this away from him. Belt, Nobody can take Indians? this away from him. Nobody's going to take that he's King know, no, no, no. I mean, I got it, but I mean, that, that crowd <laughs> you really need to take that away from him. It looks like you went to Burger King and like Fort Nine. Yes, take that away from. Him. No, no, he's the crown. He's the I'm king. Trying to tell he's you. the king. I'm trying to tell he's the king. Who's the king? So who's not the who's the king? Number thirty-five. Who, 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 who's the, who's who's the number one, one guy? One thirty-five. Tio Fimo Lopez. Okay. Christian and D. Who's the undisputed champion? Don't have one at one thirty-five. Tio Fimo. Tio Fimo is the undisputed, Tio bro. Fimo. Yeah, I got. It. Let me I, see I the guys. Let me see. Let me. Where's the action? I know. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Candidate, don't make it so. Undisputed. Hold up. Don't make it true. Can I? Can I ask around the panel? Um, Major Key Boxing. Who's undisputed? Is it? You got to take. Hold on. Hold on. Smoke. Let me ask the panel. Who's who's undisputed to you? And it said it on the banner before the fight. The commentators dubbed it as that throughout the fight and, and after the fight. Uh, so I'm going to have to go with undisputed Teofimo Lopez. World Combat, what you think? Teofimo Lopez, hands down. Kylo, what you think? T.O. T.O. <laughs> Rap star, what you think? Rap star eating a lot of ice cream. Um... <laughs> undisputed at 135. Ice cream on now. Yo. Let me tell you, man, uh, right now, the WBC said he's undisputed, but on paper, you still see De uh, Devin Haney as a champion. What do you feel? I mean, he's took the best best fights, so at the moment, he deserves to be crowned as number one for sure. Okay. He's not, uh, so you're not saying undisputed. So he's... Oh, Camel, I mean, he's what you think? He's number one for sure, though. Uh, but I think it's undisputed, but the thing is, when I search to female, dude, it, it doesn't say undisputed. It says unify, and well, that, that, that really bothers me. What about I you? Think he should fight. 
he should fight Devin Haney, bro, to like end this mess. So to he, he need to he need to go to training camp to to clean up Mauricio Sudamon's mess. Well, I mean, in the history book, it, it doesn't show undisputed. I don't know. We don't need a history book. Yeah, the last time the let me ask you plan didn't work out. When's the last time we ever checked the history book? When's the last time anybody clean, went and took a trip to the Hall of Fame out here, to the Boxing Hall of Fame? Do you have to go for first or not? Stop acting like we desperate. I don't go to the, you know, I'm in California. I'm not like about to take a trip. So, okay, okay. So when's the last time anybody went to the Hall of Fame website, boxing website? Be honest and be real. Like a week and a half ago? Week and a half. And I bet if I took a poll, it would be like the same percentage, 80-20. 20% or probably less. I, I, I don't I don't know why it's so it's so difficult to understand that Lomachenko beat Luke Campbell for the WBC champion. And, and after, also before the fight, after, they didn't after, promote it as undisputed. So after, I don't know, man. After hold on camera chill. After after Lomachenko beat Luke Campbell, he did not fight anybody else. He did not duck anybody. Haney was never mandated to fight him. He said he wanted to fight the winner of Comney versus um, Lopez for Undisputed. That's exactly what happened. Uh, Mauricio Sudam, the president of the WBC, said he was going to be for Undisputed. He's been saying it. So, therefore, he's Undisputed. If you go to the website, they have Devin Haney as the champion. But the real champion now at 135 is the franchise belt. Now that you guys are confused, that's another story. You're acting like other... Oh, what's it called? Belts don't do that. The WBA does the same thing. WBO, they all do the same thing. They have a bunch of belts. The WBC, they just created another belt. That's what they do. And I was but trying to say that too, when, Terrence, when Terrence Bailey Sr. was on here earlier, I was trying to explain that, that sports change the rules all the time. He changed the rules before the fight. So it's not like, you know, you 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 could say that, hey, um, you know, it's Loma's fault or it's t Wolf's fault. It was whoever won the fight. He, he had already tried to clarify because people were asking him the question. So he had already said, all right, this is the way it's going to go. You know I mean, as confusing as it is, and, and as much as I hate the way uh, the WBC handled the whole situation, at the end of the day, he said it before the fight that it was for Undisputed. And he just said it yesterday, too. Yesterday, they had a card in Mexico with Chocolatito and all of them. He, um, he interviewed Mikey. Mikey was in the ring yesterday, not Thursday, yeah. not Thursday, yesterday, Friday. And yeah, he all, mentioned to Fimo Lopez, he called them the undisputed champion of the world and the ruler of 135. Yeah, yeah see, see, here's the thing. I, I think that um, people are actually missing key points that are overlooking it, right? So, yes, Loma did beat Luke Campbell. And then he vacated, right? So then that's the he issue. He didn't vacate it. He got I'm elevated. Not, I didn't interrupt you, Jose. Hold on. I'm not done. That, that vacating, that process also is why there's a controversy right now. But beyond beyond that, right, um, Mauricio Suleiman can only speak for the WBC. The thing about Undisputed, it's all four belts. So what Mauricio Suleiman can say is, I think you're Undisputed. But what Mauricio can't do is make the IBF, the WBA, and the WBO agree with him. What does ESPN said there? Yeah, so it, hey, ESPN uh, does not have a say. You know, Fox doesn't have a say. ABC doesn't. No, have, no, 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 no. The person that said don't that have a say. say. None I'm of those people person, have a say. They're just no, selling you a product. The person that said that the fight was not under uh, that ESPN didn't say this fight was undisputed. Hey, Mr. Moonshine, uh, I gotta go, brother. I just came yeah. in. Say day. hi. All right, Carlo, uh, my friend. Good looking out for, for joining uh, us. Uh, peace, brother. Uh, peace, guys, on the panel. You guys have a good night. All right. You too, my yeah, brother. Yeah, anyway, this has become. This is becoming like an old topic. Theofim was undisputed. History will show that he's undisputed. So let's just move on. I think absolutely because uh, I, I still got everybody wants more that Theofim was undisputed. Yeah, I'm still right. So like, it's clear. There's only a certain demographic and certain um, usually the PVC fanboys that for some reason they're jumping on the zone now, and what they're all saying the zone is dying. The zone is dying. But the funny thing is they're all jumping on a, the zone fighter now and rooting for him. But anyways, everybody's talking about Teofimo should fight Haney next. But what a lot of people are forgetting is that Teofimo and Devin Haney, they're about to move up pretty soon. It's not like they're going anywhere. I don't. I think they should just wait 
and fight at 140, maybe 147. There's no reason for them to fight next at one 135. See, I say I this. What you guys think I, about that? I, I want to see. I would like to see Tio and, and Haney fight next. The, the the word that I don't like when people say is, is the word that I don't like that people want to use is Tio Fimo Lopez has to fight the Haney. He doesn't have to fight any, any right now. Anybody right now, like he doesn't have to fight. He could fight him. And I'm still going to enjoy a uh, Ryan Garcia if he beats Luke Campbell. I'm still going to enjoy the Haney. I'm still going to ha- enjoy the Geronto Tank Davis. I'm going to enjoy him going to 140 and try to go after, uh, uh, um, you know, Ramirez or Taylor. Right now, he's in good position that w- if he picks any of those fights, is good. But to just have him in just that one fight, he has to fight the Haney or, or else. What? Or else what? You're going to take him like, if he doesn't fight Devin Haney, what, what happens? What people going to say? Yeah, I don't think it's anything other than he's not really undisputed. I don't think he has to fight him either. And I don't mind him if it happens now or later. Like, I, you know, they could fight now and that's cool. They can fight later and that's cool. I think that they should fight at some point. I, I think both of them are a little bit young and they're not really, you know, they haven't mastered their styles and mastered their craft just yet. I, I think they'll be better in a few years and the fight will be better. But they can fight now and fight later, right? Um, they, they, like, they, like, like, if, if they... they and even even Ryan, Ryan, if he beats Luke Campbell, Ryan and Devin Haney next. It's if somebody gonna get mad, like nah, Haney, we want Haney to fight Tio. I'll be happy to see Ryan and Haney fight too. I'll be happy if Devin Haney fights Tank. That's a lot this of money too. That'd be a lot of. I, I don't really see for me. I don't think Tank is really third one thirty five. I I think Tank his, the best Tank is at one thirty. I think the best Loma is probably at one thirty. Think you know, there's Bichelle down there. There's there's some good fights at 130. You know, you can even clear up his business at 135 or move up. I think I I just think that let's say with those fights, is the, there's a storyline. I mean, like of course Ryan and Devin Haney probably got the best storyline together, like as a as a as a as a fight. Um, Javante Tang Davis, Devin Haney got a storyline with Mayweather there. You know, that's a storyline. Like who, which which protege? So on so I don't believe that none of them is really the protege. M- more Haney than than Javon Tank Davis for the Mayweathers. But who like who he wants? Who Mayweather will pick? Is this the storyline? Tio has a storyline. He's used to spar Javon Tank Davis. Ah, uh, you know, and Devin Haney. They all came from the same type of, you know. Right, so, Javon- so you've been you've been live tonight. Like after the show, they did the uh, the all access part two. Yeah, I saw it, but I, t- I just turned it off. Yeah, cause. yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't know about it. it's more so Haney, bro. Hey, hey, Haney ain't on the big plane. You not on pay per view. No, I think I I think it's you know like I, Tank. It's pretty much looking like Tank. I think that, but I think that Mayweather shows up at a time when he knows when to show up. Like remember the last two Tank fights, he wasn't even trying to promote like like Tank like that. You know. He um, didn't. He didn't promote them in the virtual um media day they had. They he was just on some other ish. He was about hey, more well, he's, he's definitely on that pay-per-view. When it's time, when it's pay-per-view time, now oh, you yeah. got the big boy playing and it, in there cursing up a storm, talking about Tank. He's in the training thing. Like, man, like May- Mayweather promotion. Oh, man. I don't even see it. There's no Leonard Ellerby's nostrils nowhere to be seen. Yep. Well, it's, May- it's Mayweather promotions. But also, it's also this, that. This is why I mean that. This is what I feel why Timofimo Lopez. I mean, I, I think that Mayweather will push for that fight. With with Tank Davis and Tio, well, the fact is that after this fight, um, Tio Tio got one fight remain. I mean, um, Tank got one fight remaining with with, with Mayweather Senior. I'm with May, 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 Mayweather Promotions. He got one fight left on that contract, so they gotta have to make a big fight, or maybe this is the big fight to cash out, making sure that he's gonna stay with us. But I think that's why Mayweather will push for for a big fight, a big money making fight. Maybe he will push for the Ryan Garcia fight. Rather than a T.O. I don't know. But I know Tank will have to face a big fight. Yo, uh, quick question. Punch, do you think we're going to have time to chop it up about that uh, the new weight division that they're talking about? Um, I haven't, re- to be honest, I haven't really dialed into that because I feel like that's just another BS move. But well, he he, he I- went on, uh, he went on fight hat. Mauricio Suleiman himself coming out of his mouth. I watched it. And he's literally saying that they're going to have a one-year grace period to decide what weight class they want to fall into. And then after that, you can still compete at, at the heavyweight division, but the heavyweight division is going to be considered 
224 and above. But uh, but anything between 190 and 224 is going to be a new weight class. And a lot of people feel like um, uh, that it's that it's geared towards Deontay Wilder because they feel like he can't beat uh, Tyson Fury, and they want to keep him a, a, as a champion, as a money maker for for the for the WBC, and they're trying to gear that. Uh, and I, you know, this, this is all new. It's all new information, and it's all you know, just uh, kind of assumptions and shit like that. That's why I wanted to ask the panel. Which so I think where, about where did cruiserweight go? Cruiserweight. Cruiserweight it's gonna, is accessible it's gonna go for from 175 to 190. Good looking out, Ronald. Good looking out, Ronald. I, yeah, I understand, but cruiserweight is accessible for Wilder if they worried about him winning the belts. They he can go to cruiserweight and fight. Yeah, but he usually fights between 218, I believe, uh, two uh, like 15, 220 something. Uh, well, he's been he been down low at 208, 209 before. Yeah, yeah. Listen, ceremonial, but ceremonial belts don't mean nothing unless everybody else gets involved. Like what it sounds so like. It's official. Like just straight up, promotion is horrible these days. It's pr- it's so bad that actually the head of a sanctioning body is mo- doing more promoting than promoters, right? It's true. Like if you can if you can tell me the name of the IBF president right now, or the WBO president, the WBA president, anybody? No. This, this, is, all game. this is all straight game. Like I don't like if you if you want to get involved in. Puppet Mauricio Suleiman trying to be a puppet master for the sport. Knock yourself out. But unless unless and until everybody agrees, what are we talking about? Mauricio, what what comes out of Mauricio Suleiman and his board of governors? Who gives a damn? It's, it's, it's yeah yeah. I, I completely agree with you on that one. He's doing more promotion than that. But the, the only thing is also is since it's publicly. Nobody's publicly questioning, other than us, the media, but nobody within other Bell Federations or, or let's say like Bill Haney, what I was trying, what I, when I had the interview with him, I'm trying to tell him, like, you got to go after a, a Marie. Nobody is questioning the, the other important people is not going at questioning Mauricio Sudamon. You know what I'm saying? And they need to do it. We could do all the talking. Hey, Punch, the beat, you know what's like funny? That, they're not doing it. Then Mauricio Sudamon is looking like the Don. Image is everything. What you was gonna say, Jose? No, what I, what I, what I was gonna say. It's funny that everybody's talking crap about the WBC. Everybody's saying fuck the WBC. The WBC is a piece of shit. This and that, and this and that. But then all their favorite fighters are holding the WBC bell. And then yesterday, when you um question Bill about why not saying that about Mauricio Suleiman and WBC, what did Bill said? I heard him. He said, thanks to the great Mauricio Suleiman. He called them great. So, I mean, the fighters must be happy with it. It's the fans that are not happy with the WBC, but the fighters must be happy with it because they ain't doing nothing. Bill Haney went, went as far as to call Mauricio Suleiman great. <laughs> yeah. He called him a great man. But he said, he said, and but he also said later on, he said he was wrong, and I was clapping. I said, by the time, he was wrong. Yeah, but that's what the, all these people have to do. They have to say that they have. Or you just in it, or, 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 or you just in it, or you, or you, or you just in it. With the, the false advertising, you in it with them too. Like you know about the false advertising too, and you're and and you and you, and you know, you enabling it as well. And I don't, I don't, I don't want the Haney's to enable that. I want the Haney's to come right away. What do you mean, Marisa Sudamar? That this is not nah, he. Ain't, this ain't no damn undisputed. We're the champions. We're at, in the in the midst of this promotion. Nobody said anything. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a uh, and but so the uh, he said he's in a cash in the cash top, money the in the rank, cash. cash yeah, it's, it's a top rank event, right? It's on ESPN Air, ESPN Airways, but it's a top rank event. The the guy they're promoting the sport the best way that they know how. So it's really up. To, it's really if you want to, you want to if you want to say it, it's it. There's four belts, right? Tiafimo won four belts. That's cool. The only problem is five. one of the belts isn't actually well five five belts, right? But one of two of those belts are unnecessary. Are actually have nothing to do with being undisputed, right? So you can have, belt, you can, kind you can of have those two belts and never be undisputed. Yeah. Like 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 you know they just they just have nothing to do with being undisputed. They're just ceremonial belts. The Ring Magazine and the franchise are just ceremonial belts. That's all it is. 
right? So, and and, and it's, it's fine. It's fine for the, the marketing of it, right? Because you want people to come in and sell the belts. But for boxing fans, right, who's, who've been through this whole thing about adding sanctioning bodies, adding belts, is yeah, it sucks to keep it straight. It hasn't been since the 2000s, since the WBA Super has been the actual real belt. Before that, for 50 years, it was the WBA regular. But now it's the WBA Super. Maybe one day in the future, the, WBA, the franchise belt will overtake the WBC regular. But it hasn't today. Well, he has at 135. But it hasn't, though, because in order for that to do that, you, you keep saying he changed the rules. What they changed was the WBC rules. They didn't change the boxing rules. They didn't change the rules for what it actually means to be undisputed. They just changed the rules for their own organization. That's it. So if they beat the, if he got the WBO, the IBF, and the WA, right, and the WBC changed the rules, and now they're saying that he got the WBC, what, what's the confusion? The confusion is that no, nobody else, it, it takes these other sanctioning bodies to recognize that belt. Any sanctioning body can come up with whatever the hell belt they want. The, the, Mauricio Suleiman can come up with the Maya belt. But you know what? The Maya belt is not a unification because the other organizations don't recognize that belt, just like the franchise belt. No, they do recognize it. That's why it was everyone's called undisputed. I'll I, I, I tell you what. There's an IBO champion, right? Nobody recognizes the IBO. It's an entire sanctioning body that they have champions and fights and all that stuff. Nobody recognizes this person. And yeah, for Joshua, and, and, and not and their champion Joshua have that belt in order Sean, to become undisputed. Sean Porter, the IBO champion, too. Say again. Isn't Sean Porter the IBO champion? I think I think he got the IB. I think he just got that. I think IBO he, versus this last this last. Fight. I think he just picked it up. Yeah, and I think he's like number one in WBO. But I'm just saying, like when it comes to this whole shuffling the deck, the, you know, the alphabet organizations and their belts. Like, you know, it's real. When it comes to undisputed, it's it's real simple. And when it comes to sanctioning body, it's real simple. The way that you become a, re a real sanctioning body is that all of the other sanctioning bodies recognize you. The way you, it's a real belt is all the other sanctioning bodies recognize it. I haven't heard any uh, sanctioning body uh, dispute that it's undisputed. Yeah, they don't have to. They don't have to do it. They, all, they do, all, they do, all they have to do is not recognize it, which is why on BoxRec, you see... It was on ESPN with the back, in the back that said undisputed, bro. Say again. And they were calling the un it was on the banner leading up to the fight as undisputed, and then throughout the, the whole the whole what night. Banner? Who's, being what banner? Undisputed. What banner? What banner? The banner on the back of the fight. It was for all the belts. Yeah, ESPN. Are you talking about ESPN broadcast? It's not, but it's not ESPN. only ESPN. It's not only ESPN. Is the is the is the is the is the WBC too? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right, I got oh, it. I, oh, the, well, we're you know what I didn't say? You know, you know who doesn't have the power to do it? ESPN why, and WBC. Why people, okay, why, why people dispute the undisputed is the only reason people disputing that is because of the Devin Haney belt. That's the only reason we, we people dispute it. But get but then I'm like, look at Marisa Sudamon. Look at what the WBC is saying. So I'm going with the WBC, the president of the of the belt of, of Devin Haney, the one that could take it and give it away, take it, give it away anytime he wants. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. You have to if you're gonna go that, then you're gonna have to go with whatever he says on whatever given day. You're gonna be out there on a limb talking about we're only the we, we only we're else. only disputing it because of the WBC. That's the only reason why we're disputing it. Well, I mean, there's a the the reason why we're disputing it is because there is a because the franchise champion first they took they sold us a bill of goods and said it was just ceremonial and that you couldn't win it, and then they changed the rules for. Tiafimo Lopez, but what they didn't do is go around to the other team bodies and get it recognized. That hasn't happened yet. Thanks, Miguel. Thanks, Miguel. Oh, Jay, what's good? What's good? Um, super chat, cash app, whatever you know. <laughs> Bottom of the video. Good looking out, Jay. Had never seen an undisputed champ with a promoter's logo on his belt. That was just one belt. I was just thinking about one belt. The belt was just made for the transferable. That's the franchise. The other one belt. The other belt. If everybody seen the telecast, there was four belts on the table in Lomachenko's room, right? Is it was his belt? The, the the belt that the other belt that Lomach that that Tiofimo Lopez have is the belt. The belt that I respect the most. That belt that I re I me. I don't know about y'all. I'm just saying me. 
That's the belt that Lomachenko won and earned versus Luke Campbell. My eyes, that's the WBC guy. That's the WBC belt. That other belt, yeah, that, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I, it was a good time. I was fine with him winning the belt. but And I was fine with him vacating it, too. And then Haney getting it. I wasn't fine. Nah. There was no vacation. He should have stood at intro. Should have stood at, as an as a, as a in, intro. And that's the only reason why a lot of people that's that's the reason why a lot of people don't debate the Jamar Charlo belt. They don't debate it because Canelo Alvarez already left the, the, the division and might never return again. That's the reason. But he's still the franchise champ, though, right? He's still the WBC franchise champ at 160. Yeah, but what makes it what makes it um you know more legit is that he's he's out of there. He's not gonna he's not gonna fight in, in the middleweight division again. Well, no, but not he in my eyes, bro. He's, 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 no he's still has the WBA super, though. Yeah. So, like, you give yeah. it up. If he's not going to ever fight there again, then why did he That's have the it? That's the WBA. The WBA, every, you, you can stay with the WBA for two years. Keith Thurman staying there. Manny Pacquiao yeah. oh, is staying yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll let you. They'll let you ride. They'll let you ride. That's 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 almost the same. That's be the front if the franchise if the if WBC changed the, the franchise into like really the WBA, that's gonna be our main title for this division. For this division, they could do that just like the WBA did it. And then what are we gonna say? What yeah, the, what, what, what what the Haney's will say? Wait, so punch. To, yeah. Wait, so who's who's the real WBC champion, Canelo or? Uh, Jamar Charlo, Jamar Char Charlo. In your opinion, at one sixty, now nah, I just give it to Jamar Charlo. Yeah, because Canelo's not fighting there anymore. If Canelo yeah. stood at middleweight, no. so the Canelo. franchise doesn't mean much to him, or no, he left the division. He's not at one sixty yeah. anymore. Like, let's yeah, say well, the interim to me, the guy that leaves the division, and you elevate the interim guy that leaves the division, retire, gets hurt, and that's it. Whatever. Lomachenko stood at 135. He didn't leave 135. He went to unify at 135. So it just made Devin Haney's belt, the belt that they gave him, look small. He didn't leave. The, the, the only belt that Canelo has right now is a middleweight belt. Is a 160 belt. Yeah. Super WBA. So are you telling me, as a franchise champion, there's only two weights, 135 and 160? And that's yeah, there's only two guys who got it. Wait, Loma, big, bro. Yeah. And yeah, there's Canelo it. and Teofimo Lopez. So these are the only two franchise, because the panel needs to know that there are only two weights that have franchise champions. Am I correct? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So between these two weights, they can go up and down as where they want and be a mandatory and face someone if they want to, right? Good looking out, Jay Vang. Hey, I got no, no, that's the WBO Super. I, I got the, it. My the brother. WBC can just fight whatever they want. It's not like it's not like they get to jump the line or whatever. They can just move around. Yeah, but how? No, no. But he was asking if they can uh, if they can automatically get a uh, 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 championship yeah, fight. Saying. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Thank, that. thank, thank you, Jay Vang. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Thank you, Jay Vang. I got, it, I got it. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. I appreciate you, you my brother. Am I lost? No one no, can you hear good. me. You good. I hear no, you. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. The you were asking your question, Rafael. Can you hear me? Yeah, we Am can I hear lost? you. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Right, I hear you. You hear us? I can hear you now. Okay. So, yeah. yeah we it, hear you. He can't jump yeah, the line. The, w, so the WBO Super the is the one that can jump the line. He can't jump the line for the 140. He has to let the 140 mandatory challenger fight, right? No, no, no. He could, um he um Mauricio Sudamon says that having the having the franchise trumps the mandatory in the next and in, 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 if he wants to fight with the winner of the mandatory of the WBC, whether it's Jose Ramirez or J Josh Taylor, Beast Ramirez, he trumps that mandatory by having How's that bad? franchise belt. Because Jack, Jack, his name Jack Catterall, right? That Jack Catterall. Yeah. yeah, he had to. He, had, he already had to take a, a step back, and I'm sure he yeah. took some money for that. So how would he still take a step back if Devon wanted to fight him? Fight him? Nah, he, the winner, the winner of that fight, he gets, he gets. Um, but that was for the IBF for, for the, the WBO. WBO. He for the WBC. The, the WBO. Okay. Jack Catterall is the mandatory for the WBO. So he can still get pushed aside if Thea Fima wanted to fight that fight. Let me just say this, because I was actually asking D. Jefferson on his channel yesterday. 
Because I was saying uh, just because Josh Taylor and Ramirez fight each other, right, does that mean that, that they're obligated to, to fight for the IBF, WBO, and WBA championships because it's really just a, a WBC franchise? And what he was telling me that there's also an exclusion for the WBO. So, you know, um, I took him on his word with that. But uh, even then, um, does that mean that the WBA and IBF are, me- are like obligated to, to, to give them the fight? His response was, no, they're not obligated. But however, why the fuck would they give up the sanctioning fee money? You know what I'm saying? And not let that happen. So I was like, okay, all right, well, you know what I mean? I guess that makes sense, but I, I didn't do more research on that. But but that was actually a point that I brought up yesterday on a different channel. No, but you see what <laughs> my problem is this year. I need to make it clear because the panel's confused as well. Does a WBC a franchise champion uh, can get into mandatory position into a weight above or weight ab- two weights above? Can you do that? That's what I want to know. Wait till, uh, wait till Mauricio uh, tells us. No matter what we say, Mauricio... Well, that, that is a yes, because that is a yes, because uh, Canelo moved from 160 to 175. And he and fought Kovalev. So that means he, fought, he was... He he, yeah, I, I thought that was for the WBO belt. What, was, it, was that the WBO? No, uh, w, that, was, that was the franchise, wasn't it? I, I don't no, know. It was WBA money, or right? WBO. That yeah, was the it, franchise that gave him the opportunity, I thought. No, it was just a franchise that gave them the opportunity to say the WBC when they were fighting. But the belt that they were fighting for was Kovalev's belt, not. And okay, and that was WBO. Okay. No, yeah, but, but still, yeah, he's still well, going Major, to what we're he's saying still... though is that supposedly he jumped the line to fight Kovalev. He didn't have to be be ranked yeah, number one right. to yeah, challenge yeah, yeah. for a championship. Yeah, but that no, was no, a, no, but, yeah, but no, that I know. That's what I'm trying to say. That's a voluntary fight for Kovalev, though. Yeah, right. So what I'm trying to say is, I understand what y'all are saying. What I'm trying to say is that 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 uh, with uh, with, with uh, Tiafimo, that only matters on the WBC side. So but you can move y'all, up y'all. because of the franchise belt. You can move up and down and wait. That's the whole point. You can move up and down and wait and and trump whatever other mandatory you have. Yeah, because if you look at the interview very very uh, carefully, he says that my uh, franchise champion is an elite champion. And he can move up and down uh, and mm-hmm. be in position to fight for greater fights if he wants to. Exactly. Exactly. So he's referring that he can be pushed into the line and uh, push any other mandatory position for a guy weight above. That's correct. So that gives them a lot of power, then, not it? The franchise does have a meaning, then. It means that yeah. it puts power on your position as a belt holder. So what that franchise does. It, it puts you in much more powerful grounds with the purse and putting yourself in a mandatory position in a weight above without waiting. So it has a lot of power then. The, exactly. And then when you listen to... Uh, it exempts you from having mandatory. You don't actually have to fight. Well, that, that, so exactly. Yeah, the, Yo, you're right. You said smoke. You, no, no, no. Smoke is right, though. It, smoke is, what, what Smoke is saying, let, let, let me clarify that because he's right. I was just about to say that. So the other person, Devin Haney, was in the car yesterday getting an interview and that's what he was saying was yeah, what it means that Tia Fimo doesn't have to fight mandatories, and I'm a real champ. I don't, I don't mind fighting my mandatories. So that's kind of like the debate right now. I mean, mandatories are trash, though. Who? When was the last time that's a true. good mandatory? That's true. That, that's le- less money. Less money. That's why he probably he sounded mad when he was saying it. You know. La, 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 that's look at new, that. That's a new narrative. That's the new narrative now. Now, now, are mandatories are trash. Not boxing. Not no. I'm saying that now. They are, to be honest. Now yeah, that boxing fan is like, no, I'm saying that now boxing fans like, oh, he got to fight the mandatory. He got it. That's a real champion. Nobody give a damn. You're telling me that the fans want to see <laughs> that the fans want to see um, um if, if Sergey Le- Sergey Lipinier and, and um Clayton, you think the fans was calling for, oh, now nah, Earl Spence got to fight Clayton. Nah, nah, nah. What about Bud Crawford? Nah, 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 nah. I got Sergey Lipinier. Nah, nah. He gotta fight him. That's a real champion. Oh fuck, guys. Right, so, 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 Do we not live through just two years of Dylan White talking about his shot about mandatory and everybody talking about how the WBC is protecting Wilder because exactly they, you you just said it. Get the book and nobody and cares. Just, uh, just, hold on. The, wasn't they just? Wasn't everyone just raking this dude over the coals because he no, wasn't fighting mandatory? Because he wasn't fighting mandatories. Now the issue is mandatory. Let me respond to that. Then that's the, you. You just proved my point. Nobody cared about Dylan White. Everybody wanted to see Wilder versus Joshua. Everybody wanted to see 
Fury versus Wilder. Nobody wanted to see Dylan White for real. Yeah, no, people it, were talking crap here and there, but the fight that everybody wanted to see was Wilder and Joshua. Keep it real. Yes, but the issue, the, the real issue was the, the the mandatory was Dominic Brazil. So what Dylan White was talking about was a bunch of garbage, right? So that's really what was happening. But well, I'm just talking about the narrative. The, the narrative was what's up with this guy being protected and not finding man, man not fighting mandatories because mandatories are sorry nobody wants to see jack catterall versus jose ramirez everybody wants to see jose ramirez versus josh taylor and nobody wants to see that nobody wants to see candelo fight the mandatory at 168 that dude yield me that can't pronounce his name he's the mandatory for the wbc you think people want to see that they'll kill canelo if he fights that dude you know how many champs got destroyed because they're, because they're mandatories? Like active guys, like real, real champs. Like sometimes, if you're a real one, the only way you can get a shot is through the mandatory because a champ will want to take the easy money fight and not take a hard one. Well, we respect we respect the mandatory. We respect it, but so or not, not. I don't want to see the mandatory fight if we have a unification fight or a big fight. We really, really want to see. Nah, not sorry. Uh uh. Now, if you now a fighter could be promoted to that position, like like when 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 Earl Spence, we know Earl Spence, and then he come in for the Kell Brook. You want to see that fight because we know Earl Spence. The name is Roman and stuff like that. So yeah, take that fight. Take that fight. You you bring it up, bro. Hello. Hey. Yeah, you're good. I'm good. Well, I could hear you. Oh, I, I think it's my Wi-Fi. My bad. My bad. Okay, don't blame it on mine. <laughs> nah, nah, he's right. You, you are breaking up. You're like you're little. You're frozen a little bit. You're just going in and out. Oh, okay. <laughs> nah, yeah, he's just coming in. Like you sound fine now, right? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm yeah, good. Yeah, I'm yeah. alright. Yeah, you good. Yeah, you good. You good. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so yeah, I mean, we respect the mandatory. We just, but we, but we respect the fight that we want to see more than just the mandatory. And that's why, that's why I always bring the analogy with Abdul Kokorov. Abdul Kokorov been the mandatory in the IBF since March 2019. I ain't seen no channels out there, no media saying Earl Spence got to fight Abdul Kokorov. Come on, Earl, give him a chance. Don't fight Mikey or, or, or come on, after the Porter fight, talk about Abdul Kokorov. Come on. Nah, because nobody cared about Like, what's a good mandatory right now that's out there? What's a good mandatory? I don't know. Smoke? Do you know any yeah, good I mandatory? Can't, I, I can't think of one. Like, what, Pulev is a mandatory. Um, you know, uh, Canelo's suing to fight a bum at 160 for a vacant title. That's why, because he's the mandatory. Because that bum you're saying, he's the that's mandatory. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, I'm going through them. I'm going through the mandatories, right? <laughs> you asked me. Two left. Two in the fight. Um, I think that maybe 160. Is there a good one? Uh, I can't think of one. 154. No. 147. No. I think, I guess Garcia is fulfilling a mandatory obligation, but he's not really mandatory. I mean, Danny is a good mandatory. Um, is Estrada a mandatory uh, versus Chocolatito now or vice versa? He's a champion, though. He's a champion. He's already champ. That was a yeah, that defense. Was a that was versa, right? Yeah, he got that. Off. Hey, uh, before yeah, you so you so guys keep cooking, yeah? Everybody like, subscribe, do the same old thing, look at the merch. Send a donate if you yes. can. And, you know, if you want to come and cook over here, it's an open platform. Wait, how about uh, a new mandatory? Is that one a good one? Keep cooking. Mm. Oh, uh, is, that a, is that a mandatory? I don't know if that's a mandatory. I thought he was trying to I unify. Think, He's trying to champ. I think, um, a, good, I think a good mandatory. Be become mandatory at 135. Let's say Jaime Munguia for Dimitri Andre. That will be the mandatory in the WBO soon. I think he's already. But, but he's moving in 168. He's fighting a non title fight at 168. Like he's fighting some other guy we never heard of. You know? Oh, Dusty? Title fight at 168. Like he's fighting. 
Nah, Munkia still at 160. He just got there like a fight ago. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying Andrade. Wait, 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 his next fight's at 168. Andrade moved up? I didn't know that. Yeah, his next fight, he's fighting some dude nobody's ever heard of at 168. So some yeah, of the panel want to know about the fight next week coming up with Tank, and they want to know predictions. Has anyone got predictions for these fights for next week? Let me answer this one. Jay Vang said um, Earl Spence and Garcia. I think it's for me that fight is a 55-45 going on Earl Spence. Um, but... I don't. I would not be surprised if Garcia beats Earl Spence at all. Not be. A, it won't be a surprise to me at all. <laughs> but would you have said that before the accident? Yeah, I said it before the accident. Now I didn't say like like I, I, I said that. I, I always say it to people because they. I I just never thought. I don't think that Earl Spence to me is special. I think he's a good 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 fighter, one of the best at, at 147, but I, I just don't see like his style is untouchable, invincible, nothing like that. I think that, no. that I think that everybody could beat one another at the top five in welterweight division. I think anybody could beat one another. I don't put no... The problem with that fight, they made it the same day as Ryan and Luke Campbell, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a different time. The problem with that fight is that it's on pay-per-view. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's I, I the problem. Because I think Luke Lord. Campbell is fighting early. And then uh, yeah. Spence got the prime time. The problem is the pay per view. I ain't trying to pay no hundred bucks right before Christmas. Man, a hundred bucks? Yeah, it's like eighty, but with taxes, it comes out to a hundred on your cable oh. bill. I mean, if if, if you want to gauge performances, I mean, like, did the performance that Earl Spence had versus Mikey did it was was it? it do you do you see that type of performance and be like, wow, Earl Spence is uh, you know? Like a wow. Did that wow you? Anybody out there? Nah. Uh, Earl Spence versus, uh, versus, uh, Mike, Mike. Versus, versus Carter? Oh, oh the, the fight, did it wow me? Um, I mean, wow? I don't know. It, it's kind of wow because he's coming off an accident and he's not had a tune-up, so we don't know what's going on. No, no, Mikey, Mikey. If, if, the, if that performance, oh. did it wow? Oh. The Mikey Earl Spence? Uh, No. But I mean, the wild thing was supposed to come from Mikey, not from Errol. Oh, my like everyone knew yeah. that Mike, like everyone knew that Mike, that Errol was gonna beat the hell out of Mike. Mikey was supposed to one who saw something and talked his way into a fight and then did didn't do anything. Like right? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Errol was supposed to um, knock him out and he didn't. I think that's what I mean, made they, um, Sean Porter want to fight him. Yeah, I like, mean everybody. Well, we Look, that fight made guys like Danny Garcia want to fight Earl Spence, the Mikey, and then the and the Sean Porter. I mean, the Sean you Porter fight. You guys are tripping. Um, pay per view is what made them want to fight him. They always want. They didn't mind fighting Sean, uh, Spence. They just wouldn't want to get pay per view. When they saw Mikey got pay per view, they're like, "Oh, well, will you offer us to fight?" It wasn't for pay per view. See what is they heard yeah, that? Because he, you know what it is. Because I don't think that they came out the woodwork. Like, they yo, think what, like pay per view. They don't think like the major fans. Probably they think like me. I, 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 didn't, I didn't consider Earl Spence on that special. Like if I'm if I'm Danny Swift Garcia, right? And I got on the table. I got Manny Pacquiao. I got Keith Thurman. I got Sean Porter. I got Earl Spence. I'll pick. I'll pick Manny Pacquiao, and Keith Thurman before I pick anybody. Mm, Any other know. than Sean Porter, Earl Spence. I mean, well, at that time, right at that time when he picks it, when he's picking his fights, you know, that's how that's how I see it. Like. Yeah, no. And now, listen, now he got yeah. two titles. Now he got two titles. That's back on the table. And now, let's see. I'm Danny Silva Garcia. I got, I got Crawford. I got a rematch with Thurman. Oh, he's injured. I got Manny Pacquiao. I would still choose Manny Pacquiao first, but you know what? Now, I now got Earl Spence. Let me go pick Earl Spence. The thing with people, I think at that time, but people didn't respect is that. These guys was already gunning each other. These guys came from the same class, the old 07, 08 class. Earl Spence came um, to um, 2012. Earl Spence is the one that's working his way up to get these guys. So these guys are really not looking at Earl Spence. There's fans looking at and looking at these guys, but these guys already in their career, they're not looking at the come up. They're looking at the guy that they're trying to accomplish something with that they know. And that, and that's what it was. When it comes to these yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm saying that, like that that whole thing when he fought Mikey, both Angel and Kenny, because they had floated offers, right? They try to get, they try to make the fight, but the numbers were totally different. Like they they actually had attitude 
that Mikey actually got a pay per view and not them. Like it was cool when yeah they were they were definitely big dogging him before that and like yeah we the, you're the little guy you need to make your way up to where we are. But as soon as he got pay per view, they were tar- trying to fight him. If they would have offered him pay per if they would have offered either Porter or uh, or Danny pay per view instead of fighting each other, they would have fought. Er- they would have fought Errol. It's not that they were him. It's not that they were big dog. And they just the money didn't make sense to him. I was. Yeah, I didn't think that Earl. I, I didn't think that Earl Spence deserved the pay per view before before these guys. I don't think so, Mikey. You could say maybe. If, Mikey. I, if, I, if I give my prediction, because I'm I'm gonna jump off. I'm, I'm gonna give my prediction, but first I want to say, yo, shout out to the comeback of Get the Smoke. You are the first on Punch Drum Boxing. <laughs> you were that man. I haven't seen you in like a month and a half, brother. Good to see I'm you back, though. Yeah, I'm you've, been, uh, you've been working I'm some okay, was, nah, 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 was what it was, Major Key, that he was celebrating the Teofimo Lopez performance. And oh, I got you. He, yeah, oh, he was celebrating It is even before that. I'm just, I'm in the, I'm, I'm knee deep in, uh, in a project right now that I'm going to be out of until January. So I'm glad you're up late so I can come on and talk with the homies about some boxing. What kind yeah, of, what kind of project? Back. So my, my. Okay, go ahead. Answer that first. I just want to get my predictions that I'm a bounce. But go ahead, go ahead. Um, that. I am, uh, I am knee deep in trades all the way up until after the election. Like the market is just not letting me go. Like right now is cannabis time and this stuff. Coming- like, like, like the stock market. Yeah. Oh shit! I know nothing about that. Never mind. Yeah, I've been, That's all we I'm got. Smoke. He's gonna oh, teach yeah. us. He's gonna teach us. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I've been, it's been a twenty four seven project for the last like month and a half for these just coming up right at, right before the election, right after the election. You know, there's a bunch of stuff happening in the market all the way through like April of next year. So yeah. I got so shout out to oh, shout out to oh, Smoke. Oh, he's voting for yeah. Donald Trump. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna leave early, bro. All right, peace, John. I'm just kidding. I'm all right, later, Major King. Hey, congrats <laughs> on your two channels. Uh, yeah, thank you, bro. Nah, so my, my predictions, right? So uh, this is the way I see it, man. I see it with uh, Leo Santa Cruz and Javante Davis. It's like this. Javante Davis should knock him out. He's the heavier guy. He's the heavy-handed person. You know what I mean? Uh, he's bigger than the dude. Like, he should knock him out. Now, my thing is, is he doesn't let his hands go that much. He looks for the knockout. Leo Santa Cruz is known for letting his hands go. So, and Leo Santa Cruz is also uh, uh, shown that he's got a beard. I don't know how he, he stands up to Javante, though. That's the big question for me. Because if he stands up to that punch, then, you, you know, Javante is going to have to let his hands go. If not, Leo Santa Cruz could possibly win on points. And that's realistic. That's fact. You know what you I'm think, saying? You think Mayweather so, promotion will allow that, bro? Um, it's not about that. Because you, we watched Javante Davis so many times. Just not throw his hands. He waits for the KO. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, nah. nah. I don't, I'm not even going to just say um, Mayweather because, you know, um, Leo Santa Cruz is PBC. And Leo Santa Cruz named his son after the great Al Heyman. He's out, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Leo, bro. Did he really, bro? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's the Mexican kid called Al Heyman. Al Heyman, ven pa' acá, coño. Ven pa' acá. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, he's also promoted by Floyd. I think they have the same promoter. Like Leo is driving around in a Lamborghini. That yeah, but who, who are they going to favor more, though? Like, come on. I mean, I, listen, I'm not saying I, I, Floyd was on the big plane with Tank. Like, like well, what's your prediction? What's your prediction? They did protect oh, him, Leo. They did protect him against um, Gary Russell and um. Guillermo Regandel, Oscar De La Hoya was going to make that fight, and um, Leo Santa Cruz started crying. He went to Al Heyman, and Al Heyman got him out of that fight somehow, some way. Uh, Guillermo, was, Guillermo was uh, was uh, Bob, though. Yeah, so let me just give my last one, because because I'm trying to no, bounce I know, up. Paul. Um, so, what's call it? Oh, my bad. You was uh, oh, directing your question at me. What was your question? Oh, no, oh. no. Go ahead. No, yeah, my, my last one was about the um w- the Danny Garcia versus Errol Spence, and so that one is uh similar to me because I, I, I and 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 you know uh you can hold me accountable, rap star. I was there on D Jefferson. You just said the same thing D Jefferson said yesterday, uh when 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 Punts uh, responded to you, which was before the car crash or after the car crash. My response was before the car crash, right? 
that I had uh, Danny Garcia be in a 50-50 fight. Why? Because Errol Spence, you sh you would think that could just come through and outbox. But what we saw against Mikey Garcia is that he's not a full-fledged, come-forward, knock-him-out type of fighter as we thought he was. And now after the car crash, that may be even more exploited. And Danny Garcia got a chin. So you ain't just going to catch him and drop him like that. And he's going to... Uh, 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 you know, he's going to be right in there with him throwing blows. My only thing is, is that Danny Garcia is more of a counter puncher. And so if you throw your, if you're quicker and you throw your hands faster and you're the one letting the shaft go first, you're more liable to outbox the other person on points because you're going to land more shots while the other guy, you could go in and out. And that's my only uh, skepticism about Danny Garcia being able to win. However, if there is a chin problem, there uh and even if there's not a chin problem this is why i had Donnie, danny garcia 50 50 before we've seen kel brook rock errol spence you know what i'm saying we've seen uh you know errol spence kind of flustered against uh pressure fighters like sean porter so he sean got, porter he got, was he got, he, got, he got chin checked by um emmanuel lardy and exactly you see what i'm saying so so he he we've already seen that for, from 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 uh, Spence. So that is my, my only thing. So I, I, for me, it's a 50-50 fight. But anybody that uh, that differs with that, you know what I mean? Then, hey, you know, uh, hats off to you. Uh, but, you know, uh, it is where if, if I see a, a big underdog on Danny Garcia's side, I'm probably going to put money on that. If I see a big underdog on Errol Spence's side, I'll probably put money on that. You know what I mean? Because for me, it's a 50-50 fight. But, yo, uh, always appreciate you having me on the panel points. Peace to all you guys, bro. Again, welcome back, uh, GT. Um, yo, have a great night. Peace, peace, peace. Um, peace, peace. So, who, so, so what prediction you got? Who, who hasn't made a prediction for the Santa Cruz and uh, Tank fight? Um, I, I, I guess, I mean, my thoughts of it right now is that it's going to be a, a, a real close fight. I don't think that, I mean, Tank could stop him. But I don't think he has to in order to outpoint him. Um, so what do you think? Is it not a stoppage? Is it is it a unanimous decision? I mean, it's like, I don't want to, you know. Come on, man. We got to make predictions on this show. No, I mean, I'm going, to, I, I'm going to, but you want to just jump to the end and also to the juicy part, right? So, really, Leo Santa Cruz has never been stopped. And I'm not just going to be like, Tank is going to be the guy to stop Leo Santa Cruz, even though it's sort of set up because Leo Santa Cruz hasn't proven himself at 130. He is the super champ. It is actually his belt that they're fighting for at 130, but he hasn't established himself really as a 130 guy yet. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm just going to, right now I'm just picking Tank by win, but not by knockout. Maybe I'll change okay. my man. Okay. Well, I don't think we should be uh, commenting on the Errol Spence and Danny Garcia until November, end of November, or not end of November, but it's going to fight, it's going to be in December, right? December the 5th. So it's too early to really predict that fight now because there's a couple more fights coming, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you feel like like some people are Danny Garcia fans and they think or don't think. Or, anyway, for me, I think Danny Garcia has become domesticated. The Danny Garcia that these guys are looking at, um, I think, for me, if Danny Garcia was that dude, you we would have seen it in the Sean Porter fight, and I didn't see it. I saw a guy who's uh, very good, very skilled, but is definitely not that hungry anymore. Hmm. Okay. So, is it just me now? Or is, is it then the shoe punch, right? Nah, it's just, you, you. It's, um, nah, I was just checking that Billy Joe's son is going to be fighting Murray. I'm like, what? Who? Uh -huh. Anyway, so for next week, I mean... I'm thinking to myself, if Tank doesn't knock, I know, look, I've got a lot of respect for Leo Santa Cruz, but at his own weight. You know, let's be real here, man. He's coming up to 130. He's favoring all Tank's demands. Why are we going on like it's a 50 50? Tank's the one who's going to get his way. You know what I mean? And Leo Santa Cruz has to go up to fight him. As far as I'm concerned, Leo Santa Cruz is good at his weight. If Tank doesn't knock him out, I'm going to be disappointed only because he wants the Lopez fight. So he's got to make some noise. Ninth round knockout. Also, um... Ninth round knockout, bro. He got to do it. And if he doesn't do it, I'll be disappointed. 
Yeah, I, I got Tank too because Leo Santa Cruz, he's relying on him to gas out, which I don't think you could do that. Mm-hmm. I don't see him gassing out this time. So that's just a bad strategy. I got Tank by knockout. I think he should win by knockout too. Yeah, I mean, he could do it. I, You know, the style of knockout is the issue, right? So I don't think that it'll be from the head or from a headshot. I think it'll be from a body shot if it happens. And it's just hard for me to do it. Like, yeah, he's at 126, but it's only a four pound difference, right? He's, Tank is not a 35 pound guy. He's not a big, uh, super featherweight. He is a, he, he's just strong, right? He's like sort of thick, but I don't know. I, it's a, he only came up from 126. I mean, Leo is a one four division champ. He's actually a really smaller guy, but he's also started when he's young. I don't know. Well, you know, you're giving a lot of credit. I, I, I think it's a little bit of disrespect. To say that how, how much do they have to wait for weigh-in, though? Because I know two titles is, is on the line. 130. You've got to weigh 130. Otherwise, Tank has to pay. I think uh, if he's overweight, he's going to have to pay a lot of money. But how about the other title? That's 135. Yeah, no, it don't make sense. But yeah, the fight, the weigh-in is at 130, even though the 135 belt's on the line. Yeah. What does the panel think? The panel think Tank's going to win or Leo Santa Cruz? I got Tank winning. I got Tank, bro. Yeah, I'm talking to the rest of the panel as well because they're all saying Tank. A lot of the panel are saying Tank. Oh, you mean the chat? Yeah, the chat. The chat. I'm watching the chat. The chat's saying Tank, Tank, Leo Santa Cruz, but 90% Tank. Yeah, Tank, man. Uh, uh, Tank got a, got great skills, man. He got good skills. Got good so skills. won't you be disappointed if it's unanimous decision? Not me, no. I mean, they, they, I'm they, asking they, 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 like so, like, so you know, you brought up the Mikey fight, and that's supposed to be some ding on Errol Spence. If anything, is ding on Errol Spence to me, it's his pre-fight strategy. If he, if you're gonna go in and brawl with Sean Porter, and you know, and, and then box with Mikey Garcia. To me, that's about your pre-fight strategy. That's not really about whether or not you can knock out, right? So Tank not knocking out Leo Santa Cruz, you don't need to knock everybody out or else you're a disappointment. I, I mean, I if, if if Tank beats on Leo Santa Cruz like um, Canelo did to Travis, then no, nah, I mean, it's all right. Yeah, Julian Marty says, I love Leo, but Tank's, Leo's too small. Yeah, if, I mean... If, who- let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question about um Tio because we were talking about if if Tio decides that he wants a stay busy fight, is mm. it just do? I think yeah, he has the right to do it. I mean, you mean cherry pick? Yeah, yeah, he can get a touch. He can get a touch. It, it's no, but no, 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 you guys can't say that he can just cherry pick. Oh yeah, he can get a touch. He fight. He got to go. Look, he got to go for somebody at least a Luke Campbell or Ryan Garcia a winner, no, no. a tank. I uh, want him though, and not everybody else. Let me, let after, me after, after, let me ask you. Something. After Richard Comey, I'm just saying. After Richard Comey, after Loma, yo, bro, th- does he deserve? He does he deserve to get the momentum? Get You're the moment. He's in the momentum right now, bro. <laughs> the thing is, though, no, no, no said he was going bad, bad, bro. He's momentum, but he's 23 years old, and this is not the division he's that he's supposed to be, show his best. Like he's not supposed to peak at 23, right? It's not about having a tough fight after tough fight. Like fight Devin Haney has a Devin Haney has a fight coming up, and then also he's supposed to fight the winner of another fight. So Devin Haney is like kind of booked for two fights. That's kind of that are that are good fights. I mean, not the I'm one, but the one after that, the winner of Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia. That's a good fight. Um, no, and, Bob Aaron said that if they want that fight with Lopez, they can jump the queue. Didn't they say that? Punch? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get, it, I get it. But, yeah, but yeah, the yeah. issue is not whether or not I'd be impressed. If if Lopez went on, the issue is would I have a problem if he didn't? And he's now fought two guys back to back. He's he if, if anybody's earned a touch in boxing, it's that dude. Now, so he, so I give you I give you, I, I give you a scenario. I give you a scenario. Since he wants to go to 140, but don't bro. know he never fought at 140. Because I say if he he goes to 140, still don't drop your belts at 135. Still don't drop your belts at 135. You could guard. You, know, you got a voluntary fight. Your next fight, right? If you got a voluntary fight and he fight se se Zepeda, would y'all be mad? No, because Zepeda, no, Zepeda's a good fighter, bro. But if he's gonna, he's not got nothing to fucking gain. From that, that's what you, I mean, you he mean got, if he pulls up my I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go and mute. He got nothing to fucking gain from Zepeda, bro. Everything he's doing right now is getting somewhere, and now he's put himself in a position that he can keep winning something. 
So if he's going to get Zepeda, he's not going to win nothing. Nobody even thinks Zepeda can beat uh, Theo. Hey, I keep forgetting that uh, Monster, just to clarify, Monster's about to fight Maloney. You know? I, that might have been a mandatory, but that's certainly not a unification. Yeah, no. Well, yeah, so, so what y'all think? Y'all think uh, um, he would need to fight somebody? Some, he, he would need to fight Haney, okay. Tank, Orion. No, nah, I mean, he's allowed, I mean, he's allowed to cherry pick, bro. Uh, okay, he has bro, the right bro, to. Bro, who did he just beat? He beat the franchise champion who was an elite champion. People are hating on Lomachenko. What not only of, the franchise, not well, only but, he beat But let me ask you something. What kind of people did Lomachenko fight? He fought... He fought contenders, mandatory positions, and he fought top elite fighters one after another. And now and, and, and he him. lost one bro, and they're shitting on him. So yeah, now they're hating Come on. on him. And now they're hating on him. So what I'm saying is the guy he beat it from has actually fought some good, uh, credible opponents, bro, one after another. It's a part it's a paid out a credible opponent. Yeah, he is. Yes. He can't lie. Mm-hmm. That's a credible opponent. You, you said I mean to test. Yeah, I mean he's remember they going off the momentum of Cepeda too. That's the fight of the year, Cepeda and, and Barachak. That's the fight of the year right now. So yeah, he but, has even Cepeda got momentum right now. So if yeah. they know how to promote him right now. You know what you guys don't realize? People keep talking about the franchise, French franchise champion, champion. They got a lot of pressure on their head. Even Canelo. They have to fight good fighters. So really really and truly, that title franchise as well puts pressure on you to show that you're elite status. So you do need to keep fighting good caliber. Don't you think that's what that title is saying? You know what? It is true. I agree 100%. That gives you more pressure because now the pressure of having the franchise is that you have more power. So let me see what you're going to do with that power. See, the other title is... That they tell you who to fight, but that could be more pressure since the fan is going to be calling for the the franchise gives you that. Oh yeah, you a cherry picker because you could trump the mandatory for 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 Devin Haney. He could trump that if, if let's say the winner of Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell. He could trump it to fight Devin Haney. He could trump to fight the uh, uh, Jose Ramirez if they had a if they had a, a mandatory in the WBC. So that that power, oh, you know, it is. So you're right. Some fighters hey, hey, already have said. Some fighters have said that they don't want that title because it's going to come with a lot of pressure behind it. The only people that saying that they don't want that title is because they that they haven't had the 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 chance to get that title. That's yeah. what it is. It, it like you know, and this this whole thing about um should he get an easy touch, right? This is also generational, right? So. It's not just that he's young, because you, if you remember the Fernando Vargas of the world, right? Fighting Winky Wrights and Ike Cortez and Felix Trinidad's and Shane Mosley's and Oscar De La Hoya's, and he was a baby doing all that, right? So it's not, it's, just, it's really just the era that we're in. But for the era that we're in for today, sure. He's done, he's done enough to get a, a, a nice touch, make sure he see where he's at, whether he moves up or moves down. There's a lot of smoke for him at 140. What I just saw from Loma hitting him, if he gets hit like that by them boys at 140, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, but also a lot of great champions didn't get that title, like Manny Pacquiao, Mayweather, even people such as great, great fighters like Tito, Trinidad. You know, the thing is, right, there's fighters who've achieved greatness but didn't have the franchise behind their head. So I want to know, this franchise that Mauricio Suleiman's saying, that my elite champion can go and only fight great fights, that's putting pressure on the fighter as well. Now everyone's expecting Theo to fight a great fighter. See, this is where you guys ain't realizing. Look at both sides of the coin. That they're all going to put pressure for Theo to have to fight a great fighter. No, no, we're we're realizing it because Teofimo Lopez is the one that's actually saying he wants to go 140 and fight right. Taylor Ramirez. He's right. saying he, he's calling his shot, and the shot that he called pitch perfect every single time. Going after Loma was pitch perfect. Going after Haney's pitch perfect, trying to be undisputed one forties pitch perfect, like all of these things that he is talking is absolutely correct. The um, yeah, the the, the the issue really is Mauricio Suleiman is trying to 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 kill what you were just talking about. Like you mentioned Floyd Mayweather and like Canelo, right? These guys they achieved a status that is actually bigger than the belt. Oscar, 
So what 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 Mauricio is trying to do is make sure that when these guys get bigger than the belt, that the WBC still can follow them around. Yeah. Well, like I said, I think at the fighters end of the day, are becoming bigger than the promotional and the belts right now. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Canelo don't need don't need Golden Boy, and he probably don't even need certain belts in in certain in certain um. Um, divisions in some respect, Ryan Garcia doesn't need Golden Boy either. Nah, he needs Golden Boy. Nah, bro, he already got himself into a situation that he's already like out there, you know. No, no, because, because, in my opinion, by saying that he doesn't need Golden Boy yet, is by saying that he's just like a Logan Paul or like he's just he hasn't he hasn't earned anything, he bro, hasn't earned if anything. He beats yet. Luke Campbell, he's out there, man. They're gonna, they're gonna, he can demand fights. He can definitely demand fights if he beats Yeah, but you gotta win, you gotta win something. You gotta win something. Remember, the promoter is the one that also gets you to fight. They're the one that work with, 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 with Bell Federations to get themselves in position for that. Yeah. Ryan Garcia don't got that power yet. He just got the power of social media. He don't got that power yet within the business of boxing. Yeah, so the promoter is still the conduit to the TV networks if you're not on PBC. And then it's yeah. out there, right? But outside of that, if you're aiming on PVC, you need that promoter to get that TV contract. The best thing that Ryan Garcia could do right now is actually look closely and how Golden Boy works. You see how 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 Canelo Alvarez don't even know, they never seen the contract, don't even know how the contract look like. He's just signing signatures and shit like that. Don't even know how now he now he wants to see the contract and where how it look like. See, that's what these young fighters gotta do now is take lessons, see what the other old guys are going through. And you know what? Let me see this contract. Let me read the contract again and again. Hire an attorney for that attorney. Hire an accountant for that accountant. You know, things like that. I mean, you know, you got to follow Mayweather's foot footprints. And if Ryan Garcia can, uh, you know, get himself into his own promotional company. He yeah, can you got to know how to read, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you got to have the right people around you, right? Yeah. But even, yeah. Yeah, man. Like, there's there's a long list of illiterate millionaires and and uh, in sports. A long list of these guys. Yeah, man. They, um, yeah, they may not know how to read, but they know how to count. Maybe, yeah, yeah that too. May, and maybe, and maybe, Flo Mayweather, he got all that money, but maybe he deserves more. Maybe there's more that is left out. I mean, the, there's always more in anything. You always look at. You'll always say there's always more. Yeah. I mean, that's never never stops. No matter who you are, but. Generally, so what's the undercard fight on the tank and Santa Cruz? That so the you know so the people who are watching the show can at least know. I know Michelle Rivera is fighting. Um, who else is fighting on the undercard? Um, who else? Who else? I was just reading it yesterday. Can it's you a check? good fight? Can you check for us? Regis Prograce, right? Is he fighting on the undercard? Is he fighting? I'm not sure if he's fighting on the undercard or no. I think he's fighting on the undercard. Let me see. Regis, I think he is, but not sure. Hold on. I know he's fighting in a PBC car. Mario Barrios. We got my Mario Barrios. Um, Magdaleno's fighting. Um, guys got Ladarius Miller's fighting. Yeah, uh, he's fighting Huang Huang Her Raiders. So then we got Uzik and Dylan. I mean uh, Uzik and uh, Derek Chisora, right? Yeah, we uh, got Uzi Chisora. We got that's a different time. Yeah, yeah we Ryan got... Carl and Mario Barros are fighting for the super light. So it's two uh title fights. And which one are you coming on for, Punch? Which ones are you coming on for? I'm 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 gonna be all day Saturday because of course I gotta do Chisora Uzi. and, and, and Usik. Then I gotta show um I'm gonna have um Michelle Rivera this week, another interview with him. Yeah, um I'm gonna have an interview also with Sean Garcia. Um, Ryan Garcia's brother on Monday. Everybody stay tuned on Monday. Awesome. Um, Excellent. So for Uzik and Derek Chisora, I'm going to make it quick, yeah? Because I know I don't want to take too much time with that one. Yeah. I'm going for Uzik. I'm going for Uzik even stoppage on round 10, but definitely Ooh. on points. Hey, listen, I got that. I got Derek's that. from my country, bro, but I've got to be realistic. Uzik's already proven at the, uh, what he did. And I Derek's, got that Derek's on his way out. 
I got that too on the tenth. Do you think that Usyk is gonna is gonna find himself having to overcome adversity? I think he's gonna be able to avoid those shots, and that's where it's gonna become boring. Yeah, uh, got like so. To me, you see what I'm saying though. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That um, to sort of versus yeah, Tom. Um, at the beginning of that fight, it would look like elder abuse. Um, but then he caught him with that one. Uh, uh, he that one shot that was a mile away in the first round. He caught him with it. I don't even remember what round it was. But then he followed that up with uh, with the boy that uh, that Wilder knocked out, Spielka, right? Mm. He that up with the Spielka thing. Um, I, I'm not, you know, Chisora is past it, really. But Usyk is um, not the goods for me. Um, that Chaz Witherspoon, that was absolutely atrocious. The dude is inactive. He's not in his, he's not in his right weight. Um, well, I'm there you go. The intrigue in this fight is about um, the age and the like. How washed up is Chisora? That's really the intrigue of the fight for me. So you got Uzik, yeah? Uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, it's still a little bit early. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you might be right, but I don't think he can take one of those coconuts that Jared Chisora has. I think Tony Bell was putting nice hands on Usyk. And so hopefully there's adversity. Power. Hopefully, hopefully there's something exciting happens. Yeah, I think yeah. I think there's going to be some adversity somewhere. What I does think the chat so. think? The chat think Uzik or Derek Chazora? Let Usyk, us know. you not um. Send the like and subscribe. Yeah, go ahead. You got Usyk one, um, I but. Mean, it's but then we got we, we got Ino Uwe. After that, we got Ino Uwe two versus Jason Maloney. Um, I don't even know what's the undercard on the top rank. Hey, who spoke to Jason Maloney? You did, didn't you? You interviewed him. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you interviewed. That's what he had in the COVID. Was, it was a good little fight. That was, that was nice. And his brother got touched up by Franco. Another good fight. Yeah, by Franco. Yeah, he's fighting. They fighting the rematch too on the undercard of. Of Brooke, Brooke, and Crawford. That was the match of COVID until uh, until um, Pavek and Boy to Pavek and knock White Spark out. <laughs> uh, that was that was the fight of the, the entire pandemic. Yeah, that fight is gonna be a rematch. It's gonna be a good one. Punch, did you see the fight last um yesterday? Yes, sir. The main event. Yes, sir. Do you think uh, that's fight of the year? No, uh, Estrada. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, it's right. That was a good one. I think, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think that was more fight of the year, and I think the Zapata was more like more entertaining. Is it was it was both of it was entertaining, but I mean, in the in, in yesterday fight, you saw some type some type of defense in the Zapata fight. They were just knocking each other down, yeah, down, yeah, exactly. <laughs> down, right. like, back and forth. I'm, I'm the same thing, man. People tell me I'm a hater in the small weight class. I'm just like, dude, those dudes are just chucking them. Like, there's a difference between the sweet science and a fight. And those yeah. days were just fun. They was all hard. If you like, if you're into that sort of thing, I'm not hating, but, you know, I like to, you know, I like to hit and not get hit. Like Chuck Latito, he, he was getting hit, bro. Like, oh, yeah. If that guy had power, I don't know. Really? Man, I work with like, Israel. Don't work that much. I mean, I, told them, I, told them, I mean, if, if you wanted to, like, if you just wanted to study boxing and, stu and, stu and study, like, um, you know, like the offense. Yesterday, Chocolatito, he pulled every punch. He had his, his opponent backed up. The, the pressure. It feels like, yo, this dude was married. He, he was like a machine. Like, he ain't even, like, let out. Like, if there was not one round that you'd be like, all right, Chocolatito, slow down. Like, it was the same pace. It was, like, the same pace for 12 rounds. Like, like it looked like he could have fought three more rounds like that. He, he didn't yeah. let him breathe. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. you saw the Kyle Fire fight, both it's like both dudes fought Kyle Fire. So Kyle Fire outworked Israel, and Chaco Tito outworked Kyle Fire. So it's like you, you knew that's what was going to happen. Right? Israel just don't throw enough shots, but he's good off the back foot. He's nice. He's a cool little fighter. He's a young guy, but he takes a lot. He's been he takes a hell of a shot, man. These defense, man. I mean, he's he's cool off the back foot, but there's something missing from his lateral movement. Also, you, who y'all going for on the rematch? Um, say, 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 um, Estrada and um, Estrada and Chocolatito. Who y'all got in the rematch? Uh, I gotta go with Estrada. I think who we'll get him with his power. Ew, ew. Woo. That's, that's a, a that's a, that's a tough. Oh one. wow, that's a hell of one. It's like I had 
a stride pick a strider by split decision, and he got my man out of there in the eleventh. And it looked like it could have been good, but he dropped him and then got him out of there. <laughs> so my split decision went out the window late. But um, yeah, Chocolatito still looks bent. Like uh, he takes a lot of punishment. He throws a lot of shit. I think the young gun's gonna get him. I think he's gonna be a passer. So uh, wow, that's a good fight. I'm yeah, just- and um, also I before I go to that fight, you know the fight which happened yesterday. Let's put respect on that young boy Martinez. You know, he did a really great performance. The undercard in that fight, Martinez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys yeah, watched him? yeah, he came to England and he got robbed with Charlie Edwards. That kid, you guys need to watch out for that kid. He he steamed through that other boy. And you got to put respect on that boy's name, Martinez. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be a, uh, a first round run. I thought it was the second one. Second round. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how expressive is it, right? Yeah. Well, I'm going to go with... Um, Strada, I mean, Chocolito to me, yeah, he, he's, he, he, even though he won that fight, he took a lot of punishment. And at the end of the fight, he wasn't really a happy lad, you know. He was really, really looked like he was a bit stressed out. I don't know why. He just looked like he wasn't enjoying it for some of that fight. I don't know why, even though he won. It just feels like it's just too late now, you know. Mm. Uh, you know Chocolatito has a great spirit. Like, I, you know, there's some guys that you get the feeling from them that they're real good guys. It's a feeling I get off Chocolatito. And before the fight and after the fight, it just seems like he's there to be a sportsman, to give it all he's got, like, and then go home, you know, continue on being a loving guy. That, that's just the, the impression I get from him. Maybe you can play wrong. Yo, so before I go, I've got my rich friend in England. He wants to make a bet with me, and I need you guys' help because you guys are hardcore. He wants to bet me, right, who he thinks that Lopez is going to fight next. And he goes, Let's, so if you had to pick a name, and I'm even going to ask the chat. Let's just think what, let's just, what do you think? Give me a name. I know you're thinking any name, but give me a name that you might think will be Lopez's fight because I'm going to bet him. Oh, man. Because, you know, it's a lot of conspiracy theory going. What do you think can really happen? And I want to see if this prediction comes true. So it, even the it. chat, I'm going to look at the chat. If somebody gives me a name, I might take a bet. And I feel, I feel he will stay. He will get a stay busy fight, and they will make it a homecoming fight in Madison oh, no. Square Garden. Oh, Madi- yeah. And they're gonna have a Madison a Square Garden. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They're gonna have a Madison Square Garden fight with um with, with the same the same person. Now you're gonna have Edgar Balanga, Teofimo Lopez on the same car, New York City homecoming event, and I think that's what's gonna happen. Puerto Rico. Yeah, pick a guy who uh, who is under contract. Give me a name, bro. No, pick a guy think... who is top fifteen and under top rank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be in the. He's gonna be on the top rank, and it's gonna be uh, he's not gonna drop his belts, and he's gonna test the water at one forty. Yeah, he he could fight that Barbosa guy, no? You guys haven't got a name then, really, have you? I don't think. It, I just think it's gonna be a homecoming yeah. fight. So a homecoming fight to me is like uh, you know. Um, maybe top fifteen. It's gonna take money. money. Right, no, we're, we're, we can't give you the, the pick, but we definitely can point you in the right direction. Look at top yeah. roster of 135 guys, and then you can look at okay, the so 140 right. guys Let and get the point. Well, it's good, Mark. What's good on Rebel Box and talking news? What's good? Yo, uh, smoke. Let me make it easy. He's giving me five names. He's giving me Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, Regis Progre. But you guys said Regis Progre is fighting right now. Okay. Uh, now all those guys Taylor, are fighting. Josh Taylor, Ramirez, which I don't think is going to happen. All those guys are fighting. All those guys are fighting. Okay, okay. if it's one of those names, I think Josh Taylor because they're in the same. They're they're in yeah, top but, rank. So, yeah, but Josh Taylor's fighting names, Ramirez next. Who do you think could be next out of those names? All those. Yeah, names but I next. mean, I don't see Teofimo fighting Henny next because they're in the different platform. No, I'm yeah, talking tank. None of the guys you named. Literally, tank, none of the guys you named. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. Tank, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, Josh Taylor, Ramirez. Which fighter is he likely to face next first out of them? Oh, first. Which one is he what do you face yeah, first? That's out of those guys? guys? Maybe Haney? It seems like a good one. Yeah, I like to hear that. What do um, you think, Punch? Oh man, it's gonna be a tough one. I'll give you a good super chat if you get it right, dude. <laughs> I don't know. That's right or wrong. <laughs> oh. Which one is he likely to face 
first out likely to face, you know what? I'm gonna go by when he answered when he in the post fight interview. Think about his father in his post fight interview, him and his father said the same name, so I'm gonna go with Haney. Yes, I want to hear that. The last guy. Or uh, Josh Taylor, because they're in the same platform, bro. I, I could see that happening then Devin Haney. Okay, okay. All right. Well, a lot of people are saying Haney on the chat too. So yeah, Haney. Yeah, Haney. But th th if I'm thinking, I'm if if I, if it's that's what I mean. He's in a position where he could do a, he he could pick a lot. He could do whatever he wants to do. If I'm just saying, if it's also what what, what what does what does Tio wants next? He wants to get paid for his next fight. One wants to get paid. He wants to get. He wants to get paid. He the probably wants to. He want, He probably gonna said. want that homecoming. He will probably want that homecoming and fight in New York City because the the Lomachenko and To, if it wasn't for the pandemic, was supposed to be New York City Madison Square Garden May thirtieth. Damn it, that was supposed to be. So I think he's gonna come back Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden wants Tio Fimo to fight an event. Homecoming, he's gonna test the water at 140 with a top 20 or whatever. Don't I think it's gonna be a homecoming man. celebration fight. Oh shit! So uh, I just wanted to say that both Josh Taylor and uh, Ramirez are on top lane. Josh oh, Rebel Boxing was right? was good, Marky Mark. Mm. You can find them both. Yeah, you what's up? Chala, mm. chala, man. What's good? What's good? Was good. Was you saw the fights today? Yeah, good fights. Good fight. Good fight. What yeah. you think about um? What you think about the Sergey Lepinev fight versus Clayton? That fight was nearly impossible to score, man. That's that had a lot of swing rounds. Like I'm cool with a draw. That I, I think Clayton may have. I don't think he lost, and I think he was closer to winning it. So I'd say maybe yeah. Clayton seven five or six six, one or the other. Yeah, I had a 114-114. I had the 10th round. Could have been... I had two rounds, swing rounds. I had like I five swing rounds. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was like... There was... A, I think it was 10, 7, and 3 that I really count on when I was doing the live commentary. But I gave two of those swing rounds to Lipinet. So... But I don't think that Lipinet actually won the fight. Yeah. It had to be draw or Clinton won, winning 115-113. Or maybe a 116-112, but 115-113 is very legit. Yo, by the way, you know the way we were talking about Teal? Yes. Just a second ago. What's gonna happen next and who's most likely? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of a uh, pixie dust and tell you exactly what's gonna happen next. Okay. Right? He's gonna move up to 140. He's gonna have a homecoming fight. Mm -hmm. He's gonna fight with Alex Sacedo. <laughs> no, one forty. He's going to fight Alex Sacedo at 140. He's ranked number six in the WBO. And being a WBO lightweight champion himself, that'll shoot him up to number one in the ranking. Once Taylor Ramirez happens, the vet belts will go vacant, and he will fight the mandatory challenger for the title, which is Jack Catterall, and he'll become a two-way world champion. You heard it here first. Ooh! Makes a lot of sense. I didn't get all the way to that part. But I did say homecoming, New York City, top. We're going to pick one of the top 15s in, in 140. Test the water there. So I'm way too mark on that one. That was, that was. Think, that of the way, know, think of the way it goes. Because with the WBC, the mandatory is paid it, right? With the, uh, if Ramirez were to lose, he'll probably be made the WBA mandatory automatically. And the OIBF mandatory is Regis program. So it would make sense for him to go the WBO route, get one title to definitely become a two-way world champion before going into the unification so he can get himself climatized to the weight before going in with the better guys. One thing I would just add, that if he is a WBO super, he doesn't have to do that. He can already just exercise his WBO right to face the WBO champ. The just, WBC, because, you mean. Just, because, just because he's unified, small. Wait, he doesn't mean that he's the WBO super. They never said that TFE was the WBO super. I think you meant smoke WBC. He no, I mean WBO. No, I mean WBO. The same way that Terence Crawford had his shot at Horn. Yeah, but he, WBO Terence super. Crawford was yeah. Terence Crawford was called the super. TFE hasn't been called the super yet. 
But Terence Crawford was at 140, achieved a proper, he was a proper undisputed champion, wasn't he? Oh, look at that proper. What's the I like that word? I didn't like that word. I didn't like that word. I heard that. I heard proper. I, unless you're talking yeah. about proper 12, but I don't like the way he put it in. I don't really like that drink, proper 12. Proper 12. <laughs> not, not for me. But listen, yeah, man, you got you affirmative action belts now. Yeah, bruv. But yeah, so Craw Crawford was a proper uh, one forty. Hey, 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 hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what the fuck is the photo at? TFMO has a better resume at lightweight than Crawford has at one forty bucks. Damn it, respect the damn king, all right? I never, I never rap star, you respect resume. the damn king. No, I'm just saying, bro. Crawford <laughs> had, was was also undisputed at 140. He never got no franchise for nothing. No, this is about the WBO Super. I'll give you an example of like someone not going undisputed and being the WBO Super. Would y'all like to hear a name? Kosui Tanaka. That's why him and Yoker are going to be fighting because he and he was only a singular belt holder. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good fight too. <laughs> that's a name. Smoke doesn't like being said. He hates that now. I, so I, I, I don't mind to knock it, just don't... Wait, hold on. No, I, I used them in my argument, Smoke. Do you want me to get him out of here? Like the pound for pound list. Get him out of here. Tanaka is top 10. I'm not trying to hear that. Like, nah, bro. No? Bro, I put him at number one. I put him at number one today just to piss you off. I've got Earl <laughs> Spence 115. Yeah, Tanaka is the, is the best fighter in the world. And Monster, in a way, is the second best fighter in the world. Even when Smoke's trying to like slander the little guys in trolling fashion, he still doesn't bring up Kazuto Ioka. That shit pisses me off. No one gets that man his respect. You know why? Because none of those are better than my favorite Asian fighter right now, Manny Pacquiao. He's a better fighter than all of those dudes. Monster's not, not number one. Pacquiao's in front of all of them. You're tripping. Yeah, I'll be honest, bro. Best Asian fighter. Best Asian fighter for me is Nanito, bro. I like me some Nanito. Oh, you just, uh, now, now you hurt my heart. Why didn't I say uh, Nanito? Dang. He's just old. He's just not like, he's a shell of his former self. Well, man, he's kind of, uh, uh. he's not a shell yet. Yeah, I like me some Nanito. Nanito going to beat Nordino with Bali, and then he's talking to Yo Punch. Did you see that Nanito the Nair said he wants to move down to 115 to fight Chocolatito to become a four weight world champion? <laughs> I didn't see that, but that's crazy. That bro, if this <laughs> motherfucker does that shit, man, he's a don. This is a four weight world champion in his armor. Yeah, he went. To, he went from Floyd to featherweight. By the way, it's not like he just went like true, like Floydway. Like junior Floyd Wade, Floyd Wade to like ten pounds. This dude went up. <laughs> this dude went up a full stone. What he's fighting for next is a mandatory or or, or not? Nah, it's for a belt. Yeah, he, he he mandatory for the WBC because what had happened was Neri and Emmanuel Rodriguez they were meant to fight, remember? And then Neri yeah. missed weight on scale. That yeah. was a final eliminator. Mm -hmm. And then Emmanuel Rodriguez was offered the Nanito Denaire fight as a replacement for the final eliminator uh, two months after. And he refused, mm -hmm. so they just mandated Nanito. Yeah, man. I was, I was mad at Neri for that. I was mad at Neri for that. That's why I don't even think I talk happy. about him that much. But I'm, I'm happy he did it because now, now my man Nanito Denaire has a chance to be a three time bantamweight champ. Mm. Yeah, true. And he would be a three deck. Wouldn't he be a three decade world champion if he wins that? Three. Yeah, he's been. Man, man. Like, he's been yeah, uh, my boy used to spar him and his brother like back in the nineties. Out here in the, in the Bay, man. What year did Benito pick up his first world title? But that's got to be a crazy stuff. Got to be an old something. Oh, in, or the O's in the 2000. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. No cheating. No cheating. And man, I got way too much stuff in my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, this was. 
This dude was a world champion in 2007. That's what I'm saying. Oh, oh, something, oh, something in the in the in the two in the 2000s. Y'all realize in 07, I was 40. Yeah, man. Yeah, and and uh, and um, Vladimir Klitschko has not. It was clearly not a uh, a Hall of Famer in 2007. You know, in 2007, Smoke was still older than I am now. 2007, Smoke was 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 turning 40. Was it? Yeah. Well, no, I turned 40 in uh, in 2000. Fuck, what was it? Was that 12, 13? Fuck, what year was that? 71? Uh, no, 2011. Damn, 2011, I turned 40 years old. You, you got to be 50 next year. Yep, in February. In February? Are you a Pisces? I am. February. 20th. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I am. That was on uh, on Fury Wilder uh, rematch. That was my birthday. The twenty second of February. Yep. Twenty second of February, nineteen seventy one. We got an exclusive. Got exclusive. Yo, put you look tired as shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, Did I mean, that stream put you to sleep, bro? Yeah, he was yawning. He was yawning like an hour ago. I'm surprised you're still here. Nah, I actually, you, you know, I actually slept the whole day. I woke up at ten o'clock. Right what, before you're, when I went you're live. A vampire. I ate, I ate. You're, you're a vampire. You're a vampire, bro. You stay up till all hours. <laughs> I, I, I actually, I actually think that it caught it caught up to me today. It caught up like I was done. I was done. Yeah, I even told my wife. I said, "Can you wake me up at like at five? Don't let me don't let me go past six. She said she was been she been trying to wake me up ever since six o'clock in the evening. You better help raising babies. I ain't even hear my babies, and they loud. <laughs> <laughs> Say my son wasn't he was he was trying to wake me. I cut it. I I I don't remember. I'm like I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that shit happened to me yeah. once. I slept. I slept. On, I slept seventeen hours straight. That's the best. That's the best and worst feeling ever, because when you sleep for seventeen hours, the first two hours after you wake up, you are fucked. Like you are done. But then, then once the, after you get through those first two three hours, you have energy for four days. <laughs> yep, for another another four day. But I'm like, damn, on a Saturday. On a Saturday, my whole Saturday, I ain't see nothing. I ain't see daylight, nothing. It felt like. What's I, I actually, I actually saw. Up? I actually, I actually, this is what I, what I did last night. I ain't do the live commentary for the fights. I watched the. Fight. I just wanted to enjoy the fight without trying to score the fight like I usually do. I just wanted to enjoy the fight. To be honest, I haven't listened to a to a commentate fight in a while because every time I watch the fight, I'm doing the live commentary, so I have the the mute. But then around 5.30 in the morning, I'm doing the score. And I'm, and I'm just there doing like film study with the Estrada, with the Estrada and the Chocolatito fight too. So I saw these fights again, but actually doing it, you know, scoring it. That's why I did the video like around what? Like 5 sun in the morning. So I went to the gas station, got me some um, sun to eat. And then did it right there. Mm. But yeah, okay. in the back, are you putting up your Christmas lights? Is that what's happening? What were you? Nah, what man, my wife, my wife is Swedish, so she just be putting things up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you got the Christmas lights up for the summer and Halloween yet? Yo, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing. My girl started watching Christmas movies, and Halloween ain't even started yet, bro. I'm pissed. <laughs> I got, I'm like, nah, hold up. I want to watch Mike Myers. Hold on. Yeah, it's, 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 murder time. Time. it's still like, yeah, it's, it's horrible decisions and death time, right? Exactly, man. I want to see some possession. There's some possessing on the screen. Like, I know it's a Christian show, but I want to see some demons go <laughs> crazy. That's what I was going to say. I said, yeah, yeah, he's a Christian. Hey, man, being raised Christian, man, they hated Halloween. And then tell you, the, 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 they, they used to say in, 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 in church that the, the October 31st is the devil's birthday. And then that, when I grew up, I said, man, the church was loud. What you talking about? The devil had a birthday, 31st. What you talking about? Oh, my, my whole childhood. Yeah, I'll say this. I miss Halloween. I'll say this. 
<laughs> this is the one holiday that is definitely, definitely for us. Like all the blood, the gore, the viciousness, the craziness. We love that type of crap. And then when all like the Christmas comes in, you get all like the little candles and the little presents and you gift wrap it so nicely and like oh you have it there and you, you just look at it and you say, What happened to me? Only ten months ago there was kids coming to my door saying trick or treat and I'm like trick and then slamming the door in that face and now it's like <laughs> now I'm having to spend money on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. They gotta go to the to the market and buy yourself a big bag of candies and stuff like that. My grandmother was she, she used to give like like beans, like cans of beans. Or something. <laughs> oh man, those are the days. We used to have egg fights, you know. Bro, I used to get into so much trouble when I was a kid, man. I used to egg everybody's house. Shit, man. I was so poor. I was so poor. I wanted to be the ultimate warrior. So I got a bunch of socks and I just tied them up, tied them up on my on my on my legs. <laughs> no, I dressed up as the hunchback with a pillowcase and a pillow on that knee back. <laughs> Running around with a big oversized uh, green short with holes in it in the middle of October and ordered it was freezing. <laughs> I, was, I was green platinum. My brother was yellow platinum. We were the platinum rangers. I would. <laughs> the blood and the ranges. Hey, yo, punch. Yeah. Can you hear me, punch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. you, Yeah. Oh, now you breaking up bad. Yo. Yeah, yeah. I'm office. Please. Oh, I can't hear you. You say you have to sad. That's it. Half asleep? Oh, anyway, but yeah, man. Uh, Boris shut down his co uh, his uh his internet connection. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Probably, probably. But yeah, man, I'm about to shut it down too, man. Probably do uh, some film study or something. <laughs> you ain't doing no film study, bro. You're gonna go in there, get something to eat, like some type of sandwich, and you're gonna ah, lay down. Mark, no, so, no, no, no. You're gonna I'm, eat a sandwich, you're gonna sit down on that couch, you're gonna open five minutes of film study. Next thing you're gonna be doing is waking up saying, Oh shit, I gotta start this stream. <laughs> Probably no 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 no. I actually then what's this channel? I don't even know by name, but I'm hooked up on this channel, and I I actually forwarded it to Cause he wanted me to forward it to him. I forward it to to, to Douglas Fisher. Um, forward it to me, man. Forward it to me. You hey, probably yo, know it too. I'm out over and out. You probably you know it too. Me. I'm over. Elusive, and out. El elusive blue. You got that right? Elusive blue. No. Yeah. E elusive blue. Elusive I'm, I'm, blue. Uh, yeah, cause this guy he got a bunch of old, um, old, old history. Oh like, yeah, this is the, this is this is the dude who puts everything in color and shit. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I'm actually yeah, addicted. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I'll be watching a lot of these fights because now you know when it's when it's color, it's actually more interesting to me. I like it. So I was just finish. I forward him. I was I was watching the the Sunny Liston and the Mr. Rush fight. Yeah. So yeah, so I think I'm just gonna watch a couple more fights and stuff. I like watching old fights, man. Cause in boxing, I don't. That's why I see in boxing, I don't see the evolution. I don't see too much of it. There's certain fighters that they give you that evolution, but but to me, like the a fighting and technique is still is still you could still see it like if it was today. Maybe not in the mm -hmm. heavyweight. The heavyweight is different, but body, body wise, but in technique, like when you're watching Sugar Ray Robinson, you'd be like, psh, psh, you'd be doing this thing out here right now. Like, it's, 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 it's just. Yeah, there ain't no Sugar Ray Robinsons right now. <laughs> no. no that is... And look, that, when no, we talk. A, matter of fact, that's a question. Do you think that, because every sport has its evolution, do you think boxing, technically wise, has its evolution? I mean, I don't think I I don't see any of these like give give me any weight division you want, right? Give me any. 
the lightweight. I don't see any of the adults dudes being more involved than Roberto Duran or Esteban de Jesus, mate. I don't see it. Start Pernell Whitaker? No, definitely not. I don't see them being more involved than like the Welters. I don't see any of them being more involved than Tommy Hearns. The the evolve from Tommy Hearns. I, I mean, even it's been a devolution since even the Shane Mosley. Like, yeah, Shane Mosley. Like, you know that I, now when I'm I'm watching a lot of Shea, um Sugar Ray Robinson, I could see oh, yeah. why they call him Sugar too. I could see yeah, the oh, yeah. he, my, he paddled his whole herky jerky thing, but yeah, the herky jerky. I could see that. Sugar, I mean, Ray Robinson. Could, who's got who's got the fastest hands right now? I thought there is it Gary Russell. Gary Russell's got the fastest hands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Like Smoke will remember this name when I say it. his hands are not faster than Howard Davis Jr.'s. They're not. Yeah, Nowhere near as fast. Howard Davis Jr.'s hands were uh, way faster. He was in the same Olympic team as Ray Leonard. He won the Val Barker Award in the same Olympics. He never became a world champion, though. But he, his hands were way faster. Like, do you see any featherweights popping a job and moving like a Zuma Nelson? Nah, really. I don't even see people popping jab too much jabs today. I feel like that was becoming a lost art. I think there was a, nowadays they sub, substituting the jab, um, the feints more. They they use the feints more than jabs now. Look, I'm gonna say something that'll piss a lot of people off. From 147 to 160. I don't see any of these fighters being faster, quicker, having more reflexes or skills than Emil Griffith. And he's from the 60s. Then, hey, you, then you prove him on the mark. Then you prove him. Right? Damn. Okay, hold up. Who's fat? 154. Like, Lubin is fat, but he don't throw shots. He has no chin. He's not as fast as a male Griffin, man. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, that's why they proved me right. Cause yeah. I'm like, I'm, I said this a while ago too. I said, you, you know who? Had, you, you know who's? Who, he's an old man now, but who had fast hands? He's still active. Manny Pacquiao had fast, fast hands. Yeah, but Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao at 147 is really a prime 130 pounder. Yeah, no, but yeah, now I'm saying Mac, Manny when he was in lower weights. Um, not really one. 47. I mean, like if you take Manny Pacquiao, uh, let's say 126, 130, that Manny, yeah. right? So the Manny yeah, at that, 127, that. yeah, that featherweight Manny, right? Do you think he had faster hands than Salvador? Oh. There you go. And that's and that's arguably the greatest. <laughs> like, can you remember, listen, but like, um. For real, like Salvador Sanchez is in it, like an, a, he's in a place all by himself. For real, it's, but so is Manny Pacquiao, isn't he? I mean, he's he an is, but he's champion. in a place. Yeah, but he's not really an eight weight world champion, and also I don't know, whatever. He he's a he's a four time welter champion. He's the oldest welterweight champion in history, right? The yeah. man, the man's picked up lineal titles and yeah. world titles through eight divisions, right? That's that's the best way of putting it because that's true. He's picked up lineal and or alpha. Yeah, he picked up lineal in the ring. I right. mean, yeah. yes, they, the yeah. Kassadu, he got Casazu's lineal off. Pat. Yeah, he, he's 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 a five time lineal champion. I mean, th th right? This dude, he's a five weight lineal champion, I believe. Five weight lineal champion. Hold on, he's in his own realm too. And Salvador's got faster is. hands than him in his prime, and that's a dude from forty years ago. There you go. And by the way, just to prove more record to the point on the dev devolution in comparison, like whatever, Manny Pacquiao is not a fighter of today's era. He's from the 90s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 There's that. There's that. Can you imagine <laughs> if you guys was using them five ounce gloves like back in the day in the UK? Look, look if boxing's evolved so much, right? Why has there been a dude on the top 10 pound for pound list for 17 years if these guys are so fucking good? Yep. I, I mean, it's politics keeping him off, off of it. At this point, the only reason why people are keeping off of it is because they like some other guy. That's all, that's all it is. I don't, 
know people don't have Manny in the top. 10 I wanted to do. I wanted to do a video about the gloves, right? But I think I would have just. <laughs> I don't know. I like. I was thinking about Mark. I said, "You see, Mark gonna help me with this one." Cause I was I was um studying about the gloves and shit like that, you know the Eric. Nah, bro, smoke's the historian in this chat, bro. I smoke. No, but uh, listen, there's no historian, but I remember stuff, right? So, Cause a lot of stuff happened while I was watching it, <laughs> but I don't know about historian. So yeah, they definitely changed some gloves and made some exceptions to the rules for certain people in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm just like if I'm like reading the history. Really, it, it looks like the the America have softened boxing up more than anybody because they were kept changing the glove size. It was America that was cha changing the glove size and the safety and the safety and the materials. Mm -hmm. It was always America, but is that because they were looking to soften up the boxing, or is that because America is a country that's in love with branding? and selling and merchandise yes and we don't actually like it is we are very violent but we also don't really want to watch people die playing sports yeah i say fair i, I think it's more like half and half both both what what mark and, and, and smokes i think it's half and half like yeah you don't want to you want to see a but then at the end of the day, it's a brutal sport, man. It's a fight game. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's like, like I want you to beat the, I want, I want you to beat this man up bad, but just try not to really kill him. <laughs> Look, right. I'm gonna they're, say they're, this. They're saying if you change the equipment, then people won't die. It's not the actual problem with the sport, it's the problem with the equipment. Look, this is gonna kind of put it into perspective what a boxing fan is really like. And me saying this is actually pretty dark to think about. What are the two? What two knockouts have I watched more than any other in this sport? What would you guess, Punch? The two knockouts that you ever watched, like that. The two knockouts I watch, I've seen more than any other. Um, man, that's a that's, that's a tough one. What was the knockout when this guy had his 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 eyes rolled up? I can tell. The one that, that comes to mind for me is Marquez Pacquiao. Right. Well, no, it's not. It's not. It's not in the top two that I've watched the most, and this will tell you how dark boxing truly is. Is it somebody that got killed? You know, and say Bill Griffith and Benny Kid Perez is my second most watched knockout, and that resulted in Benny Kid Perez's death. And the and the first one that I've watched the most is Nigel Benn versus Gerald McClellan. Yeah, man, that. Geez. Everything was just disgusting. Oh man! And that's that's still to me th that is th the best fight for real that I've ever seen. Like, and I didn't even have I didn't even know it was happening. Right, I was flipping through channels, and it was on. I saw that with my cousin, and just man, to this day, I can't, I can't believe that fight. We need to pull that if fight McClellan, up. If you do, you reckon if McClellan didn't end up with brain damage, right? If he didn't end up with brain damage, do you reckon people would call that the greatest fight of all time? Maybe, yeah. No, I don't think it was. I don't. I still don't think it's the greatest fight of all time. I just think it was the best fight that I've seen. Like that thing was super dramatic, and I couldn't believe what I was watching. Like just, you know, it's one thing if I was like, oh yeah, these guys are about to fight, but I didn't know that they're about to fight. That was like on traveling or whatever, and I just flipped through and saw like, okay, let's see what's happening, man. Um, but yeah, uh, if he did not get brain damage, I think that still would have been one hell of a fight because it was technical and it was a brawl. It was a bunch of hard, but it was just a war of attrition. Yeah, man. I think yeah. I think I think it's, it's, it's I think it's good for 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 platforms to you know you know to talk about. The, the old, the new, and the older, the new to, to, to put things in perspective of, of what are we watching now? But if you would have watched what happened before, you know, I think it's good to talk about that. But not to take away from today's box. I don't like that either. You know, like, like that's why I did remember that time when I was at the live and I'm like, these what's ways will beat the guys in the A's. Because I just, I just, I just, I just say, I just hate that type of talk also just to take away of today's fighters, right? Man, I'm times just saying. Are different. The times is just. Right. And I'm, and I'm saying it's like, it, I, I definitely am behind Tia Fimo, but it also reminds me of the Fernando Vargas, right? 
It just it just does. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, Tia Fimo is a man, but he is not. They don't even they don't even have the Winky Wrights and the Cortez and the uh, um, the Shane Mosleys and the Felix Trinidad's. It, like they don't even have those guys anymore. Awesome. Ain't it crazy that or Tia Fimo? If Tia Fimo fights till he's 28 years of age, right? And he goes the way most people are going now. That's 15 years. He'll only have 46 fights in his career. Yeah. And I don't think none of these guys is going to pass 40. Not with the money they're going to be making. It'll be just stupid of them. I'd be hella fight. impressed. I'd be hella impressed to see one of these dudes do, do over 50 fights. If they did over one of the, just one of these prospects do over 50 fights. Because I'm seeing some of these prospects coming through and they're having two or three fights a year. Yeah. Now, now yeah. let's say guys like Boots Ennis. What's what's his record now? 25 and 0? Yeah, but like so he's, had one, he's had like what? Two fights in the last two years though? Yeah. No, he's going to fight again too. He's fighting December 12th. Yeah, finally he's getting out of his promotional issues, but we need these guys not to have those promotional issues and shit where they're fucking up careers. Man. Like, I just, look, at the end of the day, man, I would love to see someone like Virgil Ortiz fight fucking seven times this year. You know what I mean? Yeah. These prospects should be fighting like five, six, seven times. Get their name out to the public. How else are you going to be able to sell seats when seats come back if people don't know who you are still because you only fought once? Yep. Like, look at Philip Hergovich, right? That dude fought on, well, he's fought on one card, right? He, he's a big puncher. He's a skilled heavyweight. I enjoy watching him fight myself, yeah? He mm. should be on all of those matchroom fight camp shows. Eddie Hearn should have him on every... Not going to bum out. I don't care. Not going to bum out for four weeks straight. Do it, people. Because you're saying you you, you want to fight with fans around, but you're not drawing in any fans. You need yeah. to. Yeah. It's like, what's this kid's name? The, the Jared Anderson. He already fought, like, what, three times in a bubble, right? Yeah. So, and Elvis Rodriguez. He probably already had, like, three, four fights this year, I think. Ain't Brandon Lee going back out against him? I don't know. I think he's out in four weeks, man. He's going to be out in four weeks. I like that. He just had a fight. He'll be out in four weeks, five weeks. That's why he's saying. He was the last main event before the pandemic hit. You know what I mean? He was the mm -hmm. last main event. I think he's had two fights now since coming back, and he's looking for his third. Yeah. Like, that, that's that's what's up. That's like, what's up. I, 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 longer. See, if he's knocking everybody in the first round, he should be having another fight right next up, like, right now. Sh Shakur Stevenson, I think, was the first fight back with the bubble, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How old is Shakur? 21. No, 22. 21, 22, 23, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sure. People are like, well, he's been a world champion. Shakur shouldn't be sitting and getting rusty, though. What Shakur should be doing is having more fights like that. Having more fights like it. Yep. Fight Jesus Rojas or something. They're running their careers like if that's it, like they're elite fighters. They're running their career. That is that is true. And it's there there's a lot of fighters doing it. What's Josh Kelly doing, man? This dude, what's he doing? He has he even fought this year. Has Josh Kelly had a fight this year? I don't think so. I don't think so. That but he's one of those dudes I think is kind of gassed. I don't know if he I don't think he's necessarily good. So he might be around for a while and some entertaining scraps. Yeah, I I get I that, but I, at the I, same I, point I, he should I, still be fighting. He should still be fighting. Like, Josh Kelly had a fight in December last year, right, against Winston, Winston Campos, right, after the draw either. to Ray Robinson, right? He fought in April, right? April of last year. Then he fought in the June, only, only a few weeks later. He had one tough fight, and he didn't fight for six fucking months. Yeah. He didn't look great on that fight either. No, he didn't. I thought he... Uh, look... I say you got a draw, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got a draw because the judges wrote him a draw. They wrote him an early Christmas present. That's what they did because he lost. Mm -hmm. He got beat. Ray Robinson changed his style in that ring. Mm -hmm. I thought highly of him coming to the profession. I said, I'm going to like this guy. I like the way he's moving. But then I'm like, damn, I lost confidence in, in Josh Taylor the last two years. Josh Kelly, you mean, not Josh Taylor. Josh but... Kelly, I'm sorry, Josh Kelly. Yeah. Hold up, hold, hold up. <laughs> Don't be losing hey, no confidence uh, in no Josh Taylor. 
No, no, I like Josh Taylor. I even got Josh Taylor beating Jose Ramirez. Is it because of the post all fight, or was it before that? I just like the mix. Um, he's showing uh, he showed a lot of you know mixture. He shows a lot of for me intangible. He could work in the outside and inside. He got guts. He could fight. He could take a punch. Um, and I think with Jose Ramirez is more, more. He's very, very. He got grit. He got the, yeah. you know he, he goes he after him, like, all the people. But can, but he is like one dimensional. Does can I tell you what sold me on Taylor beating Ramirez? It didn't matter what Ramirez did next. That fight with Regis Progray sealed just how good he is. And yeah. the, the, the reason for it is with me, man. I don't care what no one say. Regis Progray is one of the most beautiful self-part inside fighters I've watched. And he is someone who I think could go back into the 90s in the 140 pound division or the 80s in the 140 pound division and actually fight with those dudes. Regis is one of them. He's He's got 90s written all over him with that inside pocket game, fam. The way he, oh, it's beautiful. His jab, his timing. He's a stunning boxer, stunning fighter, stunning to watch. And he, whether you agree with the win or not, like I, I personally scored it a draw, but I could see yeah, both men winning. Like yeah, you you and me punch. We score about yep. nearly every fight that's close. We just get we just make it a draw. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, but then when we when we saw it, when I saw the fight, is that Josh Josh Taylor was working the inside good as well. He, he was, was fighting in, well on the inside, but a better inside fighter. Yeah. I, well, they, they, I I saw urgent the the difference to me. Like I also couldn't call it. Uh, you know, I think they should definitely do it again. Yeah. But. The urgency. Um, I, I think that there was just maybe do it at Pro Gray's home to see if he's this shows the same kind of fire and the same kind of urgency that he showed, you know, um, in his own home backyard. Well, not really his backyard, but closer to his home. I want to see. I want to see a rematch. I want to see a rematch. Look, I'm happy with a trilogy right off the bat because if those two go into the ring, it's going to be good. It doesn't matter. It's going to be good. The way their styles clash, they're going to be good. But you what can put I like that shit on the moon. You can put that shit on the mill and it's going to be good. What I like it is that they got that in their back pocket. So even yeah. if, you know, Josh Taylor even takes a loss, let's say, versus Ramirez, that's still going to be a good fight that I, I'm still going to want to see. So I'm good with that. You going to watch the Regis Progress fight um, so, um, next week? No. Because yeah, you're not paying pay-per-view for that shit, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Why would I watch that when I could watch Michaela Mayer? And you know who we're gonna be fighting too? Well, that's said, Regis and Michaela will probably be on at the same time. Three different telecasts. Three different telecasts. Um, I, I, I've definitely, um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be taping some stuff. Like, wait a minute, Luke Campbell and and Ryan are not the same hour, right? They December fifth. Not- I mean the same day, but not the same time. Like one is it one earlier than the a, other? I mean, that's what they, they said that Luke Ryan Campbell Garcia. and Ryan Garcia is on uh, the the main event. I think will be day. on at like a, yeah, I think it will be on at like four p.m. for you, Smoke. Yeah, they said okay. after yeah, yeah. it's gonna be an afternoon fight, an early afternoon fight. Yes, yeah, so no, that's the yeah. this is day of boxing. Cool, have a party. Yep. Yeah, yeah if, if, if have a party. If I have a party, I'll pay the for the tank. Yo, Smoke, have you seen the Usyk Chisarla undercard? No. Yo, Punch, bring up that undercard. Bring up that undercard. Usyk Chisarla undercard. And think that UK people have to pay pay per view for this. Let me see. Usyk Chisarla, hold on. Damn it. Usyk, let me do Usyk. I mean, I, I, dude, I. We, you know, we've already had a back and forth about this when it comes to Dillian White and his and his fucking pay per views. That's just to me, like as as an anthem as it as weird as paying seventy bucks is uh, weird for you guys for a pay per view is, you know, paying to watch Dillian White fight. Oh yeah, the Lee Selby fight. Yeah, um, Lee Selby, which one? Uh, oh yeah, Carbosis. Lee Selby, George Carbosis, right? Yeah, I want to see that fight. Um, Dave, Dave Allen, Christopher Lovejoy, Savannah. Come Marshall. on, bro! A Christopher Lovejoy sighting. Yep. Versus Dave Allen. Versus okay. Dave Allen. What for? 
Hannah, Hannah Rankin. Hannah Marshall Hannah, and Hannah Rankin. Yep, uh, that's not a bad fight. I mean, Tommy maybe. McCarthy versus Lang, um, Langone. Wait a minute, two women Lang. on the pay per view. That no, that's the that's the um um the whole card's pay per view. The whole card's pay per view. Yeah, but it's not pay per view here because we're in the zone. That's why. Yeah, but I mean, we're we're feeling we're feeling Mark's pain with him right and quick. Oh, okay. I want you to think about it for a second that this is pay per view for me. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. And, and then Eddie Hearn says the Charlo card shouldn't have been pay per view because there wasn't enough quality on the card. Right. But Eddie's trying to sell you guys. Like, does, is Eddie's stick still, does it still work in it? Yeah, it's it does. It does. And yeah. even when I speak out against it, I'm just hating. Wow. I'm just hating. These guys are brainwashed. They just, they yeah. just open up their wallets and give it to Eddie Hearn in his, uh, in his estate. Yeah, wait till the zone customers have to spend $50 on pay-per-views, right? And they'll be like, oh, it's only 50 on top of their $30 subscriptions. Well, you see, and it turns out it's 80 Well, you see what happens. They yeah. won't realize it. I mean, I'm like, look, last year I had six, seven pay per views on Sky, three on BT, right? That's 10 pay per views in total. That's what, 200? And then on top of it for the two subscriptions combined, that's 80 quid, 960. I spent 1,400 quid mm. on subscription and pay per view. That wasn't even worth it. Um. Who we, who we got? Uh, we got for the DAZN's, uh the DAZN debut in England. We got uh, Danny Jacobs, Gabe Rosado. Yeah, we got Danny Jacobs, Gabe Rosado as the <laughs> and Andre, Andre and versus Dusty Hernandez Harrison as the yeah, co. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, yeah oh, and and you, do you rem do you remember what the debut was for for the American audience? An afternoon, um, an afternoon fight with Anthony Joshua and Alexander Povetkin. I don't even think that was a debut. I think it was like Jesse. No, it was. Wasn't it? Didn't Jesse Vargas happen before that? I think no, 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 But uh, ESPN. Uh, I think that was a, that, that actually that was the first fight I wanted to see on the zone. Uh, I think the very uh, one no, that, that is what opened it up. That is what opened it up. I think the I think the highlight of the zone this year was the women boxing. Uh, this year, I mean, but it was a it was a pandemic. I'm not sure when they shut it down. Nah, the highlight but, of the zone this year was front uh, was uh, Virgil Ortiz. Was, uh, was it no? It was Estrada versus Quadras. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean these these fights yesterday were good. So oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. You see here smoke. You see here smoke. Jarrell Miller debuted in October on the zone against Adamic. Yeah, there's a, a to, I think that it was September. Right, you're right because that was September. Um, Pavekin. and Jesse Vargas, which was your order pick because they were early on. He the debuted on the, the, the Yeah, yeah. So there you go, man. Yeah, September. Yeah, that was September twenty sixth or something like that for Adrian. I, I, I know, I know, my Eddie Hearn track record, smoke. Trust. <laughs> yeah, man. I just remember that. I ever just remember Jesse Vargas and Big Baby Miller and going, "What the hell." I mean, oh, that's what Match from USA. That's what it was. That was the Match from USA card. So AJ Pavekin was the Zone USA, and the, the Zone Vargas. USA launch was AJ Pavekin. Now, and you got that in the afternoon, and you got a unified world title defense against a guy like Pavekin. I'm opening up with two non-title fights at four o'clock in the morning with Dusty Hernandez versus Andre and Danny Jacobs versus Gabe Rosado. It is a champion, though, right? <laughs> it's not a title fight. It's not one sixty-eight. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, I'm just fucking around. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, that's it. I'm done with the. <laughs> uh, 
I'll just promote them. I'll just speak highly of them. One day, one them. day, I'm going to make a video, and it's going to be called Punch. Here's oh, all the reasons why you should not be a fan of Demetrius Andre, and it's going to be 50 <laughs> minutes long. You know, it's funny that it, 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 um, Dean, and, he was and here's the thing. <laughs> I guarantee you, Punch will be the only person who would actually sit there and watch that thing for 15 minutes. Oh, <laughs> man. Punch, hates, Punch don't like jumping off his guy's bandwagon. He hates that. Keith Thurman, he don't want to do that. <laughs> he want Keith Thurman to be on top right now. That's my... <laughs> Keith, Keith, come back. <laughs> who would you cheer for if Keith, fought Thur if Keith Thurman fought Lopez at 147? Lopez. That's not your guy, then, bro. <laughs> oh, quiet. oh, you see how quiet that was? <laughs> That's the future. That, that hurt his heart. It hurt his heart. I'll, I'll, I'll fight. I'll, I'll, I'll fight until you know. Let's say when I'm, you know, debating or whatever. Until you know, uh, it's the same. Uh, I can't. I can't fight for Demetrius Andre. I can't. I can't. I can't. Especially this move. Oh man, oh man. Okay. Yeah, you find a dude named Dusty. <laughs> but nah, but when people ask me why the, the reason why I like I like because I like a certain style, man. I like I like I like unorthodox, I like those type of style, you know. That's what I like, you know. So this ah, it's, it's a promise, people, right? It's, like it's my it's style, style, I really like stay in the pocket, stay in the pocket, like you know, my style. I like bud, I like bud style. Um Chris. Let me ask you a question. What's one fighter you thought would be great and you got horribly wrong? Because my one is really funny. I, I, Anthony Durrell, I thought we, I thought he'd do something. Yeah, but yours didn't fail as badly as mine. Smoke, you're going to laugh when I say mine. Uh, all right. The fight I'll of the let, me see, let me see which fight. I, I like that. Because Smoke going to love mine. Because I literally, I'll even say this. I said this guy's going to, like, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. I like this. I mean, I don't know if he's under other uh, chief, but I did like Zap Judah a lot. But he didn't under chief though. Oh, okay. yeah, that cost zoo. That was bad. I mean, yeah. you say it was early, but he that was bad. I was a you pretty boy. I was a pretty boy friend, So I, are you ready for mine? Which one? Oddly Harrison, bro. Oh, damn. I thought Oddly would go in there. And I thought, like, through 2005, wow. six, like, the prospects coming through, like, with Vitaly and Vlad, I thought he'd knock out both of them. And I bet money on that when I was a teenager. And I legit thought this dude would actually be the dominant force. And I thought he was going to eclipse Lennox Lewis. I actually thought, legitimately thought he'd eclipse Lennox. That is the worst one I've ever done. The second worst one that I've ever done is... Probably, probably, because I didn't think David Price would be good. Do y'all remember a fighter by the name of Anthony Agogo? No. He was a UK no. Olympian. I think he picked up bronze or silver. And he he ended up getting, like, fuck tons of injuries and his career went haywire. But this dude was really skilled. The other one that I got wrong, sadly, was uh, Darren Sutherland. He was in the same Olympics as James DeGale in the same division. He picked up bronze in the Olympics. Him and DeGale fought three times or four times. And I think Darren beat him three out of four times they fought. Um, or two out of three. He had a winning record over the game. You know, this is actually been he went, he went far and He went far and out, and he missed home. Being away from home over in England, then he committed suicide, man. That was tragic. Um, You know who's been... Who I thought would be better. I mean, his thing is okay, but I thought it'd be a lot better. Is that uh, Rigo? Rigo I'd do a lot more than he did. I thought Demetrius Andre. I think probably that's. I'm gonna put him up there too. I've got one for you, Smoke, because you you watch you probably watched this Olympics. What about Howard Davis? Um, I, you know, I got I got to him late, but then I saw him fight. Like he was cool, but you know. And, yeah, I, I was disappointed. I, I didn't think he was gonna. I didn't think he was gonna lose the way he lost, and then drop off the face of the earth the way he did. Like, and then just become like a troll kind of. Yeah, that was kind of disappointing. Yeah, you know who did think? Do you know who did think Howard was gonna do well? 
Who? My grandpa. He bet ten grand on him to be a two way world champion. Wow. Man. Coming so, right out of the Olympics. So do you put that on like how much of that do you put on Eddie Hearn? Well, Howard Davis Jr. You said I thought you were talking about Howard Davies this whole time. Howard Davis Jr., bro. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Nah, I, was, I mean, I wasn't checking for him like that, wasn't I? You weren't checking for the Bob Bar- Barker Olympic gold medalist? I don't know. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. It isn't for a 147 or above. My bad, Smoke. Yeah, you know, I have my, uh, I have the guys that I watch and uh, that I like to do. Like, if, if you do something, then yeah, sure. But there's very few guys, like even Sweet Pea, I wasn't in there at the beginning. Really? Mm. Got there pretty quick. I got there pretty quick, but I wasn't there at the beginning. I was there for his first title shot that I think got robbed, like super fucking robbed. But you know who would be that fight fighter for me that I'm like I really didn't think too highly of, and then gonna be probably one of the. I mean, to be honest, I don't. It's Errol Spence. I didn't think highly of Earl Spence. Oh, a fighter you didn't think highly of and went on to do great things? Yeah. Wow. I've got one of them. I got a bunch of those. I've got one, I've got one very, very, very specific one. Right? Anthony Joshua. Okay. Um, yeah, I I you know, there's a lot of guys that I wasn't like. Man, like Manny Pacquiao, shit. there's no way before he fought Eric Morales that I was like, yeah, no. And even after he fought Eric Morales, I was like, uh, that's what you got to do to that dude. Just left hook that fool to death, just take a step back. You should be able to end his career. There's no way that Rock'em Sock'em is going to be able to last. Yeah, 154 winning champs. I never saw that coming. But I do think, I do think that. Speaking about just Earl Spence, but because his opponent, I do think that Danny Garcia didn't get his fair, <clears throat> say, you know, like fair praise, especially after 140. Uh-huh. Like, if, I, like he got the, I mean, Danny Garcia had this, the the cherry picking like status behind his name, and I'm not, and and he never had a bad resume. I, I didn't, I never understood that. Because he was fighting on Mayweather's undercard, so he was just, it was bleed off, right? <laughs> he was just like, it was him and Mayweather doing their thing. I thought, man, I love Danny, but I don't know. He, he, it is what it is. He, um, he, he, he was he was cool at 140, at 147. He's been decent, but not really anything to write home about. That's a killer division with a bunch of, like, guys who, yeah, you got to do who has a better 140? Who has a better 140 resume? Jose Ramirez, Josh Taylor, Danny Garcia, or Bud Crawford? I think Josh. Baranchik. No, no, no more. No more. And Pro Gray. Right? Yeah. And then, wait a minute, and also Harold Davies. <laughs> Speaking of that. Um, then you got, what do you, uh, I mean, so you got some cool guys. He also has Miguel Vasquez on there. Yeah, and you got some good guys on Danny, but really the best name is Eric Morales, who didn't do shit at 140. Danny was past it. 140, 140, and 160. Danny's the American at 140. Yeah. 168 and 140 has become that was not supposed to be the exciting division, has become the most interesting division. That 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 um was that con fight that was after the uh the Peterson fight though right the con mm-hmm. yeah so that Peterson fight 
took a little bit of luster off of Khan, even though like Peterson, you know, popped after the fight and all that stuff. Controversy after the fight, but he fought Kendall Hall too. Like first, first the the, the knockout by Bradis really took it off, and then getting beat by Peterson kind of took it off. Yo, guys, I'm about to shut this off, man. That's good. You weak, weak. Nah, nah, nah. You crazy? Nobody be going nah, nah. I was like your boy, huh? Why be going nah, nah? I was live. I've done twenty four. That was there. You stayed up twenty four. You ate. You can ask smoke. I did it for the Fury Wilder card. Twenty four hours. Damn. In, in this, in the, in the, in the, in the current channel or before? Oh, this is on my current channel, but like 24-hour live streams don't stay up. But I can take a screenshot on the analytics for you to show you. Damn, that's a lot, bro. Yeah, I, I did. I, I was on the I panel for 24, and then I, I dropped in on Unrivaled what he was doing his. I thought I was dedicated. I was doing the thing. I was mostly at these, though, because, you, you know. They needed a Wilder fan to, to throw, uh, throw soda at and shit. There, there, there is the YTBC award ceremony. So who who gets who gets the channel of the year award? Who you give it to, Unravel? So far this year? Yeah, we push an ego aside for you in the YTBC. There's a, so we have a ceremony. Who is the best boxing content channel? On the t on the tube. For for the bro, for that's gonna that's gonna <laughs> create hey, problems. This year's this year's gonna, hold on, hold on. Right? That's gonna create problems, bro. Yeah, bunch of, if I it. say something like that, people are gonna be pissed. I'm gonna do that shit. Matter of fact, nah, hold, hold, hold your thought. Hold your thought. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create it. Watch. See, the thing <laughs> the thing is, like for real, is that if you had said before pandemic. I would have been like the boxing voice is tearing it up, but the pandemic shut all that down. And then other channels where like you could talk boxing and some other stuff, places like this, you know, you can get some politics on and like meet people. I, I don't know. A, a boxing when it comes back in full force, maybe you can see, but there's a whole new crop of talent, right? So who knows? <laughs> But 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 no channels like um you know them highlight channels that just throw highlights. Uh, I'm talking about like, content like you know personalities out there. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? No. It's channels. gonna be me, bro. <laughs> yo, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna create yeah, I'm gonna create it. Watch, I'm gonna create it. I'm gonna have a live the YTBC award ceremony. <laughs> have all these. <laughs> and and put it on like the community so people can vote for. Yeah, unrivaled, unrivaled key that like you know everybody knows knows boxing, but when he goes off topic, um, it, it gets kind of wild. Like it's definitely like it's 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 to be experienced, not described. Okay. We will see if unrivaled gets an award. We will see. It's up to the people. <laughs> hey, for, for real, like I you know, I've been listening to the to the guy. Uh, for a while, but what what people may not realize about Unrivaled is um, he knows wrestling really well. Like if you get this dude to start talking about wrestling, <laughs> talking about real wrestling or, 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 or WWE, uh, real wrestling is what you're talking about. Jim McMahon in w WWE WWF. That's Vince McMahon, <laughs> sir. <laughs> real wrestling. <laughs> you mean wrestling? Wrestling. Tennessee. Yeah, but it, it, you know, uh, Khabib showed the world what uh, what wrestling's about, right? Oh, bro, he fucked my up. <laughs> he fucked Gagey up, bro. <laughs> like people were like, "Yo, Gagey's the Gagey can be Khabib. Gagey can be." <laughs> God, fucking kill. Yo, he's a wrestling background. He's a he's an all American wrestler. He's an NCAA, he's an NCAA Division One wrestler with a good, good record. He just. He was all he was on he was an all American pick. He got fucked up. Mark yeah, I didn't think he'd be Whitaker. Punch um, FD great channels. Okay. Anyway, yeah, we we we're keeping you up. Um, you know, is it thanks for staying up this long? It's been a minute since I've been able to chop it up for real. 
So yeah, okay. I'll, like, get, I'll, I'll tell you who I think has been the channel of the year, Punch, right? All right. And to p- everybody else who I don't pick, don't take anything against this. I think the best channel this year was Ring IQ so far. And the reason why I say Ring IQ okay, okay. is he was the most consistent uploader during the pandemic. All right. So my, the most fun that I've had for real, like I've had a bunch of things. Like D is home, right? So that's my favorite channel this throughout this whole thing. Mm. But, you know, um, the controversy, the jokes, Man, I've had a good time at El Jefe's channel. It's, it doesn't exist. <laughs> I, had I, did. I did, man. I had a good time. We talked about it every damn thing. Oh, right, man, that was a good time. <laughs> it's gone. It is what it is. <laughs> Yo, he's going to cut this. He's had four different channels during COVID, right? So the MXBC one. Is that you know of the whole iteration that was probably the one that was like the most extreme and that you know that got a little bit wild, but the El Hefe experience when it was just about like preaching and all that stuff, man, that was some fun stuff. No, though I, I do give yeah I do give Ring IQ a lot of credit. I do I, I like I like I like um I like that he doesn't follow the the trend. Let's say like if you know there's a story that comes out. And then right away, everybody tries to be probably the first one to do it. He just takes his time. He puts the video when he wants to put the video and then talk about it. That right there tells you this guy's not, he's not, he's not out there just looking. He, he's in it for, you know, his subscribers and, and, you know, for boxing. He's not, he's, he's, his mind is not competing. Is not, he's not acting like he's. Um, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, and the news come out. You got to be the first one. He- also, let me say this. This is what I mean by consistency. He uploads the same times within 10 minutes every day, twice to three times, right? And on top of it, none of his videos go above 17 minutes and 59 seconds other than his live streams. He keeps that shit within a 17-minute time period range, and none are shorter than seven days. Mm-hmm. That's so he's giving people a half hour content of upload minimum per day. And he did that during the pandemic and he was uploading the Avis. He was still there. I don't know how. I don't know how, but that's that's the mark yeah. of just a great content creator. A great content creator. That's the mark. So like whether you agree with his viewpoints on things or not, that's Yeah, see the, the thing is I he was already that. It's like so he's like consistent for me. There's there's guys who have been consistent and then there's been like the COVID guy. Like so Ring has been Ring. You know, we we chop it up, we do whatever, we go back and forth. He's been that guy even before this year. So I mean, yeah, he held down. He held down pretty good. And, um Yeah, I like I like Ring. I like T B V. Um but also with certain channels, it could it, you know, it could be too much of the same, and then I'm like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'll catch you later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know that. So it does get. It, it's good. It's good. It could be good, but then it's like, I'll catch you later. I, I know what is it about. You know. Well, like there's, 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 been, there's been programs, right? It's not even so much channel. Like I think the Three Wise Men had a couple of good programs. Like maybe not the entire segment. Maybe it gets a little bit. Um, you know, these they kind of stick to the same subject a little bit much but they when they go around some of their shows have been absolutely brilliant but i don't know about yeah, that's it. true that is true i'll give them credit but sometimes like you hear the same things get repeated over and over again yeah like let's say for example now let's say um i won't consider him a boxing because he does ufc but let's say um what's his name what's his name let's say for example like a showbiz right so let's say showbiz does his thing, but it's almost you can't challenge his perspective or anything because it's about what he says and that's it. I think, and but but with other channels, it's like you could challenge, you could challenge me. You know, the panel is open. You could challenge me. You could talk to me. The other um, the other channels, you could challenge, you could challenge Ring. He's not gonna go all the time live. 
but he's going to be there probably once or twice a week and you could challenge, you could chop it up with him. So that's the fun part about the community as well. If you're not in that, if you're not doing that, then are you really in the community? Yeah, you're a good channel, but are you in the community really? Like, are you living in the block or you're living in, you know, or you living somewhere else? That's a, you feel me? That's what I, how yeah. I see it. So, um, yeah, so I, I really like the open forum and talking back and forth and all that stuff, like the free smoke aspect of the whole deal. Like I feel like um, the, the connecting with the community members has been sort of the best thing about this year in boxing, right? Mm -hmm. before, the, before this year, it was like either you have to be a part of the clique or it's just that one guy's channel. But now I, I think there's a lot more dialogue, a lot more, uh, a lot more back and forth. And I appreciate that. Like I'm not hating on the guys who don't do it, right? Do whatever it is you do. And I still like support. But I definitely appreciate the, you know, the back and forth. What you think about that one, oh Mark? You read it? No, I don't have my glasses on, bro. Oh, he said, if Mark made his content more structured and uploaded more regularly, he'll be hard to touch. I don't know about being hard to touch, but I understand the idea of uh, uploading content more regularly with more structure. My content's kind of, I'll be honest, it's all over the place. It, it, I, I'll, I'll be frank about that. I haven't really enjoyed YouTube in quite a while. So it's very rare that I'll, like, the only week I was, re, like, there was two weeks I really was enjoying it. It was on the build-up to the Charlo card and on the build-up to the TFEMO card. And I was doing live streams and I was making regularized videos. And you'll even see it structured in my views from the previous weeks. Like, yeah. Uh, that 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 higher that entire six week period, I grew my channel by six hundred subscribers in six weeks, and for for a channel down of three k, that's quite a lot. And that's not coming off of different stuff like Manny Pacquiao views or anything like that. That's coming off of like Charlo cards and stuff. Um, that was more enjoyable, but. I do understand the idea because I do go all over the place and I don't keep a structure or a set time frame. Like, I'll be honest, there is no time I actually upload it. It's random as hell. You could get an upload from oh, that me. Wasn't my, that wasn't my, that was my assessment. That was a court. Uh, that was uh, from the no, no, I agree with it. I agree with it. It's true. It's genuinely true. Like, I wouldn't say, like, I'd be hard to touch because other people are actually better at making content than I am. And I'll, I'll be honest about that. Making the actual content, they're just better at it than me. I, I struggle with it. But well, I struggle for originality and ideas. Well, here's the, here's the thing. So I've been in this uh, this prediction league. You came in the first year, right? This is your first series, I guess. You know, your inaugural uh, try. And you came in second. And it... And... I know a little bit of something else about it too. And I, I think that even though it may not be the most original idea, I do think that you would bring um, some much needed perspective to it on, on YTBC and that's the betting. Betting? Yeah, betting the Probably. fight. Sports Probably. Betting. My, my only problem with betting is, right? And here's my thing. I, I know people who have gambling addictions, right? And They've made mistakes or errors, and I don't want to be responsible for giving tips and people being like, "Hey, yo, Mark, you lost me money. I didn't lose you money, but I don't, I don't want that to happen." Yeah. That's but like well, when, here's when, the thing. when you're talking. To, that's like when you're talking to, to a person that is really heavy on the stock market and be like, "You know how to do the stock? What, what should I invest?" And I, then, then, then they be like, "You know, you should." Start Study more because they don't want you. They don't want them to feel like they tell you to invest in this stock and then you lose. Is a, so I understand that. Well, it, here's the thing. A guy, Richie, caught your back. Just tell him what Brick Top told him. When I give a dog a bone, I don't want to hear what he thinks about the taste. <laughs> That's not reference. That's <laughs> not reference. I, I think, but that. I think about it. I think people have their, 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 um, you know what I'm saying, their <clears throat> niche. Let's say Mark, he's not, he's the quote unquote, the historian, right? Allegedly, from a lot of people, which I've yeah, never made that, the claim that, of. You know, that's And that smoke, happens. smoke's known me on YouTube longer than most people have, right? Smoke can even tell you, smoke, have I ever called myself a historian? 
And whenever somebody says it, this is what you say. I'm not a historian. I've seen you on with other historians, and you know, it's always been a very illuminating conversation, right? But you do not describe yourself. No, I, I, no, I talk with, this, I talk this, with this, people. I talk with people who call themselves historians. And by the way, Smoke, this will probably there's only two people on YouTube I think are at the level of a historian, and that's Hardline and Scrapbook. And that's my that's from speaking with people. I've heard a lot of a lot of wrong information come out of certain people's notes. No, nah, no, nah, you know uh, what you we, said hardline was funny. So I'm driving. So yeah, I'm, hardline. So I'm driving, right? I'm driving in the morning. I don't damn what channel. I think it was these two. And I think Mark wasn't on, right? And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Like they're talking about Mark. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know, I'm just I just I just press on the you know the live. And <laughs> who said it? He's like, um, and you know, sometimes I don't want to feel like knowing everything. <laughs> I'm saying to my mom that, that it, like Mark, Mark, Mark could come into a, a, a panel and he will make he will make the panel um, look casual. <laughs> you know, that's not a good thing. That's not a, that's not a good thing though. I'm trying to come away from that. Because I don't, I don't want. But no, I was no, listen, laughing listen, when listen. I was driving. Because it's almost like saying to somebody. It's almost like saying, "Man, damn it, guy, you gotta be so damn smart, nigga." <laughs> Chill out, motherfucker. That's a that's a problem for me. Because I don't. Let me let me say something. I don't want that stigma attached. I really don't. I don't like when I say something. It's only to point out like what's right or whatever. But people are like, "You're a know it all. You're trying to do this sort of stage. It's never to do with that." And that's actually a problem for me because all really, I want. No, nah, no, nah, it's not. It's not. Nah, it's, for me, it is. For me, it is because that's becoming a stigma where people no. think I'm looking down on them if I correct them on a piece of information. That's not true. Nah, but see, that's what it, no, the difference is. That's why I say on my channel, I'm a person. I, that's why I always say, and Smoke will hear it a lot when I say, I throw my, when I, I'm creating that, I throw my ego aside, man. I learn how to, in life, it, life itself, like, I don't have like this this ego like so I'm 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 here to enlighten but also be enlightened at the same time. I we could debate but when I'm debating too I want to be educated. Like this is just this is not a self-soothing for me to l say what I feel. This is right and everybody's wrong. This is my perspective and whatever. That's why even when you see me on the panels and I'm actually like more quiet rather listen to people. The same thing I could be listening. Oh yeah, I think the same way. I think the same. Way. Oh yeah, I, I didn't think about this. Okay, then I checked it out. Then I'm I'm learning, you know, like and that's one thing I like about let's say for example also Ring IQ's panel. See the people that come to Ring IQ's panel, you don't you don't hear too much beef going on. So I go so when I see the Ring IQ and y'all chopping it up, sometimes I'm driving, and I don't even want to go in to when y'all talking because this person is saying um. Um, enlighten, enlighten thing about this situation. This guy saying this, but I'm taking everything in. Then I'll say my whatever I felt, I feel. But then everybody is speaking. When it's a good panel with boxing heads, you know, it's it's great. I love those conversations because at the same time you're still learning. We're learning. So, so what you always doing, learning. Always so, learning. So what you're doing is not you shouldn't feel bad because other people may <clears throat> maybe they, they need to be like you know what let me take in what mark is saying let me matter of fact let me check out what he's saying and that's what it is it's not you're not the problem this is a boxing channel we talking boxing you just keeping it within the content of whatever we whatever you're talking about now if somebody don't know what you're talking about then that's on them but if you know what you're talking about so what you have to not mention what you feel or dumb or or not not dumb but down your you know what I'm saying so I don't I don't know what you're doing is you know what I would it's what you just said and also something Mark said earlier about you know um you know fighters that didn't turn out the way they thought I saw Tia Fimo first fight uh first um on YouTube 2017 his dad had uploaded some fights I saw him, I was like, you know what? I like this guy, I like this kid a lot. And I think he might be the guy right now that I can remember following from him being the greenest to where he is right now. And it's only been like three years. Mm. 
Yeah, when I told people about, I said, you watch some amateur fights from him. That's one thing about these young fighters. I'm not looking at these, these, um, their first 10 fights professionally. Those are the fights I'm not even looking at to study them. I look at them when they in Pan American games, when they in, the, in these tournaments, when they fighting another elite amateurs. And then when they get these type of fights, you know, the good fights in the professional level, if I'm going to compare anything, I compare those. I'm not comparing this guy that you just knocked out in the first or second round. Or yeah, yeah, you see those guys, right? It's just, but the following them is a different thing. Like you know, like Tio, when I saw him, he kind of stood out. I'm like okay, let's see. Like it's, it's hard. all right. I mean, I wasn't even checking for Oscar like that. And Oscar was big when he fucked when he hit. Everybody was talking yeah. about Oscar and all that. I was like, eh. Like a Michael Conlon gonna be fighting next, and it's gonna be a good fight. I'm, I'm gonna watch tapes of his amateur, amateur, you know, them high, them high elite amateur fights that he had. You know, then when you get them type of good fights, professional level, then I start gauging you on on your professional skills and your twelve round bouts and, and, and like that. Yeah. It's, it's 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 real hard to break through and become a personality, especially for like I just watch sports because I like. I'm not really a celebrity guy and I don't really need to see you do a thing like so yeah it's just um you give me good fights I'm I'm trying I'm checking for you. so if I give you an example right if you want to gauge Edgar Berlanga right I'm gonna just I'm just throwing out, I'm throwing this the name out Edgar Berlanga versus Jose um I mean David Benavidez are you gonna look at the 15 guys he knocked out or are you gonna watch some tapes that he did in the amateurs, what are you gonna watch? I'm gonna watch his last fight, and I'm gonna think from his last fight, David Benavidez will beat the holy shit out of Edward Berlanga. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, if you wanna, if you, if you trying to like, like ghost like skills, because Edward Berlanga's not showing skills; he's just knocking people out. I can't see him. Then he couldn't take a punch well. Um, how's his stamina? What he's gonna do in the first round? How can he work oh, yeah. on the outside? Yeah, he's like round five. <laughs> yeah, I, but I I would learn. I think more of Edgar Berlanga. Actually, what do what he look like in the second round? Yeah, exactly. I I would learn from Edgar Berlanga more in his last amateur to, in the, the tournaments than what I learned in the professional level. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, it's, it's the well. That's why I said right. That's why I started with round five, right? Because we've never seen him in a, at an amateur or a pro in five rounds. It's like why you think they when they when people try to diss Deontay Wilder, they try to pull tapes of him getting knocked down in the amateur, struggling or whatever. They'll pull some tapes from from before. They can't pull the tape of him throughout the, the throughout his professional level because he was knocking everybody out. So he so to shame, you gotta pull when he was fighting or losing or whatever or struggling. Cause everybody struggles. I see, I would love to see a tape of of and I think Mark knows this amateur um, um, YouTube channel. I forgot the name, but um, they got a lot of amateur fights. But I like to watch, um, let's say, who's who's the fighters that I was watching before? I posted that, that the one that they, they the amateur, they, not the one in the, in the Olympic trial, but the one they had the, the Andre and, and Thurman fight. And I'm like, yo. Thurman couldn't read. He was gassed. He was gassed. You know that Thurman was dropped early in his career, right? Yeah, yeah. Of course. I knew that shit. Yeah. It just wasn't televised. You, you've seen Ramirez be dropped too, right? I ain't see the Ramirez one. Yeah. But Ramirez even Mikey was... got dropped. Mikey got dropped. Um, you know. Every, I can even. You can see it. You can see the Ramirez drop the still footage. They took down all of the footage by the one from the dude in the arena. So if you type in like uh, Jose Ramirez versus Johnny Garcia, that's the one where he got dropped. He got dropped in the second round. You'll be able to find it there. You'll be able to find like a fan made footage, and you'll see him get dropped. Short right hand. Yeah, all these fighters get their they go they got their ups and downs, so they gotta you know face adversity. That's why when people be like, "Oh my God," that's why I hate that you got exposed, he got exposed type of stuff. Like every great fighter has that. For example, that Nakatani fight, Flo Mayweather has those type of fights. Um, 
Mike Tyson had the type that that type of fight where he ain't knocking. He did. A, he went to the decision. He didn't knock out his opponent. You know, every fighter goes through that type of fight. You know, now it's just the social media that nowadays, even if you get dropped, even if you get clipped, even even if you get stunned, oh, he's exposed. That's it. He's done. That's it. Imagine if this guy touches him. Imagine if this guy hits him. What happened? Like now it goes way overboard. It doesn't even go if a guy get dropped. If he gets <laughs> stunned, or or if he got if he's bleeding from his nose. Oh shit, he bleeding from his nose. You see? What about if this other guy touches him? <laughs> he's like it's a fight game, y'all. Like, <laughs> you know, like so I like to watch the guys develop. Right, I don't even I don't have a blueprint for the way when a guy should step up or have it like I don't like whatever they're doing with Belonga, fine, let him do it with Belonga. Um I I think he they should put him in with some somebody that's gonna tell him, but they should do it on their own timetable, right? And I'm just gonna watch when he is ready to watch when he's ready for me to watch, I'll be there to watch. Until then. You know, I'm just gonna pick one round knockouts against to make like when it comes to predictions, right? I'm just, yeah. I just I would I would do as a round. Big, man. I would like uh, that's that's the thing I would look. I would say, you know what, Puerto Rican parade probably around that weekend in New York City. Let's get like they used to do with Cotto, but let's get let's get Teofimo Lopez and 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 Edgar Belanga in the undercard. That's just gonna do good. I gotta tell you, the Puerto Rican Day parade, that used to be my jam right there. Like the Bronx, uptown, uh, Puerto Rico, yeah, yeah, like 95, 96, 97. Like all oh, through, some Fat Joe, you just turn the corner all of a sudden, he's, he's rocking out. It's oh, fun. Rap was missing out, Rap was missing out, man. We got, we got to bring Mark out here to New York. To where? New York, New York. I don't want to go to New York. Why not, man? I got a lot of wanna, friends. I want to go back to San Diego, bro. San Diego is here. It's here waiting for you. I love San Diego, man. The beaches and blondes. No, I like, I like my island. With, with, with the with island people come to New York City, they stay, yo, they, <laughs> y'all know how to drink. That's the West Indian Day Parade. That's another thing. how to drink. Y'all want smoke. that coke? I'm not smoke. Punch, <laughs> punch, 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 punch. I'm saying this to you right now, yeah? I haven't been drinking properly in a while, right? You give me one and a half days to prepare myself. Give me two days off, yeah? Uh, you and I can go shot for shot. One of us is ending up in the hospital, and the other one's still going to be sitting there taking shots. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that with you guys. Yeah, I get the I'm both sorry. you guys are heavyweights. I'm cool. Oh. I'm pushing above my weight class. I'm good. I think not. You know what it is? I, 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 with drinking, I think it's more of you slept good, what you ate, did you eat, or you, why you eating. See, one thing about I don't like eating and drinking at the same time. Really? I don't like. I don't like eating and drinking. I eat and drink at the same time. I could go. I could. I could go the whole day. The whole day drinking and it, and it, it won't. It, it'll affect me, but not like. But if I'm if I'm just taking appetizers and then drink and then go a while without, I'm a, I'm a feel how I want to feel. You know you know what you know what the real test is if you switch each other's favorite drinks. If you drink his drink and he drinks your drink. Yeah 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 that switching drinks. <laughs> and then you see new drinks new drinks. Yeah it depends. Right. No, yeah, I think if it, you it haven't depends. had those contests then you got to drink. No, something hold on hold drink. on. Punch your favorite drink. What percent is it? Oh, I have it right here. My favorite drink. What's what volume? If it's is beer, it? if it's beer, this is my favorite drink. What volume is that? That's um, it's one of those Belgian specials. That's 10.7. That's it, okay. Yeah. And like for, for whiskey, this is my six pack of beers, okay. And for, beer. and for whiskey, for whiskey. Um, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, I'm still a Jack guy, man. Moonshine Jack. So thirty, so thirty three percent proof. Well, the yeah, it's eighty, eighty percent. I mean, yeah, when you eighty, eighty percent proof, thirty three percent volume, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So thirty three, right? So what would happen in this situation is I'd be going down by percentage of on beer 
four and a half percent and on on whiskey I'd be dropping down by twenty one percent. So I think uh punch should be fucked. <laughs> That's, that's my, my shit, bro. That's my tequila. You like this tequila? I saw. Nah, I don't. I don't drink tequila, man. That that's the thing. That's what it is. It's what you don't drink that comes up. Yep. So- <laughs> it don't even matter. None of those. I don't drink. No, I don't drink tequila because it doesn't really get me drunk. Mm. Oh. See, just- I, didn't, I didn't drink beer because it, I feel like I was just drinking for fun. It doesn't get me nowhere. Like I was just. Pissing, pissing at beers never, but then I switched to like these beers on the Golden Drac nine nine. This is the Golden Drac nine thousand, but they got the regular one that is also good. Um, I like these beers. All right, so I was trying to outlast you, but you guys outlasted me. What you got? What's what? your favorite beer? I say get me. Um, I mess with the Chimay, man. I like the Belgians also. Uh, Chimay and the Duvels, both of them. Duvels, good. Duvels. See, I I used to, I get that when there is no gold drac, because I gotta go to the warehouse to get the gold drac. Yeah, I fuck with Chimay. It's like that's that's my like. And your favorite whiskey? Uh, I don't really drink whiskey. I am a uh, I either I'm a cognac tequila. Okay, with your cognac. Um, I like, I, like I, I fuck with some rum. Um, my cognac. Um, I like the Paradise, man. Uh, Hennessy. Yeah, I haven't um, Hennessy. So you know, that's a. I, I don't know if you if you're ready for that one. Um, for what Hennessy? The, the Paradise. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, there's another one. The, the Richard is also, uh, you, you know, that's also a real good drink. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't get, you know, every now and again with the wife, we'll like, we'll tell, you know, knock one back. <laughs> Go ask, what's, you know. what's, 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 um, <laughs> nah, I was going to ask, what's the drink that you'd be like, oh, nah, my wife can't, she can't handle this. Like, nah, don't drink. <laughs> oh yeah. Whiskey, tequila. all forms, all forms. Yeah. Yes. Whiskey and tequila, both of those things. That's just a fight. Anything <laughs> spirits, anything spirits. Yeah, like, nah, see, yeah, my wife, she can't, she'll just drink a lot and then they don't learn to, uh, it turns to a too long of a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy as hell. <laughs> oh, man, no, no, but. no. I want to hear this now, bro. You got me interested. <laughs> oh, rap star, you got, what, what was, oh, no, he's not. Okay, I, thought he was no, I think when when women drink, they start talking more. Like they start talking, they try to. They have the those you know the little talks, you know those small talks turn into like big, like the long talks. It just should be a small talk. <laughs> you understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Have y'all ever had any uh, Hoyland Park Oyster Edition? Y'all ever had them? No, nah. I don't think so. I lived in Highland Park, but I don't think I drank Highland Park. Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. But I slowed down, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I slowed down. Like, I don't... I don't... I mean, especially with the pandemic and stuff like that. I ain't go to bars. I like... I, I, my thing is I like going to bars and watch sports. So, like, so sometimes yeah. it's not even about the, the drinks. It's about, I like the atmosphere of going to the bar. I agree with you. Sports. I completely agree with you. It's one of the best. Yeah. Like, just going to a bar, sitting down. Like, I know I normally do that for, like, the football on a Saturday. You know? Yeah. Boom. Like, let's say I will just, I wouldn't even want to drink no Miller Lite or nothing like that. But if that's what they have, I'll pay my $3 or whatever, or $4, whatever. But just to watch the game, but just in a bar in a bar setting and I wouldn't it's not I just buy the beer to watch it in a bar setting. But yeah. I'll stay with that one drink. Like for real man, I didn't start drinking until like I was 39 years old. And that's what so he's only been drinking 42 years. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no but um but yeah I got you know I got in late and I didn't go through all the cheap shit. Like I just you know I started at the top and stayed there. 
so let's say I go when I go to uh, go go to Europe, right? Since I'm also a, a basketball fan, and and you know, so I'm like, damn, I can't go to the ball and watch the NBA because this shit is is the at ball atmosphere for me was kind of different. You know, they playing soccer, they playing other, but they not playing the NBA. You know, so it was kind of like uh kind of boring. Hmm. I'm a soccer fan, so that was cool. Um, I like soccer when 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 it's the, the the World Cup or something like that. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, man. I was in I was in New Paris. York, people ball that, to ball. Oh man, oh, 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 oh. I love it. I love it when it's oh man. In New York, you can just go bar hopping. No, but the, the to Paris '98 uh, that summer, man, that was cool. I, I met friends that I, that a friend that I met people who are my friends to this day off that night. Oh yeah, now you, one of the best bar nights I ever had was when Cleveland Indians was facing the the the, the Cubs. You know, when they, a couple of years ago when the Cubs won, I'm a Cleveland Indian fan, and yo, everybody in the bar, everybody in the bar was going for the Cubs, right? And the bar was packed. I'm talking about Cam Move Pack, and there's a big bar, and. They're like, you ain't no damn Cleveland Indian fan. Like, what the fuck is a Cleveland Indian fan in New York? And stuff like that. I'm like, what the fuck is a, a Cub fan in New York? Y'all just, y'all just on a bandwagon because they haven't won a chip, you know? Did you pull Yo, Joe Boo out your back pocket? Huh? Did you pull Joe Boo out your back pocket? What do you mean? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the Cuban guy, like you didn't, you became a Cleveland Indian fan for watching Major League, right? Hell no. I'm a, I'm a Kenny Lofton. That's my that's that's like my 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 how you say it like my favorite athlete growing up. That's my favorite athlete. Lofton, yeah, he was he was high Lofton for point guard for Arizona. You know, you know, he played he played in Arizona in um Arizona Collegiate. So I was a Kenny Lofton fan. I was a Kenny Lofton, and I I used to play baseball center field. So I was a huge baseball fan. Kenny Lofton was my favorite player. And, and then the Latinos have taken, and then Manny, and then yeah, then Manny Ramirez is from my neighborhood, and then he got drafted by Cleveland. So, I, you know, with him, we lived, we lived five. I lived five blocks away from Manny Ramirez. So, that's the neighborhood, you know. what I'm saying so, yeah. So even with him being on the team, then you start rooting for him, you know. And then it's Cleveland, it's Kenny Lofton, Manny Ramirez, you know, like a hometown cat. So. I'm a Cleveland Indian fan, but then I, at that time I'm in the bar, and the Cleveland Indians won. Oh my god, the "I Told You So" party was the best. <laughs> yo, I told you. He, some guy goes, yo, and they were like, hey, "Give me a shot. I, I, we're gonna buy. We're gonna buy all your drinks today. Name me, name me the lineup. Since you're so much of a Cleveland Indian fan, name me the lineup of nineteen of nineteen ninety four. I'm like. Bah! <laughs> Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Kenny Lofton over his couch just told me. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said the whole lineup, yo, free drinks all night. And then everybody was like, yo, yeah, yeah, he's a Cleveland Indian fan. Yeah, yeah, he's a Cleveland Indian fan. <laughs> oh, that was the best night. Yeah, like, well, you can see, as a Cleveland Indian fan, I'm a, you know, I'm a boy. You said basketball, so you both can, uh, we both can suffer over three one, right? Oh my God, man. <laughs> Even now, when we lost to the Yankees, people was like, "Yo, you you watching the baseball?" No, I know what we're gonna do. We gonna we gonna lose. Come on, man. Now we're the fucking Cubs. Now, 1948. Now we're the Cubs. <sighs> anyway, Ron right here, Ron California. You left. You're in New York anyway. New York is man. New York has not won. Well, I mean baseball. I got a desperate sports life. No, because I'm not even a Yankee fan. If I was a Yankee fan, oh man, I have a, a, a good sports life. Boxing is boxing is is, is, is became my became my life. I don't want to talk nothing else. I got nothing to talk. I got a desperate sports life. I'm, I'm smoke. I'm a I'm a Jet fan. I like the Islanders. Right, let's see. That's the, what is that? That's, uh, so you got Joe Namath. And then I was I'm a Knicks fan, brother. That's uh damn, that's uh fuck Ewing and um Phil Jackson. Like none of those are even in basketball. Like it's it's is is uh 
Not, not um. What, what's your boy? What's what's Patrick Riley? Is Patrick Riley even in basketball? Pat, what Pat Riley in Miami? Yeah, he's still president of Miami. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, he's a point guard for that Knicks team. Which one? Which which thing? Which which year? The one with uh, with Phil Jackson. Derek Fisher. No, Phil Jackson. The Knicks. Oh 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 oh! oh work on the Knicks. When Frazier, yeah, before Frazier. he was born, when I was a baby. Frazier. <laughs> before you, when it was Bill Bill Walton, not Luke Walton, Bill. <laughs> Walt Clyde Frazier and uh, and um, um uh, Earl Monroe. Yeah, none of those dudes are. Willis Reed. Yeah, yeah, Pat Patrick. I think uh, I think Pat Riley's the only guy still left in the sport. Yo, I'm telling you, man, I got a desperate sports life, bro. It's horrible. Nah, I, in I Cali, have no man. bragging rights whatsoever. See, I'm, I'm all Cali. So I, I, you know, I have family, friends, business all over the state. So I don't have to do anything but not root for a Sacramento team, and I'm good. That's for sports life. And then the guys that actually, let's say, like my 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 favorite, you know, the the boxers that I was like, you know, I have a lot of hosts from. It was Gary Russell. It was Thurman. It was Andre. Um, Wilder as well, um, but Mikey, you know, some of them are successful. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's such a long road, though, man. Like, how long do we watch Floyd and Manny? And yeah, man. but the, you know, at this it's point, Andre, the, you know what's right? the difference, Moke? Is that at this point, at thirty, they got better. Not not like better, but they were still hungry. No, Manny Pacquiao at age 30. Just think about Manny Pacquiao at age 32 and just think about Flo Mayweather at age 32. What they was doing. Yeah, but also look who they had as their backdrop. Like, the guys, who are you really looking forward to? Even the most guy, like Tiafimo's your guy, right? There's not the competition. No matter who you pick for him, it's like, eh, those guys are okay. It's cool. I mean, I want to see that fight, but there's no legend. I, I kind of talked about that the other day in the video where I was talking about how we need to build these fighters smoke because there is no there is no one really there in a lot of these divisions to truly pass the torch or get big marquee fights. Like if you look at 168 right now, right? We're seeing all this Calm Smith stuff and everybody just wants the Canelo fight because that's all there is for them, right? But Canelo can't even have a couple of those fights because these guys aren't premium names. And you see guys like Errol Spence, yeah, he fought Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia is a good fighter, but truly, is Mikey Garcia like a star? No, he ain't. He ain't really a star. He's a good fighter. Errol, is he a star? Not really. He's a very good fighter, but is he a star? No. Crawford, very good fighter, but not really a star. They need to be on. What Tiafimo was on recently was a really smart move on their behalf, having them on ESPN, getting them out to a larger audience. Errol and Danny shouldn't be on pay-per-view. If they want to make Errol pay-per-view, that should be on regular Fox and get him a couple more fights on that on that stuff so that fans can gravitate towards him. If him and Sean Porter was on regular Fox instead of on, on the pay-per-view, that probably would have been viewed by three, four million people and they would have been like, whoa, I want to see that shit again. Because that well, point was great. I'm telling you how the truth. I'm telling you how the truth. No cap. No, I'm telling you the truth. And nothing but the truth. I had conversation with people. I never had conversation talking boxing. I talked to my grandma. My grandma going to turn 90s. You know what she was talking about? She said, do you see the Honduras fighter that won the other day? Mm-hmm. In Spanish. Mm-hmm. My grandmother, never in my life have I even spoke about boxing, never. She said that. This other dude that I know, he's, what, 51 years old. He said, yo, I haven't watched boxing in years. I haven't watched boxing in years. This kid is bringing me back to boxing. He made me fall in love with boxing again. Yeah, and that's a good thing. But what what I'm saying is, look at, Punch, am I wrong when I say if Errol Spent was on Fox, right? against Porter, mm-hmm. and now he was fighting Danny, and this was on Fox. 
wouldn't more people buy his pay per views because more people would know him because they'd be a fan of him more because yeah. he would have reached a larger audience? Or am I just being stupid? No, no, yeah, yeah, no, no. It's a problem. It's a problem. The problem is there's no opponents. Like even if those guys fought on after the fight, there's still nobody for him to fight on pay per view. So now what Look. he has to actually clear out the division on pay per view. And and it won't matter unless he cleans out the entire. I'll world. just say if, if I'll just say if he had fought these world title fights, regular Fox, I'll just be honest. Like most of them, like if he was just fighting on Fox right now, I reckon if he fought Thurman on pay per view, mm-hmm. that shit probably do a hundred k. I really I- reckon that. And they did that. They did that. Let's say with Mike too. Remember Mike after yes. you know when he came out of jail, Peter McNeely. That was pay per view. But then his next fight was on Fox, prime time. And then the next fight was Bruno. Pay per view. That was good. That was a good strategy too. Well, look, the fight with Peter McNeely. Like I, I never like saying this because this gets into it topic I don't really like talking about but smoke and talk about it as well like the great way hope fucking shit sells in America yeah that, yeah, that's bullshit. Peter McNeil was nobody from nowhere he's just a white I'm dude. gonna <laughs> you're gonna face my doom when I wrap you in my cocoon fucking dumbest line I've ever heard <laughs> yeah that was you know at a certain point you know when we talk about these titles and all this stuff we got to just recognize that this sport's corrupt. As f- now, this is what I told, let's say, Bill Haney, right? I told Bill. He's like, come on, Punch. What's, what, what's, what's, what's the fight you got to see? Come on. You got to put that Haney and, and, and Tio. There's no other fight. I say, yeah, I, I, I want to see that fight. But I'm not going to shame other fighters for that either. I, I, That's the difference. That was, on, that was on your live, right? That was on your live, right? Yeah, but but that con- but that combo was really like was was not 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 live. All right. Well, look, this is what I'll say to Bill. Right? How you like Bill, the interview though? How you like the interview though? It was good. It was good. But I hope this clip gets back to him because Bill, there would have been no talking now with this. You keep talking about Devin versus Tia Fimo. but only a couple minutes after you said that, you acknowledged that after the Gamboa fight. Devin has to fight the winner of Luke and Ryan. You said that. Why are you blowing, bro? Mm-hmm. Why are you blowing? Oh, yeah. Your boy <laughs> occupied. Your boy occupied, and you know it. Mm-hmm. His that, th- that, that whole negotiation with Gary Russell, Bill Haney is a slick dude. Like, you know, I'm in Oakland. That dude's Oakland, and he, you know, he's actually he's young. A slick, so that's what I said. Don't yeah, be slick this slide for me. Yeah, yeah, I'm the, if, I'm a, if I was reincarnated as a fly, I'm not trying to land on Bill Haney. I'm just gonna slide right <laughs> my legs or something. Like that dude is slick as hell. I say you try to be slippery, uh. Yeah, man. But that was a good one. It was a good one. And, you know, I think I, I've seen that shit. Um, I think they're doing a thing. I, I think. What, I think. I think when you do, when people do have um people in the panel. I mean, of course, I understand that there's sometimes you get them and. And you don't want to, you know, you, you want to give them, you want to be f- fair or you want to be very conservative and stuff like that. But nah, fuck that shit. I, yeah, I think I think it's good to challenge, be real about it. Ain't no no, you know, like on the pom poms or stuff like that. And you know, but shout it was out. good. I think yeah, I think they yeah. Shout them. out to yeah, I agree with you, bro. Shout out to the real monster. Let's not challenge them. You know what I mean. <laughs> Punch Nazi. <laughs> yo, 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 we, I like challenging them. I'm the real monster. People <laughs> did a new way to count in two rounds. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. He got a chance. I right? stop it, man. Let's go. Oh, let's ready up. Let's Here we go. go. Punch, punch. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way we do it, yeah? Stars make fights, man. That's the argument. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Stars make fights. Stars make fights. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. 
funny. Mark is like, he, <laughs> like he knows what he's watching at the same time. So I, I, I want to see Mark, like, how was your face expression? <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> All right, Punch. All right. I'll tell you. Bro, I know where I'll this is you, heading. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what my facial expression was, bro. There it is. There it is. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, yeah, man. <laughs> I, 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 I got it. I can't believe that performance my man put up. He did not. He was composed as hell in there. He was yeah, not, you know, none of that stuff. He wasn't expending any unnecessary energy. But Take- that's that was my breakdown, Smoke. I said th- this guy does not waste. <laughs> he, he, doesn't waste he doesn't waste punch. No, I mean I got all that, but that wasn't it. It was it was in the biggest moment. I, I got that. That's yeah. what the attributes are. But this was it. This was the fight that he called for. That he negotiated all of the pressure, all of that stuff, and. He had the character too. He he was the one who sold that fight. No one didn't say shit. Now let me ask y'all a question, cause I I, I don't believe I didn't think it was no damn draw, nothing like that. Uh, I'll I'll answer shit. the question for you right now without you even asking it. What I think it, Pacquiao uh, beats Golovkin too. <laughs> we we'll get back to that. <laughs> what what the audience? Uh 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 uh. You know. Uh, you know, an audience. If they would have fought in front of an audience, sell out audience, would have been the same. Can I can I tell you my honest opinion? Go ahead. This, Lomas had four hundred fights in front of nobody, and then he had his professional career. He was in the advantage there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that um, if anything, maybe Tio might have. You know, press the gas a little bit more. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the electricity of the crowd would have done, but without the electricity of the crowd, my man was laser fo. Like he wasn't. He was fo- like a hawk. None of that Loma stuff. Like he was just like, um, it really it boiled down to, can you hurt me? And like Tio had come to fight, and there was no fight to be had. Look, I said it when I was doing the live commentary. When I was doing the live commentary, I think it was the second round, and when. When Lomo tried to go t- through that angle and t- t- simultaneously, um, um, Teofimo Lopez pivot in the middle of the ra- in the middle of the ring, like simultaneously, whop. I'm like, this guy's not gonna get to where he wants to get. And I think yeah. right there, I think when he when when Lomachenko saw that, I think he said, D- I-, "I can't, I can't do that angle shit with this kid. This kid." Oh no! See, I saw something else. I saw, I saw him catch a hell of a left hook to the body. Trying to do that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, oh, let me not do that. Forget the, and I think T.O. made him pay Never, Look, a lot of people haven't talked about it. Fuck the angle. Fuck it, right? Fuck the angle. Fuck the body shot. Tia Fimo did something that nobody fucking talking about. Him. Right. I said the reason he would lose would be because he wouldn't have his lead hand active. And it's not because his lead hand was active that he won the fight. It was how quickly he brought it back to his body every time he shot it. He, he brought it back faster to his body than he did even throwing it. Yeah. It was really quick. And the reason for that is, what's Lomachenko's favorite move? That high guard duck roll underneath the jab when they throw it to get under so that there is no shot that they can throw to get that left straight in on the chin. Right? That is his favorite move. Tiafimo for the first seven rounds, completely got rid of it. Completely mm-hmm. didn't exist. He's the oh. only person who's done that. Only oh, person. Mark, I wish I would have had you on that live show where, where, where it was me, Coach Anthony, Eddie Chambers, and um, this cat J- Jennings, the box himself, great amateur background. And I said that, and they was like, because I said, yo, Teofim Lopez took took a, took the arsenals away from Lomachenko and they said nah nah it was just that Lomachenko wasn't he didn't try I'm like nah he took it away so, and then they were talking about the second half of the fight and then I'm like okay so Lomachenko just didn't want to do anything so you, you're not giving any credit to Teofimo Lopez and taking away his arsenal this was no Lomachenko it's not about that Lomachenko y'all trying to say that Lomachenko just wanted to do what he wanted to do he just didn't look, want to throw look. Look, he took, he took, he took his personal way. Rounds 8, 9, 10, and 11 is when Tiafimo started to 
don't get beat up, right? We uh, uh, beat up a little bit, right? Those are the rounds where Loma was winning, right? Mm-hmm. If there are rounds, it's 8, 9, 10, 11, that he definitely won. Now, I'm going to say this. There's no coincidence that Tiafimo's jab activity dropped by 21% that Lomachenko got into the fucking fight. It's no coincidence. Mm. And by the yeah. way, that's the only punch that dropped in activity. The other ones came up in activity because Tiafimo's jab and the activity of it and how quickly he was reloading it is what stopped everything else being set up. Mm-hmm. See, I, I, I thought that Tio already had the reflexes for that, right? I felt like he had the skills and every he had all the tools. It's just but he's like, he's never shown that level of jab on the night with that much pressure on. Him. And that's what the like I just thought the moment would be too big because he had too much responsibility. And it's his first time going. And I thought, but nah, I, like that whole thing that came out. I was I was worried about it before that, right? And then it, it came out with his dad. And he's huffing and puffing, you know, blowing snot bubbles over his, like, over his, you know, his lady love and his, his family situation. And I'm like, ah, this is, this is a lot. I need for you to be focused. Like, <laughs> the whole thing was, for me, Loma's a different fighter on the back foot. Completely different guy. So I was like, Tiafimo needs to make this dude fight backward, fight going backwards. And it needs to be rough in order to do it and let him feel his power. He didn't have to do that. He did make him fight. You know, he he did make uh, low. He was using lateral movement, but he did make him fight off the back foot. Um, and he didn't rough him up. It was actually Loma who was doing all the rough stuff. No. Yeah, punch. He's punch. Check what's up, bro. I got you. I got you. Right. The first image I sent, you'll see my 24-hour live stream in there. Right? Mm-hmm. I see it. And the, second, and the second one, you need to try yourself some of that. It, it, it's so long that it's still processing right now? <laughs> It'll never upload, bro. They can't process 24-hour streams. <laughs> yeah, and then the drink. Shame, really. Shame. Banahab, Banahabayan, Banahaban, whiskey, Scotch whiskey. All right, that's good. Let you need see. to try yourself some of that, bro. Ooh, forty-six point three percent. Okay, that's a huh? That's a buck right there. Almost a buck. That's my that's my that's my that's my go to that's my go to right there, punch. That's my that's my. Go-to. St. Patrick's Day in New York is also another good one. St. Patrick's Day is actually kind of lit. Down at Lower East Side, or it used to be. I don't know if it's still that way. I don't like what you just said. Right, listen. Where am I from? Island. Yeah, don't be telling me about St. Patrick's Day being lit in New York, man. You don't know what St. Patrick's Day is. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, it, like there's the West is, like they have a, a few. Like just seminal events, at least when I was there, St. Patrick's Day is one of them. West Indian Day Parade is another one, Puerto Rican Day. Dude, we have, bro, yeah. we have beer floats in the center of the city on St. Patrick's Day. You guys do St. Patrick's Day? So, uh, our St. Our Patrick's Day is, is, is Ya Mondays on the regular. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Your St. Patrick's Day is like a Friday. I'll give you credit. But our St. Pat, I'll tell you what St. Patrick's Day is, right? Take Mexican Independence Day, the 4th of July, merge them in together, right? And then make everybody an alcoholic at the same time. That's our St. Patrick's Day. Because that isn't, not only, not only (laughs) is St. Patrick's Day uh, a national holiday in this country, (laughs) which is great. Um, Our our alcohol sales go up by this, uh, like, I'm not joking. That one day sells more than two months of the year, any two months combined, including Christmas. That one day outsells two months of the year for drink. I got to go. That's one of my bucket list. My bucket list is to go to Ireland and and Australia. I need to go to those two places. 
Yeah, I am. Um, now that you're telling me that, I gotta go. And, I gotta go during St. Patrick's. Yeah, Fourth, Fourth of July. Um, people die here. Like I don't even know what it is. Like people can't. Yeah, people. Them. People don't on parties stay here. I'm like, yeah, they can't. <laughs> like, they're, they're, and it's literally by the hands of their like friends or family member. Yeah, boys, you come over here for Patrick's Day, man. You gotta dress up as the biggest leprechaun you could be, bro. <laughs> Yeah, man. Be like uh, Chinese Irish. St. Patrick's Day, man. Like, I just full green, man. Do everything green. Pubes are green. Yeah, it's a Christian show. Okay. All but right. I'm also down for the recycling. Yeah, that, that joke went over, y'all said. Okay. Oh. All right, guys. I'm about to end it right now. I'm not going 24 hours like you, like you. <laughs> Look how he says I'm going to end it right now. This was an hour and 20, an hour and 20 minutes ago he said that. <laughs> I know if we keep talking, this guy ain't turning the stream off. I know if we keep talking, he ain't turning the stream off. I've got him trapped. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my third win. <laughs> <laughs> now you need to get some sleep, bro. Yeah, man. You need to watch some old school foods. Oh, that's going to put me to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an old school fight, man. Give me an old school fight. Jane Fulmer versus Benny Kid Perret. James what? Say it again. Gene Fulmer. G-E-N-E Fulmer. F U L L M E R versus Benny Kid Perret. If you're able to watch fights in black and white, enjoy. If you don't like black and white fights, I can't help you out, bro. <laughs> No, I don't watch. I don't watch. I don't watch for it to call. Just like, the, I like, just like the channel. I mean, that that the one I told you, because you know it's interesting. It feels like I am watching it, like if it was just like thirty years ago or something like that. For me, when I see it in that type of color, right? Uh, when I see it in that type of color, it doesn't look real to me. That's the thing. It doesn't look real because I've watched all these fights in black and white. It takes something away from it for me. I get it for other people, but just for me, it takes something away. It takes away the void. Do you get what I mean? The void? Yeah. Like you're watching some classic shit. Mm -hmm. You need that. You need to watch that Jane Fulmer, Ben Kipper, F. Do you look violent? The funny is the commentators, yo. <laughs> the, oh. The funny is the commentators, yo. Oh, my God. You think today is bias? Oh, Lord. Bro, it's not even that. Like, I, I think the voices are absolutely hilarious. Some of these well, guys, he's kind of goes here on around, and then he hits him with a jab, and then just talking around. And down. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I love the one. Uh, there's, a, there's a few from like in the late 40s, right? And these guys are going mad fast, and it's like, and he's out there catching him with a jab, and he's moving around the ring, ladies and gentlemen. He's circling him to the side. He's out there catching him with the straight right hand down the middle. Oh my God, his legs are going crazy. It's going crazy. The crowd are on their feet. Nobody's standing, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think, I think, I think, me calling a fight when I call my fight, the, the fights. I think I do a, more old school than than anything. Like when I'm, you know, punching. yeah, you do because you're like. Yeah. And that, that's one punch landed to the left. That's one yeah, punch yeah, landed yeah, to the right. Yeah, He's yeah, up yeah. again and with the right you hook on the left side. And he's <laughs> trying to count the punches landed. <laughs> my, my favorite thing is when punch gets past Boyd. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 he's like, which hand is this? Yeah, he, he's trying to remember how many times he's reset his left and his right hand. And then he's like, so 72 punches to the guy on the left. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like the the radio commentary is way different than the that's why. No, that in matter of fact, that's what I was gonna get because you know back then it's radio, so you gotta be way better to keep people up in the radio. You have to be way more detailed. And if I gotta tell you, my my favorite color commentary, my favorite blow by blow commentators is still Trey X, Marlo's Corner. 
that dude. Now the motherfucker slipped to the right. Yeah, now see that that was cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I love I love it. <laughs> motherfucker, I just love it. Like when he's just like motherfucking dude in the left cheek, motherfucker with the left shot, hand him with the right. He's out the sudden this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he slipped off going for a walk. Cool as can be. <laughs> it's like that other fight, remember Mark? That on uh, the Erickson Lubin fight. Oh my god. <laughs> I was... Yo, punch, oh, punch. I've deleted this video just because, right? You didn't see this, but I was doing live commentary for the. Yeah, I caught, I caught a couple of those. You no, know, no, there's a specific one. There's a specific one, Smell. For Lawrence Acoli versus Isaac Chamberlain, right? This isn't even a joke. I actually put my ashtray through my TV screen and just fucking torn the stream off. <laughs> 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 I got pissed. Because this is what I was saying. <laughs> Jab from McCauley. There's a clench. Still clenching. That's still clenching. <laughs> That's still clenching. Yeah. He shoves them off. Them. They're still clenching. Shit. Hold on. How did he shove them off and they're still clenching? Bro, I actually just fucking picked my ass straight up and sculpted them right through the yo, TV he, screen. Yo, <laughs> yo, even when I did the UFC with Jorge Masvidal, he said, like, stubborn for the again. He 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 stubborn for the again. like... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all had to rewatch that shit. I was making myself laugh. Like the fuck? Stepping up for the land. He stepping up for the again. He stepping up for the again. <laughs> Punch, if you had Punch, if you had been in my stream that time, you would have just fucking died of laughter, mate. Because all you hear is me say, "Fuck this shit," and all you hear is glass smashing, fucking, <laughs> <laughs> and a little mini explosion noise of me just going off, oh, fucking turning the live stream up. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm like, dude, this is getting bored. Come on, somebody throw a punch. Come on. You're looking at me. I'm looking at that. He's looking at you. He's looking at you. What you doing? He's I'm like in the middle of the ring, not doing nothing. He's looking at him. He's <laughs> Yo, I so think I said, uh, I think I said, wait, wait. Drink, you, know, drink we didn't, the... you know, we didn't cover, uh, we didn't cover the post fight Loma excuses. What's up with all of these things that the fans are saying? Now Loma only had one arm. Oh, hey, smoke, 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 smoke. Watch, <laughs> watch what I hold on. Smoke the LDBC have been covering that for days, bro. They got it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they got that. Yeah, they got that now. Yeah, I'm like, saying, on, on our panel, we haven't talked about it. I, I'm just saying that. I'm just we I, haven't said anything about the fact that I, I talked about it. Homer only had one hand, arm now. Get that man. I, I'm like that with the LDBC. Fuck it. Get that man. Get him. <laughs> I talked about him. I talked. I, I made a video on it. I put the news up. I said, I even asked people, what do you think? I think it's a lot of bull. <laughs> do you, see, do you, no, see, you, you know oh, what? Man. You know what circulated? What started to go in circulation is the the photo from when he had shoulder so surgery. Yeah. Yeah. I saw oh, it. But Solo Machinko himself put that out. Cause that was that was um, that was um Lumachenko's official video. Yo, are y'all not are y'all not enjoying the the photo of Vasil Lomachenko in the wheelchair? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh no, I haven't seen that one. But th th is it from this fight or is it from his shoulder surgery from his first you know before he fought um you know Crowley? And before he fought Pedraza, right? Oh, yeah, Pedraza. That's what I mean. Before he fought Pedraza. Yeah, he I don't know, man. But hold on. Yeah, that's a really you know. intimate photo. Like, who the hell is taking photo? Who, like, how? What angle is that? Are you in the bed with him, standing over his head, <laughs> taking a photo? How did this photo get out to the people? Forget the photo. It's the, it's it, there's the one, there's one guy who uh, who said that it was a sound stage. It was all set up. <laughs> that whole hospital bed is on a set. Yeah, he <laughs> looked good. Yeah. I love all this. Although to be fair, like Kevin Ioli is a decent journalist. He's he's the one who broke the news about this from the surgeon. So yeah, he's also the one who broke the news about the suit. But you can never get the guy's quote right. It's always what Kevin Ioli said. It's almost like this guy. Um, um, he didn't come with an excuse, and I actually contacted a person in his team, and they told me the truth. But he said he wouldn't say that. He wouldn't say that to the public because he didn't. He don't want people to say that that was an excuse. But Jason Rosario, Jason Rosario, 
was in the hospital the night of the fight. The, I mean, the, the, the night before the fight. For what? He was on low I red blood. He, he had low iron, low red blood cells. See, that's what happens when you have a full training camp. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all smoke. Hold on. <laughs> but that's but, hard, bro. That's hard, man. Fucking hell. So, so th- I told him because, um, and then the protein they was trying to give him, he wasn't taking in, his body wasn't taking in the protein, right? So I, I remember I got hospitalized once for, for, I, I, I was going to get, I was this close to getting a blood transfusion. Yo, I'm going to tell you that pain in your stomach. Yo, it feels like somebody's stabbing you. I thought at first it was something wrong with my heart or something. It was like, yo, this pain is like, yo. Yeah, I did not think for a second that Rosario was jo- was um, faking. I just, you know, he'd be a better actor than he was a boxer. So he's like, I don't want to put, I don't want to say, he, they, his, 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 one of the guys in his camp and his team said he didn't want to, they, as a matter of fact, they're in New York right now too. Um, that they just didn't want to say no. If he would have said that, there would have been an excuse or something like that. But then that's what it is. Also, it's like you see how boxing is. Think about it. You knew you 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 hospitalized in the hospital that night, but you're still fighting the next day. But nobody cares. You could easily postpone this fight if you're not really really ready. But no, you can't. No, you can't. You're not getting another fight again. Listen, if you post- no, I understand. That's what I'm. I understand. If you postpone my pay per view, like who in the hell, like what network head is going to be like? Yeah, let me bet on this guy again. At least they need to go like you know. At least you can say I'm a warrior. I fought for you. You, you still got to beg a little bit to get your next shot. But at least you you know you sacrificed yourself for the for the greater good for the broadcast. You're a, at least a reliable business partner, right? That's why that and when I did the interview with that with the kid Michelle Rivera, the Dominican kid, and I was laughing because what he was saying in Spanish, I didn't understand. He was saying that he was throughout the two the last two days, he had a real bad, he was sick. He really had a real bad stomach where he was just throwing up and 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 shitting. Right. <laughs> and that's why, but he had a he had a he had a um I said, what was your most difficult fight? And he's like fighting while sick, you know. And he said, I was just trying to stay away from body shot. But then there was the one body shot that he hit me with. And I felt the, <laughs> he felt like the, the you know, like the, the, yeah, yeah, like of, of the shit of the shit coming out. Of <laughs> and he told me that also, they said after that, the network was actually mad at him because right after he left the ring, he went straight to the bathroom. He was supposed to do an interview and they was mad at him and they couldn't find him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 10 100 that's it. they know production spur you get a you get a pa you tell your manager they gotta go to the head now nah, he just ran he ain't tell nobody <laughs> he had to go <laughs> but he was like no his training you and he was like um during the during the corner he's like do you want me to stop the fight and he's like nah i could i could keep going but i'm shitting on myself <laughs> I'm like, can you imagine yo having diarrhea and go inside a ring? That is must not see TV. <laughs> yo, that would be crazy. Oh, why, full, like, oh, wait, okay, why is Loma doing a full on? No, full screen, full screen from the hospital bed. <laughs> full screen, me. Yo, look at that shower cup. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing: the person who took this shot. Has to know Loma real well. Hell yeah. And then probably his dad, Papa Ch- Papa Papa. Pop, yeah, who Papa put this out? Who in the hell thought, you know what? The world this needs- is from oh, this is from Loma's team. They yeah. put this in. That's what hey, I'm, I'm saying. saying. Like, like why do they think this is smart? And they put the video, right? They put the video up too. Yeah. After the surgery. Yeah. Every single time Loma loses, guess what? He's going to the hospital now in this photo. Wait, this is a COVID photo. So, so, so I, I hate oh, that. This is this, this is, is after, this is after TO. This is it. that's the that's the that's the COVID mask. And you know what's whack is is that every fighter say you know we don't come hundred percent inside the ring. All right, if we already know that, then don't tell me what happens after. Like 
Don't tell me that you had this. If if you're not coming inside, if every fighter says no fighter goes inside that ring 100%. Okay, so that shouldn't even be an excuse. I don't want to hear about the show doing nothing like that. Yeah, I swear you know, to God. Yeah. T- I swear to God, TFEMO had like a back injury like four weeks out from the fight, from what mm-hmm. I heard. Yeah, he had a back injury, thing. lower back. Here's the thing. He said yeah. he was in phenomenal shape. He felt real great and yada, yada, yada. Like, he it, like there's a certain point when it's time for you to say um you deflect the question, but you don't mislead the people. You can't on Thursday say you had a great camp, you're in the best shape of your life, and then on Saturday talk about this litany of health issues. And it just opens the door for Tia Fimo to actually take the high road and say how he was hurt. Now Tia Fimo can now talk about his injuries. And he actually comes off as the guy being magnanimous. He did have a so uh, 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 I don't know, a sh- not a shoulder, but like uh, what you call this muscle right here in the back. It is still a shoulder, but the back, like right here. It's, your scapula is the is the bone. I don't know about this. Your cuff, your rotator cuff. It's a whole bunch. Of, it's a it's a. Yeah. This is the last week of this yeah. is the last week of his of of, of camp, right? And I know that he, I, I know that he was some sub, sub, some type of injury he had. Yeah, he said he said, "All right, cool." Since you're talking about your injury, I'm talking about mine. I wasn't 100 percent either. Yeah, well, that's that contact thing. They always, you know what? So now I'm going to go into sports that don't actually have a lot of equipment. I feel like those guys. In order to feel like they do, I don't know. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start saying too much. Right? Let me not. Let me, let me not like, he always, I, 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 he's my new favorite guy at 135 right now. Woo! Smokey Smoke. Yeah, he's my guy. He's my favorite guy. Like, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not ever gonna turn down Oakland, right? So, those, those, that's, that's, <laughs> right? But as far as 135 guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at punch right now. This motherfucker want to leave. <laughs> he yeah, want to yeah. leave. Yeah. Well, say, but he, he bring her back in. That T.O. talk. What is Loma wearing? <laughs> <laughs> is the fuck, dude? Like, it looks like they shot him up with heroin. Yeah, so- I'll be honest though. <laughs> don't, then- don't that like don't the hat look like a gas station condo? <laughs> yeah. It, it, a shower, a jail shower hat cap. Uh, yeah, this, oh, jail man. shower hat. Bro. Yeah, the other day, smoke. I'm like, you want you want Tio to fight to fight Tank? Or he wants to fight Ryan, or you want to fight Haney, or you want him to collect more of these? What you want, guys? He's going to 140 uh, for yeah. this. <laughs> Hold on. See, the, thing on. Is, the thing is, uh, we I, want I, this. I we want if, this. If it comes to stardom, I, I think that. Haney actually is the most significant fight. <laughs> Punch. Yeah. The way you crop Tiafimo out there with the right arm completely gone. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the way you've got the belt dude. cropped and you've you've taken off a part of his forearm. Like, like, listen, I, I'm not I'm <laughs> ain't even gonna joke. Like, bro, look at the way you've got like part of the arm like slightly deformed and everything. Man. Look <laughs> at that yeah, shit. Yeah, bring that bring that hat back, the crown. Like the crown, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> I love that bunch. I love that one. I said the only man that could beat Teofimo is Puss in Boots. <laughs> Yo. Yo. <laughs> punch. 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 What? Uh... <laughs> That's the only this. man that could beat him. <laughs> Pray for the mercy for the man. Antonio Banderas is a pussy Antonio point. Antonio Banderas. Yes. Yo, but uh, punch. What uh, what thumbnail? What what thumbnails app do you use? Do you use like PicArt or do you use a? Uh... Hold use, on. Which on the thumbnail I use um. To make your thumbnails, what do you use? Um, InShot. To create your thumbnails. Oh, I created on Cut Paste Photo app. Cut Face, like when I want to cut, you know. Okay. I use the Cut Paste Photo, and then I, yeah, and then I save it. And then um, sometimes I, like when I want to put the text on it, then I just then I just use the InShot app 
and then I save it there. Cause on the on the cut on the cut paste photo, I can't I can't text. So I just do okay. the 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 image and then I do the in shot. Fair enough. Fair mm-hmm. enough. Cause I'm working on making this. I'm working on like learning how to do thumbnails and stuff. Cause if you go through all of my shit, you'll see I ain't made one of those thumbnails. <laughs> you know what's a good one too that I'm I'm starting to use now. Before I used to use my camera, my actual camera, like to to yeah. I have it, but I rarely use it unless if it's like I'm doing a lot of audio video. But Video Leap, Video Leap app. That's good. That's one, you know, you can have the video playing and you talking. Oh, okay. Video Leap app. That's a great app. And it's it downloads, it downloads quick. Like the last couple ones, which video I had that it was um remember that video I just posted it was me when I said the 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 prediction and I put myself there and I did all video leap. Fair enough, man. That's some good yeah, shit. I think I think that's gonna that's my I think my, my favorite. App right that my last couple videos I've done it with video leap that I've edited if I have to do like a video and stuff yeah. like that. While yeah, I, I get yeah, you. Try to chop a Tito, that's gonna be a hell of like those dudes' defense is hilarious. <laughs> like they do this whole guard thing every now and again. Hand up and cost money. Uh, smoke, uh, smoke. Why are you trying to rope this man in, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you purposely trying to look like, create more conversations to keep this dude awake? I was now. I, 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 I just had a flashback. I was, in, of, I was of, in of, a, uh, Chucky Tito's half guard. Do Do okay. you have? Do you, was doing defense, but still getting hit with everything. Do you have? Um. Do you do podcasting? Me? Um, yeah. Um. No, I haven't actually started to do podcasting, bro. I might though. I've got the equipment for it. Like, I don't know what mic you have, but I've got a Blue Yeti Pro down there. I have the Rogue. Oh, you got the Rogue? Oh shit! Okay, you got the Rogue, bro. Yeah, I've got a Blue Yeti. Yeah, it's good. I heard that that one that is is good too. I have that yeah. one, and then it's easier. See, the only thing is that makes it. I'm a t- I let me let me let me teach you how I do it, man. See, I spread I spread the the thing just in case. So. Let's say, but this see, this is too long. What I rat if, if this was like a live, like an interview of an hour or whatever, two hours, boom. Okay, then I save the video. Now I, I share the link, go to y2mate.com, download the audio, just the audio, the MP3 audio, and then I just upload it to my pod, pod um the pod pod bean that distributes it to. You know, Apple, Google, Spotify, and like that. Okay. okay. So you could turn your live into podcast. You know what I'm saying? That's like when mm. I throw the, the interview in the beginning. So then I, well, I just copy the audio and then I just shoot it. The, if I could turn the live. But most of most of my episode in, the, in my podcast is like, is like official, like just for the podcast. But the interviews that I do here, I turn those episodes into a podcast. Fair enough, man. Yeah, because think about it. Like, if if you want to listen, let's say if I want to listen to 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 you while you go live. Sometime I'm, I can't YouTube. Sometime at the same time I'm driving. Oh, he he left out. But yeah, so I'd rather do Spotify. So when people go to work, I mean podcasts when people go to work and they just got the headphones or whatever, then they listening to, you know, instead of just looking at the po- at the YouTube. But yo, I'm out, smoke. Oh. Finally, peace. Oh, <laughs> so, what were you saying there? What were you saying about all that stuff? Because like, you need, you need what, what to repeat that? yourself. What was you that? Get I can't re- I, I'm sorry, my memory fails me. Uh, where, what were you talking about? I you were talking about something to do with the podcasts. Yeah. With the pod bean, with the uh, you heard that the yeah. Like, now I'm saying that. That sometimes, you know, let's say you, if, for example, you going live and I'm driving. I can't just be looking at YouTube and listen. So that's why I like doing the podcast too. So, you know, there's people that go to work and they just got to listen in the hef- and the headphones or working out or just walking or whatever. So I think podcast is is, is, is good, you know, because there is a, a audience that just can't look at YouTube videos, you know. I understand, yeah. I understand. 
Yo, so good. I, I, I told Ring IQ that. I'm like, yo, you should drop a pod. You should, because, you know, with, your, with the voice that he puts in, the character, and just listening to him. Because I don't really got to look at the video when I'm listening to him. You know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. more image than anything. But he has that podcast feel. Mm -hmm. Yo, I want to say something, though, man. Who you what? like? What do you guys think of Maloney next week versus uh, a new way? I think Maloney. he has a great chance. He has a great chance. It could go to a decision. He's got. He got. He's been in the bubble. He's been living in the bubble practically. He's been in the are bubble. You pick, are you picking him, Punch? I pick you know what to be <laughs> Jason Maloney, but I don't think it's gonna be as easy as people saying third round. You, so oh, I, I thought know. you. Yeah, okay, so Maloney is um, Monster Nui is going to knock Maloney the fuck out. What round? Uh, like I haven't heard nobody say that he's I, gonna, he's gonna it's, survive. It's, it's Maloney, past Maloney, the he's, he's got decent defense. It's, it's not stellar, but um, yeah, I, I, don't, I haven't seen him take a punch from a guy that can crack like the Wade Monster crack. But I'll give him uh, no longer than no later than the fifth. But Mark is the uh, the expert at picking rounds. I'm just picking winners. I'm real good at picking winners. I'm not that good at picking rounds. Okay, I go. Uh, go. I'm better than. Uh, I'm better at picking the winner than I am at picking the round. I'll put it that. I'm. I'm going with my. I'm, I think it's going right. to a decision. Okay, I don't. I don't think it's going to the decision. You said third round, right? Earlier. No, you didn't ask me what round. What round? Round one. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I can see that. I, because... I can see that the first time he gets hit. That is all bad. And I can tell you. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the reason why I think. I'll just I, give you the reason. Even with the I'll layoff? Look, I've seen guys, right, with zero knockouts, right, with zero knockouts. Three of them. It's not on box rec because a lot of fights in Australia, some of the stuff that goes on doesn't get put up onto the box rec. But I've Better seen. Move, I, no, no, let me say this. I've seen guys with zero knockouts. Three. Drop Maloney to the body. He can't take body punches. Exactly. I'm, I know it's going to be a body shot. It's going to be a left hook to the body that does it. Juan Carlos Poyano, 2.0. Be ready. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going with the decision, ladies and gentlemen. Against Maloney? For what? Why? Yeah. Because... Oh, I, I'll tell you why. <laughs> I, <go ahead. laughs> I, I think I think he has good good footwork. I think mm -hmm. he got a little better. Um, He's got like, good punch power to keep him back. He got good. He got good punch power. Yeah, um, but he loves the pocket though. Huh? Like, uh, Maloney loves the pocket. Yeah, but he can't. He, he can't stay too long in the pocket. exactly. So where's he? Where's he? That's what I'm saying. He got to use his foot for work. I even told him one of that. I like your footwork. I like your. Footwork. I'm trolling, but I'm trolling. Listen, by the way, by the way, by the way, listen, listen. If you listen, listen. to the interview, if you listen to me real clear, I said I like the footwork. <laughs> Just stay listen to me. Listen to me. In other words, I'm listen saying to me. I'm trolling. Listen, listen, listen. I'm trolling. He didn't get dropped three times by anybody with no knockouts in Australia. But what I am gonna say is, a new way is gonna fold him. And do you want to know why? Go ahead. It's as simple as this. I'm the real monster. You're going to be looking like one. <laughs> You're going to be looking like one. up in there. <laughs> you too, yeah. Yeah, nah, I, I'm, I not like gonna, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Nah, listen. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna speak too mean. I'm not gonna speak too mean because like he gave punch. He gave punch the time of day. He gave punch an interview. Very nice of him. My personal I opinion I is, I think one of my favorite interviews was that one. I think so. Like chemistry wise, like you know, you know, it was and 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 the Douglas Fisher too. You know, he gave a lot of lot of. Um, Dougie Fisher can talk to anybody for as long as possible. That man, very that man has an innate ability to not shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but don't lie when talking boxing, and then I'm like, okay, see, I like. See, he knows his box. This is this is I'll Mark right here. This is this this I can see a, a Mark and a Dougie interview, and I'll be tuned in. Like, yeah, I like this. Uh that would go on. That'll go on for too long. But that's good though. 
I've got too many complaints about Ring Magazine for me and him to be able to talk yeah, cohesively. Awesome, but that's, he's, that's he's, right he's, there. That's the that's the good question. That's what get. He's polished with his with his response to, his responses to your criticism about the way he you know butt kisses promoters and all that stuff like whatever. Has, no, you know, no, that's the that's the problem though. He's used to those criticisms. Those aren't my criticisms of Ring Magazine, and that's the problem. Dougie's used to the usual type of stuff when people talk about certain racial narratives or certain promoters. Like that's the stuff that they get asked all the time. That's the stuff they're dealing with all the time. He's my one of his haters. Yeah, he is. My question is about my my more questions is uh, on Dougie and Ring Magazine is how sometimes certain information gets put in like and when I say certain information I'm talking like historical stuff where it doesn't seem like the editor in chief has actually edited or researched what's up, what people have written down because certain things have been published that never even happened. I'm sorry, but I I I don't remember. Because uh, I have an issue over here, and I'd be able to show it. I've, do you do you all guys ever remember? Do you all guys ever remember Jake Lamotte being dropped by Ray Robinson? No, mm -hmm. he was never dropped by Ray Robinson, and that's in one of their articles that Ray Robinson dropped them twice, and Dougie Fisher was the editor on that. And that's the problem: the Bible of boxing slipping under his editing. Mm. You know, I even, I even told him, I said, you know. I, I mean, he cause, was cause, everywhere. He was, at, you know, he was calling fights. He was, uh, you know, he was everywhere as the editor of Ring Magazine. He's no Bert Sugar. I'll just put it that way. I'm interested. I'm also interested in doing. Um, I, I, read the, I, I actually read the article that you wrote too, Mark. It was a good one. <clears throat> I mean, the, the piece, the piece that you wrote. Yeah, the little, the little fucking puff piece where the fucking dude said, here, do us a good preview on this to sell the fight, like, kind of thing. I'm like, fine. Mm, do you know yeah. how hard it was? Do you have any idea how hard it was to try and sell that fucking fight? <laughs> but hey, it's business, right? And then he goes and edits it, and he makes spelling mistakes in the edits. Fucking hell. See, that's what I... I, 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 I I also want to do that freelance writing, you know, for different publications and pick it up. So that's why I even hit them up and say, uh, you know, if, you know if, the, if you need any help in any story that you might not be aware of and I present it to you. He's like, sure, she, she email it to me. She said, like, sure, email it to me. I'm like, all right, this is good. This is good. Last, um, the last article I wrote was for a, uh, a film mag in New York, actually. And the editor was a failed filmmaker. And I interviewed this guy who was doing, like, out of film school, who was doing this, like, Super 35, which is, like, experimental film stock at the time. You know, everyone's doing video now. So tell you how old it is, the story. But, um, and this dude is a, a friend of mine. And he's actually gone on. He, he directed Clash of Titans and stuff. And, you know, Directly have a kid since then. Fucking thing. But back then, he was just coming out of film school, and it got real technical. And the editor, who was a fell filmmaker, got all jealous that this dude was doing big stuff and was only a kid. Mm -hmm. and he totally rewrote my entire article. Wow. Trashed this dude, and this guy was my friend, <laughs> right? The guy that I interviewed was the homie. So. And unbeknownst to me, I was like sleeping with this girl, but I didn't know that it was my homie's like ex girl. Like he had just broken up with that. I didn't realize this. Mm -hmm. So I was like banging his ex and I disparaged him in this newspaper that was circulating all over the place. Like it was bad for a second. Yeah, I've actually never written another piece since then. Shit. Yeah, I want to write Pete because I, I write, I write. I write a light when I, before I used to have a vlog, I used to call the truthhurtsouch.com. It's not there no more. But <laughs> I don't think you would have liked that smoke. It was very political. <laughs> that was you? Huh? That was you. Which one? Truehortsouch.com. Yeah, I used to have a vlog called that. That was you? Yeah. Oh, shit. Man, I love the part. You ever read that? I remember seeing a couple of things that kind of like just... Yeah, I remember seeing a couple... I'm not going to say what it was, but... <laughs> I can tell you in private. You can tell me if that's what it was. I'll tell you in private later. But, like, yeah, I remember yeah. certain stuff. 
No, nah, dude, I um, I, I like the politics. I'm good. I, I don't I don't play the personality shit anymore just because I think they're all like none of them are worth your the, the time of day when it comes to. Yo, no, shut my- your bitch ass up, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I matter, 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 matter of fact, nah, nah, it wasn't that part. It was more of the other things that we talk about the community and the, and it was more about also like father, the fatherhood and, and family yes. court system and, and things like that. That's what I, I really spoke about. Um, because around that time I was going through the you know, um, custody custody battle. So then I ran that. I, I want to ask you, like, was this vlog up about three and a half to four years ago? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing well, with me because that's around that. the same time I started going into battles about my son, like, and that's when I started looking up all of that stuff of other fathers in different circumstances, and then I found different vlogs. That's why I didn't want to say what it was about. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, I was talking a lot about that on my on my vlog. Yeah, so yo, to anyone who don't know, now you know. Yeah, I'm a punch. I'm a punch drunk, old school fan. Huh? Old Get school the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, don't call me a fan, bro. <laughs> oh my god, yo, you should have seen. And the thing, I, I have my email too. Oh my god, the women, the women that used to email. How could you say that about a woman? How could you say it? long emails? I read your piece, and that's so garbage. And men have to do. I'm like, please, because <laughs> yeah. I think it was one of them. I said, um, damn, I forgot the title. But I know it's very controversial. Even my, 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 I remember my aunt read that. She didn't like it. Um, hey, I know one thing for certain. <laughs> Moonshine is not going to hook up with a construction worker. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this woman it certainly can't be able to spit farther than he can. No, I'm not like that. How you th- no, no. You're like, nah, you can't, you can't fix the roof, baby. I got this. It's a man's job. No, I said I would rather. It's like natural. Oh, come on, we're not gonna go to that one, man. <laughs> Maybe you are. Like, yo, if, if yo, Mark, the, there's a hole in your roof right now. You're gonna be like, hey, woman, go upstairs and go sit in the roof and fix that up. Or you I'm feel gonna, like that's your like your job to go up there and do. Man, you know what? <laughs> Here's my thing. <laughs> Look, I, <there's> my... <laughs> If the bitch can fix it up, damn, make it up there. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me talk, okay? <laughs> let me go. This, uh, let me go. <laughs> right. So there's been um, there's been a whole lot of this like gender equality stuff going on, like lately, especially like in the UK with the whole Sergio Aguero thing. I just did a video on that. So here's my thing. If women want to be equal in everything and everything goes the same way, I say let them. If I'm at a store and a woman looks at me and sees that I'm six feet five, right, and she says, excuse me, can you lift this down from that shelf for me? I'm going to look at her and I'm going to arch my head back and go, <gasps> I've just been demeaned because she's looked at my body. She looked at my physicality punch. She saw uh-huh. She eyed me up and down to know I was capable of doing certain things. And she's 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 using me for her. She's using me. That's using. That's degrading. That's the meaning. Why do I have to be reminded that I am a male, a tall one? Why? Why must? <laughs> and this is where I uh, this is where we're going to start going with this. Right. So when you when you say to me, yo. Uh, are you going to fix it? Is that your place? Well, naturally, yeah, but if women are going to keep calling for equality, yo, get the fuck up on the roof and when you fall off and break your neck, don't blame me. Because I can go up there and fix it. Just the other day, I'm at the putting in tune, I'm at the putting in like new wiring, right? I put in new wiring and I fucking, I'm at the doing toiling in the house, right? I'm at the toiling in the floor, I'm at the putting in new wiring, I fixed the roof up last month, Right, I did all that in the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. My girl can't do that. She can't, and she'll tell you herself. I can't fucking do that. The girl can barely change a light bulb. Mm-hmm. But apparently, that's sexist, you know. Yeah. Uh, because I may, I, I do this, and I don't let her do it. No, she can't do it. But how is she ever going to learn? Well, she's not ever going to learn. Why? Because she doesn't fucking want to. 
She wants me to do it. You don't see me learning how to sew pants. She knows how to sew pants. Mm -hmm. She can, and that's not me being sexy. She can sew my pants, man. Yeah. She can sew my pants. She does a great job. Those things rip all the time. She fixes them right back up. <laughs> <laughs> if a fuse blows, who fixes it? Me. Oh, man. Yeah, I had mad articles there. Yeah. Oh, man, that was a good. I... Shit, man. Well, I shut it down. I should have kept going. Um, I, there was one another another piece I wrote. Married, unmarried. That was controversial too. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was fun. I think I, I'm thinking about doing it, but I'm so much just want to talk about boxing right now. But <laughs> I think I, I think I, I think I'm gonna put that up. Cause... I've been thinking about doing video logs of all the stupid things I see in society on a daily basis. <laughs> That'll be an everyday thing. You'll always have content. Yeah, man. Just like paying attention, like pure observation. Because like something people don't know, and I don't really show much. I used to do a little bit of observational comedy, man. Yeah, yeah. They, um, they say I like how Mark said he's not a historian, yet he could probably go toe to toe with Dougie. That's just Mark being, you know, conservative. That's Mark being, you know, probably that day the guys. No, nah, no, no, no. That's Mark. That's Mark actually paying homage to what a historian truly is. Dougie Fisher ain't no historian, right? <laughs> no, but that's what I mean. With, with, for, with other, because other people may not go into. Look, I see a. Too. This is my. I see a lot of people. This punch. Uh, it's not about this. A lot of people call themselves historians. For me, that pedestal of historian. You need to have done, like, you need some serious fucking shit. You can't be saying, I forget the name of the guy, but he, this dude killed him, right? You can't be saying that. A true historian, when I, when I look at true historians and I look at, like, Egyptology, the, like, all this shit, and they're going through five, six thousand years of everything by name and code and dates and chronological orders and like the dusting periods and all of this stuff. And it completely trumps anything in boxing. And I'm hearing, well, I don't remember this dude's name. And these guys are talking, I'm speaking in, in hieroglyph and L. Like, get the hell out of here. I <laughs> what do, you, do, do, do you see, you like the way, Um, let me ask you, uh, Mike Tyson. You, do you call him a historian? Mike Tyson has watched fights that nobody has access to anymore mike tyson's seen things that unless you were alive in the 20s and 30s you didn't see this because there's no footage of it anymore because those those copies unless you were in custody and mando's family or in his house you didn't have those because they were passed down to him from certain people so he had very specific shit that no one else had and um as in if he still when died. i look at it Huh? Imagine if he still got him, or maybe he was Mike just probably too does. Dead. He probably does still have him. You but remember Mike... that clip? You remember that clip when he's in the Hall of Fame and he's just naming everybody, like everything. Oh, this is this person. He did this and this and this and that. And then this is this person. He did. This. You seen that? You seen that um um segment with him? Yes, I did. So if you were asking me, is Mike a historian? Mike. Is the true definition of a boxing encyclopedia. Because Mike is correcting fighters about their own careers when they're like, well, you know what I mean? When like when he had a vander on and the vander was like, well, during this time, and he's like, wait, wasn't it wasn't it when you were fighting against right? And he, he just slightly said he, he just slight and then the vander's like, Oh yeah, Mike knew it chronologically, bro. <laughs> he knew a Vander's career by heart. <laughs> Never mind his and everyone else's. But I, and I think that he's very aware too. Like if you listen, if you listen to him in his podcast, right? And he's a, you know, when my taste is about to go in and talking something, and then he goes, "I, I don't want to bore you. I, I, I don't want to. I don't. I know it's going to bore you. I'm not going to talk about it." Like, like I think with him, see, he probably knows to who. On when to talk about certain things, like he knows there's a lot of casuals. He knows if I go in depth with you, but then I feel like you don't know how you don't even know how I can't have a conversation with you. It's just gonna be more of a teaching stuff. I don't feel like teaching. I'd rather have a conversation. You know, I think that's Mike. Like if Mike meets another yeah. person that knows, it's like he, it's almost like he's gonna get an erection just 
talking to another historian and bouncing these I oh, pause <laughs> said bouncing <laughs> and, and, and these these stories and this thing you know yeah Mike's Mike's knowledge base is unbelievable it really is like but then again like his knowledge of fights is unbelievable but it's not just his knowledge of fights his knowledge of detail on careers yeah. is what freaks me out. Like you and, can't no, and only the careers, he knows the guy's backstories too. Like he yeah, knows which the backstories. Really this important. person was born in this and this and this. And he was born in this and it's like it's too. It's like yeah, it's too. Is but I see for me, my mind, I like, I want to hear it. See, but then there's certain people where that mindset, and that's why I got off that time when I got on that when I was listening to that live, is that. It was frustrating more than anything. It was not about that you probably trying to trying to feel like you know it. Is that that you know it? That's what it is. Yeah. It's not that. Is that you know it? Why should I, you know, not talk about it? Can I not explain? Where this is a boxing channel. Now, if we're just talking on some anything else but we talking boxing here and you gonna talk boxing that's why i'm like man it's either that or they just frustrated because the dude just knew <laughs> it was just funny to hear i was laughing through that that that, that car ride right? and then you came back in and you're like you know and maybe yeah yeah you know I'm, and i don't try to i'm not trying to be this person i'm like nah i know what i'm saying what i'm saying nah mark nah what you talking about man nah 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 These, they gotta just up their game up that's all <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was a that was a funny segment. There's yeah, only man. one person. There's only one person in life who can talk boxing history with me. Oh, that's me. Hear me? <laughs> nah, but yeah. It, it, all right, put it this way. Put it this. I'm gonna give you an example that I, I I know I know when you know that it's a good time to talk like this and then like that. Do you talk to? Do you talk? Do you do you talk? Because I, I I I could see if when you're in ring ring IQ, you're more how you say it. You're, you're more enthusiastic when you're talking boxing because probably in that panel there is more boxing heads that know yes. about more. Right? Am I right? Or yes. Wrong? Yes. Because it, I don't feel like I don't feel like I can't bring up certain stuff. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. when I'm around certain people, I can bring things up and they'll naturally just get combative because they won't know. Or like they're lost mm -hmm. or whatever. But like with other people, when I'm surrounded by a group of people who are like in totality, like either informed or want to be informed or will look at things or will take things from different perspectives or will argue interesting points that I might not think of. Yeah, of course I'm going to enjoy it more. Yeah, that, and that's and that's see, then that's the difference between that's why I say I, I like. I, as a matter of fact, I I I I, I would like if I say anything that's about, about Ring IQ, I say do a podcast. I would like to listen to 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 to, to his panel, or his on, on, and his take content on the panel. I mean, on on a podcast, and I hope that he goes live more. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see him go live more. Yeah, his lives are I, good. Uh, I, I enjoy Ring, but the the issue um, that I think is a philosophical issue. We just have a, a, a disconnect where um, I may I, I like Wilder, right? And he does not like Wilder, but yeah. on that part of it, because I'm not, I mean, I like Wilder. I'm not like over the moon. I'm going to have, you know, it's not like I have other posters, but um, Vlad is like his favorite heavyweight. And I really don't like Vladimir Quick. Like, <laughs> Not Vladimir Klitschko, the guy, but the but the the marketing thing, like the way he was marketed, and just his particular career, I'm just not a big fan of, right? So mm -hmm. he, he he I just say like we go at it. It's like <laughs> cats whenever we fucking link up. But it's fun, like it's not like you know, it's not like I dislike the guy. It's just real combative. Okay, let's say if I'm listening to to Ring IQ. Ring IQ and Mark is on the panel, and a couple of and, and a couple of gentlemen also from the UK. I don't know their names so much, 
but they're on the panel, right? So I, I like the smaller division, but I'm not way into the smaller division, right? Okay. But when they talk about it, I'm learning at the same time. And then I'm when I'm okay, the things that I, I may know, then I may know more, and then I'm looking to it, you know. And yeah, that's what I mean it. about learning at the same time. And yeah, then and then he talks about women boxing. See, I'm I'm getting into now really in depth with women boxing. And then when he started doing his content back to back to back, especially this year, women, I'm like, yo, you doing a good thing, yo. You should interview these. You should have interviews and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm about to do all of that. And I'm like, see, and then it got okay that this guy right here is doing something good for boxing. This guy is doing he's when he's sharing light on women boxing, when a lot of channels ain't sharing, not 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 the way he's dedicated to 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 spread that love in women boxing, and that's good. A, a channel like that is needed. Like the, the more truth you can get in box, like boxing is one of those things where you can see the truth without ever seeing the hearing what the guys sound like, right? You can see all sorts of things about the character, the dedication, all this stuff. You can see these different aspects of the of a human, you know, a human psyche. Um, and the marketing of it muddies all that stuff up, right? But then once you get into the stories of how they came up and what they got going on, and then it gets it gets real again. It, the more truthful and the more real boxing is, is it it's the best shit ever. Like you can't really get that. And it's not really even that interesting when it comes to other sports, right? Like to go in depth about Serena and Venus or their tennis lives or you know, Tiger's golf life, right? You know, it's just like, nah, nah, I don't know about these dudes that hit get, you know, get punched in the face for a living. Like what what is their trial tri trials and tribulations? Yeah, yeah. And they're just fascinating characters. Like boxing has the best characters in all the sports to me. Like I now I, I just got it now. I recently just saw, you know, like say a couple times the BDA channel. He came to my channel. I, I didn't know about. So then I went to his channel and I seen a couple of live shows and stuff like that. Um and it, and it, it was good. The guys in the panel also was good. Um who else? Yeah, but, uh, everyone who can will uh, vote for Trump over there, right? I don't know. I haven't gotten in depth to know their political affiliations yet. <laughs> the, the beautiful cage. Who built the cages? Who built the cages? Obama <laughs> did. <laughs> they're, they're, those people, it's beautiful accommodations. I mean, uh, there, everybody's healthy and happy. You know, they're in cages, sure, but we didn't build the cages. What's what's other good panels? What's other good other other good channels? Y'all think? Uh, good panels. Um, I mean, not yeah. I mean, like, channel, well, a good channel that doesn't really get a lot of shout out. Um, is uh, Lawrence Williams, LW. Lawrence Williams. You know, he's always breaking down fights. He's a you know, I mean, he's he's all like every single card he watches. Every that dude loves boxing. Like, and there's certain guys like it's not even about. Whether or not they're, and he's, you know, he has really good recall and he has really good recall about what happened in the fight. He may not know about the politics of it, maybe he does, but when it comes to the, what happens in the ring, that's what he's all about. You let me ask you, let me ask you this Who's your favorite and your worst LDBC channel? My favorite LDBC, well, so it's a, it's a, I can, I can do this. I'll go. It's, 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 uh, it, it, so it's, it's, it's a little bit weird as to what, what you think is LDBC, right? And whether they would be LDBC or not. But my favorite one, hands down, boxing channel on YouTube, and I think it's LDBC, is Scrapbook. But if it's not LDBC, cool. But that is literally my favorite channel on YouTube. Always has been, still is, right? And my least favorite, um, at this point, like during the COVID, it's become trill boxing talk, but just because they don't talk about boxing anymore. It's like, you know, social issues, and I don't really agree with any of this stuff. Like, that, like my our social thing is not the same, right? But our, you know, we have a shared culture and history, but just not a shared world perspective. So I'm not really trying to hear that kind of stuff. Because I you know, just what don't have. You, what about you, Mark? My favorite. Um... My favorite is if it is LDBC, it's scrapbook. 
right? And smoke and smoke already knows why. We're in the same place with that one. That that's one of the best channels on YouTube, hands down, with no questions asked. Okay. Right. My least favorite. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. <laughs> he says. <laughs> Least favorite would be. Is he? Uh, no, are, you over, are you overwhelmed with the least favorite? That's what it is. I actually don't have a least favorite. Yeah, like I said, the trail. Like if they once they bring boxing back, once they get back to boxing and bring people on, I probably would go back to trail. I, I don't mind the guys, right? Wait, I just, it, wait. I don't know what trail is. Is that Black Boy Fan? Yeah, it's Black Fight Fan in 78 and 70. Oh, then that's my least favorite, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Other than the intro, I love the intro. You may, you may, you may. We got East 45 up in this soul. We got West 21 up in this soul. You may. Yeah, the guys are funny, it's just. Uh, the, the Boston content has been uh, real light these days. Like, yeah. Mm -mm. Right, so what's your favorite and what's your least, Mr. Moonshine? Um, it's, it's, like, it's almost like when we learn, like I told you, like I learned, like um, I, th I, th I thought first I didn't think that the community was that big and I wasn't sure if the ones that I really dislike was or not learning now, you know, I thought it was just like five channels, right? Um, I honestly liked Blue because F I didn't even know he was LGBC to be honest on Blue Bloods TV. You know, I like the his the content and, and the and the interviews, and he it looked like he's on his grind and stuff like that. So, yeah, Blue's a good I guy. Like, like I, I I like that guy. Um, you know, he's his once you get into it, it gets a little bit screwy. But yeah, he's a, he's he's cool. I yeah. like Blue also because you know if if I had the you know why I dislike certain channels because it was narrative. I, I didn't never felt that he pushed the narrative. I didn't know he was you know I didn't I didn't think he pushed the narrative. There's I get oh, the over one videos that say with Deontay Wilder. So I don't even I I, I don't watch it because I feel like there's just too many. It's, it's like. That's a content. That's over like what eight month type of content talking about the same shit. That's it. That for me is irrelevant. Um, the least, the least is um probably the guy that was the I think B, BFT. I think that was the least because you know when I went to his channel and stuff like that. But um yeah. Probably that one. I, th I think I, th I, 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 you know what I think. I think the, the I think there's people that know boss boxing, but they rather stick to the their collective narrative that they need to push as a group. That's what it is. But I think they know boxing. Yeah, I, I think it'd be like so with you know some some guys come for combat, right? But then I think the way that the con like not everybody comes to like scream and call names. Like even though they come to like challenge and even somewhat be low key disrespectful, it's not like you need to go full ham on every single body the same way kind of thing. It's just, it's just big, but you know, it, I am certainly not gonna be like, hey, you know, you should change. And I will always like tune in because I gotta tell you, like one of the some of the funnest content I've had, even like straight up guilty pleasure, was uh, Hamed and BFTB. That shit, dude. <laughs> for a minute, for a brief moment in time, that stuff was gold. But now, now, if if they, if gold, they right, like, but you know, bashing trolls and all that. I think if they, um, if some channels, I think if they move away from not just opening it up for themselves, because that's what I, it looks like to me. They just sometimes open it up for the for the people that they know or whatever, but. I would like to see them also go outside the box and and challenge other channels as well. You know, if they if they on the debate scene, if they're not doing that debate stuff, then cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I, I just you know I feel like they hold that power that that the mute button and timing people out whenever they want. 
like I've seen it, it, I, I've seen the dude says, Oh, look at he ran, he ran. And I'm like, he's probably in backstage because you know he never he never you took him out, and then you could easily say, Look at you, he ran, he he left, he couldn't take the heat because you got the control of the board, you know. Yeah, like so all that stuff, like so that that was more appropriate in a, at a, a moment of time. There was a time during that whole Wilder AJ buildup when it was bananas. Like AJ had a ton of casual fans that were just saying the most ridiculous stuff and being everywhere. It's like this, I'm like, yo, so yeah, smoke. So yeah. you don't know this and you don't know that. Yeah, and That's what you gonna true, say about though. that? What's, and what you, what's and I'm like, and I'm like, Listen. and I'm like, and, and what you gonna do about that? Look, he oh, ran. He ran. Uh, <laughs> you feel yeah, me? No, no, he, no, he put me backstage. He's making. Yo, but listen, 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 though. Like I remember, I remember when all of these AJ casual fans were running around. Man, it was crazy, right? Listen to me, listen to me. And what they were doing, bro? Can you believe it? These AJ casual fans, right? They were running around in common sections. You know those Wilder ca casual fans, though? They went up and made channels, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but what I'm saying, the difference, but the, the, the LDBC and specifically, like, it just, at least what gravitated me to them is that it was guys of a certain, of my age group that have been watching boxing for a while. It wasn't even about the depth of knowledge. It was just shared reference points. Because, like, for real, I talk boxing with one other human being in life. <laughs> like, for, for, for 35 years, I've been talking to one dude about boxing, right? So, <laughs> the idea that there was a community talking about boxing, I was like, oh, all right, cool. Let me let me jump in and see. And then people were getting all deep in it with their own pound for pound. I, 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 you know, that was never my stick. Like, I would looked at what Ring Magazine would do and ESPN and KO Magazine, like, all that stuff from back in the day. But I wasn't like making my own pound for pound and all that stuff. That's YouTube content for me. Like I wasn't, I didn't even, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware that fan bases had problems with other fan bases. Yeah, I was. It, this is like, not I, me. That's, so not it, how I, that's not at how I experienced boxing at all. The whole Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao. Like, I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting used. Like this is new to me as well. Like none of my people, none of my 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 friends, they they don't talk boxing. They'll watch like a big big fight, like. You know, the Triple G Canelo type of fights or Mayweather if he's going to fight or Manny Pacquiao. But none of none of the people I grew up, they don't know shit about boxing. Nothing, nothing. Right. They ask me now for uh, like if, if it's if, if yo, what's the next big fight or uh, things like that. So, right. So this it's also an era thing. Right. So for me, it's, it's, it's 70s, 80s, 90s. And really, it's really like, you know, mid mid to late 80s to like today, right? So that's like really when I was, and and really if you want to get into it, it's the beginning of the 90s. From there on, I'm good. I've been watching the whole, whole thing. I, I got the inside, because before that, I was just like fanboying from the outside and not really understanding, right? So like, and when I met my homie who was, you know, was boxing and that was his life, and it just became, I started to see boxing through what he was showing me, right? Going to the gyms and, so, you know, seeing the, the hearing the stories, I was like, okay, this is a completely different thing versus you know just a celebrity and catching a big fight. So from there, it was just sort of a natural progression, but it's still only one guy, right? So coming to coming to YouTube, I have a particular kind of you know I have a, a perspective that I come from. Like I have my own personal preferences, and the, the way that the community is here, you get lumped as like a racist or um, only liking certain kind of thing. Like, it's just weird as fuck. Like, okay, yeah. there is a, there's a time and a place, right? There's, it's not that I can't appreciate fighters from old. It's just that I didn't grow up with that. Like, I, I, I know all about, you know, Joe Lewis and Jake LaMotta and Rocky Marciano and John L. Sullivan and all that stuff, but their records and all that, like who they fought and when they fought and all that, like that was, that was part of, what drew me to YouTube is finding out, like filling in all of my like non fight, fa you know, all my fan gaps, like what was happening, the, the, his the history from the fighters that I saw, like what, because I didn't have the proper context when I was watching Sugar Ray Leonard. I didn't know any of you, you know, I didn't know Sugar Ray Robinson. 
Hey, it's it's a, it's, you know, it's a hundred plus. <laughs> it's a right. hundred plus year sport, and it's all yeah. over the world. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's, it's very hard to to know. It's it's hard to know sixty per. Well, like, let's say like, could you know almost everything about boxing? Could you? No, but what's it's weird very though? Well documented too, and that's the, but, and that's the good thing about the sport. But what's weird though? This different today than any other time is the amount of people who are bona fide you feel like they could have fought in any generation. Like right now, I don't know that these people could fight in any generation other than right now. I do not that think was the that first thing that would be in yeah, the first if he was fighting in any other generation than uh, this one. That was the first initial question. That's why I said, you know, I don't uh, I don't think that boxing is the, probably the only sport that doesn't have an ev evolution. I mean, it does have an evolution, but there's also been a di it's, there's also been a dilution. All of these sanctioning bodies and all of these belts equal dilution. Like if there was only, if you can only have top ten in two sanctioning bodies, you're talking about twenty people, right? But now you get top ten, you're talking about forty people potentially, and that's not counting champions with a bunch of belts who are not even in the rankings, right? So it's just there's so many damn people, and if you just find one belt and just defend that one belt. You can wind up fighting a bunch of nobodies and being champion forever. Oh, I'll, I'll Aaron, Aaron, um, you, should, you can share it. I'll post it. Sandos, mi raza. Como está el team, mi friend, my friend. Gracias por eso. Thank you, thank you. So, yeah, so, thank you. yeah, so, like, growing up, you know, being present, even if I wasn't necessarily tuned in or sensitized to, but being in the sport before Sweet Pea was in it, like, watching it before Sweet Pea was a pro, and then after he was a pro, before Oscar was a pro, and then after he was a pro, before v v before uh, v not v Vasily, Vitaly and Vlad or Lennox or Larry Holmes, like all these dudes, like seeing them come and go, you know, James Tony, Bernard Hopkins, and you see who they were fighting up against at the time. It's just, it's just not, it's not that. But like I'm, I appreciate it for what it is today, but it just isn't that. So yeah. Aaron Aaron's top 10 unravel number one. Number two, ring IQ. Number three, punch drunk. Yay. Four, boxing beats and rhymes. Five scrapbook. Six speak your mind. Seven hat um hat man strikes back. Eight stormy man. Nine Lawrence Williams. G Man Boxing comes in at number 10. Is that a good list, guys? All right, it is a good list. I'm going to say three things about the uh, two pe two people, right? Hatman and Ring IQ, right? So Hatman um, should not talk. Hold on, hold on. Before you do that, yeah. I'll allow you to do three people. I'll ju uh, I'll jump off the panel for two minutes so you can talk about three. All right, yeah, no, just two. Now I got nothing, there. man. Yeah, you know I've been fucking. Forget it, dude. I've been. I've been subscribed to you. <laughs> calm down, before, calm down. Go ahead, talk about that. Yeah, talk even about before, that. You know, so like, so. even before WBF, like I was already on you separately. Like, whatever, dude. Anyway, um, yeah. so Hatman strikes back. Um, the guy should just never talk about America. What goes on in America? Like, do whatever you talk about about England. Whenever he talks about our culture here, he sounds fucking dumb. And Ring IQ should never talk about TV. Like TV broadcast, TV ratings, like what makes money on TV. He knows absolutely nothing about the TV business. Hmm. And what was the other one? You said three of them, right? No, just two. He was trying to, you know, uh, Unrival was feeling insecure. <laughs> Yo, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, man. Um, I, I never got in tune with the G Lawrence Williams. I don't think I know. Hatman Strikes Back. I think I've heard a couple. Stormy Man. No, oh, I know all of those channels. Yeah, I know all of them. All of them. G Man, G Man Boxing lives 15 minutes from me. Okay, yeah, yeah, he lives 15 minutes from me. He's a good dude. Genuine, genuine good, good channel. Lawrence, Lawrence is a. Oh, oh, oh that's, he said, um, punch that ain't my list. I asked 54 channels, they're top three, and that's the top 10 on points. Oh, holy shit. 
So that's a consensus. Yo, suck my dick punch, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, have, I have some personal favorites. Okay, okay. Right? right. So one of my personal favorites, um, that the, the, the guy that actually brought me, like, sensitized me to the LDBC, and it's changed, changed a bunch. Um, Phenom. Like, I know that a lot of people... Oh, my, oh my, my matter of fact, that's the worst. Yeah. Yes, that's the worst. Right, I want to say something. Before Punch does this, before Punch does this, right? I think outside the ca- outside of the level of casualness with Fanon, right? I think Fanon three and a half years ago, even though he's a bit of a casual, his point of view on certain topics, I think he was one of the best channels three and a half years ago. Legitimately. Uh, not just LDBC in all of YouTube. He was actually fantastic. He was genuinely fantastic. He, 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 yeah, he, he had a lower knowledge base than some people, right? But, but his point of view was really good on things that he did know about, and he's changed that. I'm, I'm not going to use the word like he sold it out, but he's changed it. Hey, maybe yeah, it, it, it was maybe different. Maybe, when that, it was, that, maybe it was, that could be a good, a good, a good comment on on his. Well, but you know, you got to grow. You can't stay but like so. I was there for, for it then, and it was it was a nice moment in time, right? And that's where, it, like, I you know, back then I asked him, you know, what he thought of Tiafimo Lopez. He never heard of him, right? He's like, I I asked you people to tell me about, it. like, I you know, I get asked my subs to hook me up, and he was like, he had a hundred subs back then, right? But channels get big, you get lost in the sauce. I'm not really mad at it. It's just. I'm sure I miss it, but you know, he his channel is what it is today. I actually used to give that channel money because he used to give the money to like he used to run boys clubs and he had a whole bunch of outreach because he was living in Chicago, but now he's in Texas. He's not doing any of that stuff. So really the only channel I've given money to was that because it was he was doing charity, right? Um and then also I gave like ten bucks to to blood because fucking that's blood. I don't know. <laughs> he did every that that guy, I don't even know what to say about blood. He's just, he, I really like that guy. Um, they, they get love him or hate him, but whatever. I like blood. I like blood. Uh, um, yeah, but and that's why, and that's why, if y'all check that when I, I like it, blood, I, I like blood as well. By the way, blood, I do like blood. Yeah, he's like he puts his, he put it all on his sleeve, right? He'll like he'll start screaming. Yeah. About some fucking point about boxing, like that kind of passion, and and, and for so long too, and it, it, like that dude been upset since they made the WBA super. My man is still mad about it today. <laughs> like this whole conversation you're having about morally undisputed, man, that, that'll blow his head up. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, this is smoke. I want to say this real quick. My 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 great grandfather is still upset. Still upset. Still upset that uh, the NSAC isn't around the WBC and WBA is. Mm. Oh. He's still upset that the New York State Athletic Commission took it late to the moment. <laughs> yeah. so, so, what's sad to me, like, I used to really like the NBA, uh, the NBAF title. Yeah. That shit used to be the shit. The NBA, like, uh, Andy Ruiz, the last guy he had it. But before, like back in the day, that was they used to have some great fights. That was the step up one, right? And even and that was the thing, like the the levels that used to go through. But now these shortcuts, I absolutely hate that Loma fought Luke Campbell for the vacant WB. I hate that. Well, with this one, I'm look E, e-, e- News Fire Hype. Well, your boy Punch Drunk is gonna be taking over, buddy. We're gonna take over. <laughs> Yeah, man. I, listen, um, I love the interviews. One of the things about the LD, another thing that uh, drew me to the LDBC was pulling the curtain back. The interviews that they got with the managers, the trainers, the fighters. So the more that you do that, knock it out, man. Like, there's, and, and I'm not saying trying to, I'm not trying to steal any traffic away from it. I'm just a fight fan. Like, I have my own personal faith when it comes to groups, but when it comes right down to it, I've been a fight fan before there was a such thing called the internet. Right, forget YouTube before the internet. I was a boxing fan, so um, yeah, it, I, like, it, I, like, I like E News grind and stuff, but it's 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 to me, it's is it, yeah, it's more like a yeah, interview. look, mate, listen, listen, I'll sum up ES News on one thing. Hey, 
hey, Terrence, that's a nice watch you got. How much did that cost? Yeah. Like that. <laughs> I don't Listen, fucking give a shit about like I don't give a shit about like, all that crap, bro. Ask some fucking questions, Ellie. Get Yo, uh, if you want to hear what probably the last, is. probably the last, the last interview or E News Sports that I saw was when Virgil Ortiz was training for the last, the last fight that he had, and he was at, he was training right. He's hitting the bag, and you already know when you hit the bag, you on time, and you, you concentrate, and you see, and he's asking these stupid questions. And Virgil Ortiz ain't even answering nothing. It's almost like he's looking at him and then he keeps doing what he's doing. Like, I know, I feel like he's saying his mind. My man. Yeah, it's literally like, yo, Virgil, why are you throwing these punches? Hey, Virgil, what do you think? What do you think of Mikey Garcia's hamburger collection? Like, it's like, what the fuck is going on? (laughs) Okay, so, what is it? Ellie? All right, so pick the worst one. Ellie setback, uh, fight height. Seconds out. I like seconds out. I like I like making fun of Radio Raheem's voice because everybody <laughs> has an impression of Radio Raheem. We all, <laughs> all right, so, Radio so Raheem. Which one are you going to throw out? Who? Out of Ellie said, I ain't get rid of Radio I, Raheem. I, I, too cool. I say, right. say, say it again, Ellie. Who else? Ellie, fight height, Radio Raheem. I'll throw five hype. Out. Okay, I'll get I'll get rid of B Hood the gloves. Oh, I, I was I was there. Right, all right. So I was I didn't get to behind the gloves yet. I was at first. I got to throw IFL before I get to behind the gloves. I'll throw five hype out. You throw five hype no, out. No, I'm keeping. No, I'm getting rid of Ellie, man. Yeah, I'll tell you the reason why I'm getting rid of Ellie. Five hype is Marco Villegas, isn't it? No, nah, no, nah, that's five hub. Oh, that's five hub. Then I'm getting rid of five hub. Yeah. <laughs> So my, my next one, all right, so Fight Hub wasn't part of it, but okay, cool. We'll, we'll throw out Fight Hype and put in Fight Hub. So you're going to throw out Fight Hub. Um, well, that's two. So if he's going to throw out Ellie and Fight Hub, I'm going to put in... You throwing out... No, no, Marco, you throwing out Fight Hub? I thought he said he's not throwing out Fight. Oh, Between... no, I'm not throwing out Fight Hub. I'm throwing out Fight Hub. Oh, Fight okay. Hype. Okay, cool. Okay, he's throwing out Fight Hype. Okay, cool. Um, but do you want to keep Fight Hype, Mr. Moonshine? Are you good? Um, no, he wants to troll that belt too. I'm throwing fight hype out. I'm, I'll keep I'll keep um Raheem and, and Ellie. All right. So um all right, so then we'll just put in one. Uh IFL TV. Now you got Dog. seconds out. Uh um IFL and fight hype. Or fight we already yeah, you already wait, said Fight Hub. You mean Fight wait, Hub? Wait, you mean you mean wait, wait, Fight wait, Hub? Wait, 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 wait. It was Ellie. It was Ellie. Fight Hype and and Radio Raheem. Radio Raheem. Yeah, we got Radio Raheem. Hub. You got rid of Fight Hype, so you keep in yeah. Ellie Radio, and now it's and, and now it's a uh, boy IFL. Okay, uh, that, that's easy. Ellie go. Ellie's Ellie, got there. Yeah, Ellie go. Ellie's, Ellie's gone. gone. All right, so now we're gonna put in. Fino boxing. You, you know that? No, she stays. She stays. <laughs> I'm doing him and to stay. She's here for good. Yeah, right. so now who are we taking that? Right. That's, that's, a not, that's, that's a no question. I love you guys being on it. That girl no, 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 that's not fair. Hold on. That's not fair. Better put it like... <laughs> no, punch, punch, because she's also, she's also one of the few interviewers who also does interviews in Spanish as well. And that's yeah. why I'm keeping her. It's not that she does Spanish and she does English interviews. She's getting on lots of world champions and to do. No joke. It's an aesthetically pleasing interview all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. She's got a she's got a uh, she's got a pair of languages that she speaks real well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm punch, punch. I'm not trying to be funny though. I'm not trying to. Be, I'm. I'm being straight honest. She's the only one of these interviewers that I know for a fact has two big knockouts on her resume. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> crazy! All right. So who's going in this case? In this case, right, right. This case oh, scenario, me, Radio Raheem's out. Let Radio me rearrange. Now that's not fair. How about how about you put um high fight fans um Fino boxing and the Asian chick. That's better. Who you keeping? Fino. Fino or Helen Yee? Helen Yee's a yeah. better interviewer, but I'm but I'm keeping Fino. 
That's a hard one, though. No, it's, yeah, it is a hard one. I'm telling you. You telling me that is a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's a hard one. But no, we're not rearranging it. We're going on smoke stick. So we've got we've got Fino, we've got Fino, we've got OFL and seconds out. I'm getting rid of seconds out. Oh, we have radio right here. Got to go. To this, yeah, I'm... to this day, got to get out of here. <laughs> not because he's thinking about the, he's thinking about the knockouts, man. He's thinking about the knockouts. Look, smoke. There's only so often I can hear Radio Raheem here. Yeah, he's he's so dry. Like I, I used to love his Virgil uh, Hunter for the interviews back in the day, but you know Virgil's old and they're yeah, whatever. He's so, fuck. So he got that. He got he got it. Right. So, he so got he's out. So now it's, I think he got a historic know? interview that's always gonna live in boxing history, though. So now we got we got Fino, we got Coogan. I'm gonna throw uh, Ness. We're gonna put TBV. Who's going? Fino. Fino. We're being genuine here, man. Like, yeah, she's got great tits, but not. Did you say only last you so long? Ness is actually good at interviews. I ain't trying to joke. Which one you say? You said Ness, TBV, um, um, Fino, and who? And what's the other one? Coogan Cassius, OFL TV. Yeah, yeah, Fino got to go. I'm sorry, baby. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> sorry, Adriana. I'm sorry, baby. I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's stop it. Let's stop. Let's stop. She's actually real good at what she does. No, no, no. Not she, just she, easy she, on the eye. She grinds. No, she that's grinds. actually the reason I kept her in there, bro. She can actually, she's actually good at what she does. Nah, she, she grinds. I've been to, yeah, yeah, she grinds. Plus, and. This is gonna sound fucked up, but <laughs> one of my favorite things. <laughs> he said, "Box is is the only channel I can see on mute." <laughs> That's facts. Look, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. When it comes to Fino, though, when it comes to Fino, she's a is she. All right, what was I gonna say? She does have a certain quality that n- none of these other channels actually do have, and. It is actually a genuine quality. And I love it. It's called the Oi Challenge. And Punch knows what I'm talking about. Every interview she has is a challenge. Like, it's harder for these fighters to not stare at her fucking tits than it is for them to get into the ring. (laughs) And that is the most entertaining thing to watch. It's like, will they fail? Will they pass? Did you see Eddie Hearn before? This dude was staring above him. <laughs> His head was arched upward. <laughs> no, but I'm gonna tell you like this. I'm gonna tell you like this guy because I seen her in person. I seen her twice when I did the. I was in the Devin Haney and the one in New York and Abdullah is fight with the Amanda Serrano and, and Heather Hardy, and then I and then I seen her again when I was doing the matter of fact three times. She's slimmed down since then though. And I seen her again in the. Triple G and Steve Rose, right? If you think she looked the way she looks in home, you know, on screen, she looks better in person. Better in person. So just that's that's how I see it. And also, you hear what goddamn did you? Yeah, did you see? Did you see the way he said that? That's how I see it with the big smile. No, but yo, but when I saw how she works. How she was grinding like boom, she's going with the camera, boom, and then she's slipping the memory and then she's downloading it. See, second, the other, the uh, what's the other chick? High fight fans. She got she got workers that work with her, like three Yeah, Michelle Joy Phelps. Yeah, she got like three people with her. And that's why I said with well, Fino, that day it was by herself. She's doing everything. Like she was doing almost the same thing. I was doing I had my laptop, boom, and I do an interview, and then I put the and then I save it in the laptop or whatever. I'm trying to download it and I'm doing everything. She was doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. I'm, right. I'm seconds who, out. So, Raheem, he got people working so, for him as well. Fino's gone. We've got OFL and we've got who else? We got TBV, um, IFL, and who did we... Um, you, you said- we just removed Fino, so... Right, but we already removed, did we remove Radio Raheem? I think we removed Radio Raheem. Yeah, Radio's long gone. He's gone. Radio Raheem. He's gone. Yeah. And on that note, I don't know. I can't remember. All right. 
I'll 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 do one. Right? I'm gonna make this interesting. How about Fight Hub? Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. I'm getting rid of in this case scenario. I'm getting rid of TBV, right? Ooh. I'm keeping Foy Hub. But let me tell you the reason why. There needs to be one UK and one American channel. There needs to be because you need the interviews from the UK. And IFL TV, they have, they're either the best or second best in the UK. Personally, I think the best interview channel in the UK right now is Boxing Social. Oh, Boxing Social, that too. That's, that's, and I'm they're a like very this. good channel. Very boxing good. Boxing Social we acts the Boxing, boxing social for me, in my opinion, also asks better questions than a lot of these interviews. Yes. This is Maurice Sutton, on these quotes that comes, I'm getting it from boxing social to prove my point. Two of these interviews yeah, come from boxing social. Yeah, so for boxing social, it seems like they reserve the hard questions for Shelly Fingal. But for everybody else, it seems like I don't Maurice know. Them too. It, 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 if you want to get if you want to nah. get your narrative out. It seems like boxing shows was the way to go. I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. I've seen Rob Tebbett absolutely rip apart some of these guys, rip them apart. I've seen him do it. Like he's ripped apart Frank, he's ripped apart Eddie. Like and Punch can tell you he's gone full tilt on Mauricio Sullivan. He's gone full tilt on that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh they did. Um they, they I haven't I haven't seen boxing show show. I, I've hmm. it's been about about a year since I've seen him like consistently. I've seen a couple of videos here and there, and they've been better than what I saw a year ago. But I still have that kind of impression of them just being a, uh, a the media outreach for Mashroom. Maybe it's not that anymore. Okay, not 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 not. Um, what do you think? All right, keep it real. Like, what is that channel that you be like? Damn, why everybody so into this channel? I don't understand. Like, what's that channel for you? Punch drunk boxing. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> what about you, Smoke? Um, so it's one that I have only been to once. So I, you know, maybe if I went more, I could have the answer. But I went on um, IBF. He, I think, is his thing. It was like... Luke! Luke! It was like 14,000 people. I'm like, dude, people... 14,000 people listen to this? But I was on this thing one day, right? So I don't really know. But he was like mate, trying to coerce somebody to take short money and short notice to fight Canelo just because it's Canelo sweepstakes. You know, just sacrifice your career at the altar of Canelo. If you think you can beat him, why not just do it? Like, whatever. All right, I'll say this. I'll say. I was joking about Punch. Right, I, I was joking. There is actually a channel because Punch, you were actually in my top three on that questionnaire thing that Aaron asked. You were in my top three list, so yeah, <laughs> Punch loved it. <laughs> yeah, getting number one from his own subscribers, but on every other channel, bro, who was number one, bro? Who's number one, bro? <laughs> <laughs> right, the <laughs> no, the, the channel that I don't get all the fuss about, bro, and I never have. I never have actually gotten the understood the whole fuss about it. Mm-hmm. Is honestly, whilst I look him doing interviews, I don't actually look the podcast at all, and that's the boxing place. Yeah, well, I mean, I get it. This is interviews, right? So, and I mean, they had some real good interviews. And they had some scoops and exclusives. Yeah, but when when it's just the podcast itself. And I see like four, I've, I've, at one point they used to have six, seven hundred people in, in every stream. And I was like, y'all are listening to this? Could it, could it, could it, sheep, sheep, could it, could it. I'm like, what? I didn't understand yeah. it. Yeah, Ness is. Uh, I didn't understand it. He, he's definitely like married to whatever thought process he's having that day, too. Like, he, like he, he won't let it go. But, you know, it's. You know what? I'm going to back off of new because I actually only went there one time. Sport and icons. I don't get it. Oh, man. Man. Man, you can't, you can't do sport and icons like that. Man. The, you can't nah, do man. that to me. That man's responsible for 800 of my subscribers, right? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. He might be, but that dude was the single, like, I, like, 
if you know how f- certain channels are donated or dedicated to certain fighters, he was the Dillian White channel. And I was like, how the hell do you dedicate your channel to Dillian White? That is the Maybe. weird fucking thought process to me. But anyway, for years he's been on Dillian White. Okay. That's cool. But like he's more of like a soccer fan and like a football fan, I think, than an actual boxing fan. But I think he like sort of changed over. I, I watched the transition, but he was just so disingenuous. I just couldn't. Find it. Um, let me see what other questions. Let me see about the, the YTBC. Um, and then he was I'm like, gonna this. I'm, "I'm gonna tell you this." He's, 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 he's raising a kid with a special needs, and I and I feel for him on that one. I told, I told, I did tell Coach Anthony. I'm like, yo, you go live, you keep going live, and trust me, people, people gonna like this when you go live. Because what the thing about, what Co- let's say the other time I was, I went live with Coach Anthony and his channel, we was talking strictly. This is what I don't get from other channels, no lie. Talking strictly, not just boxing, but talking about technique, how somebody is gonna win, how this fight is gonna break down. Like I hear a lot, yeah. We uh, in, in channels we talk and we just be like, yeah, this person's gonna fight because of this and and, and that because he beat this other guy like this. But tech, te- and I think that's gonna be a good channel when he goes live to break break down fights technically, but live. He does that when he does his video, he did good. But the other day when he was breaking down technically how this person's gonna do this with the right hand and pivot and stuff like that. That's what I love to talk more than anything. Oh, okay, so. Um, Lion Killer has a show that he does with Nate Campbell that is funny as hell. Like, that is one of the new shining things, right? The Nate Campbell. I love Nate Campbell, bro. I right, fucking Nate love Campbell that show. Hilarious. Bro. But that Mark Nate Breland, Campbell. Nate Campbell, Aaron Davis show was goddamn gold. He's Aaron said five most knowledgeable YTBC channels. Knowledgeable. Knowledgeable challenge. T- channels? Um. Uh. Right, right. So number one for me is uh, scrapbook. Um. I di- I like. Uh. I th- I haven't been to the channel a lot, and I haven't been in a long time. But when I did go, I I, I found it informative, even though it was like kind of just weird. I liked the back and forth, but whatever. He wasn't feeling. Was a boxing librarian. I think he has some good stuff, but I just haven't been there in forever. So, um. That dude. Um, it, you know, of course, Mark Mark is informative, but he's like more free flowing, like he, you know, the stream of consciousness. He didn't have like a structure to this thing, right? Um, and so, but I always like learn shit, right? Uh, what, as a matter of fact, one of the the very first things that like got me into uh, to Mark's thing was him talking about the price, the the amount of money that people pay for boxing in the UK. And that's when I started feeling for him. I'm like, you know what? These some real fuck fans. These dudes are shelling out top dollar. They're paying pay per views for these dudes that I would never for like. I'm only gonna watch if I have nothing else to do with my day. <laughs> kind of shit. Yeah. Like, uh, that, that's all good. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely an informative dude. And that's three. I'm gonna go. I, I know that there's some other guys that are as are, are informed, but mm-hmm. they, they don't bring it. They don't bring their not like the the purpose of their channel is it necessarily to inform other people, even though it's very knowledgeable, right? Mm. Well, I don't know, but too knowledgeable. Um, I don't go too much to the yeah, back scrap, back. scrapbook that that dude. Um, yeah, I never been to his next so level, man. It, it, it should it, because what he did, what scrapbook did, was like follow fighters with his dad since he was a kid so he's like he followed sweet p through the amateurs to his first fight scrapbooks of all the fights and that's what his channel is going through his scrapbooks showing you photos showing you maps. the the man's the man's met so many fighters he's been to gleason's gym hundreds of times like when when you start listening to this dude talk about having conversations with people like archie moore and jimmy mclaren and it's a different fucking league bro it's a different league yeah, yeah that, that's the thing. He, he, like these legends, he's had the conversations with them, several conversations with him about fights, and he's got the whole thing. Yeah, he's just. What's the most frustrating thing about um, 
Yo, hold on. Five I fans. didn't get to give my what's the, what's, the mo- what's, what's the most frustrating thing about five fans that y'all think? I didn't get to give my most knowledgeable. Oh, my fault, my fault. Go ahead. Go ahead. Answer both questions at once. Answer, answer both. All right. What was the what was the other question? What's the most frustrating thing you hear from five fans? Okay. Uh, right. So the five most knowledgeable channels, right? Um, for me, so that automatically dis- it like completely pushes myself out of there. One is scrapbook. Two is hardline, and for me, they're kind of in a, a similar level. Uh, but they're one and two. Three for knowledge. Um, I'm gonna go with. <sighs> I'll, I'll go with beats, boxing beats and rhymes. You know who's real knowledgeable? Uh, also, is EJ. You had your chance. <laughs> no, no, let me go, sorry. bro. Sorry. Let, let me go. <laughs> let me let me go. Number four is uh, EJ boxing life. When EJ is not actually trolling for the sake of creating conversations, and, like to play devil's advocate, EJ's actual boxing knowledge is off the charts, and five. Five, honest, honest to God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick Stormy Beeman's channel because Court doesn't have a channel, and that's, and that's his channel, so yeah. that's why. So that's, 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 that's the five. And then as for the, as for the thing that I, that I, that I hate the most when it comes to five fans. It's when they start giving reasons as to why fighters shouldn't fight each other. That's the thing that pisses me off the most. There should be no reason. There should be no reason that the fans advocate for us not getting the best fights. Yeah, the most annoying thing about fans is that each fan, I think, tries to model the entire sport out of their own personal preference. Instead of just enjoying the sport for what it is. Mine is... Scoring a boxing bout. I hate when I hear, well, this is the championship rounds. He won the, there ain't no fucking such thing as championship round in the damn scorecard. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Yo, you can tell I this is really that. real for punch. You can look at it. Look, bro, this yeah. dude woke the fuck up when he thought about that, bro. He, his eyes grew twice as big. They were closed a second ago. Yeah, I hate that shit. Or oh, when they be like, oh, but he knocked them down in the second round. Okay, and that's just the second round. All right, 10 8 round. We move on to the next. I I think I think that's I hate the most. It's like hey, shout, shout out to LA Raider right quick, but he's come up with a brilliant question. To cut through all the drama with that. He simply asked, what are the four criteria to score a fight? To score a round. At first, oh, can just move on. Like you can <laughs> all that shit. Like you know, help them to you know, help them to grow their knowledge base, but just to understand the person that you're dealing with. Nah, hold on. I did that before when someone was trying to tell people how to score a fight. No, I'm saying that he does it religiously. That's all he does. Oh. And that's his thing. Like that's his actual stick. Oh, Hell, my, 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 my there was a robbery. That that was a robbery. Okay, how do you score a fight? What are four criteria? Scoring a fight. Where we even get into this robbery thing? Unravel, I like unravel. I like so, Aaron. I, I don't, I don't tune into a lot of YouTube. I'm, I'm getting, it, I'm getting into the going, knowing a different, different um channels. But the ones that I've heard so far, I like unravel. I do like um knowledgeable ring IQ. Um, I, I can't give you because I don't know too much. I don't know, I don't know too much to go. I'll say one thing of all the boxing channels that's live. Right I can't now, really just, answer that oh, fairly, oh. Aaron. I can't answer that because I, I really don't go to too much. Oh. It, it, yeah, some some honorable mentions like Dan the Man knows his boxing. Um, you know he doesn't. Ha- Haplotype Zero is an honorable. Uh, ha- Haplotype yeah, Zero. Haplo, it, it, yeah, I was going to say Haplo and and um and. You know, it's it, it depends on yeah. Eight eight cents and intangible have channels. Those two young men know a lot, man. Okay, so so, so, they, so I feel like I, I, IBT. Yeah, exactly. So I was, I was gonna say there's IBT, a, IBT, I think IBT there's another I, I think there's another tier for guys who are really in love with the sport and learning and for where they are with their experience with it, it's just crazy. 
right? And that's where the tangible and the IBTs and the ABCs come in, right? Because like I, I think it's unfair to talk about those guys like Scrapbook or Kirk, right? It's just not fair. <laughs> like it's not the same playing field. Like it's just not. Nah. Um, but for the young generation that didn't get to experience like the real great fighters firsthand. Those dudes are the, yeah. Uh, what they understand about it is uh, is absolutely amazing. It's almost like the fight, the fight before um, the main event of of Sergey Lipinya and um, and Clay, Clayton, right? The guy, the Dominican guy, knocked him down twice in the round, right? In people's eyes, he won the fight. Come what on, was the score on that fight? What was the score on that? I think they gave it 116, 112. Was it a split decision, majority decision, or UD? Majority decision, I think it was. I didn't to be honest, I don't I just saw one scorecard, but I was preparing to go live. So um, I think it was UD. I think it was UD. Unanimous and unanimous decision, right? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, let me see. I'm, I'm looking but, right now. But I could see like in it was a UD. I could yeah. see on Twitter, oh, he knocked them down. They rocked them. Yo, nah, that's more of a draw. He would, yo, he got rocked over them. I'm like, that's not the way you score the fight. Don't matter if the dude get knocked down three times in the first round. And if he does his thing all the way, that's why almost sometimes people couldn't understand. What was, all right, what was your scorecard? Ward versus Kovalev won. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't score that one, and I still haven't, right? Um, so, yeah, you gotta go ahead and rival. I didn't hear the question. Did you score that fight? Ward versus Kovalev, Kovalev Ward won. One. What did you score? Oh, uh, Kovalev Ward won. Yeah, I scored it. I scored it. Did, who won for you? Kovalev? Let me get my scorecard. Hold on. I mean, it, a bit, it, it, also Manny Marquez, right? Marquez is down, what, three times first round? Yeah, I, I, uh, I didn't score that fight. Like, I scored at 115, 112 to Kovalev. Okay. Yeah. 7 5 with the knockdown. Mm. See, it could be. It's, it's, I think, I, I think when, that's what gets me frustrated is that, you know, people look at the whole fight. And maybe because people are sitting around watching the fight and, and they drinking or there's a party. And, but I, I just, I think, I think the fans don't know the art. Of, I think they should have like a segment. This is how you score rounds at the televised, the telecast. You have it like before, before like uh, uh, the, the the event or whatever. So then the the public can have a good, per, the good perception on how or, or, or the uh, or the good you know are educated on how a, a fight is scored. Because then that's what you hear at the end of the fight. Oh, how they scored in this fight? How how? But. Even the commentators do a bad job in scoring the fight. Yeah, yeah. And look, look. Um, so, you know, you're, you're scoring a fight. Three different judges, three different parts of the ring, right? But the TV camera is fixed, and there's way more people watching from that one fixed position than those three solid ones, right? So it's all of these people who don't know how to score a fight, never really fucking watch box, maybe watch a couple of things, and they just see they're rooting for the guy that they want to win, and if he don't win then whatever. Or if it's not some blood and guts brawl that brought them into the sport in the first place, then they're not trying to watch, right? So, it's, but but really beyond all that is on YouTube, like people who have channel and have content and love the sport enough to like try to talk about it and be, um, you know, regular uploaders. What kind of annoys me is that they, so the reason why I didn't score Ward uh, Kovalev is because I know I'm not going to be objective about it, right? They, like, that is my guy, right? That's my guy's gym. There's just no way in hell I'm going to give, unless you knock Andre Ward out, I'm not going to, I'm not going to see it. Like, no, okay, I'm going to say that. Bitch. Like, so I just go, you know what, just let me go back. Let me just step back and just let you guys say whatever the hell you're going to say about it. Let me, let me say this. That's probably the most respectable thing I've ever heard from a boxing fan in my entire fucking life. I'm yeah. not even joking. I'm not scoring this fight because I'm too boys. That is like that's that's really damn well fucking hell, man. Yeah, bro. 
Yep, that's yeah. I scored that. I scored the the um let's say the TO and people knew I like I was going for TO. So I scored at 117, 111. Damn. Here, here's really, what's funny for real that I can actually see a I could make an argument for a 119 scorecard. That's really what's fucking crazy. Like, yeah, I, I personally, I think it was 116, 114, like 116 is more in line, right? 116, 117, like really 116. I think you won four rounds for real. Yeah, I had a couple swing rounds that it, it could go all the way up to 115, 113 TO, but I didn't see a draw whatsoever on my scorecard. Yeah, if you give him the seven, if you give Loma the second and the seventh, which I didn't give him either one of those rounds, right? And that, I, I think I think the eighth could have gone either way, but the eleventh the eleventh Loma definitely won. No, you know fucked up in the eleventh too, but he definitely won that round. My swings rounds was number was ten and seven. That was my swing rounds. But I, but if I give you give it to Loma. Matter of fact, I did give ten to Loma. So yeah, I gave ten to Loma. I you know, for me, I felt like he won. You know, for me, looking at it, four rounds. I did not give him the didn't give him the second, but I saw an argument for the second, especially from what happened after the first. If you're like, you know, he kind of turned it up and was Loma he did something, but I thought Tio still did enough. So. The hardest thing to score, the hardest thing to score is pace. And that's one criteria, you know, like ring general. That's one criteria that how does a judge, like I will judge if a fight, I'm looking at the inside or outside, but also I think that there's a, some a misperception of if you want the outside and the guy's always on the inside, it looks like he's pressuring, but that doesn't mean that he's controlling that pace. That's probably the hardest thing for me in scoring bouts is the ring general because maybe he wants to be in the outside. He could turn it inside anytime. And when I once when I see that throughout the fight, that's when I'm like, okay, he doing whatever he wants to do. He could stay on the inside, could stay on the outside, could outbox on the outside, stuff like that. So on the let's say today in the in the in the Lipinier and Clayton, I was like, all right, Lipinier, he's the one that's pushing the in, he's he, he's the one that's pursuing them he's the one that's you know effective aggression and then clayton was always on the outside and then at one point i'm thinking while doing it maybe he just want to be on the outside maybe we don't want to get in the inside as soon as he went to the inside a couple of times um lipping yet went to the body i'm like okay now he can't work with him on the inside that's why so it's still lipping yet even on if, if both of them is, is is connecting on similar punching counts still circuit lipping is winning off ring generalship and and pace in that particular round. So I give it to Sergey Lipin yet if it's too close, if they landed the same quality of punches. You know what people do? Um, and I've heard this a bunch, is that it, they score a boxer's tendencies. So it's not even about what they're doing in the fight. It's what they become used, accustomed to. From the fight, right? So a lot of these judges, in the big fights, it won't be the first time that these judges have scored these fighters, right? It won't be the first time they've seen them on cards or all this stuff, and so they get used to them and they expect a certain kind of performance. And I think that's also what hurt Loma, that Loma fought so uncharacteristically of himself, right? So it seemed like the reason why he wasn't fighting this way was because of what Tio was doing. Yeah, that's bad too. But but then you have refs the same way. It's almost like Flo May, where they usually have what well, what's the ref that refs his fights. He had a bunch. He had Tony Weeks. He had Robert Bird. He had, he had Kenny Bayless. Yeah, you know, Kenny Bayless was probably did it more than anybody. Yeah, so Kenny Bayless, he knows. And and also the fighters give them the instructions in the locker room. Like, look out for this guy. This guy like, like what they used to do the floor made with it. He likes to use the elbows and push you off with the elbows. Watch it, watch it for that, watch it. So they also get prepped also by the by the by the refs. Yeah, you gotta you definitely gotta work the refs, but just but the yeah, is it the, the judges they get wined and dined by the promoters, so they wanna, you know, they like it's not necessarily that they are trying to their their judge can be bought, but they can definitely be swayed and influenced. Like, you know, somebody give you some free shit, you might, you know, you might be predisposed to them versus somebody who doesn't. But yeah. 
Now, guys, I'm gonna cut it off. That's it. Now, <laughs> two uh, we squeeze another two and a half hours out of you. Now I'm done. Now I'm done. <laughs> I'll see y'all, man. Good looking out. I didn't get your prediction for Santa Cruz time. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I think Leo. I think Leo might pull it up.